just did it I did. How does a British person do a bad British accent? By uh, um, hold on. <laughs> uh... Is that a challenge? <laughs> just talk. <laughs> just wow. talk. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Racism. Rasusms. Oi, mate, can you stop doing the racism, Lark? Oh, no. It's sort of better, I think. What? The, what, his normal voice? <laughs> no, no, than the first thing he did. <clears throat> just, that was my normal voice. Yeah, right. That is fucked up. Hot. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, Shall I just cool. do the whole podcast like this, Governor? Oh, I'm sure that'll... that'll just, Every, everyone, everyone, everyone pick someone else's accent in the call and then do that. And yeah, then also the swap Mel your do? profile. Shotgun more. Like. I, Metal can pick CJ, and then everyone <laughs> also needs to, while we're doing everyone else's accent, we need to swap profile pictures, and then do an entire podcast like that without telling anybody what's happening. They'll never notice. They will yeah, probably I'd... never notice. We've been together so long, we, we're basically Melded all into each other. Yeah. We are, we are each other in all ways. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I am inside of you. Well. While no, we get wait, out. While we wait, I did not consent in this. For everyone to pour in all over us. Like you, me? Oh, why is everything so gross? Um, what, 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 what? It's always gross to pour things. What, what is? Yeah, what, on me. What? Well, you clearly you've never not had a shower. Like <laughs> water or shower? Yeah, yeah, those are. I I sand clean. You, oh. you sand clean? Yeah, I you just clean with sand. I just jump into some sand and roll around in it and just. I hear that's good for your skin. Loom off the, oh. the thing that sticks. Hmm. Well. Yeah. So, like I said, I was, I was just browsing, doing a browse on the old Netflix, and now I'm getting all suggestions for those true crime stories. And uh, one of these ones popped up that wasn't the one that I thought it was, because I had watched The Confession Killer, which the short version of that is a guy confessed to like 500 murders, and then it turns out they discovered he was like responsible for maybe under five of them. But he okay. was almost killed as a result of, uh, he was, like, fed information uh, via, like, video or photos of the crime scenes, and then he would just, like, regurgitate that information, and people would be like, the confession's too perfect. He must have done it. What nice. else do you need? And then, um, I think it was, like, the Texas Rangers, they were like, we've got our best ever, like, cold case recovery because we found this guy. It's all great work. Um, um... Anyway, like I saw another one that was like confession killers, and I was like, "Is another one I saw?" And he was like, "No, it's a different one." And so the story goes, and I'm gonna paraphrase it real bad because I was <laughs> also playing a video game, but I was really sad after I finished it. So scenario: you got a house, you got a family, and they all get murdered horribly, and then they're like, "Who did it?" The we house don't know. Too? Damn. Yeah, the house got murdered. It was horrible. Oh, no. You know how houses bleed, like, goo of many different colors? Black goo? Yeah, that one's one of them. Um, they pump it into the White goo? Yeah. yeah, a little bit. A little bit of white goo. Uh, so, you know, that happens. Big sad. Oh, no. The police, like, who responsible? And, I, and these are the parts that I'm a little bit fuzzy on, but the important part will come through. So I'm pretty sure it's like there's the son of the family is still alive. And they're like, hmm, he's like a prime suspect because it's possible that he was he's the one that did it, hmm. And um, mm. they like ask him about it and his friends very casually and they, and they like chill and just laughing and stuff. And so the police are like, these guys are psychos. They definitely did it. And so what we got to do is, and it's in Canada, they got to enable this like operation that they used to conduct, but they don't anymore. Or at least it can't be admiss, uh, it's, it's, it's inadmissible now. But the idea is they do like a sting and become, you know, like a, they, they, one of them pretend to be like a mob boss, the other one's like an in-between guy, and uh, they would bring him into their like fake office and be like, you guys have been causing trouble for us with your moitering and stuff. And then the, and the kids would obviously be like, what? What do you mean? Until you put enough pressure on them and tell them that um, the mob people are gonna, you know, fix this mess for them. They just need to know what evidence they've left behind. The idea being to coax out a confession through the, telling them that the mob boss will take care of them. And um, they try it for like ages, and then they eventually get them to say, uh, yeah, we did it, and um, we did it with a baseball bat, and uh, yeah, uh, we, we, we did it. It was, it was something we did. And then they were like, ha, gotcha! And they take them into, into prison, 
And um, their, their, their POV, the, the people who admitted to it, is basically just, we didn't actually do it, we just told them that we did because they said that they could take care of everything. Meaning that the police were on them, and they were looking into all kinds of things to, to prove them guilty. And because they were basically teenagers, I, th I think, I can't remember the ages of them, they were terrified of actually going to jail, yeah. so they were like, mob boss, take care of whatever the evidence is there, and all we need to do is tell the mob boss that we did it. That was their, their line. Um, the prosecution then was like, nah, you're full of shit, and went hardcore <laughs> on him. And the defense was like, this will be easy. We're going to enter into the, uh, the court. We've got all of the, the... There's no, like, DNA evidence outside of the sun in, like, certain places that can easily be explained by him having showered in the house or him having been in the house. There's loads of unidentified DNA that's around all of the killings. Like, the, the, there's DNA that doesn't match either of the two of the, the people who were admitted to the crime. There's no DNA for one of them to be in there at all. There's um, loads of things that are unexplained. Their stories, despite matching up, because they obviously planned it to, to try and give it to the mob boss, doesn't explain all the things they found in the crime scene. All of this stuff isn't uh, admitted. It's ignored. Uh, the judge prevented it from entering the case. So all they've got to give to the jury, basically, is to fight over the confessions, which is done with this, uh, they called it, like, the big guy or something. It's like the operation they run when they're faking mafia. And, like, this case goes on for ages, and everyone who's involved is like, this will be easy for the defense, because the confessions can easily be construed as just, uh, they did it to save their own skin. Um, unfortunately, they ended up, uh, being found guilty, and they served, uh, they had three life sentences in a row, uh, in a row without parole, and they're still serving it to this day. Have they not been acquitted or anything? They tried to appeal, and um, one of them has run out of appeals. The other one has got his last one coming up soon. So if the, if proof that you are innocent comes out, you've hit your limit on appeals. So I think yeah, I think that's just, just fucked. Well, funnily enough, this what whole the all the evidence that they got uh, convicted on is not admissible anymore. They changed the law in Canada. They think it's bullshit now that if you get a confession from them by faking yourself as a mafia person, it doesn't count. But that was, like, all the information that uh, got him fucked over. Wow. Now, that is depressing. Uh, it's, yeah, I was, I was really sad watching it, because I expected it to end with someone to come out with, like, information of some kind to be like, it's this, you fools! And it's like, oh, it all worked out. And it's like, no, they cut to them being, like, way older. I think they're, like, middle-aged, and they're just still yeah. in prison. And I was just like, what the fuck? Like... Mm. All, all the DNA evidence ignored. That's just how it works. Huh. Well, now that everyone's happy and <laughs> rearing to go <laughs> and excited. Mood, yeah. Well, there's another two episodes of that, uh, but it's about a different story in that series. I look forward to seeing them. But I figure that's a good way to introduce. Uh, welcome back to EFAP, CJ. <laughs> it's been, it's been, <laughs> a, been a while. Yeah, you, you trying to say I'm depressing? Uh, no, yes. I'm saying that what? you search for justice, and that's what that made me think about. Big this is true. Justice. I do search for great justice. Although I am, I am a black works. dog, so technically I am very depressive. It does make sense. Oh yeah. See, like a see by a roundabout way, we got there. Hmm. I but just, yes, hello. I'm happy to be back. It's it's just been a while since we've had two dogs on the cast at the same time, you know. Oh, you don't have oh. enough dogs in the community. Or shadow people. Or shadow Eldritch people. Creatures. People, people of shadow. POSs, we call them. <laughs> we don't like POS. <laughs> <laughs> There's connotations to it that we don't appreciate. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's how's, how's things been? What have you been up to, sir? What's, what's, how's life been? Yeah, so I've been uh, having a very long break from my YouTube channel for a while. Uh, so I uh, went to America, actually, in January and I was I stayed there for three months uh seeing my girlfriend uh basically living with her for three months because we haven't had a so chance just to imagine you watching her for three months just like standing <laughs> just, yeah I was just, no I was just camping outside Dude, her bedroom that's... window I'm going to see normal. her for three months I didn't tell her but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah but we didn't get a chance to see each other much over the pandemic because of like uh, travel restrictions and stuff so it was nice to actually just go and spend a big chunk of time with her 
so that was cool. Uh, so I just hung out in upstate New York, mostly chilling in her house, uh, hanging out with her dog, playing Elden Ring, that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, doing a bit, doing a bit of touristy stuff. You know, went to see Niagara Falls and went down to Philadelphia for a cheese steak. Niagara Falls in thing. Canada. It's on the border, so there's like an American side and a Canadian side. The Canadian side is apparently better. Uh, Which is I was wetter. I, I was forewarned about this beforehand by Americans that the American side is a bit of a shithole. Oh. Uh, Kind of it, it. Well, it's a very, it's a very rough area. It's very run down. Like apart from, apart from the actual falls itself, there's no reason to go there. And annoyingly, you get the better view on the Canadian side, but they weren't, they weren't letting people in, so we couldn't go over and have very a look. Nice of them. It was very Canadians. wet. Have yeah, I know, right? I, I wanted to just swim that. over, but no. Apparently, that's not done either. But yeah, it's it's very big and very wet. So that was that was quite fun. Oh, that's good. And yeah, just been chilling, really. Uh, sort of setting up things that will make uh, the process of making videos easier for myself. Now, when I come back, I've got a bunch of sort of things in place, new technology, new new people I'm working with, new new stuff I'm having made for me. Mm. So I'm, I, I'm, I was going to announce it today, but I think I'll announce it tomorrow. I am actually coming back and going to start making videos again. Ah, so you're not going to announce it until tomorrow, I see. No. <laughs> well, this, uh, is yeah. the pre, this is the pre-announcement <laughs> well, I feel, of the announcement you know what I feel bad like doing at everyone pings twice in the same day I'm just I'm just oh, that no, kind of I just meant, <laughs> I, I just meant the concept of announcing it it's like I'm afraid we're live right now but it's, it's like that's fine don't no worry. I know you are I know I know but this is an unofficial announcement if that makes sense oh yeah you heard it first um, well, do you want? To, is, is, is there anything to tease? Maybe any ideas floating around of what we could maybe expect, or are you keeping that close to the chest? Um, you know, no, I will actually. Say, I've got lots of ideas. I've got a long list. It's just what do I make in what order, and just getting around to doing stuff. I got a bunch of ideas I've wanted to make for a while, uh, and then a couple of things I actually thought up during the break, and then new stuff will come up all the time, but. The first one is what I told you guys about off stream. So my first video back is going to be on a show called Black White, which some of you guys may have heard of already, but it's a reality TV show from the 2000s in which a white family and a black family basically swap races using makeup. Um, <laughs> show, a and, show that would totally yes. be okay to be made today. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Twitter would, have, would uh, welcome it with open arms. It's <laughs> um, it's interesting. Although, once you get over that initial, like, the black face and the white face, um, you find, actually, that's the least controversial thing about the show. <laughs> which, they hire really does, which really does say something. Wow. Uh, it, it's, expect a lot of accidental racism and cringe. Uh, it's, it's, but, I think it's, but I think it's a very interesting in topic, and there's a lot to talk about, and nobody's really covered it in the way that I want to. So I feel like there's a little bit of a gap in the market there. So that that's gonna be interesting. Mm. Um, and then after that, I want to. Oh, it is it is hilarious. Uh, just someone in Discord said the show sounds hilarious. Yes, it is. Uh, it's on YouTube, by the way. You guys can uh, look it up. Somebody's uploaded all the episodes. Black White, it's called. And then after that, I want to talk about uh, NFTs and NFT cartoons because that's something I wanted to talk about for a while. Uh, oh. so that's that's quite a huge <laughs> subject. <laughs> NFT cartoons, they're making shows about NFT where everyone owns a frame of the cartoon. Oh Probably. no, it's no, it no no no. It's um so basically organizations that want to promote and sell NFTs like the Red Ape family and stuff are actually have been producing cartoons, like animated shows, as a way to market their NFTs. So the show I mean the shows are like as poor quality as you'd expect. Um, and they exist basically only to market. I don't know if and I have an expectation for the quality of an NFT cartoon. Well, it's as bad as you'd imagine, right? Um, and they only exist basically to try and convince people that NFTs are great and you should buy them because that's what, and it, you know, the NFT market is basically driven by hype, and they have to keep hyping them up in order to sell them on to somebody else. It's all it's all a big scam, basically. But that that's what I want to talk no. about. I mean, yeah. How how could you imagine not being hyped for those monkeys? So, they're so great, you know. <laughs> yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow's into them, you know. How, Dude, Brie you know, Larson, how and Brie oh, Larson, yes, and what's what Jim, Jimmy Fallon? I think you know all the all the great thinkers of our generation. Yeah, no, not even our generation. I, uh, I don't know. 
I don't hey, at all think that all they the... are horrible and no one should get anywhere near them. I'm sure they're great. All, all the best celebrities, you know. Um, so yeah, and then after that, I got a, a whole bunch of other things, like uh, movies about the COVID pandemic, because there's been a whole bunch of those, which were really shit. Really? Um, <laughs> They've already oh, made yeah. those? God, yeah, there's yeah. a few. Yeah, there's there's one by some conspiracy theory nut job from uh, Germany who basically groomed an, an underage oh, girl. Hey, and hey, then, CJ, and CJ, then... CJ, 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 he's 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 on the pan. <laughs> so kind of take it easy with the you know bad metal, bad. Stop it. <laughs> hey, I'm not even getting royalties for that movie. I mean, it's so... the first movie he's made. <laughs> he can make some mistakes, I think. Metal there's metal a lot of mistakes in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, but apparently it's not illegal in Germany, so it's okay, according to this guy. It's, there's a whole, there's a whole thing, but yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of those movies. Uh, and then, yeah, lots of ideas. Lots of ideas. Hopefully they will prove to be spicy. Mm -hmm. Spicy. Well, that about does it for, I don't know, 60 minutes of us doing, I, f I figure we should just get into, you know, current events, I'm afraid. I'm sorry. We could. Drag you, kicking and screaming into wonder discussions they've been mentioned several times the internet is currently at war trying to figure out if wonder is a good or bad person and mm. we oh, geez, don't bad. know how this happened we've not understood why this has happened ever <laughs> wonder vision was like the worst thing or one of them you know there's a lot well, of those I think, now uh, a lot of people have pointed out that she's basically turned into female joker um in terms of like the meta and i think that's pretty accurate but like, um, doesn't it feel a little different to you? Because Joker, uh, I don't remember anyone saying Joker's a good man. No, I, I, I'm no. told that I'm told that all the incels worship him as their god. But <laughs> I've never <laughs> actually found anyone who says Joker's a good person. Well, I yeah, like it's it's um, Joker kind of gets bunched into it's the meme right that has Rick and Tyler Durden and mm. all of these guys on it of like the you miss the point by idolizing them. Um, and I'm sure there are people who, like, hardcore idolize uh, some of these characters. Um, I hey. guess the awkward part is that I would say that all, uh, well, not Joker, but, like, there are aspects of, like, Rick or Tyler Durden that are, like, that, that, they're not, they're not, like, all bad, right? There are, there are aspects of them that are, um, interesting or aspects of them that may well be worthwhile to emulate, right? Like, it might be worthwhile to emulate Tyler's level of confidence and sort of, like, a willingness to do the things that he's uh, interested in doing, but, like, not to take it as far or to go, like, insane with it. Um, I guess Wanda's a bit weird because I don't know what you would be wanting to, like, take away from that character. Like, if you feel sad, d take over an entire town and then make them your slaves. Like, I don't, you know? <laughs> Her love is really family. Her passion for the ones that she loves. Come on, Fringy. Be nice. I'm not, I'm not sure what she did in that series that could be classified as morally good um, uh, well a lot of people say that she took it down at the end so that's okay um which is an interesting <laughs> sort of that's like saying that. that's like saying in 1945 hitler resigned so all's forgiven <laughs> sorry um so yes that conversation's happening and with the multiverse of madness having its uh Mm. Different promos, TV spots, trailers, this, that, and the other. It has become abundantly clear that she will be the antagonist. It's something that, is, uh, if, if you're a leak reader, you may have known this for a long time. But now it's like, well, you know what? She's going through a lot. And you're like, what? 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 what, what, what? what? And uh, some of the people are like, well, it'll be interesting to see how it'll go because, you know... Hope they don't ruin my Wanda. She's my hero. And you're like, did you see WandaVision? And they're like, yeah, did you? And you're like, wait, what? So, what's the truth? Is she a villain? Or is she a hero? Or is she misunderstood? Did she do anything wrong? Well, um, Jay made me aware of a video that has arrived to rescue the conversation. Oh, boy. It, it <laughs> posits that she didn't do nothing. Didn't do nothing wrong at all. And so it's all good. Wow. And, um, nothing wrong. Oh. Well, you know what? It'll make sense, because it's not including any of this Doctor Strange stuff, you know? So, you just consider WandaVision. She's a pretty good person, right? Definitely. Don't believe you. Hmm, you guys didn't sound very convinced. Well, you know what? We could That's just the watch the for. video. And yeah, what? We can. this will convince us. 
that's yeah, that's the plan. It is uh, by a channel called Screen Crush, and we've covered them before. They have very oh, they sound familiar. Screen they have interesting ideas. Uh, Why do they sound familiar? I'm scared. Well, they <laughs> they're. Uh, they're a wannabe Watch Mojo, I think. Oh, <laughs> uh, why do you want to be wannabe? How do you? I don't even do want to be Watch Mojo. <laughs> how do you? How do you be a wannabe Watch Mojo? Because that is like the lowest effort content you can make. How do you make it worse than that? I mean, I'm just looking at their like their backlog. One of the videos is called Morbius Ending Explained. Why is Vulture? Why is why is Vulture? <laughs> like... Why is Vulture? All right. For all those people who are really wondering about the end of Morbius, <laughs> here you go. You but got um, the yeah, ninety-seven Easter eggs in Mandalorian, thirty-two uh, Easter eggs in Peacemaker. Ninety-seven Easter eggs. Yeah. All rotten. Well, yeah, and they, so they do that kind of stuff. They do endings explained, plot holes explained for Boba Fett. I wonder what those are. Mm -hmm. Um, but obviously, we can't watch the entire channel. So instead, we resort to checking out whatever it is that he's got to to help us deal with all this discourse, this wonderful, wonderful discourse. Uh, you know, I, I I think it's a fair perspective to have that Wanda didn't do anything wrong. Maybe there's a whole bunch of things we misinterpreted from the show. You guys are willing to bet that that's possible, right? I don't know. I'm still waiting for Batman to come into place for this part. Batman may have been the one behind it all. <laughs> oh. I mean... Pretty smart guy, he's pretty capable. Lord. Also, we have four people in this watch together. Who's holding out on me, huh? Hmm? It's not me, I swear. Mm -hmm. uh. It's still four, so... It's still four, yeah. <laughs> DJ, it's not you, right? You know how watch together works? I literally I mean, I gave myself there, a nickname. So. Oh. I can't... I can see it so small. Oh, it was red. Uh, Just ooh. like me. You didn't want to say anything because it's too embarrassing. Oh, yeah, Marcus. CJ. But that's okay. I forgive you. It's all right, CJ. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We can carry on now. Wonder if you guys will forgive me for making you see this video, though. Big now, Buck Bunny. You break the rules. We oh. jump into this. We'll say that there is a an element of cinema sins to this in that this video is simultaneously arguing these points genuinely, but it's also like. Wouldn't it be funny if someone was to actually make this point, sort of? But no, but not really, but yes. So we'll have to see if you can detect any kind of vibe as we progress. And if you can, good for you. If you can't, <laughs> I guess we'll just try and do the, the, the J, the J, uh, uh, the, the way, it, I think Jay set this out in uh, the big Infinity War video where it's just like, you know what? I'll take them seriously, deal with them. And then we'll think about it as like, was that a joke? And, and then ultimately the big defense, this whole stream's a joke. Don't worry about it. Oh, nice. It's all, it's all a big parody of EFAB. Boy. So it's our parody episode. We were just a little bit late, but we're still in April, so I think it counts. Um, but yeah, all right. Is everyone ready? I, I, I am I, ready. I hope so. I'm so excited. Here we go. Oh, God. Break the rules. Become I the hero. Oh, I do it. I become the enemy. It doesn't seem You're bad. an evil bitch. Oh yeah, we should just talk about that alone. That little clip. Well, that everybody. is a line. Yeah, I've mm. seen um something that's been talked about in interviews is uh some sort of notion that like Wanda has come to the conclusion somehow correctly that there's a lot of hypocrisy among heroes in the MCU. Um, which is it a man woman find... thing? No, I don't think so. I think it's just uh, apparently like I, I don't know. Like it's I don't see it. I don't I don't really get it. Like as a as a point because the problem is like for whatever failures have been you know on the head of like other heroes, they haven't stemmed from like purely a desire to get what they want. Like you know, like Captain America's never really done anything that's rooted in. Well, until Endgame, that was just about him getting exactly what he wanted, and who cares about everybody else? Kind of funny, right? It's basically, what that point is perfect. It's just that Endgame should, is just like, hello, and you're like, <laughs> ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because in this case, if she's talking to Doctor Strange, it's like, well, yeah, Doctor Strange with that spell, that was pretty, that was pretty stupid, wasn't it? Um, mm -hmm. that was pretty stupid. Uh, but like, I don't know. 
they he, don't he know about it. it. Well, the thing is, no is one's that around. Go ahead. He did. He did fix it, and one person died. And you could say that that one person died more so from a decision that Peter made that was really important to his arc rather than Doctor Strange's error. Of course, Doctor Strange still fucked up big time with that spell. Uh, but there is a difference between that and the, the town in terms of, like, the motivation behind it and the real consequences of it, you know? I would wonder about and that. Also, I don't think there's anyone left to know about what Doctor Strange did to even have punished him no, anyway. She, she, I don't know how Wanda would know that that's something he did. And so the only other time he broke the rules was when he saved Earth by using the Time Stone to stop Might Dormato. be referring to that? I don't know. Maybe or she's alternatively... Maybe she's referring to how apparently the only way they could beat Thanos was like oh, Lady dude. Vision die. That's the thing. Maybe well, that would be here's dude, the wild that's card. That's actually... I assume she's referring wow. to a brand new spell that happens near the beginning. Mm, you know mm. what? Damn, I'm actually having mm. a brainwave. Have... That would be like an interesting way to bring her into conflict with Strange. It's like you're telling me like the only way that we could beat Thanos was that Vision dies. Really, that was the only way that we could do it. Like, that would be an interesting oh, point of oh, yeah. So much potential. Him, but... This is the thing. The, the yeah. answer you should be giving her in this scene is, Wanda, I was written that way. So were you. There's nothing I can do about this. <laughs> like, yeah, this is, all, this is all Kang's fault. I literally didn't have the ability to make decisions. Oh, I don't know, know what Kang you want me to do. That, oh, I'm just referring to, like, fourth wall breaking the at this writer, point. Right? Fuck Loki. Oh, you were fourth like, wall breaking and yeah, yeah, like, talking about Kang. The writers don't even know when the villains are... Oh, sorry, when the fucking protagonists oh, it's, it's are making be... mistakes. They don't know. Yeah. It's been a big problem with phase four is a lack of recognition of screw ups. Yeah. Um, which is really annoying. And it's kind of funny, right? Because when you think about the Spider Man films, it's like as of late, they've kind of been the only films where like the hero has been judged for a mistake. Where it's like, yeah, you did screw up and now you need to try and fix it. What do you mean? And Captain Marvel, she spends the whole film um, <laughs> killing the <laughs> trolls. Mm -hmm. Doing and then things. She, she just starts killing her friends while screaming, woohoo, yay, but mm. she's plowing through them. I, I do yeah. love this. Like, you know how, like, when you watch, like, better superhero films, there's often, like, acknowledgement of the presence of, like, civilians or, uh, mm. or just, like, you know, are you okay? Or I'm not going to let... We talked about Disney movies. I can't remember when, but you know how, like, a lot of Disney heroes will try actively to save the villain? And, like, the villain's death will be their own doing rather than something that's put directly on the head of the... Like, yeah. these sort of decisions that are yeah, made, yeah, yeah. storytelling-wise, to make sure that, like, Simba or Tarzan or Belle... It's, it's Belle, right? Something I, that, I don't know why I was Belle, I think, like Belle. Something yeah. I assume Nolan thought he was Twilight. doing in Batman Begins, but it doesn't quite work. <laughs> no, because he just leaves him to die. But... <laughs> <laughs> hey, you killed yourself. It's like, did I? Did I, Batman? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so me, me, I I completely agree. Uh, they haven't written a lot of payoffs that way anymore. They 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 things are out of control with how all this works, and that means that when a good writer comes in, they have a fucking crazy amount of things they can pick from to be able to make any kind of story they want at this point. Though the problem is when you start trying to actually have consequences, it just make, brings into question what the hell are you doing about all the other things? Because mm -hmm. I was actually gonna arguably counter with what Strange did may have been fixed, only cost a life that in a way was caused as a loss by Spider-Man, but like, it was, you know, the risk alone, right? Like, his decision to do yeah, that spell was so reckless and stupid. Like, it, there's just no fucking reason at all for him to so. have done that. The clarification, though, in this whole Wanda saying this to Strange is just because Strange, like, fucked up uh, big time, in the most recent film that you wouldn't be aware of, presumably, that's not like that's not an excuse to do whatever you want. <laughs> like that's not. Oh, do you know I, what I mean? Like, I guess we're gonna have to wait for the context of the scene. It's just that uh, it could have been because who knows what's gonna happen in this movie? It might be that yeah, he's he's cast another spell well, at this point in the film. Well, I mean, there is of course the uh, the maybe it's not fully her because of that evil book <gasps> which would be really lame by the way yeah. like it's a, it's a choice like to and mm. yeah maybe you know maybe we can go hyper like i uh i get super worried with this film that uh we're doing the trope where like the woman who is the most powerful character goes insane um, I would consider that to be a trope at this point and it's kind of an annoying one it's pretty hard not to compare um, it to the dark phoenix 
Well, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, I mean, it's the most direct comparison, it seems like, like where the woman, where the female character is the most powerful character in the story and they can't deal with it and go insane. Um, it feels like a, like and to me, something that seems like a good idea would be if we did a story where Wanda has to really like struggle with I am like the most powerful agent in this world, so I need to really think about how I interact with the world, how I engage, how I get involved in things and what powers I should use and when, how I should consider collateral damage, like and then just have a whole story that is about a special her one that you very that. a very sound of mind, like a like actually rational, just you know, trying to figure these things out. To me, that seems like the next logical step. But it doesn't seem like that's what's going to happen, and that's super disappointing. I I find it all rather tedious, <laughs> unfortunately, because it's going to well, be feels like, um, problems she's no matter in what. Stasis, right? Like we kind of I don't know. Like a lot yeah. of people are saying that the character development is crazy and how cool it is. It's like I don't know. It feels like she's in limbo now. Well, it, it, like we're not it, really going in a clear direction. What's obviously happened is the writing team was like, we gotta make her have a reason to kind of go nuts. Uh, what? Why did what? What? What has been done in in the past? And they're like, well, Dark Phoenix went crazy in the uh, the original Fox tri trilogy because she nearly died and then she came back and she was like kind of weird. She was kind of weird. She killed Scott. She's kind of she's doing some weird stuff. And then Magneto tells her that. She's got to destroy humanity before humanity destroys the mutants. And then she's just like, oh, fuck, just kill me. That's like, it's not, X-Men 3 is not very good. Um, <laughs> no, it's not. Then you move all the way over to Dark Phoenix. It's like, so what was her motive? And I'm going to be honest with you, Frank, I've completely forgotten what her motive even was. Was there one to be evil? Um, I think the motive was that uh, uh, Charles had locked away, like, memories of hers uh, against her will. And so there was like a level of betrayal, but I don't, I don't know what like. I, oh, I yeah, that was in the uh, the I, original one as well. I think uh, I think what happened was like she was just going nuts in these different places, and then the aliens were like, "I will, I give give me your powers." So oh I yeah, they want the yeah yeah to take over the world and destroy it. So and yeah, then, Dark Phoenix ain't great. And so they were like, <laughs> uh, "Well." Know. Neither of those are very good. What should we do? It's like, just give it, invent her children and take them away from her. There you go. Well, yeah, so this is going to be, <sighs> that's the confusing part is I still don't understand the nature of like her children in WandaVision. I don't understand if they're real or like if they were from another dimension or how much or even they how she her. sees them, really. Well, yeah, that's the important part. How does she see them? And if she has a full understanding that this was all like an illusion she set up, you know, like, I, I don't know, I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't know what uh, level of emotional attachment she would have to people she interacted with for like a week, like at most. So fucking everyone's like, don't forget Daenerys. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> there's another it's, fucking it's crazy a boring, lady. It's a really boring <laughs> trope. I, you know, I like it when we can have like the female characters who are super powerful also be like hyper rational. Well, I hate to do it, like... but we got to bring in Sarah Connor because she has a moment of almost attempting to kill an innocent family. It's like, how the hell did you get it to that point? Well, like, you made it so that that family, or at least the father, is responsible for the end of the world. The end of the world. As something mm -hmm. that she has a unique knowledge of and perspective on because of something traumatic that happened to her in her past. Um, yeah. I'm saying, like, <laughs> like, you, like I wouldn't... Yeah. I'm ahead. sorry, go on. I was gonna say, I wouldn't necessarily categorize that as an evil act. Uh, it's complicated. Because, yeah, she wasn't doing it for selfish reasons. She was doing it because she thought it would avert you know, the global but yeah. nuclear holocaust. If we um, if we knock them all out of their contexts, right? It's like sure. uh, Dark Phoenix is gonna <clears throat> disintegrate the world in both of the X Men movies. Scarlet Witch is going to kill loads of characters we love, including Doctor Strange, Professor X, fucking Wolverine, Tobey Maguire. We'll throw them all in. Gonna kill them all, mm. and you're like, whoa! And then you're like, uh, Sarah Connor is gonna gonna shoot down an innocent family. These things without their stories are all like they would never do that. It's like, okay, so working backwards as writers, how do we get them to that place? And out of all the ones we just mentioned, it feels like Sarah Connor is the only one that has a story around why she would do what she did. Because Daenerys is, of course, is like Daenerys is gonna burn a bunch of women and children. And it's like, no, no, it's not gonna happen. Uh, 
So yeah, how do you get Scarlet Witch to do all of this shit? It's something to do with her kids, which uh, you guys would have seen in our WandaVision coverage. As Freeze just said, no clue what the hell they even are. It's like, mm -hmm. she spawned them out of nothing, and now she cares about them as though they've been with her the whole time? Um, well, and seemingly will care enough about them to try and find them in a, in a different universe, which I don't even know what that... Well, we'll have to see. Exactly, yeah. We're gonna need I mean. this movie to be able to... Oh, well, and, and it's coming out pretty soon now, so this is a... Coming out like good a way few to, days. Next week? Yeah. Wednesday. At least Consider we'll this your preamble stream. The Multiverse of Madness hype stream. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hype. I get it. Yeah. Get that hype. Uh, the choir Wait. hype. Yeah. Take anyway, that hype to the bank and smoke it. I feel like that's all the foundation we're gonna need. Now it's down to down to this guy. What he's gonna say. Da, 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 Welcome back to Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Wanda Maximoff is accused of oh, taking Westview and his residence hostage. They say that her pain and grief did not justify her actions. And sure, if I don't even know why that would be a question. Can you imagine why, why would you why can there is no amount of pain and grief that can justify some things. It's just not a it's not a qualifier. It does well, your your emotion will never be able happened. to It's not um, an accusation. She did it. <laughs> well yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, we're not accusing her of it. We're just like describing what she did. <laughs> Accused. Yeah. But yeah, like uh it, so if if the charge is uh kidnapping and enslaving innocent people, it's like, yes, but do you know how much grief she's experienced? I'd be like, well, it wouldn't matter, would it? Like, what, yeah, what, I mean, what amount of grief means that she can just enslave innocent people? Well, how does that work? You're just like, well, um, I don't know. You need to consider her pain. <laughs> All right. If you choose to look at things from that point of view, you might assume that Wanda did something highly immoral. You are so, like, I don't even know if I'm... <laughs> so, the problem here is that I don't even think that I'm choosing to see it that way. Like, that's just what it is. Like, I, I don't choose to think two plus two is four. It's just, like, I can't just choose not to believe that. I suppose moral systems I, are uh, subjective. They are of the person that, that values them. But I don't know any human being mm -hmm. that would have concluded <clears throat> her act was moral or neutral. That it, that well, why? It's, it's framing as, if you see it this way, you've chosen to do so. It's like, no, I haven't <laughs> at all. That's not how this works. Yeah, there no. wasn't much choosing involved. We were just like, wow. We're, if I remember correctly, when we were watching the show, we were we were hoping it it would turn out that she's like fucked in her head. She she there's something's very wrong with her, and the second she gets any yeah. realization, you could maybe make it that she thought all of the people there were fake. She thought she had made them up. She didn't realize they were actually real people, and the second she does, destroys she the the vision. You know, yeah. yeah. But instead, she's told directly, and then she just like ah eh, fuck it. It's fine. Well, and also then, uh, then Vision is like, "Hey, I'm not happy with like this," and she gets mad at him. Yeah, it's like damn, even Vision's telling you like, "Hey, can you not do this?" And she, d oh she's man, not and to stop you. we were so proud of Vision. He's almost like killing oh, himself so to yeah. get help to get the people out of there. Mm -hmm. And then they make a joke out of him for a whole episode, laughing at the fact I'm... that he died twice. Before we proceed, does it bother any of you? That in the background here, he has all of these films, but he has two Matthew Broderick faces right next to each other. He didn't want to like mix those up, maybe to spread them I guess out. Guess that's on purpose. He really likes Matthew Broderick. Maybe, but I would have, I would have like elected to take the two VHSs or whatever that have Matthew Broderick's face on them prominently and move them to different locations, so it didn't, so they weren't just like adjacent to each other, especially when they're so prominently displayed there. I just. To me, I, I, that's that's a creative decision that I would have made. I don't know if everyone else would have. I, I'm I fine with him shit. doing that. I don't know why you care so much. <laughs> it's, just, it's odd. Do you not think that it's unusual? No. 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 You don't? Not at all. You don't have all these not. films that have it. I think that it's. I think that it's a little. I think it's a little odd. That's all I'm saying. I think it's a little odd. I think this is the most anyone's talked about Matthew Broderick in about 20 years. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, no, we we talked about watching Godzilla. Oh, I watched that movie recently. <laughs> so, I forgot how bad it was. We want uh, we remember. Wow, him it's legendary. I think you should be saying. Uh, I almost <laughs> called him Ferris Bueller. That's how little I think about Matthew Broderick. Is I, I think about Ferris. Oh, and YMS had his Lion King review, and Matthew. It's Broderick so good. Is it's so good. Yeah. His name is Ferris yeah. Vela, as you can see in the background. 
Ueller, Ferris Ueller, yeah. It's clearly a V. With a, right. with a, <laughs> with a, what's one of those little liney things? Um, the, the underscore, underscore Ueller, that's his name. Underscore Ueller. Yeah, that's like German, I guess. Yeah, it's like an umlaut. Uh, excuse me. But... You're excused. Oh, sorry. It, okay, thank you. Metal thinks that it's a conspiracy that two Matthew. I Rogers think that was incredibly racist, together. and that's all. But that's fine. Jim is. I'm, I'm oh my god, Jim, he's calling so Germany a race now. Oh god, so it begins. <laughs> stop so him. it begins. Oh no. That's what you get for not having me on EFAB for a month. I'm getting to the race cards. <laughs> Holding all this is what around. happens when you leave me alone. I'm just plotting in the background. <laughs> As if you don't plot you're while you're here. It. Shut up. <laughs> What's your opinion? But that opinion makes you wrong. And that's what the fuck is you wrong with your... Wait, what happened? Wait, what was that? Oh, he, he flipped changed... it and changed the color of his shit? No, wait, I think it's digital. Look at the rim of his shirt. It's what? bluish. I guess it's just like... A... Because it's like one division, flipped sort of. They flipped it because the movies are. Immoral. Yeah, the movies are of course well. entitled to your opinion, but that opinion makes you wrong. So, and is he using that's a blue screen? Discrimination. Or has he just uh, changed the show? Also, what? discrimination. That's discrimination. Discrimi yes, it is, and I agree. Wow. I'm discriminating against Wanda because she's a terrible fucking person. You discriminate I discriminate against, against all the. I'm just, I discriminate against all horrible, terrible people, and I think that they should be treated differently than the rest of us. Wow. Yeah, I will proudly what? wear the badge of discrimination. <laughs> well, so, uh, see, and that, that was the first thing of, like, Jay was like, that is such an absurd thing to say that this video might be a parody. But the problem is, he tries to make lots of arguments with references. And so, it's like, uh, what? Mm. Is he serious then? Is this so? Uh, what is this just going to be? It's just a prank, bro. I don't video, know. Like on because that's what I was about to say. Because it, the, the, they do like the whole visual thing is like, ah, here's this cross comment right uh, off the gate, and it's I'm not red crass now. To and the people who flipped. believe in it, Metal, okay? And and stuff. But now I say it's going to be references and all that stuff. So, mm, why is why do you, I? I don't thing... understand. <laughs> yeah, I I think with the um. But just the statement of Wanda did nothing wrong. Why, like, why Wanda did nothing wrong? I don't think it's possible, because I don't think there's a way that you can contextualize torturing people to be a not bad thing. It's what? always bad. It might be, in a way, pragmatically acceptable with yeah, right, if they, liberal use of quotes. If they're delusional, and they just say, she had no idea that was happening, and the second she found out that she let him go. If they say that, then... That means that which I think people do she say, did something wrong and then well, backseat on it. Not even, no, I, I, in fact, if she had no idea it was happening and as soon as she realized she let them go, I don't think she's morally culpable. Um, no, because yeah, that's she, not what happened. I think that's, and I think that's different than doing something wrong. You can do something wrong and not be morally culpable for it. Well, okay, but it sounded like you committed to saying that she was still wrong. What yeah. were you committing to? That she did something wrong? What does that mean? Like, what are you saying? I think Wanda did an immoral action. In the context she did, that she, she has well, no she idea why anything's a bad happening. Thing. You can do, like, in this sense, even if, let, let's say, Wanda, like, didn't know that all this was happening, right? She still did something bad. How would you contextualize that to her from her POV if she has no control over anything that happened? You you can create negative things like a negative situation or an effect on someone else without knowing it. You can, but what would have been her wrong act? The wrong act was it was wrong to create to to do that to the people to to create that scenario, which I don't, I, I don't think I that think makes is sense. Distinct from I think it's distinct from her moral culpability. Well, I think that you've screwed yourself over with words because the thing is if i do something like um i don't know just i'm rolling a ball on a wall back and forth and then like i don't know i get distracted by helping an old lady cross the road and someone walks by and fucking slips on that ball like if someone said what was the immoral act i guess that one's not even applicable because to a, to an extent leaving the ball there could be considered irresponsible but if wanda literally had nothing like she never made any negative choice it's just something that was brought upon her, I don't see how you could be critical of any of the, her actions. Being critical of her action, that's different. You said she did something wrong. 
Yeah, I think that she you can do she something She didn't do wrong, anything wrong. Like, something be... happened to her that was wrong. Something happened. So in the scenario where something happens to her that's wrong, yeah. Are we is she not thinking any doing anything whatsoever? Because yeah, if that, she that's isn't the, doing so that, anything at all. This scenario is that would be She's preyed upon by whatever the fuck's going on with her magical mind melting stuff to the point where she gets like if you remember, the idea with the argument to defend her is that she's just as much a victim of it as everyone else in Westview. But that's not even you can't even remove that from you could still that I don't even see how that would I guess it depends on the specifics, because you can still be a victim in that scenario, but be taking actions that can prolong it. So what I'm the whole premise of this is that the people who defend her will argue that she didn't do anything. It was all uh, put upon her just like the people there by the the uncertainty and the intenableness of whatever the Scarlet Witch c curse arguably is. Yeah, like I don't even think I chat think are understanding we, what I'm saying. I'm not talking about what we, happens in one division. That's the response to the people making this argument. However, we would. This argument gets made by people because they ignore elements of the show. In terms of isolating her, like moral culpability for it, we'd have to sort of know how she recognizes its existence, and if even if there was a scenario where, yeah, I, I guess it would depend on how you could how you'd be able to frame it. But I remove something's effects from someone's like their their responsibility for it and their like moral standing as a result of it. Yeah, so the premise that I was providing was that she didn't choose to do anything. It just happened this way, and she's just as much a victim as everyone else would be. The thing is, that's not what happened. That's not what we were shown. If you remember, that's something that we were hoping they would contextualize it as. But they didn't. They said that she chose to do this, and then when she recognized that she was torturing people, she didn't care. So that's right, why so got, we say what so, she did was wrong, while in the scenario people will defend her for, there's nothing she did, there's something that right, happened. Maybe that's the confusion, is the fact that this is based on a scenario that we never saw. Like it's Well, that was my like premise. The, that's what people say. Like, uh, if you murdered someone while sleepwalking, you did something wrong, that doesn't mean it was your fault. I don't even know that you can say someone did something wrong, as opposed to, I don't even know what that would be classified under, like, with law, if it were proven that it was done in sleepwalking. I would agree with a super chatter, but yeah, there's, there's definitely a difference between your response, like, you being held responsible for something that you did when you weren't able to either, like, uh, you know, choose it in a way that is, is typical when someone's lucid. Uh, the, yeah, those are two different things, and I, I, I don't actually know what the, what would happen legally in a situation like that. Well, if you could I think, prove... Uh... People, a lot of people uh, in chat were bringing up like involuntary like, or negligent homicide or manslaughter yeah, like, usually but the, the idea would be that with those you've done something wrong your intent wasn't to do that specifically but there was some failing on your part that caused it whereas the wonder one the point that's trying to be made by people is she had absolutely zero intention or zero capability of uh either controlling it or preventing it or being aware of what she did and so the nature of like well how how responsible can you hold her? It's like, I don't know, like, I guess it'd be really hard to say much at all if she has absolutely zero idea that it happened or how or how to stop it. Yeah, out of curiosity, um, would you say that Bucky did something wrong, Rags? When? When he did what? As with like, the soldier. It did... Yeah. Wow, okay. This is like, I just, you know I, I, I wouldn't reconcile I would, it that way hold... at all. I would be like, no, he well, didn't do anything wrong. It wasn't even him. Oh, well, I, I guess I just see those as completely different things to me. I just categorize those as... They're just it's whoever's occupying the body. I guess the, the body's actions is how you see it, is it? Um, I would say in that, sort of. Uh, but, I, I mean, even if... I mean, it depends on... Because he can do something wrong, but other people can also do things wrong, and his responsibility for those things is totally removed from that. Sometimes they're linked, sometimes they're not. So, so what about a robot? I don't know. If a robot does something mean, wrong, you would say the I mean, robot did know. something wrong as opposed to the person who programmed it? I, I don't know. I haven't given it. I just, I just don't know. I feel like that's an Is easy question. Is it not question. like a 
totally is not a completely apt comparison because the robot and Bucky have zero agency. The agency would be ascribed to the people who yeah, made it. No one them says the Terminator is doing things wrong. It's like, well, it's not a. It doesn't have any agency. It's the person who made it. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd certainly say that the people who programmed and like forced him to do that are certainly doing bad things and should be held responsible but for it. You wouldn't say that the robot did something bad. You would say that the person who made the robot do it did something bad, right? Like when I would, we say, I like, would say that the robot did something bad. But the robot is a tool. It would it would be like saying that a knife did something bad because it stabbed someone when a person did yeah. it. The person is always the person who is responsible for the bad act, not the tool or the mechanism by which it comes about. I think that a bad thing can result from a natural process. Yeah, sure, but like, a... I but you wouldn't like ascribe any culpability to like the process, though, right? No, no. So in the same you, way that I wouldn't hold have... like Bucky responsible for it, in the same so, like in a moral it... way. What if he described as he did something wrong, but he's not responsible? Would you not just be like, well, the person who made him do it did the wrong, like they did something wrong? Yeah, they're the one who should be accountable for it. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I, I guess I'm just confused by the, like, terminology, that's all. Well, between, uh, what, well, what, just I, so clear. I, I guess it's just, when we say that, like, something is, is wrong that's happened, generally it feels like it's gonna be about, like, I, it, it yeah, like, something like, bad happened yeah. seems like the, the better way to classify uh, like, I guess, like a, a hurricane is something bad that happens, you don't really say like a hurricane is wrong. It's like a bad thing that happens. I as yeah, I'd say to... that hurricane did something bad. It didn't do something wrong. Right, but that's so. But you would say that for the robot. I mm, I don't know. I don't think I don't know. Okay, well, because yeah, the way I would break it up is just depends on their ability to even take action at all. Um. Or, like I said with the ball example, that there is a tiny form of negligence there that I think is enough for me to say you did something wrong by rolling the ball in a place and not taking care of where it is. But a robot or a hurricane or a knife, I would just be like, they are an extension of the person who's acting. Or in the case of the hurricane, it's just nature and that's an unfortunate thing. But I'd still describe each of those events as when a Terminator kills someone, it's, you know, something fucking horrible happened as a result of someone who ever made the robot. But I wouldn't say that the Terminator did did something wrong. Doesn't really doesn't really make sense uh, to me. That's why I'm saying this I on guess, behalf of Wanda. Yeah, I would have to. I guess I'd have to really think more about the distinction between bad and wrong and uh, that sort of thing. And I, I guess I hear them, and I and I think that they're similar but not the same. I don't know. I just haven't thought about it. A couple people are like, "Ugh, semantics." It's like, yeah, semantics. This this that's what that was. I I find it interesting. Uh, a lot of miscommunication will come down to semantics. So, how we use words. Good old language. But the point I was making was that that's what Wanda Stans will typically argue. It was out of her control. She should not be Either blamed way, for you it. Would, you would have to definitely present an entirely different scenario to what we saw on the show to oh, portray her as not The show, the show doesn't present, present what it believes it represent, presents. Like, that's, yeah, that's and all that's... It's one of those, this is a consequence of bad writing, is that it's not just that things don't make sense sometimes, or that we get some you know, this, that, and the other thing, but it really does have these sort of, the, it's, it's like dominoes. When you accidentally write this thing bad, it is going to lead to something else, and lead to something else, and then when you get enough dominoes down the line that we, that we kind of have now with Marvel, you don't know where the blame always lies. Is this just a product of bad writing that's not intentional? If it, it's still bad, what's in the movie still in the movie, how long can we go without acknowledging it? Should you never acknowledge it? Should you? And what, what are you going to say? What's the in-universe reason for it if it's bad writing? It's gonna, it can be confusing, and there might never be an answer because of how muddled it, bit, uh, muddled it gets. Mm. Um, and if you remember, if, if there were a mini-series for us reacting to WandaVision, it was that... Was it episode four? The scene happened. I think four was no five was the scene where the, I'm not the one with pointing the guns, which was a really great retort to yeah. a very valid point. No, it's not the only scene that destroyed a character in the show, but it was, I think, the first proper 
definitive, like, oh, shit. Oh, she knows what she's doing. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, um, no. And then, of course, it all dovetails wonderfully with they'll never know what you sacrificed oh. for them, which, like, that's... <laughs> I, you can't you can't have this line in the same scene when you've got like a woman there saying, "Hey, can I please see my child? I haven't seen them for weeks. I just want to know if they're okay." While I am temporarily pulled out of your spell that has stripped me of my capacity to choose, like possibly like we talk about violations of like basic humanity, like holy shit. Oh, and then the woman who said, "Can you just kill us, right? Like if you won't let us live, just let yeah. us die." Oh my god. <laughs> Why would you write this and then have her still be the good guy? I well, I, I need to use the loo and I'm gonna grab a drink while I do so before we mm. get into it. So I'll be I'll be right back. I'll probably be quick. No problem. Um uh, is well, you mind of... if I just chime try... Oh no, go on. Go, uh, yeah. sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say I uh took a look at the uh description for this video because I wanted to try and work out whether it was a joke or not. I don't think it is. Um and just reading through the description, because they basically give a very long description about what their argument is. Um, this might be a bit of a spoiler for the video, but it seems that this person is going to take the position that not that Wanda didn't know what she was doing, but that she knew what she was doing and she was conscious of her actions and she was in control of it, but she didn't think that she was hurting anybody. So she didn't think she was doing anything wrong. So, well, I guess oh. we'll get there in the video, but yeah. the quick vision is yeah. I would argue that that isn't representative of every piece of information we get in the show, but even if that were mm. the truth, you've taken the uh, the ability to act, the ability to choose from everyone there, which is already just, just wrong. That's already a, an incredibly massive breach, you know? I was trying to think of, what's the word for that? Like, because, is it, would yeah, slavery be suitable, or is it is it slaves um, to I like... I mean, it's slavery. You, yeah. I, I guess it is in the sense that you're forcing people against their will to do something. Um, Even if it like, is happy, you know, well, well she thinks the, it is. Well, so the, the main, well, it's, it's, it's like the reason why slavery is bad is because you strip people of their autonomy. Autonomy is like something that's super duper important uh, as like a, you know, your capacity to make choices. Um, hmm. And Wanda's is like significant in that it's your mind it's not even that you're being compelled to do things against your will with threats of violence. It's like mm. you you are incapable of making choices. Yeah. Your mind has been compromised. It's almost um, like it's almost like being a puppet. Yeah, basically. Um, it yeah, it, it it is basically a puppet. You're a puppet, and and like and and you know you think about the wrong there. It's like imagine the trauma that you have as like a normal person in the Marvel universe that like one of the heroes, the Avengers has the capacity to just, like, strip you of your humanity, and then she flew away instead of, like, facing any level of accountability. She's still out there. Trauma, like, mm. we talk about the amount of trauma that's been dealt to these people. Significant. Like, very significant. Um, and it seems like the show isn't even fully aware that that's what's happened. That, like, we have an entire town. That, this town's probably done, like, destroyed, and all of the people in it. Are like got a lot that they're gonna have to deal with over the course of their lives that's kind of irreconcilable for the fact that there are somebody who exists in the universe who can just strip you of your capacity to choose and act uh, and then got away with it <laughs> you know like mm. damn uh, and, and that you have to try and explain this to your kids who are also victims of this too it's like yeah it's it's actually pretty horrible um, the show doesn't really want to meaningfully acknowledge how awful this is as like a thing that's happened. See, my from watching like the way that I interpreted it when I was watching the show is I I got the impression that she knew that she was actively doing something. She knew that she had created that situation in some way, but and she was deluding herself about it and deluding herself yeah. that she wasn't doing anything wrong and wasn't hurting anybody. She just didn't want to admit it to herself. That was the impression that I got. I, I don't think the show did a very good job of translating that fully. They especially no, <laughs> were missing a scene where she would have said, like, I'm providing, like, they are happier than they will ever be. But even then, even then, we're even in a position then. of, like, ooh, you're, you're, you're giving them the happiness you know oh, they that's want. that's not your choice. You know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then there's the just let us die thing. <laughs> like... <laughs> I don't know why they put that in. <laughs> <laughs> well, when 
Was it was it Herald Vision that spotted the person on the outskirts who was literally crying as they tried to just peg something to a line over and over again? Uh, I think it was Vision. Um, Man, that yeah, shit is just terrifying. Like you're just trapped yeah. in that. Mm -hmm. And this is, and I think that is the confirmation that she didn't even care to check what's up with everybody here. She just assumes it's all fine. Don't worry about it, which is already yeah. in and of itself uh, fucked up. Well, imagine if the story was she, herself coming to realize, wait a minute, like, a t wait, what, a TV show? And then she starts, like, trying to figure out what's happening. She doesn't even understand how it's possible that it happened. Like, she discovers these things. I think the way to go would have been that she, she thinks they're not real. She thinks they're all made up. Yeah, that probably is the best, the best thing that like, she could have done. Um, but, yeah. And, and then, of course, when she figures out and there's level of responsibility, like, don't fly away, all right? That's like, the, she mm. can't fly away. That can't happen. Remind me. So I, yeah. I was just going to say about the kids, because I remember that we end up seeing some children at some point, right? But but even Vision says, why are there no children? Has she locked them away in their rooms and then hopes I think, that... I think that's what... Which I is arguably what worse. Was, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Because at least the others have to simulate living a life. Which I think is better than standing still in a room doing nothing, right? Mm. But because I don't think we ever found out exactly what she was doing with them, because um, we have that thing where it's like, uh, please let me see my kids or whatever. And so it's yep. like, I don't think anyone gets to confirm what the state of the kids are, but that's arguably <laughs> horrifying. Especially like. if they're like banging on the door or something in there Oof. and you can't get to them. That's got to be like, Jesus fucking Christ. She only let them out um, for Halloween. Like, what? What are we? What are we dealing with? You know, like well, that almost seems to me like the writers had an awareness of like, oh yeah, this is horrible. It's like, but yeah. out of sight, out of mind, right? <laughs> like, if you can't mm -hmm. see them, you can't think about them. I'd also uh. like to point out that Jay uh, Jay uh, messaged me. He said he does agree with me. The Matthew uh, the Matthew Broderick films being next to each other is a little strange. Um, is that so? Is that now that we've confirmed that I'm uh, now that we've you, now that we've just I'm, confirmed I'm that I'm glad I'm that um, you 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 felt the need to say that. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, it's not embarrassing at all. It's, 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 <laughs> it's not embarrassing when Jay agrees with you. It just proves that you're correct. Um, mm. Yep. But uh, yeah, that settles that. We can move forward with that I issue. Like, I like how it went from, now. oh, that's just my creative thing I had. And I was like, now that we proved that I am correct. It is an objective <laughs> aspect of the fabric of the material universe. Yes, it is. So, We're going to uh, do an uh, EFAP about that. ego one day, and it'll be in one <laughs> We got all experts mm -hmm. on this on this battle. I'm sure. I have all. I have all. EJ and I will have all the taste, and we'll let you know how the world should be. Now that'll be great. That's very but, rude. Uh, let's let's watch this video about Thor Ragnarok. This... Oh, I can't wait to watch Thor Ragnarok Com instead of this video. Completely unrelated. Uh, Jay finds Spaceballs boring, and couldn't finish Jay, Lord of the Rings. But you, old, you know what? Old, Jay has got great old, taste. I, You're right, Rags. That was the oh, that was old Jay. <laughs> I actually, I not gonna lie, I kind of agree with him on Spaceballs. Oh it just wasn't God! Me. Oh it my wasn't God! Me. At least Jay grew past that, CJ. That was the old Jay. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, though, nah, that that oh. shit is fire. Was... Let's watch. Let's watch Thor Ragnarok. Three, by Matthew Disney. Broderick, Jay. Matthew Broderick, Jay. That's also discrimination. <laughs> oh yes. what? There is Chinese. one undeniable truth, and it's this. Wanda did nothing wrong. And we oh, yeah. have proof. This evidence- We have proof? One, <laughs> one undeniable- Wait, I'm- fact. Oh, well, if they got receipts, I'm interested. I'm, I'm so confused. Because now they changed back from the red to the normal blue, so I guess this is not funny part? I think Maybe. that was just a quick meme. I don't think it's anything else. Just to, oh, so that uh, was just distracting to confuse maybe. everyone. Yes. Okay, let's continue then. It was very strange evidence shows that there are many mitigating factors that prove that Wanda is absolutely not at fault and that she is the real victim and is also the greatest hero uh, in the MCU. Oh the real God. victim? <laughs> implying the, the other real, people aren't victims? Aren't the real victims. Yeah. Damn, dude. All those people suffering you are going, not the real victims. I would argue he's going further than he even needed to. <laughs> like, no, but he all right. just said she's the victim too if he wanted to take this line, not that she's the she's, most... Oh, yeah. Most, She's also um... a victim. Oh man, okay. right. the yeah. real victim. MCU. 
if you're gonna be sarcastic, you should really warn people so there's no confusion. You're being sarcastic? No, I'm not being sarcastic. This video is 100% unbiased and honest. See what? Even when you I say that, I don't know if I believe you. I don't believe is that, you. Is that part <laughs> of the thing. meme or is that for real? I can't tell. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't know. This is the case of Wanda Maximoff versus the people, and the evidence that, that proves without any shadow people. of a doubt that she absolutely did nothing wrong. A fact. And facts have no moral judgment. Oh, don't, don't, it's don't, not, don't, you're not allowed don't, to do that. You can't wow. invoke Daredevil. <laughs> don't bring Matt Murdock into this. <laughs> he he would never defend Wanda, are you kidding me? It is in the courtroom. Yes. We state this what scene, is, not what we think Oh of man, him. this scene in Daredevil is so good. <laughs> Yeah, well, it, it applies to Wanda, you know? The judge oh. looks very cross. Not what we feel. They just are. The inciting incident that led to the controversy is the Westview event. The accusation is that in her grief and pain, Wanda took over an entire town to create her own reality. That mm -hmm. she held the residents of Westview hostage, controlling their minds to maintain her fantasy. And that the Hex was threatening the town and the rest of the world. I don't even, I, I wonder oh, yeah. even, it's not even that always she controlled their minds. Sometimes if they got a little bit uppity, she would just control their bodies against their will. And they True. would like, oh, um, so that's, ooh, boy. Part that I completely oh. forgot, uh, the hex is growing, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, well, and it's like, it. oh, that's even better. Consciously, she consciously expands it. And it like converts things as it passes through them. And mm -hmm. also you, she gave a woman like permanent, Supernatural changes as a result of that barrier. I don't know how to explain any of that, but that's got to come under some kind of crime. <laughs> like, you, you must have done, That no, can't be legal. Be, so at some point, like, just the whole... Knowledge. So the whole world would just have been the hex at some point if it just expanded Possibly. forever. Possibly, yeah. yeah. Well, so. I guess Doctor Strange would have done something, but he didn't show up in the show <laughs> for some reason. He just looks out of his room and is like, that's kind of that's kind of weird. Kind of weird, yeah. Yeah. But that is all mostly hearsay. You don't. I, hearsay. No, it isn't. It isn't it's hearsay not, at all. It's, a meme. it's not is hearsay. Actually a meme? Look, it's look, I'm, will, as... I'm willing to hear him out. All right. He's. he's <laughs> that's his point. Let's see the the essay. This is a video <laughs> essay. All right. Objection. Like hearsay. Joke, <laughs> I don't think it works. <laughs> Wrong. Wait, kidding? I'm impressed. You see, context matters, and the context is that there is a lot more to this story. Why would you say that it's seems. hearsay Some when you're saying context matters? Why, the point of hearsay is that it's something you heard from someone else. What does that well, have to do with what you're saying now? Is that just a meme? Is he arguing that you would have heard it from someone else, and you haven't got the full story, you've just got some random bullshit? I think okay. his use of hearsay is really odd, considering that we're kind of in a unique scenario that doesn't exist in reality, whereas we're all an audience watching a piece of fiction yeah. together so that doesn't it's not hearsay like we're all no, observing objective in reality in a different world so yeah. it hearsay doesn't work um it could just be a meme maybe yeah, it could be a meme. <laughs> run away or... from their problems like tony stark oh oh hang on what we what do we oh, just okay. do there Careful. this story than it seems some people run away from their problems, like Tony Stark. Ah. Okay. Run away from his problems? When did he do that? I, when, when did that happen? I <laughs> Hopefully we'll get, you know, a An bit example. more on that, because uh, I'd like to know exactly what he's referring to, yeah. I don't... Oh. <laughs> what is happening? I don't really Bad know. This video is confusing. Bad guy. Is this just like the, the wrong opinion channel? I... Uh... <laughs> Certainly video, but I, I, I maybe, because I can't remember the last time we covered this person, but I'm pretty sure we thought they were wrong then, too. You know what? I'm I'm curious. Pause it for a second. I'm like, this is Screen Crush? Yes. Screen Crush Agatha. They have a mil uh, million and a hundred thousand subscribers. Wanda, WandaVision, Agatha was right and is a better hero than Wanda. Well, that's true. Um, yeah, Wanda, yeah, I agree uh, with Agatha, that. Agatha <laughs> yeah, is WandaVision... Than Wanda. Secret bit. So I was, yeah, I was curious if they actually say that uh, Wanda is a villain in another video. Um, uh, just what it means. Break down, explain. Did the kids survive? That was a good question to ask. Was, yeah, I think it's interesting. I tried oh, um, okay. EFAP Screen Crush, and I'm not seeing. Uh, like, I don't think we covered them in. 
EFAP oh, yeah. Screen Crush. Episode 78 is the first thing that pops up. Ari, why I love the rise of Skywalker. It made me appreciate TLG more with... TLG. Um, TLG. TLG. <laughs> the Last <laughs> Jedi. Uh, that doesn't sound familiar as one of their videos, but maybe. This is... I think this is a... I think that's a Hello Greedo video. Yeah, the Rise of Skywalker made me appreciate the Last oh. Jedi even more. That's a that's a Hello Greedo. I don't know why Screen Crush pops up with that as the first. Uh, People are asking example. when it was uploaded. April twenty fifth, guys. Not 25th, an April first yeah. video. Oh, that is a good. That's a fair question. To it ask. is a fair question. Yeah. Tony Stark was a bad guy and Wanda did nothing wrong. It's an <laughs> interesting opinion. Yeah, with our channel, you could. We're not doing great, but yeah, you know, I, I think. <laughs> I think he might change our minds. I don't know. Who never accepted mm. responsibility for all the bad things he had done. So you're not allowed to show a clip of Civil War and then say <laughs> he doesn't take responsibility for the bad things he's done. Wasn't that the Isn't whole, that his whole character? character? <laughs> the movie. That's the whole point of the movie. Yeah, I'll give us like the point of his character. Wow. It, it, is, it is the point of his character, actually. He's yeah. I'd trying say, uh, to take responsibility. Like... He just doesn't know how exactly to do it best. Well, yeah, because remember, in Iron Man 1, when he finds out that his weapons were being distributed to terrorists, he shuts down arms manufacturing. Like, he, he shuts it down against the wishes of the, you know, the company and his advisors. And of course, in, like, Avengers, he joins the Avengers as a team and decides to work with them. And then, yeah, yeah Ultron was a mistake, but, like, he owns that Ultron was a mistake. He even explicitly says that Ultron was his fault. And that's what the Accords were about. It's about him trying to take responsibility. How can he say this? How can he actually... Is this a meme? <laughs> is this, this, this is like, like the worst joke. character to choose for this point. He, he probably just yeah. forgot, to be honest. I don't, I don't I, know. He probably know. did. He, he may well have. Like, people forget what happens in these movies. The bad they things say he that had they done. really oh. like them and then give it a couple of months and then nobody remembers what happens. Before you continue the video, I've uh, they let us know about the screen crush thing. We covered their Rise of Skywalker plot holes explained video in the Ghostbusters 2016 EFAP. Oh, it's, oh. A, it's that's EFAP number 91. Coverage begins at three hours and five minutes. Lukavi uh, Wivalk is a true archivist. Thank you very much for, for that bit of knowledge. That does sound fam familiar, actually, because I'm assuming. The information, like covering up the plot holes in Rise of Skywalker, that is a Herculean task. That is not easy. I'm proud of him for trying, but I assume he failed. <laughs> it was his missile that killed Wanda's parents. It was Ultron, his creation that killed Pietro, and his guilt made him. We're talking about different things here. I feel, um, but why? why so now he's he just even... defined things that have happened as a result of Tony's inventions or mishaps, like. And yeah. even this. And this, by the way, it really shoots his own argument in the foot because Tony's reaction to all of these things is wholly different oh, yeah. than Wanda's reaction yeah, to Wanda, learning about the things she did. Wanda yeah. runs away. She actually flies she away. She actually runs away. <laughs> <laughs> she really does. Yeah. She flies to a different fucking dimension to escape the police and justice. Exactly. And, 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 uh, and Iron Man's like, yeah, Sokovia Accords. You need to be put in check. Like, ah, oh, you with your avoided responsibility. What are you- Why have you chosen the opposites, sir? Uh, the opposites. And his guilt made him misguided and righteous as he spearheaded the Sokovia Accords, and those caused the Avengers to disassemble. What? But, what? Uh, <laughs> what? Um, the Sokovia Accords were going to happen no matter what. Um, I don't know. Why have we- like, like, so Steve's decision, along with several other Avengers, to be like, the government does not get to control where I go and how I use my powers. Like, that's Iron Man's fault? Well, it, The Accords were going to happen no matter what. Like, Tony the, was for them, but, like, they were going to happen. The they Accords were idea, Accords. though. No. That was the no. UN's idea. He was on board with it, though. Maybe yeah. Screen Crush forgot about them the same way the MCU did. I, well, I, yeah. I, I feel like it's a matter of you remember the broad strokes, but you don't remember the details, and so that leads you to say these things. I just, like, because this is baffling, kind of. Like, he said, like, the result of Civil War's big conflict being, like, the Avengers split apart is now Tony's fault, and it's him. Sorry. I don't even know how he drew that from not taking responsibility. Like, how did... Where was that component how in all that of that? How was Tony running away from responsibility? The whole idea was he was trying so hard to take responsibility that it kind of... There was a wedge that formed in the yeah, team. Steve felt he overstepped. 
Like, well, because Steve has a different perspective on responsibility. Mm. He he believed that the Accords was passing the blame to other people, that it was better for them to just take full ownership. Um, Yeah, I, this is... I, man, this is an interesting reframing of, like, the history of this character. Multiple movies, multiple characters. We can't just reframe one one show. No. And why no, do we no. need to do this? How does this even exonerate Wanda? Or if if all of this was true, it'd just be like, oh, I guess Tony was not that awesome too. Well, that's a good old fashioned what about isn't? But maybe he is yeah. gunning to make a point about how the world is hypocritical on this issue or something. Okay. I don't know. Well, I'm sure that we'll get it. Yeah. But all right. Still, yeah, because. Uh, what he's described as what Tony has done, there are references for her actually having done it in her show, so I don't know how he hasn't thought of that, but... And that is the reason why they lost against Thanos. And more importantly, it's the reason why Vision died. Twice. I'm not amused. Um, Me neither? Yeah, okay. I guess so. For a second there, I was like, I guess I should pause for copyright, but it's probably over the Split second after this. It's all Tony Stark's fault. He is the antagonist no, in Wanda's fault. story. He's, He's the George. antagonist in Wanda's story. Wow. Are you man? Because he's the one that killed Vision, <laughs> you see, with that simple bit of logic. It's not Thanos. Okay. <laughs> it's 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 Tony. Um even Wanda would be Tony like, Stark You're nuts. All along. What is the like ratio show on this? <laughs> high, probably. Um, Too high. It's yeah. about like, it's about eight point seventy percent positive. Yeah, it's not awesome, but it's still. It seems like more people than not were like, you know what? You're right. Tony was the villain in Wonder like, Story. Uh, eight oh. eight thousand four hundred likes, three thousand three hundred dislikes. Man. Yeah. Oh. Mm. That little witch is messing with your mind. Well, she is a little witch. <laughs> well, so, so it is funny that because this was the clip when Wanda mind controlled Bruce to turn into Hulk and rampage through a city. This is this is amazing, actually. Yeah, you're right. The layers here. So he's going after Tony because he referred to Scarlet Witch without her knowledge, by the way, as a little witch. Like, gosh, you should be put in jail for such horrors. But oh no, this scene is. The Hulk rampaging through the city, da endangering all kinds of lives, causing insane levels of property damage, terrifying a civilization, all because the villain of the film encouraged another villain of the film at the time to I fuck remember, with his head. The villain of the film was partially spawned by her influence on Tony. It, it, yeah, like, that's, yeah she, that's that too. She instilled the idea. She basically incepted Tony to create Ultron. Of course, Tony still takes responsibility for that because it was an idea that he had. But, like, she's also responsible for Ultron. And she's responsible for aiding and abetting Ultron for, like, two-thirds of the film. But that's the thing with, like, her as a character is that, like, we were sort of, you know, working on that over time of, like, how does she, you know, kind of, like, try to balance the score because she's made a lot of mistakes. But now it feels like we've totally flown off the end. Like, it's like, no, we're done. We, I mean, we're not interested in doing that anymore. Accountability, responsibility. Who is at fault in this scene? It's like, well, Scarlet mm -hmm. Witch. Well, you know, no, Tony said that she was a little witch. Okay? Oh, that was pretty mean. Gosh. Even though she, she was, didn't even yeah, hear it. Yeah, in a super high stress scenario with all these problems, so much at stake. He called her a little witch. Well, uh, oh, and also, someone's pointed out in chat. Vision wouldn't exist if not for Tony. Tony created Vision. Tony created the love of her that life. That means he gets to destroy it. <laughs> like, <that's... laughs> I just, I, I, well, and someone else pointed out, she refers to herself as the Scarlet Witch uh, at some point, right? Now like, she does. Yeah. Well, now she definitely does. She's the Scarlet Witch, yeah. It was offensive when he said, it was little. Little even was the word. She, even, though, <laughs> even though she never heard it, he probably never even told her that that's something you said. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he like I, took the time to grab this clip. Like, really? I think I think whoever edited this video was just like, "Oh, this this clip might go here." He said something mean. I, I I doubt they put much thought into it. She's not a U.S. citizen, and they oh, don't grant. Oh no, he did. Uh, she's a, she she did. is that. She, she is a soup. She has oh. like. At what point do you say, "Listen, yeah, you're a person, but like, well, holy fuck, you are, like, Jesus Christ." You can destroy the world. You're powerful. And, is and, he going to cut out the part when he says, give me a break? Well, I wonder if he's going to cut out 
Yeah, Thus, the context of this scene is that Tony is trying to explain to Steven, no uncertain terms, why this is all happening. She's incredibly mm -hmm. dangerous. She doesn't have citizenship. She's currently confined to a compound. That's pretty chill compared to how bad it could be. Yeah, because one yeah. of the one of the points that gets brought up in the movie is like, what do you call like a group of U.S. based enhanced like people? It's you know like. It's like, there's a lot of things to think about in terms of, like, the Avengers are based in, like, America, and they operate everywhere, and there are people in their team who are both, like, not human beings, and also, yeah, like, people who are immensely powerful, who are, like, they just kind of come and go, like Thor, you know, Thor, like, it's something that Ross says, where's Thor, like, do you know where he is? If I lost a nuke, there'd be consequences, like, yeah, it's, yeah, like, these are all the things that they need to balance. And like any moment, the government could be like, I'm sorry, she is capable of destroying everything. We're putting her in a prison. But they haven't done that yet. And if they keep their yeah. relationships well, remember, nice um, and chill, they won't have to. Because remember, this was like a few days after what happened in Lagos, where, you know, and obviously she didn't mean to do that. That was like an accident in the heat of battle. But still, it's like a problem that you need to deal with optically. And you have to take, like, what can we do to prevent this from happening again? We should make a big yeah. deal about this so that at least she feels pressure to certainly be more careful. Like, there's, you can't just do nothing. You, you have course. to do things. Tony says, uh, Tony thinks he's protecting her to some extent as well. He even says that. He says, I think like, so, yeah. there, are, you know, there are worse ways of protecting people, to which, of course, Steve says, like, it's internment, which, you know, if she's not allowed to leave, then yeah. Um, well, and, and, and that's why I love that conversation because yes, yeah. Steve is correct, but then Tony moves into saying, "Do you know how much fucking worse it can get? Like, do you understand mm -hmm. that this is a good yeah. thing?" Yeah, so, you know, so so especially the whole like she doesn't have the protections of a U.S. citizen either. That's like a seriously important part of what can happen to her well, as a result. Don't think about that because it's a Marvel movie, but yes, like it is relevant. Of course, it is. Give me a break! Oh, there you wow, go. He you included it. it. <laughs> yeah. You locked me in my room. Okay, first, that's an exaggeration. Second, I did it to protect you. <laughs> what, uh, what, what, what was, was that? that? What, 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 the, what the fuck what, was that what edit? What happened? <laughs> Why? What? Why? What? Was that? <laughs> I, you spent so much work on that. Why? Is that, you, is you, that like a behind the scenes thing? I don't even know yeah, what that's from. Yeah, she tripped over. That's, see, that's her green screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And something else, and then it, and it's not very good green screen either. Yeah, that was a that was a meme. <laughs> All right. Oh. He can't keep getting away with it. What can she get away with? Uh. <laughs> I'm just wondering. <laughs> and she Tony can't keep getting yeah apologize to Wanda for all the evil he caused her? Did, all the evil all he the caused evil. her? <laughs> what are you, who the fuck did Wanda <laughs> apologize to? Oh, no. All the evil? Right. <laughs> all the evil he caused her. Tony shut down his manufacturing of weapons. That was... Yeah, but he didn't say sorry for calling her a little witch. <laughs> ah, right. Did she say sorry for mind controlling him? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was one of the, the scenes that happened between... Yes, is the answer to that. Yes, she did. Yeah, she's a nice I person. thought she did, yeah. Dude, I have a feeling that if you said to this guy, like, what about all of her mind control bullshit? He'd be like, what are you talking about? Westview is what I'm what this subject's all about. And you'd be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Why? Because Tony runs away from his problems. <laughs> you sacrificed his life! You literally just show him sacrificing is... himself. Oh my How can it not this be a meme? This, this, <laughs> this, this is the thing from that show, the Crisis on Infinite Earth. This is a meme. It's the real meme. heroes are the ones who have to keep he, going. He runs away from his problems by dying to save the universe. By sacrificing his life to save the universe. He's uh, just running away from his problems. <laughs> Actually, fuck you. You wonder, Actually, like, Actually, fuck you. How does that get rationalized in his head? Does he think that, like, that was a cop out solution? And that to run toward your problems would have been working way? Like, what the hell did. What? <laughs> oh, my God. God. <laughs> what? I guess he's saying. I guess he's saying maybe he should have gone to therapy rather than kill himself. I don't know. <laughs> Why? I don't. Because I don't understand. I can't, uh, I can't, can't, away. Hey, remember, Green Arrow said, like, "Diet is easy." <laughs> you can't. Diet is easy. You, you cannot pair this statement with this image. This is insane. <laughs>
That's just, I do. Yeah, it feels it, a little it, off. Yes, it feels off. Running his problems, walk. and his guilt keeps blundering things for everyone else. His guilt his keeps guilt blundering keeps things. Blundering things. <laughs> That's this an awkward sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. His guilt keeps blundering his things. His guilt is why Iron Man exists, and Iron Man has saved the world countless times. The Avengers wouldn't exist if not for him as well as like a team. Uh -huh. His he, guilt is so, what prompted him to. It was because it was. I can't believe I've forgotten his Yusuf. Yusuf, but, right? Yeah, yeah Yusuf. Yeah. Yeah. But like, he's... Yusuf is a big driver in the first one. Oh, sorry, go, go for it. No, I was going to say, like, he's criticizing Tony Stark for supposedly not, uh, you know, making amends for his actions and taking responsibility and stuff. But then he's saying that this, he's literally giving this example of where Tony did do that exact thing and then said, oh, his guilt gets in the way. It's his whole life is about him making amends. Like that's what Iron Man was. He created weapons that were killing innocent people, so he decided to shut down manufacturing and become a superhero to save them. Yinsen, that was his name. Yeah. Well, maybe um, Jensen. maybe that's his point. Uh, CJ is that the component that is necessary for taking responsibility is to know you did something wrong, and he's like, you know what, Iron Man, you're doing great on that part, but you never take responsibility because you end up just making things worse. It's like, oh. <laughs> Okay. What about all the good things he's done, though? <laughs> just wondering. Also, we're not going to talk about like Wanda and her fluid. guilt. We're just for doing what she did in the show. Tony, Tony flew a nuke through a wormhole with no real expectation that he was going to come back. Yeah. That was like, just him trying to run away from his problems. He was running away from it. Yeah, <laughs> Never that's get right. me. You guys will deal with the Chitauri. I'm going to go. Running the away. <laughs> Someone in chat said, this is what happens when you simp so hard for Wanda, you have to shift the blame to Tony Stark. <laughs> we, we spent some time on Tony. He didn't have anything to do with this. Poor mm -hmm. guy. He's like, yeah, I in. didn't even think it was Tony. After he died. It's so mm. bizarre, because normally I would just immediately say, oh, this is a meme. But he was very clear to point out, this is not a meme. This is very true, what I'm saying right now. So oh, I, I guess it's meant to be correct. But then the choice of visuals with the things he's <laughs> saying is fucking insane. Certainly makes you wonder. Unlike Tony, Wanda did not run away from her grief. She uh, created a pocket reality where she could deal with what? her pain. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> how, how is that not running away? Uh, I feel like this is textbook <laughs> definition of running away from grief. You literally recreate your dead loved one to pretend they're not dead at all. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> she didn't run away, she just created her own universe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the peak uh, amount of running away. It's 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 simultaneously <laughs> both not run it it like Tony oh, Stark boy. is simultaneously not running away and getting called running away, and he's also giving up his life and everything that Sorry. he would have had otherwise. And she is keeping her life, a version of her life that she wants, and she is doing it at the expense of a bunch oh. of other people whose consent she never took into question. She what is she's not she, what is she sacrificing? She is she is doing the opposite of coping with loss. She is trying to pretend that the loss didn't happen. Uh -huh. Is the exact opposite of grieving. And she's making she's trying people to pretend pay it didn't it. happen. Which she's I think was the point. One. I think that yeah. was stage the, the, one. Like I, I would argue that the, the creators of this show would be like, yeah, this this wasn't her gr dealing with the grief properly. This is her yeah, trying I'm to pretty sure that would avoid be. it. Yeah. yeah. The the whole point of her arc is realizing that she needed how because you can't simultaneously say, well, yeah, she took it down, so she did the right thing, and also say by creating it, she's doing the right thing. You can't hold these two positions at the same time; they are contradictory. Healthy and mostly harmless way. <laughs> mostly <laughs> harmless, <laughs> like on a on a cosmic <laughs> scale. I guess a meme. <laughs> like, what I are know. we talking about here? This is not real. Oh, but the thing just, is, this is, this is with nuts. what CJ said, it sounds like his argument's going to be that the residents, uh, as far as she was concerned, were happy. That's going to be his argument. No, this is a meme. I don't believe that this is a real <laughs> video anymore. I don't. I just Bring, don't. I think that. Dare I remind you of the Hall of Fame of EFAB quotes? The prob I know, I know. It's just that this one, he sh it's like everything he says is the opposite of reality. Like, I don't know. It. And then he shows the worst clips to explain his points. <laughs> well, some of them are in line with what he's trying to say, but some of them you're like, why did you choose that one? And you have to try and 
jump into his shoes and well it might just be that he didn't put as much thought into the visuals he just grabbed well, the images well and... someone completely different wrote and edited this so maybe yeah that no, also, it says yeah. it below the video oh, it does? Okay. yeah well because someone could be crazy enough to say like yeah tony just fucking killed himself to get out of dealing with all of this being his fault or something <laughs> you just be like holy shit dude <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I I feel like this video might just be clickbait. Like they might just be yeah. taking well, this ridiculous position it... in order to provoke people for views. Well, you're right. Because now is the time, right? Wanda standing is at like peak. So this is like the video mm. that you want to put out. But right? like, Wanda's awesome Wanda fans cool. approve of this, then, right? They think these are the good arguments. I think that. Well, honestly, I think what's happened at this point is like a lot of the Wanda stands are like, yeah, she is killing people, and I'm like, that's going to be entertaining or something to watch. Like, it's going to be, you know, I'll stand her no matter what because I like her. I feel like that's what it's morphed into. I don't know what the. I don't, but I could be wrong. I was going to say this whole video is about how she's not like at fault. You can go into the next film totally morally in the clear, guys. Don't worry about mm. it. It's fine. Don't, don't. It's fine. It's yeah, fine. I mean, we made the video that explains I it. I mean, all. I mean, even if this video is a joke, like, even if it's intended to, if it, even if it is bait, there are still people, and I've seen it online, there are still people that argue this stuff unironically. So we can at least treat this as a statement of, of their arguments and well, yeah, well, we've, comment on it we've in that way. Them. that it's totally real. We, we dealt with that when we did the WandaVision coverage. I know that there were people on Twitter oh, yeah? being like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the, there, were, there were people who were furious at the idea that she, they would be like, you've completely misunderstood the point of the show. She is dealing with grief. And we're just sitting here like, wow. <laughs> incredible. And yeah, that's going to be mm. the consistent argument a lot of these people make. So, look, whether or not the person who wrote this intended it to be sincere or not, these are apparently the desired arguments for people who do defend her. Um, the fact that the ratio of the video is that high, uh, staggering. It sucks. Mm. This, this, it's, it, it seems like such a very cut and dry moral issue <laughs> that you shouldn't have to have these. It, mm, it sucks. She didn't get to I say expect, goodbye I, to I this. I expect better she... of humanity. Maybe I shouldn't. She could deal with her pain in a healthy and mostly harmless way. She didn't get to say goodbye to Vision. She needed that proper closure. Oh, that's sorry. It, that happens, man. I, I, that doesn't excuse anything. I don't yeah, even know that... She didn't even... She said goodbye to a constructed version of him from her memory, correct? Yeah, the real Vision is white Vision. That's the real Vision. Um, well, and but, and then, he right? got his memory wiped and then added in by this Vision, which is just her memory of Vision. Yeah, so it's it's no matter what, Vision is dead in like, or at least original Vision is dead. I guess it's just func functionally what will the difference be? That's what but the like, X was about. Yeah, yeah. I, like a lot of people don't get to say goodbye properly. Like, yeah, it sucks. Um, yeah, it sucks. Yeah, doesn't mean you doesn't should. Mean you uh, to, like, mm, yeah. yeah. It wasn't about Wanda taking a whole town hostage. Not at all. Well, yes, those people did not agree. It was to them. No. It was to them. <laughs> was even saying these people didn't agree. You, like, like, you yeah, could no. say that again, Wanda Jesus. taking a whole town hostage, not at all. Yes, those people did not agree to become part of Wanda's reality warping therapy, but it wasn't like Wanda was hurting them or anything. Stop! Oh my God. Stop! <laughs> Stop! Stop talking! Uh, Stop literally your mouth. crying in pain! Jesus Ow. Christ! Wow! Fucking hell! It was not like it's she not... hurt anyone. Oh my wow. God! I literally, literally would rather have die. Say that, yeah, they'd rather die. Um, my yeah, they showed man. a picture of someone with a tear rolling down their cheek. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the thing. I'm starting to, to think children. that it is definitely true that the person who spoke is different from the person <laughs> who made the visuals. Oh uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the whoever wrote and edited this, it's not the guy in the video. Yeah, and that's what I meant. There is a big he disconnection the, here. Oh, your fucking he, he blue polo. The one that was like choking the people because she was so well, like the, upset. We've been over that's this. That's not really hurting them. Even if he was right, right, and all of them, when they came out of the trance, said, that was wonderful, I loved that, I would do it again. It's like, okay, but what she did was still wrong, because she didn't... But uh, she uh, that's, that. Well, that's she kind of the point, her. right? Like, we'd still define what she did was wrong, she just took agency away from everybody against the... Well, without even them knowing. Um, presumably they would have been confused as fuck as to what was going on, they had to gradually piece it together, right? Because, like, they seem to know, by the time you hit the season finale, what, what is happening here. Um, because they have brief moments of lucidity, or they... Or that they're, they're conscious, but everything they say and do is out of their control. 
which is um, fucking terrifying, by the way. I'm just Even stunned, because, like, this is the same argument that actual slave owners used to use. They're happy. Oh, no. <laughs> to, to justify keeping yeah, their look slaves. look at them out there in the field. They're happy. Look, they're singing. They're singing. Yeah. They're having a great time. It's great. Look at them. We're doing them a favor. Outside in the sun. It's great. It's a it's tough world out there. Head. We're just keeping them safe. None of it is my own. It hurts. It hurts. So God, Editor, you're, you're not helping. Yeah, you're, no, not, you're helping. not helping. <laughs> <laughs> he literally just it, said it, it hurts. It you hurts. Think he, do you think like this guy fucked his girlfriend or something, and he's trying to he's trying to set him up? <laughs> this is this is the point where I take someone who, um, with their consent, of course, take someone who enjoyed this video, and you stop him here at this point and say, "What have you learned? Just so far, what have you learned about this video?" That they were Tell right. That Wanda was correct to do everything <laughs> she did. Of course. Much. It's probably just a case of the Mondays. Am I right? Who is the editor helping? Not I was going to say, what is maker? the point the editor's making? I'm not even sure uh, anymore. Yeah. Editor is, is the it... same person who wrote the script, apparently. So there was an idea there somewhere, but I don't understand it. That's, that's why I, I now have a conspiracy theory that this writer-editor was trying to set up the host to look bad. <laughs> yeah, he, get he was like, oh, dude, do you want to read this one out for me? And he's like, why can't you do it? He's like, "Ah, you know. Uh, I have no. diarrhea. Uh, no, no, yeah, no, just stand there in front of the Matthew Broderick so with your blue polo and just say these words. It'll be great. Look I'll like take care of the visuals, story. buddy. I'll take care of it. He actually yeah, does be, look like fine. a Blockbuster store knockoff employee. I think, I think that's, that's the, the idea. Uh, yeah, I think for. that's Oh, the, is that as, okay. the theme? That does make sense. In perspective here, did Peter Parker and Doctor Strange ask the world if they wanted to be brainwashed? No, <laughs> that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> that was that's a bad, bad thing that happened. That's a bad thing. Most famous person in the entire world. This self-centered teenager wanted to erase the world. Oh, careful. Okay, you know, listen, okay, let's be, let's be very frank. Peter Parker made, in, in this movie, Peter Parker made probably one of the greatest sacrifices that you could possibly make yeah. short of dying. That and he in didn't some benefit ways, from yeah, at all. It was everyone absolutely. else would benefit. He made an incredible, he made what we call an actual sacrifice. Not only did you give up everything that you love and cherish. You did it, and you did it knowing that no one would ever know that you did it. And, to and go that, to bat, is a, that is a profound sacrifice to make. To go to the to bat <clears throat> for the film, a little more on this point, the whole reason he does this spell, the reason he's convinced into doing it, is because of the damage it's doing to his friends, not him. Yes. Mm, Once yeah. he learns that it mm. is going to damage his friend's life potentially, that's when he wants to go through with this. Um, his 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 reasons for doing this spell are definitely not selfish ones. I'm sorry if you forgot the film. I suppose you did, but he is not. Peter Parker is not selfish. Even, He's not a selfish um, person. When speaking to the the lady on the on the highway, uh, he suggests getting. MJ and Ned in, and then she eventually says, you as well, and then he's like, no, 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 Ned and MJ, and Just then she says, you as well, because mm -hmm. he saves her. Like, you, you, saying he's self-centered is like, mm, don't know about Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Don't like memory. It. Just so he could get By the way, you know who is self-centered? Hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. probably, mm. probably the crazy witch that took advantage of everybody for her own benefit. Probably that one. I if you call her a witch, that's fucked up. <laughs> I didn't call her a little witch, it's fine. Teenager wanted thing. to erase the world's memory just so he could get into college. No, I, yeah, right. No, it wasn't, no, it wasn't for uh, him. It wasn't it was for him, it was for them. These clips are much louder than your commentary. True enough. Oh god, yeah, especially that one. You're right, oh, yeah, yeah, the balance is strange. Her teeth look weird. Oh, what's, what's going on now? This happens at one point in the show, I think? I can't remember. Oh wait, that's from the show? I thought we were doing a meme or something. It no, might be I, think he's, I think they're rewinding the footage to go back to wherever they... Wherever they're going. <laughs> wherever we're going, I guess. What? And these two dum-dums almost uh, broke reality because... You might... <sighs> that's okay. It doesn't matter how much you tell me about Doctor Strange and Peter Parker. Literally irrelevant. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. make it irrelevant. Yeah, still doesn't make it any better. What is this so like? Oh yeah, well, fucking Doctor Doom is more evil. <laughs> it's like what? 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 What, what, about what are we doing? Frank outside who pushed over little Timmy, that little fucker. Yeah, yeah he Captain... didn't apologize. 
Captain Good what? Guy America. He he probably it's, fucking end up to work late. It's yeah, just bastard. what about ism, but it's not even true. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Like That's you can't do kind. what about ism if the thing that you're trying to what about ism about isn't even true. God, it's it's painful, but we'll carry on, I guess. Because of their terrible communication skills, they did this without asking anyone. Because Ter you That's almost bad, softened but... it by saying it was because of terrible communication skills, but whatever. Well, wait, hang As on. It were... wasn't even that that did it. It was a difference of basically ethics. I know. It's 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 how he phrases it. Yeah. Um. So let's just pull back to three fifty here. This broke reality because of their terrible communication skills. They did this without. So it's. Yeah, you're right. It's the complete opposite, actually. They make this positions very clear. They are incongruent with each other. They, you cannot pursue the uh, solution of Doctor Strange and Peter Parker at the same time. Oh, Only no. one of them can take place, and so they fight. That's uh, mm -hmm. good old-fashioned, you know, character-driven drama, yeah. Without asking anyone, because they were so high on their power that they thought themselves to be gods. didn't ask anybody gods. though, so like, yeah. what the hell is this? Really? Sorry, they, they were so high What's on their power they thought themselves to be god. The... I feel like you're yeah, describing no. Wanda. Holy Sounds shit. Like, yeah. Like, Wanda actually yeah, they're... altered reality to fit exactly like her whims, just for her benefit. Yeah, can you imagine, like, someone creating an entire reality full of people so that they could do what you want them to do because of your incredible ego? Yeah, like, that's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> feeling like a god indeed. What a, what a crazy thing that you just made up on spot there that we've definitely not seen. The Ten Commandments of Wanda, thou shalt have no other, other witches before me. You wrongs don't level. make a right, Bart. What does this have to do? <laughs> Why Wait, would you put that? this here? Why would you put this here? Also, I, I like The Simpsons 1989 Walt Disney. It's like, yeah, I Walt guess so. Disney. I guess technically, <laughs> but... Uh. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Dad! Do wrongs make a right, Lisa? I fucking love that clip. <laughs> 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 oh god, I love old Simpsons. It's, it's just, uh, oh, it's fantastic. I'm glad there was some good in this video. Oh yeah. And oh yeah, Stephen, we didn't forget about you, buddy. Don't you worry, we're gonna. I don't care. It's not relevant. Didn't we just do yeah. it? What? I thought we, we just did it. Oh no, that was just Peter, I guess. Okay. Peter. All right. That was just Peter. Magical that butt very soon. And did the residents of Westview have such a bad experience? Wanda entertained them with magic shows. <laughs> yeah, it's what? literally what? the it's, it's <laughs> slave owner saying that they're singing in the fields. That's literally what he. Oh my god! I entertained them with magical shows. I entertained them with magic shows. Oh my god! Oh fuck. Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> Someone the they back. were forced oh, to applaud. Please. They. Oh, oh, my inside of their skulls, they were crying and begging for death. But oh, on the outside, <laughs> they were clapping and smiling. Ooh, magic. Ooh. They weren't allowed oh, to be unimpressed Jesus or bored. Christ. Well, how Ooh, does no. that work? Oh, like, God. you are forced to clap, you are forced to smile. That's, this is okay. That's like, that's like saying that people love Stalin because they wouldn't stop clapping. <laughs> that's right, yeah. <laughs> this is like no propaganda for him. Wanda. This is like the kind of thing she would release in her own world to benefit her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a super meta. Oh, what the Such a bad experience. Wanda entertained them with magic shows, dinners. They celebrated Halloween. This <laughs> they, they celebrated, celebrated Halloween. Halloween. You can't just celebrate Halloween nice. without being enslaved by an evil witch. You can't just do that. <laughs> oh no, I think he's about to say that the town was in like an economic recession. Uh oh. Guy was unemployed before all of this, and Wanda gave him a job. <laughs> Great. No, this, this is, is a meme. I don't joke. care anymore. This has got to yeah, be a joke. Care. This has got to be a I'm joke. Mario <laughs> Kart. <laughs> this, this, oh, no, this can't be real. This has to. I know that they are. They see. <laughs> I, I know the words they said, but I don't. I this has to be a joke. My my outlook of the the human race requires that I believe this is a joke. You you would lose too much faith in humanity if this were real, yeah. This this I is would. what you would make. This is what we would make as an April Fool's joke. It yeah. is. <laughs> the, the, I can't. <laughs> keeps running away. Snap. <laughs> Yeah, like it's it's the it's the kind of thing that the evil dictator says. Oh, Everyone dude, has a purpose in the dominion.
Yeah. Everybody has a job in the empire. Everyone has a role to play. Like what when when the god emperor on his golden throne, he gave everyone jobs. Everyone has a purpose to serve for humanity. It's great. It's amazing. The problem is like that section <laughs> about no way home sounds legitimately like just a normal bad argument. It doesn't sound like a parody. Cuz like mm -hmm. we 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 know people who have the exact same argument that he made. This is what I mean. Like this video is confusing. She's a job creator. See, that's the problem with people this nowadays. Has be they always focus a on the negative, creator. forgetting about the this good is times. A job. Gotta, gotta stay positive. Anymore, you know. right. Positive vibes only. Wanda had no idea that what she was doing might be causing anyone harm. She is a victim of Shows her own the scene magic. Where she sees there you them go. Cut. Okay. So, this is why I'm not 100% sure this is a meme. I'm not sure yes. either. I just This is the standard argument <sighs> people make for Wanda. Mm. And of Agatha's manipulations. It, Agatha didn't do anything. Like what what did Agatha do in this season, if you remember? If, apparently she killed the dog. We have no idea why she just did that. Well, remember in the, in the montage for the song, the first thing in the 50s she showed up with some flowers. Uh in the Pretty 60s evil. she messed around with the magic trick. Pretty evil. Um, in the oh. 70s, uh, she made Pietro there. It's evil. And then in the 80s, oh, I think, no, in the 70s, she killed the dog. Evil. And then, like, in the 80s, she made the thing that hit him there. And then in the 90s, she asked her a question on the Modern Family parody. Mm. And, and then she eventually she revealed she was here to sap her powers because she wants to be a big old powerful witch. And then, yeah. And the, and the only reason her. that happened is because she created the hex. That was what drew her there. Yep. So really, right. you conclude she attempted to stop Scarlet Witch, at least <laughs> for her own desires, but I mean, ultimately is the hero, and she was defeated and placed into a permanent horrifying cage. So, uh, yeah. But apparently it was, wrong. you gotta consider that Agatha is the true villain. That doesn't even make sense. Didn't you say you had a video saying that Agatha was the hero? Uh, she said she's the better villain than uh da, 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 da. a villain. I'll double uh no better hero. Let me double check. Screen crush Agatha. Agatha was right and is a better hero than Wanda. We just said that she's the reason we should we she's the Five person that we should blame for like the bad things that happened in Westview. She didn't enslave the people, though. No, she did. Well, but that's my. <laughs> I'm so confused because, like, not only did she not do any of this shit, but you've also called Agatha. You, the thumbnail says Agatha was right. What is Agatha happening? Agatha was right. The like thumbnail this... and the title. They they double down on it. Is this because they have different writers and different videos, and they don't even agree with each other? Maybe. Some might use this moment as proof that Wanda was well aware of what she was doing. Because it Stay is. Stay out of my home. Yeah, she, she gets told that she's taken people enslaved. What is the argument going to be? You don't bother me. I won't bother you. I wish it could be that simple. Uh, I pause for the safety, but yeah, this is the scene where everything fell apart. You've taken an entire town hostage. But in truth, Wanda was dealing with intruders. Vision bought the house in West. Uh, you can do both what? of those. Stop bringing up something what? that no, doesn't cancel I, no, the. No, no, what no, happened in the rest? No, like, because no, he cut no. it off. What? How? Sorry, how did she respond to what he said? She, so oh, she, he says. That's I'm not the one. Yeah, yeah he's, he says, You've enslaved an entire town. She says, I'm not the one with the guns, director. Yeah, so we're not that. We're not as powerful as you. I know. How about that? Um, it's it's a horrific thing to say that doesn't in any way counter and it it's it's, it's a, a really total bad moment. The bad writer wrote that it was terrible, and then she mind controls all the people there to aim their guns at the director, which is just like so you're a villain. <laughs> but uh, no, apparently she was dealing with intruders. Which makes Wanda a legal resident. Sword spied on her. They invaded her uh, no, privacy. This they isn't, even no, wow. No, no, oh no, they is... spied on her. Oh she, no. She she bought that little plot of land for a house, not the entire fucking town. Yeah, I don't see how. All I did was. <laughs> yeah, of course the government is gonna look at you if you commit a massive crime. 
That pesky government. <laughs> what is this? What is this? She enslaved the whole town. And he's like, well, the government spied on her. She didn't want the government to look at her. It's like, it's too bad. I don't care what Wanda wants. Well, even if all of this were true, even if they'd only spied on... What does that have to do with her having stolen people? What does that have to... Like, how do those things connect? Why are they relevant to each other? What, what, what Does one justify the other? I don't understand. ...attacked her. Take the shot. She had both the moral and legal yeah. right to protect her home. <laughs> no, the, the, stop it! Wow. Stop it! The moral <laughs> and legal right to... Holy shit. I don't, I don't think uh, she has either of those, but I don't know why you're so no. confident. Like, what? Is this, is, I, mean, I cannot mm. believe this. So I have to point something out because I find it very interesting. So the Agatha, Agatha was right video. Uh, that one was written by the guy who's hosting this video, who did not write this video. Oh. So, the speaker the of this video. Is one hosting that one? Is he not annoyed? I was gonna I, say. I would assume he would be. Yeah, I because, because be. if I had to fucking read this shit out, I'd be like, I need to talk to you. <laughs> like, we, there is yeah. a problem with the script. I because just want to say that someone posted an insanely <laughs> good meme, and I'm going to show every one of you because it's so amazing. Again, this is the about... whole... <laughs> yeah. again, this is the argument that slave owners use. Like, the government can't take my slaves. I, 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 yeah, it was her, they, it's, that. It's you know what? All of that was her property. That's uh, that was his counter. So, and yeah, I mean. You you use your magic power to take a town hostage and keep people from the outside away so no one could peep in on your horrible misdoings. And then when people try and stop you, uh, just uh, the, the nerve that they had to try and stop Wanda. Unbelievable. I mean, she committed her crime before they did anything. So what's your defense then? Yeah, so if we roll back like 10 seconds before the scene happens, what what then? What what do you say to defend to that in your world, I guess? That's bizarre. Yeah, my lawn. And the moment Wanda realized that the residents of Westview are not having fun anymore, she let them go. Not having anymore. fun anymore. <laughs> it, it took so quite as a long bit as she persuading. So it's fine as long as like how what what some of them what does she literally one hundred percent of them were having a great time? She didn't even ask. She didn't check. She didn't care. It doesn't matter. You can't just give people a good time against their will. You're not allowed to do that. That's why I'm have, them them having them enjoying it is literally irrelevant. I well, what I'm saying is that like she couldn't even you couldn't even argue that she was under the impression falsely that they all were happy to be here. She has no idea. She didn't even like look into that because if well, she did she... she'd find them all screaming and telling them please kill me so i could escape this well didn't vision like tell her at one point that it was fucked up and she just went eh yeah she she keeps like shutting everyone out who says it's fucked up until uh they tell her that they, they literally wanted to kill them so they can escape it that's when she and if you remember she doesn't release them at first she instead strangles them all yep have fun again, goddammit. Have <laughs> fun, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> oh. Go! I love you now, go! But she couldn't just free them right away because of Vision and the kids. Uh, why, why, why could she But they both made that? up. What are you, like, they don't, they're not <laughs> real. <laughs> not they're not real. real. Also, even if they were real, free the people. Not even an excuse if they were real. I don't even know what, like, what what is the argument here? It's just like she can't just let him go because of these guys. It's like yeah, but she literally does. It's like so, she could have done this at any point anyway. Like your argument doesn't even work. These guys survive her opening the gates and closing them. So she could have done it any, but like you can't just say like oh well, she only did it once she could do it without these guys dying. It's like well, no, this was the same scenario the whole time. She watched Vision die. By the way, the kids didn't even arrive until like episode five or six or whatever. Yeah, they were later. They, yeah, she had to be in the show, get pregnant, deliver them, and then they had to grow up to that level. And it was like, what, the 90s episode when they finally got to that I don't that remember, age? but I just know that this argument doesn't even work for many reasons. I twice, and she couldn't do it a third time, not without her proper closure. Can anyone begrudge a mother who wanted to say goodbye to her family? 
I think not. <laughs> okay, so... Can anyone begrudge a man who just wants to create the greatest country for his people? I mean, can anyone begrudge a man for that? I don't think, and I don't think any of us can. I'd just be I mean, curious what he what he's willing for her to get away with at this point under that uh, under that yeah. justification. How, how far could she go? How yeah? How evil does she have to? How much suffering and pain does she have to inflict on people before he goes? I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe the sads aren't really enough of a justification. Wanda had to kill her would-be husband to save half the universe. Her brother was killed while saving the world. She sacrificed so much for this planet, so at the very least, a few what people in a small town could suffer for, for a few- No, 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 oh. you wow. can't say- No, wow. no, those- She didn't sacrifice them. They made the sacrifice. So, you are- He's doing so a when far quad. <laughs> So, yeah, here's the key part of a sacrifice, is that you have to give up something that you want that is yours to give, right? When you sacrifice your life, you're giving away something that is yours and that is profoundly important to you. Arguably the most profound thing you could ever give away to someone, or, or just to, to give away, right? If you can't, it's not a sacrifice if other people are losing the things. I'm it, kind of a little bit I, blown I away that, like, simultaneously, he's doing the, oh, fuck, what was his name? The guy about Daenerys? You know, the one that said s s ending slavery is worth killing a million people? Yezin? I can't... His name I was Yezin, so, yeah. I think so, yeah, Yezin, Yezin, yeah. And to be fair, not just the specifics of in obliterating King's Landing, an enormous city, like... Just, uh, just this that was an easy choice, and he's basically saying it's easy math. She helped save the universe. She uh, did it. Interesting point about her brother. Why does this happen? Well, because Ultron tried to kill Hawkeye. Why did that happen? Well, because hmm. Ultron went wonky. Why did that happen? Well, b because Iron Man didn't make it perfectly, and why did he try to make it? It's like, well, because Wanda fucked with his brain. I have to- I actually have to piss. I can't believe this. <laughs> so, uh, you could have argued that old Piet Piotr died because of her. But, uh, sure, she saved the world, okay? It's fine. She sacrificed so much for this planet, so at the very least, a few people in a small town can suffer for a few days to let her deal with her grief. Oh my god, <laughs> no! What kind of horseshit is this? You do, like... <laughs> it, it's just like, it's so much easier to write off as like, you definitely don't believe it. But like, imagine he did. I'm, I'm just, I'm baffled. <laughs> <laughs> a small price to pay for salvation. Wanda no! is a god- No! <laughs> no, because it wasn't necessary. Oh my god. ...like being with magic powers that can break reality. She's not like normal people, and super people have unique ways of processing their issues. But how yeah, do oh care? Oh my god. What does that even <laughs> I don't- So I now don't they're not care. accountable to the same moral standards. Oh my god. This is like what Civil War's all about, really. <laughs> like, oh, because they have powers, they're just exempt from the law, I guess. And ethics. ...to deal with her crisis. Did she break reality? No. Whoa. Did she break reality? I'm sure. I'm sure all the people trapped in a body inside of some magic spell felt like it was broken reality. Uh, it's a pretty low bar. Also, well, yes, that is a low bar. It's only bad if you break reality. What the fuck is this? What's funny is the people who went through the Westview fucking event. They're probably living normal lives now, and you could probably have said to them, "By the way, Spider-Man and Doctor Strange—they just destroyed reality temporarily, and it went all back to normal." Which one would you rather have experienced, that or Westview? And I'm sure they'd be like, well, I didn't the even... The one I can verify happened? I was going to say, like, they, they don't even know. They'd just be like, what are you even talking... Well, not Westview. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I was just, I was trapped in my own body as a magic slave to some evil witch. What are you talking about, this different reality that I don't... Yeah, they wouldn't what? even believe you, you're right. They'd just be like, wouldn't believe you're you. fucking talking shit. Yeah. What do you mean? <laughs> Did she go crazy? Like you're just pulling my leg. Easy you're trying to make me feel better. Is he, is he saying that she, she, she wasn't that bad because she didn't do what the Hulk did in Age no. of Ultron, the thing that she caused? Did she go crazy and kill people in her rage? Nope. Did she caused, she caused that. that. <laughs>
Okay. She'd go all House of M like all of you wanted her to do. No, again. I don't know she what needed. I don't care. I'm assuming it's, uh, that's the name of the comic it's where she goes nuts, comic, I'm assuming. Thing. Is that what we're going to get in, in Multiverse of Madness? An adaptation of House of M? What is, what is House of M? Who's M? Is it Moriarty? Moriarty. Yes. <laughs> The House, house of, of Moriar Moriarty. Oh, rascal. You have to say it like Sean Connery. Moriarty. Oh. My Diaries in Berlin. I like that movie. It's very those. good. We should watch those. We need to watch the three Indiana Jones movies that they made. All three. All, All three, three of them. The first, the second, and the third. Yeah, that's right. Especially the one, uh, the last one. Indiana Jones and the Jones and the Last Jones? Crusade. <laughs> Jones. Indiana Jones. <laughs> Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Indiana Jones. He fought in a tank against the Nazis. <laughs> the Nazis. <laughs> the Nazis get crushed by the tank. Boot smooth. He just went it. Kumar, He wanted a horse. The egg of the covenant. But the Nazis <laughs> in the desert. Uh. Needed to see her lover one last time to bury him and get closure. But what did she get instead? This. Oh God, that is heartbreaking. No one should ever see their loved one in such a state, especially not okay. when they're like, I mean, Yeah, sure. Um, sure, nice, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Vision was their friend, but the Avengers gave his body away like he was trash or used parts. Well. Uh, well. It wasn't really up to them, I don't think. I don't even, do they tell us how that worked logistically? I don't even know. I don't think they do. Because it would it be Tony Stark's sort of property. Happened. I think we may have brought this up. It's like, would it have ended up with Sword, or would it have ended up... I don't even know where it would end up, actually. Yeah, because I... <sighs> hmm. As long as... Once Vision dies, I assume that the property goes back to Tony Stark. I assume Stark, yeah. While, while he's alive, of course, he's a thinking agent, so that doesn't apply. But when he dies, his body belongs to Tony Stark, and I assume Stark would give it to Sword? Because that's, you know, we, we need we should probably figure out how Vision worked and how the stone and everything. I don't know why he wouldn't just do it himself, though. Yeah, that is true. There is that. I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe he wanted to play nice with the organization. I don't know. Um, well, because the really weird part is that they tell us they reassemble him and erase his memory. And it's like, if anyone was going to reassemble Vision, surely it would have been Stark and Banner. I don't know who else would do it. Because they... Are familiar with vision in general, and they also have access yeah. to um, like Wakandan shit, presumably. And they got the five years, so yeah, I think that's just a part that doesn't make any sense. And it would be like if he took a chance in this video to say, How fucked up is it that Tony Stark doesn't pay Falcon? and it's like, Yeah, well, he would have, it's just the writers said that's what happened. They didn't bury him, they didn't give his vibranium box. Why the fuck would you bury him? He's worth like a bazillion trillion dollars. No offense. <laughs> like, I yeah. know he's a person, but, like... I mean, yeah, he... Well, yeah, he was... In a sense that he is no longer a person in that this is just a material form. Then. Yeah, I mean, it's loads of vibranium. It's and he had the ability to, like, phase through matter. Like, I I mean, he ain't gonna be buried. Uh, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, like, I get... I get the respect of a fallen comrade, but, like, this this body, this shell, is, like, insane. This isn't... This, this isn't just, like, a human's corpse you know we know how those work pretty well um you can we bury those and it's great but this is this is a very special body i mean he you know correctly uh utilized he's like one of the most threatening weapons i don't know just like if if you had like mr nuke and he's just a friend of yours in this cartoon world that he dies like we should probably not just bury the nuke somewhere random i don't know we probably keep a hold of it you know because it's kind of dangerous it just, man, if you were a grave robber and you stumbled across Vision, what a payday. Mm. Body to Wakanda. Heck, they didn't even bother fixing him. Because we didn't He's think dead. of it? No, well, they I couldn't. I, I'm just... fix him? What do you, wait, what do you mean fix? Well, you he know? was what fixed by Sword. That's kind of why it's dumb that they wrote it that way. Like, Sword managed to put him back together, apparently. Because like, when he says this, I wonder if he thinks that if you just, like, you physically put him back together, he just, like, turns into vision, old vision again? I don't know. Well, I, I understand what you're saying, because, like, it's it's really up to the writers at that point. Because, like, we would all assume when he gets the, the jam pulled out of his fucking brain and all of that's scrambled, it's like, yeah, vision's dead and gone. But then if the writers said, like, no, you just need to, you know, get a screwdriver, fiddle around, and he'll be fine, we'd be like, mm. oh. 
Okay. I guess. Because it wouldn't be very satisfying, narratively speaking, but I guess you it's up to you as sci-fi writers to make whatever rules you want. Um, and Magneto could save him, yeah. I wonder if Magneto's got any familiarity with, like, engineering. Huh. Or you just sort of want something to happen and then just, you know, it does. No, they just gave him to sword, and we all know how that worked out. The Avengers may not. I mean, well, to be well... fair, what, like, well, why would he assume sword or evil? This is like, um, yeah, it's this is like Shield and Hydra. Like, there's, you know, is that is it unwat? Who can you trust? If 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 it's a bad decision when someone has lied to you about their intentions, I don't know. Like, what do? <laughs> I mean, anyone can lie to you, so it's just like, you should just never give anything to anybody, I guess. Sword did need Wanda's magic yeah. energy to fix him. That's true, I don't... I, but, like, again, that's just the writer's choices, you know? I, I don't know, it's very confusing. I wasn't happy seeing Come Vision. I don't think any of us were. It looked very strange, I didn't... I was not a fan, yeah. Not have known that sword were bad guys, but remember the last time they gave something precious to another secret organization? You know, Loki Scepter. Yeah, so the art they gave it to Shield. It ended up with Hydra. Yeah, That's not their fault. Yeah, that was someone else giving it to a different organization. What does that have to do with this? In fact, like, do we ever get like? I don't know if this would stretch anyone's memories here, but like, what is the continuity for that scepter? Because they have it at the end of Avengers, and then by. By Avengers 2. Apparently it was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That was the explanation for it. Do you know what it was, or do you just only know that? I don't know. I, I don't know. And also, I'm checked out of this, like, video. I don't care. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. It's it's a meme. I'll wake you up for the next one, don't worry. That's yeah, okay. I'll play Mario Kart in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just go back to my comfort game and... Yeah. But yeah, if... If S.H.I.E.L.D. have the scepter and it ends up with Hydra because Hydra are in S.H.I.E.L.D. without anyone's knowledge, how the hell is that anyone's fault of the good guys for giving up the, the scepter? I don't understand. The fact that it happened to contain the Mind Stone. The Avengers had it, but instead of giving it to Thor to take back to Asgard, they gave that powerful mind-controlling weapon to S.H.I.E.L.D. S.H.I.E.L.D. who- You know what happens to the Tesseract yeah. when it goes to Asgard? Loki fucking steals it back and then it ends up going to Thanos. So, can't trust anyone these yeah, days. Yeah, you just can't fucking hard. trust anybody. Yeah. We're developing Tesseract-powered weapons at the same- Yeah, it's like, Thor fucks off with it to Magic Land, and at least S.H.I.E.L.D.'s here on Earth, and you could monitor what exactly. they're doing. You can, go, you can go knock on the door and say, hey, uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, let's take- Oh, still there? Good. Gotcha. We'll be back next week. Good job. See you on your progress. Time. Yes. Yeah, we didn't have to separate. open a Bifrost to get here. You were just- we just. I drove here in my Chevrolet, so it wasn't that <laughs> much of a big deal. We're developing Tesseract-powered weapons at the same time. S.H.I.E.L.D., that organization that- That's not- That's a neutral act. Them developing weapons based on the- The Tesseract. Does it, I mean, fucking Samuel Jackson makes it clear, we're doing this because we need more firepower, because we're getting hopelessly outgunned by everything that's outside of Earth. Yeah. And also, how, how is that like- he that's, this... He's implying that's evil. This is like, what? Does he extend this to giving anything to Wakanda, the secret country? You can't give them anything now? I'm sure, no, they're the good guys because they've kept all of their advancements to themselves. They haven't oh, yeah, you know, given it to true. anyone else. That's right. safe right yeah. there. See, that's secure. Ah, uh, yeah. This is a really dumb argument. That was infiltrated by Hydra for decades. So the Avengers did not learn that. their lesson. And now they gave away their friend's body to yet another organization that turned out to be evil. To be fair, that's just the I shitty know, writers, no, though. <laughs> Yeah, shield isn't sword doesn't seem to be evil. It first off, great still, but um, <laughs> it really, seem, it really <laughs> seems like like I'm I'm rooting for sword and new vision. You have to stop this crazy woman from enslaving well, this town. You remember? Because we we I remember us saying that we were like sword's gonna be the leader of sword is gonna be made evil. That that guy, director guy, and we were we were all wondering how they would do it. And he just kind of goes nuts and says, we have to kill everyone now. And then he tries to shoot the children. And we were like, oh. Yeah, that's just bizarre. But that's him, not Sword. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm pretty sure Sword is fine. Because Sword is, was founded by uh, the Rambo woman from Captain Marvel. And then, like, several people who work there are good guys. I don't think they're doing a Hydra situation. They were just doing, no, this guy is just an asshole. And now he's, uh, I'm assuming, in prison or whatever.
I assume so, yeah. So, like, yeah, to say that it's an evil organization isn't really accurate. Crimes against imaginary children. To be fair, I don't consider it a strictly evil act to send in Cum Vision to destroy the Scarlet Witch because she's enslaved a town and refuses to let them that's go. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah, that that's that's my part. I'm like, yeah, I'm rooting for Vision here. Thank God Sword was able to create an entity powerful enough to challenge Wanda. Well, yeah, and unfortunately, he takes too long to crush his skull. I didn't think I'd ever say that sentence, but <laughs> here we are. And now she's, she's going to go on to kill many people in her new movie, thanks to his inability to crush his skull. And I'm pretty sure it was Tony's decision because he clearly had a hidden agenda against Wanda from the start. Where do you get this nonsense? When Go. they met. When they met, she was a villain. I mean, yeah, you probably. I wouldn't be surprised if you had a bias against her. <laughs> That's fine. She's earned it. Go. Well, it's not true. You know more than Google? Well, congratulations. The Avengers are <laughs> terrible friends. And I'm talking about you, Clint. You were one of Wanda's only friends. You know how it feels to lose the people you love. But did Clint help Wanda? Not at all. Did Clint oh. enslave a fucking town? Also, or did he kill the that's... Yakuza? I don't. It's <laughs> not <laughs> Clint's fault. It's the writer's fault if Clint doesn't care about it. You know what I mean? Like this feels weird to put the blame on character decisions that are out of character. Like, yeah, yeah I guess. Where he... we, where's the fault? Is it the the weird, bizarre writing, or mm. it's? Mm. Because if he says, like, oh, Doctor Strange didn't even show up to try and help, and it's going to be like, yeah, but we know that they prevented that from happening in the writing room. They were like, fuck that guy, keep him out. It's like, so that would... It feels weird to be like, oh, yes. Fuck you, Doctor Strange, or whatever. I don't know. I, I mean, he hasn't said that. I just... The same kind of thing. All of this could have been easily averted with some true friendship and therapy. If I thought Wanda did something wrong, then she would be completely justified in her actions. But of course, she did nothing wrong. She dealt with her pain and grief in a way that made sense to her. And now that she's better, she can focus on saving the multiverse. And <laughs> 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 you, could, you could say the same thing about, like, Norman Bates. When they wrote this, were they under the impression she was a good guy in this movie? Focus on saving the multiverse. <laughs> because, to be fair, this was before the overt public things have happened with knowing she's evil in this movie. Mm. You may have thought that she's going to be a good guy. Focus on saving the multiverse. And no, she isn't going to break the multiverse because you can't break what's already been broken. Okay, so if you can repair something... So, no, it, it was broken and then they fixed it. So that means it can be broken again. Yeah. And things and you, can be broken in multiple ways. You can break... You break can break something more. like a binary, necessarily. <laughs> yeah, you can, can be break a little broken and really broken. Like, I could crack my windshield or I could shatter it. All right? These are both broken... But one is not nearly as broken as the other. And why why is she saving the multiverse if nothing's wrong with it? Like, well, I guess because he... So he's under the impression that the end of No Way Home didn't even happen then. Because... I they, can believe that he does not have access to that basic information. Yes. Yeah, he might Based have the, left the I've theater a bit early. Yeah. He and what's watched all this the crap? trailer about Wanda being dangerous and unstable, huh? Wanda proved that she is a true hero who deserves our respect. Look at Wanda right here. What a hero. She's, She's forced to kill her lover with guy? one hand while holding mm. Thanos off with the well, other. No, so, okay, so, because because this is probably the thing that's worth He's clarifying. Back. Well, He's back. yeah, sure. <laughs> this has nothing to do with this video. This is just an observation that's probably worth putting out there. Like, I liked Wanda. I actually liked her a lot. I thought that uh, mm. she was a good character. I thought they were doing something with her and heading, sending her down a path that was interesting. This is a really good payoff for the character. Um, this is like a meaningful choice that she's it's made. one of the here. best parts of Infinity uh, War, this bit. Yeah. This mm. was before then, they ruined her. Um, yeah. yeah. This was, then they made her own show. She got blue shelled. <laughs> well, yeah. Because like, also, like in Endgame, it's a really cool moment as well when she fights Thanos because it's like, yeah, she's furious. This is, it just happened for her. She's very, very angry. And she's got, and then you see like the glimpse of, oh, uh oh, like when she's really pissed off, like, oh shit, she's actually quite dangerous. But like, this is, this is a character who was, she was pretty well characterized, like even up until Endgame. It was really WandaVision that derailed everything. So when you're saying, oh, she just shot a laser at Thanos, it's like, that's, Nah, you gotta give it way more credit than that. This is like a really meaningful choice that she's made here. 
I mean, it's, um, I would argue he is. That's that's like the goal of this, bringing this up. If it, listen to the way he inflects as well, he's he's no, trying to make no, a big no, deal no. out of this. Rag said, "Oh, he's shooting a laser at someone." Oh, in a kind of a dismissive way. Well, um, well that, because this I is disagree. in the sense that she's doing the she's doing something that she should be doing she's that doing you would expect her to do. Heroic, yeah. Um, I, she's doing something very heroic here. She like is actually making the trade. That she never wanted to, but she will to save the universe. To to contextualize it, maybe to convince you, Rags, mm -hmm. I would argue that the super courageous heroic part is destroying the person she loves, and by shooting the that laser part, at Thanos, yeah. it's preventing him from stopping her. Yeah. Like, Giving... so it's it's all encompassed into I'm killing someone I love to save the world. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. Like this is very good for her character. Um, this is something that you could really work with in a better version of One Division. I guess that's oh, yeah. what I want to. That's what we thought so it I would think be. It gets, I guess that's because amidst the sea of like kind of the Wanda discourse at this point, which I think is pretty impossible to like meaningfully like broach, then it kind of gets lost in the mess of everything. It's like Wanda was actually a pretty great character, or or, or at the very least, she was the start of a great character for as. Because she wasn't like at the forefront at this time. Um, it's just a shame that now that she is at the forefront, it's botched. She's in like a really bad place where, yeah. and it seems like it's only going to get worse. And it's going to be very hard to pull that character back and um, make her into something really good again. That's kind of that's um yeah that's um, that's um, uh it's just disappointing. That's all. Talking about like potential going forward and. Including, by the way, like the you referenced the end game moment. It's like it's it's all great, but I feel like the film points out the problem in that scene with Thanos' response. I don't even know who you are. It's like uh, that doesn't that's not great, yeah, is it? Because, well, it's not because he doesn't know who you are because this isn't the Thanos that did it. This is lame Thanos. New character, this shitty yeah, Thanos. This is yeah. Thanos. <laughs> Thanos wants to shred the universe down to its last atom, whatever that means, and, and it's create a new like one. It's sad like, because I think that if she were the one to turn up to kill him on the farm, he'd probably accept it, and it would be a really interesting he scene. He'd be like, yeah. "I know yeah, why you're doing I, what you're I doing." Was, yeah. yeah, I did what I did, but I I oh, was a, yeah a dick, yeah. but I kind of felt like I, I had he, to. But I get it. He respects her after um what she does in Infinity War. Oh, dude, that so was like, the yeah. aspect of Thanos that I think is possibly one of the best elements of him in Infinity War: the testing of people's like fortitude. And yeah, so well, it's, it's cool. a really. It's a great parallel because in Thanos' mind, he thinks that he did the same thing with Gamora, but of course he didn't, right? Like, it's it's different because, um, but it, it means the same thing to him, essentially, of sacrificing somebody you, you love um, to advance, like, the uh, a better good. Of course, the difference here is that, like, Vision said that he was okay with this. Like, this is, a, you know, he's, he's, he's also making the sacrifice, too, so it's super meaningful for Vision. Um, Meaning, yeah, meaningful to Vision as well because he's making the trade so that he can save the universe. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to make it clear. It's like Wanda was a good character, <laughs> yeah, um, sure. and Elizabeth Olsen is a fantastic actress. So, like, given given the right material, yeah. and hell, well, given given the so bad much. given the bad material, right? Like, she can even try to make the bad material into something better. Of course, there's only so much you can do, right? But it's just, it's a shame. I think that would be kind of the, the tone. It's just, it's a shame. Just on that, um, that topic of Thanos, by the way, he, it's, it's, it's with all of them, right? Like, his test with Star-Lord, Star-Lord comes through, and I think he says interesting, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. tests Loki yeah. with Thor, Loki fails, he tests, yeah. um, why am I forgetting? Fucking third one. There's another one. Oh yeah, uh, Gamora with... Uh, Nebula, and she fails because he yeah. he's basically threatening to kill or torture these loved ones, and then seeing if they can hold their resolve. And uh, obviously, in Scarlet Witch, he sees her do, like you said, the 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 absolute reflection of what he sees himself having done. Infinity War yeah. is better than Endgame for many reasons. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, I saw someone in chat saying I'm cringing at the fact that you're taking this as earnest arguments. I feel sorry. No, I'm. I guess I'm jealous for you is... that you have no idea that people make these arguments earnestly. Like, yeah. Well, it, I will say I'm, I'm sweet, back tomorrow. Sweet this summer point. child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say I've I've spotted a lot of these before. Some of these are like the one where it's like Tony Stark runs away from his problem shows the snap. Like I've never seen that before, but I have seen 
uh, all of the other characters' responsibility levels arguments before. I've seen that she's experiencing grief, so leave her alone arguments before. I've seen the, um, the, the members of Westview were happy as far as she knew before. Mm. This is a lot of the standard Wanda defense train stuff. However, with they one just, hand, making really bad arguments, yep. but they seem to be making them. And it's good to cover them in prep for what we're about to get in mm. Multiverse of Madness. While holding yeah. Thanos off with the other. And then Thanos is like, give me the Infinity Gauntlet, and Scarlet Witch is... I'm going to pause a lot for this, because I have no idea what the copyright is for whatever this is. No. Yeah. I mean, that's uh. probably a good idea. Like, I don't think so. Shh. And what were the other so-called heroes doing in the meanwhile? Licking their wounds after stupidly bum-rushing Thanos. I what? Stupidly bum-rushing? Stupidly bum-rushing? He is they meters away Thanos. from the final Infinity Stone. They literally delayed right it there. for her. They gave her as much time as they could. You yeah. can see her in the background. They, they all fall trying to delay Thanos. How is that not exactly what you think they should do? Okay. Rushing Thanos. I mean, they knew this guy beat both Hawk and Thor. What the hell were they thinking? Running they're out heroes. Of they're trying they're they're to delay him. They don't have a chance. <laughs> like, fucking moron. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Half so the universe. Fucking, fucking hell. <laughs> Why would you say so-called heroes as they're the sacrificing fuck, themselves to try to delay Thanos? Isn't that heroic? Standing for Wanda makes you discount the rest of the Avengers even as heroes. They're not even heroes. Fuck They're not me. even bad at being heroes. They're just not even. They don't even qualify. Like it, it's just categorically Jeez. true that Thanos took longer to get to her as a result of them than if they had just not done anything. Maybe if you cover superhero stuff, you should probably check what a superhero is because you apparently don't understand how this works. Where's he going to find Fucking the definition idiots. for that? Oh, I don't know. Everywhere? <laughs> Everywhere. <laughs> Wow. A pack of stupid idiots. What is this idiot doing firing bullets at a titan? What, what, he's got a gun, he's, what do you want him to do, man? <laughs> what is he's he gonna fucking, do? And he's, what, what, what? I don't see why you wouldn't I would try. Like you to, yeah, offer yeah. me an alternative. I mean, how would he know that bullets wouldn't work? Why, like, literally, why wouldn't he try? Do they know anything about Thanos at this point other than, like, he's powerful as fuck and he's... He's beaten the Asgardians. It's just like, yeah, if you're if you're Bucky and you have a gun, I don't know, man. You're shooting. <laughs> and plus, shooting Thanos out. like makes an act to stop the bullets, so it implies that it, they might have affected him. I don't. Oh I mean, yeah. I don't know, man. I what what would what would remember what he can bleed. Be doing. There's a chance. And where the. F is Thor. He's spending the whole movie saying he's gonna kill Thanos. But when it's time to put an axe to the head, he goes AWOL. Was he so you're literally showing him destroying the ships that are landing to deploy soldiers. I feel like that's that's, that's important as well. Sleepy? Did he forget? Wanda would have easily tore Thanos limb from limb if she wasn't busy sacrificing Vision. But she didn't later. Also, yeah, but that he doesn't ha he has the stones. So uh, the, the, we don't know that Wanda could have done that to him while he has the gauntlet. Uh, but to be honest with you, there's a good chance you could argue that's just more of a writing flaw. <laughs> because th this is the problem with defeating Thanos. There's lots of ways they could have done it but didn't do it. But to be fair, he didn't miss. He, he didn't. Yeah. Like, as you can clearly see. Yeah, like, I, I don't know, like, I don't think this is, a f like, this is reasonable to me, that the axe hit him in the torso, like, yeah, he threw it, threw it from really far away, I mean, you know, a good shot, unfortunately it's not a kill shot. Here's the truth. Wanda is the real victim here. Wanda didn't know the true limits the of her powers. Victim. She had to learn on the go. She didn't even know she was a magic user. This just proves how amazing what? she is. She She's didn't a even know she was witch. a magic user? She that doesn't did, change that's... what her powers are, just what they're called, essentially, right? Does that have any impact on what her powers are? Or just her awareness of... Yeah, what to call I... them, or their source. Yeah, You're right, yeah like... I don't see what this actually changes. Like, it's not... It, I don't even know what you'd call them before, other than her powers. Now that we just know that some people call it magic and spells, that's just terminology. Well, no, I mean, if, is, right? if, you, if you now, like, can use runes because you have some knowledge of runes, I, like, I don't even know how you explain it, but I mean, it is different now, right? Because before it was just telekinesis, essentially, and mind control. Now but could it's she like, do that all along, or did she... Well, I mean, 
I think the answer is yes. I guess it's you just, draw the possibility well, if you um if to, you weren't aware, right? Like to you're, partially you're correct like, oh, you, Friggy, we're just waiting for the writers to tell us no, she didn't do a yeah, telekinesis, she did a telekinetic spell. You'd be like Oh yeah, right. Probability hexes, right? That just was, just yeah, just replacing things we know she can do and calling them a spell and it's just like okay. Like, I guess yeah, it would be that you I expand see... it, right? Like it's got big retcon energy. Her. Um, well, I guess, right, but it's like a retcon more in line with what they probably would have done originally if they had more confidence that they could do it. But I, I, mean, don't, I, don't, still, I don't even right? know, because, like, saying that the power came from the... The power came from her, and it was amplified by the stone, when it seemed to us that they strictly made it it came from the stone when they introduced it. Well, there was, was no mention of, oh, like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, she was always a spellcaster. That was definitely a retcon, for sure. Yeah, so... You know, now it's, but but as Rags was saying, it's just like, the fact that she knows the source of her power is different than what she thought, does that change the ethical nature of the horrors that she's committed to? It's like, oh, not really? No, I guess, I guess nope. it's the idea that maybe if she has a perspective that, oh, I'm a witch, then it means that it changes her perspective on what she can do, which then influences what she will do, right? Like, if you... Oh yeah, well, you well, we see that happen. Like, with the yeah, that's, that's all I was saying. But yeah, I mean, I, I agree, right? Like, just because you learn something different doesn't mean it's like, oh, well, that means you can do whatever you want. Well, because he's yeah, appealing a lot, and past behavior anyway. the Wanda sounds like to appeal to this a lot. She just didn't, she wasn't aware. She was not aware. It's yeah. like, no, we saw this that she was aware. But, but this is the thing. This video is a meme, so. Well, that argument isn't a meme. Whether no, or not it mean, is a meme. If this it's a meme, then meme. why does it hurt so much? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know, but it's a meme. <laughs> If only there was a magical well, school to help so her control her powers. Wizard. Wait, there is. Carmer Taj. But did Wanda get a letter to join? Wanda had no idea that- To be fair, they don't contact magic users. They contact- isn't it just people? And then they teach them how to harness the magic? Well, because they're sorcerers, right? You can- anybody can be a sorcerer, seemingly. But, like, yeah. only like Scarlet Witch is Scarlet Witch. Yeah, like, they didn't email her, like, you- I don't even know that they- Her magic is, like- not like anything they've got or at least it's, it's like visually speaking it's a very different thing though to be fair he's highlighting that yeah there probably should have been a fun conversation between Wanda and Doctor Strange by now yeah but I guess we're gonna get it now oh, I'm sure it'll, it'll be really fun I'm sure it'll, it'll be great be very <laughs> fun I can't yes. wait as penned by the writer of Loki that sounds like a um, standard MCU scene before all this shit happened, though you'd, you'd have, like, him saying, like, you know, she says, like, you know, want to use your magic or whatever, then, and then Doctor Strange is like, that's not, not magic, this is magic. And then she's like, you know, that's, that's your magic. Yeah, like, and they have that little, uh, a really fun fight in the middle of an actual fight to balance the drama and the comedy. She's part of the big three club. What big three? Androids, aliens, and wizards. And that's no, all. No, she's Dr. not a wizard. I thought we covered this. She's a witch. This. She's a witch. She's a little witch, and according Dr. to Strange some some villains. It's, uh, it's incredible that they don't care for these categories. Frame. That they just put them all into wizard. That is, I would say, that was offensive. Well, I think it is offensive. It's not apt. It doesn't describe them properly. I'm offended. Strange's fault. It's in his job description to keep watch over other powerful magic users. Well, he wasn't allowed to come to the show. So he's white. So he wasn't allowed to. He's a, a man. A man. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I think I think man. it was more so he's a man. It's normally because they're yeah yeah it, it's m normally because they're white, but this time it's because he's a man. It it is hard to keep track of the reasons. So. What is your job exactly besides making balloon animals? Strange knew about Wanda. I mean, she was pretty well known. Some will even say she was wrongly infamous. Stephen is. Wait, whoa! Did you just say wrongly infamous? Wrongly infamous. Yeah. Uh, I mm -hmm. think after this, she certainly ain't wrongly infamous. And before this, she did have an oopsie so i'm right, right. Yeah, like, going both ways if she yeah. decided the lives in those buildings were worth less than the lives of the people on the ground and the the you know the building had my family in it i ain't gonna think of her as wrongly infamous uh obviously her actions in age of ultron as well are fucking horrible so bad at his job that he never bothered investigating the nature of wanda's powers or you know, I'm going to agree it with him on that one. Doesn't matter how far down you, how far down you tear Doctor Strange, it doesn't. No, yeah, that that is true. I'm also agreeing mm -hmm. with just the, the the. You know the scene you get 
in a good old Ragnarok, where Strange just talks to Thor when he arrives on Earth immediately, and he's put Loki in a sense of stasis because he's like, I don't know what the power level or intentions of you guys are. I find that well, satisfying actually, in terms of, well, because he's also got Odin. Is it, I, I appreciate that compared to nothing at all, which is how he dealt with Scarlet Witch. Well, hold on. Let's think about the timeline, though, right? Because Doctor Strange came around after Civil War, so this was after she was in hiding. Would he have been able to find her if he, if he was trying to? Would I assume he, have, he like, can. I don't know what the limits of his uh, potential are. The fact that he could, like... Into the smell for it yet. Yeah, because remember, he, he gets to Loki and Thor as they arrive. Like, I don't even know oh, what. True, true, true. Yeah. I assume it's some kind of ability to just monitor the world. Like, they've never actually told us how he does right, it, but I assume... How, how is he going to find Wanda in the movie, if not through some means that he has to find her, right? Like, in the upcoming movie, because she's in hiding. Presumably, yeah, he's yeah, going to yeah, have yeah, some yeah. way of doing it. Yeah, um, some way to do it. And if not, we deserve context for why that's not happened before. But, of course, they don't give it in, in WandaVision. They could have given us a throwaway line. They've done it before course, in their movies. The thing with the MCU is that it doesn't really care about, like, the world or continuity until it has an opportunity to just have the characters interact. Like, if they yeah. if they can't afford it, or if they're just not interested in doing that at any given time, then they won't interact. But then when they, they want them to, they will. It's just kind of how it works. Sometimes it wouldn't make more sense to have Wong show up in Westview. I mean, someone... Should have come Someone up there. Been, yeah. Someone, a yeah. Yeah, yeah. person, because Wong is Sorcerer Supreme. So if not Strange, it would have been Wong. Yeah, then I, I'll take either. Or I'll take maybe Stephen was yeah. just jealous because he wanted to be the only magical <laughs> hero out. Sorry, this is a meme. Wow, uh, <laughs> I keep reminding myself. this is a joke. Right. Um... <laughs> out there. After all, we saw how he reacted when Wong was made Sorcerer Supreme. No, he got it on a technicality because I blipped for five years. Which, so, I don't I even mean, know if... What's I mean, wrong with him saying that? I mean, it's yeah. true. Well, he's probably... So, he, he seems frustrated, which is fine, but I mean, it's it's a reality that I think even <laughs> Strange would have to accept that that's, that's reasonable. If you're gone for five years, someone else needs to be Sorcerer Supreme. That's fine with me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and plus, it's, it's okay to want something nice for yourself. <laughs> like, if we're gonna, yeah. it's I okay to want like, to be Sorcerer Supreme. It's okay. I would, I would doubt that he is particularly upset that Wong, somebody who is highly competent, is like the Sorcerer Supreme. I doubt that yeah. really upsets him. I don't think he has lost and any moments I, of sleep over it. I don't know. No. I would even <laughs> concede, like, Doctor Strange is very ego-driven. That's fine. It's part of his character. Mm -hmm. Like, is it, yeah. or maybe like I said, it's okay to want to be Sorcerer Supreme. Supreme. I don't, I don't think he's jealous of Scarlet Supreme Witch. Well. She's a fucking psychopath. <laughs> yeah, that's, not, that's not good. We don't want to be Scarlet Witch. No, we know. We want to be Sorcerer Supreme, not Scarlet Witch. Oh, well, congratulations. If I'd been here, then you I burned the place down. Agatha was drawn to Westview after sensing Wanda's magic. So how come Doctor Strange didn't sense it? And Wanda we that's because the writers. The I don't know. <laughs> He wasn't allowed to. Wasn't allowed. Sorry, this is a joke. I, I'm, I'm, well, I'm to be fair, I don't know why you'd say that one's a joke, because that's that's an no, argument know, that is valid until you know about meta shit. No, I guess it's just because I am at this point like convinced that this has to be satire. Like, it has to be. Because there's just so many, like... Uh, there are, like, real arguments that people make mixed in here, but, like, the way that the visuals are cut together... And just some of the things he said, like, oh, those people suffering for a few days, so that, like, it's got to be a joke. It has to be. Some people are genuinely this stupid. And <laughs> I was going to say, just go visit so, the comment section. You'll find comments being like, I don't agree that she did nothing wrong. And it's like, so you are taking this seriously. A lot of people are taking this video very seriously. This is kind of what I'm getting I'm at. Sure I'm that sure that the video yeah. makers want people to take this seriously. Well, no, I'm saying I think that they made a meme, and whether it gets taken seriously or not is part of the joke. The reason why I'm not convinced it's a meme yet is because of the delivery of the video I think the delivery overall. is what's making me think it's a meme. The way that he says some it's... of his points, it's like, are you, you're saying this like with a smile on your face almost, you know? like Maybe like it's the contrast between the presenter and the editing. Yeah. Mm, maybe. maybe that's what's creating like it's not intended to have this quality. It's just poorly edited. You have to wonder if if the guy presenting knew the intentions for this video or if he just he was told to deliver it earnestly. Yeah. Because like so I think it fits no matter though. context you've got. And then the more important part is that these arguments are taken seriously by many, many people, thousands yeah. even. 
Kong is no better as well. Instead of being the magic boss, no I am the Wizard King. And stopping Strange from potentially messing with reality breaking spells, he turns a blind eye. That is actually true, and that's a yeah, bad part does. of the film. Yes, yeah, so it's bad. I can't say anything else about that. Well, Wanda's still evil, evil though. Of, of all people, Wanda's yeah. <laughs> like hyper responsible. That's, fucking... that's probably the way to define him. The He's trailer hyper, hyper. had the better take. Where he says, yeah, don't cast it. Yeah, don't do it. Um, while the film is like, don't involve me. It's like, wait, what yeah. the fuck? Uh, that's not who Wong is. Wong is very and much also, like balanced to principle. And plus, yeah. Wong would know that the nature of the spell is one such that you can't just, like, not be a part of it. Yeah, he will you be a part I of it, yeah. I can't leave you out. I can't, I can't leave you out. That's part of the spell. You're included. Well, and it's oh, that, yeah. that horrible infection that marvel can have sometimes a lot of things can have it but where they strange says like do you remember the blah 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 and then he goes no and he goes see and it's like so well, that's meant to be a joke and fun and everything but like you just revealed that you fucked with his head without his knowledge yeah <laughs> there's that concept comes up in a different show and there's a different reaction to such a thing compared to the way they make it all fun in this movie mm-hmm he also, as the Sorcerer Supreme, did not sense the trouble in Westview. And that's because he's too busy with because his illegal underground cage. No, I was going to say, this, is, this mm. is solid criticism of the character, but only as a result of shitty writing. Um, so I can't, yeah. I can't really fault him keep for using this argument. Show, yeah. I, yeah. It's like a, you just have to acknowledge that the reason for it is an out-of-universe reason. I, well, None of this even absolves Wanda, though. No, this of course. That's like, the important part. Though yeah. I, I will say, like, you know, those incoming arguments that people will experience directly from the, the, the mind and voice of Fringy. Nobody, I don't think you'd take anyone seriously being like, Fringy, it's not the characters that are making bad decisions, it's the writers. I think you'd just be like, well, yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> We're just tracing yeah, them back to... Yeah, yeah, so... Exactly. I know reason, why they did it, but it doesn't yeah, save yeah. them. But like, in the isolation, choices. I'm happy to say, you are correct, it is dumb that Wong and Doc Strange don't turn up, but it doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. for your overall point in this video. You're just highlighting more bad writing. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Fights. Mm -hmm. Neither Strange nor Wong tried to stop Wanda. Same goes for every. Why would they? She's not doing anything wrong. That's right. Yeah, why would you want to stop her? Why would they wrong. be? Why would they be so discriminatory? Because this is a meme. Three other hero. <laughs> this is everybody's fault but mine. Meaning they are all incompetent. <laughs> or... <laughs> I'm not laughing at your video, I'm laughing at The Simpsons. Uh, I need to rewatch classic Simpsons, man. It's just gold. Yeah. So good. They knew that Wanda had it under control. Some people might say- Wait, that whoa, 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 whoa. Under control. Oh. under control? What problem was Wait, is he saying control? that's why they didn't turn up? You can't that Wanda... cut to this image, though. Like, you know? Hang on. But mine. Meaning they are all incompetent, or they knew that Wanda had it under control. Some people might say that Wanda was tormenting the people of Westview, like this moment Yeah, the people here. of Westview you would say that. You have to stop her! Stop who? She's in... I'm just gonna pause for safety... My head. It was never confirmed that this guy was referring to Wanda, and... <laughs> <laughs> wow. What? <laughs> Wait, is he saying this Agatha? Maybe. It's not 100% confirmed. And that means that there is a chance that it was not Wanda. There's a chance you know, there wasn't. Well, I mean, like, I guess tech on a on a super technical level, it is possible that it wasn't Wanda, and everybody was just wrong about everything, despite no, I mean, no, all that no. they said. And no, at the end, no the, rational the end. person can look at that scenario and think it wasn't Wanda. Well, yeah, that's Agatha, ridiculous. Agatha explicitly says. And you could be like, she's lying, but she's obviously not. When um, when like <laughs> some of the residents are like, "Hey, can you let us out?" All she okay. says is like, "They're your puppets." That's what she says. I just I'm cut the strings. If if your argument is when when Agatha reveal revealio the the scene where she does that and they all start complaining, and if your argument is, well, she's not revealing Wanda's damage; she is damaging them herself and making them feel as though it's Wanda that's doing it. Like if that was your argument, I'd still be like, that doesn't absolve Wanda of anything. Yeah. Also, where's that scene? Well, yeah, I mean, that that's just a really generous interpretation to the point of being like, what the fuck are you even yeah, referencing? Yeah, like, how did you... Yeah, exactly. We have, to, we have to divorce ourselves so far from the material at this point. You might as well make anything up that you want. 1% chance that he is our enemy. We have to... Also, it was already happening before <laughs> Agatha turned up. Oh, I guess he would argue, yeah, but you don't know that they were in pain at that point, or some shit. Take it as an absolute certainty. 
It was also, Agatha. This is not I can't. This you is not you can't logic, be fucking so. kidding. Me. <laughs> Come on. That's there's. He's like, yeah, but you can't know. Tortured the residents. If we, we want to have a discussion about the nature of knowledge and basic epistemology and how we can be sure about things, we can have that. But I don't think Screen Crush is ready to have that discussion. <laughs> I just think he's saying that all of the pain and torture stuff was Agatha's doing to make Wanda feel like she's guilty of something, but at the same time, she still enslaved everybody, even if they were all really happy. We've been over this. She yes, confessed. it doesn't even matter what they felt about it. It wasn't her thing. You can't just say that. It's been Agatha all I hate this fucking no. song. She was clearly messing with the residents. She exploited Wanda's fragile mental state, tricking her into believing- Yeah, that's the argument then. He thinks that all the pain and suffering elements were caused by Agatha, not by Wanda. I mean that Ralph Boner was Quicksilver, Can and that's just a terrible a thing to do, to using this Boner place. to give us a multiversal Boner. Boner. <laughs> and Agatha tricked Vision, pretending to be under mind control, manipulating him into disturbing Wanda. That's her MO. What's, what it, did, but what was the lie? This is annoying. Vision... It's like, uh, there's a sliver of, of, like, evidence that this could be the actual narrative, but it's just not at all supported by anything else. But it doesn't even absolve Wanda. Like, I don't even know why we're trying this. But... Yeah, if this is the best that you can come up with, we are in trouble. And by I we, I mean you. <laughs> she can't be trusted. There you have it, folks. Conclusive proof. This is the no. ultimate proof that Wanda did nothing wrong. Ultimate it was Agatha proof. all proof. along. No. No. Do that no. Again. And I killed Sparky too. That's all the proof we need. And that's and that's not truth. proof. This is pathetic. If this <laughs> is proof, this is awful. I mean, it's just like the, the character being like, I did anything that was evil, it was me. <laughs> like, oh, all right, fine. With some cheese on it. Also, are we forgetting about all the important things that happened thanks to the Westview incident? First, Wanda discovered that her powers not are magic, irrelevant. and she's a irrelevant. Not relevant. She discovered not relevant. herself to be even more powerful after yep, she yeah, the tortured Nazis people. Yeah, the Nazis to the moon. <laughs> that does not this excuse really, anything. This is going to be really age poorly, I imagine. Yeah, because she's going to kill yeah. everybody <laughs> with oh, the new powers. She's the Scarlet Witch, and then she gets the evil book, and she starts reading the evil book, and I'm sure that that will prompt some behavior. Mm -hmm. in the subsequent film, the film to come out. <laughs> that, uh, wit. Hmm. And that will be very important in the years to come. Because Wanda now knows how powerful she is, she can protect the world and but the you whole can... multiverse. Yeah, this is stupid. He it's like, oh, a, a good, good thing might happen as a result of some bad thing. That mm. retroactively means it's not a bad... No, it doesn't. That's not how it works. Everything exists in its own context. You can't retroactively make someone non... You can't take away their moral position. After the fact, that's not how it works. That's not how any Second, of this works. Monica Rambeau now has powers, so she gets to be a space hero. Next, Agatha Harkness is oh, an she, evil witch. She might be just as fucking evil as Wanda is with these writers. We don't know. <laughs> with you might have just writers, created yeah. an evil supervillain. <sighs> also, against her will, also, you matter. gave it. Well, I guess you can't even. She walked in through the barrier knowing it would kill her. That's what she was cho told, so I don't even know what to say about all that who preyed yeah, on the poor know. people of Westview. Wanda exposed her and she eliminated her. <laughs> That's one way to put it, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> Trust uh, me, I mean, she put her in a torture chamber until yeah. Wanda said, you don't have to be in there anymore, mm -hmm. which is, by the way, immoral. Yeah. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah, yes, yes. Agatha tried to steal Wanda's awesome magic powers. And if she awesome. had her way, who knows how powerful she would have gotten? She was a threat. I don't to care the whole as long as I'll, I'll I'll take the dice roll with <laughs> Agatha instead of Wanda. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I, I well, we never got the impression. Agatha seems to want power to have power. It doesn't seem like she was trying to kill or hurt anybody. Meanwhile, Wanda was literally enslaving a town. If only like if one of them has to have the power. It's like I guess we'll give it to Agatha right now. We have no reason to think she's going to destroy the world with it or anything. Yeah, I mean, like I understand the devil, you know, but Jesus Christ, I, I think I'll just take it. Yeah, Wanda's awful. I don't want Wanda having power. I've seen what she does with it. World likely to all of reality. And what did Wanda do? Likely. She there, Wanda, no, wait, she how have you determined there's at least a fifty-one percent chance of that? What, why would, what are you doing? Why would Agatha want to destroy reality? She lives there. Yeah, that's what are you doing? I, Likely. It's likely she'd do that. It's like, based on what, motherfucker? Show me your fucking calculation. Show me your workings. 
is the hero. <laughs> she saves this town, the world, and the universe from this. Wanda saves win. the town. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is right, like uh, if someone comes. Okay, if you, the, a man walks up to you in an alley with a gun and he says, "If you, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you." But, but, that's not all. I'm going to give you a special one-time offer. If you give me your wallet and everything in your pockets, I will not kill you. And so you're like, oh shit, that's that's great. Thank you so much. And you give him the wallet. The gunman does not get to say, see, I saved you from the gunman. <laughs> yes, how how right. magnanimous of me that I saved you from that terrible fate. God, it's like the fucking hell argument. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so don't give her these dark looks, you ungrateful idiots. She saved you all. You are Grateful creatures, think I'm just for him. <laughs> no, this is a meme. He just called the people of Westview who were trapped and wanted to die because of the mental torture idiots. Like, oh, and you just compared her to Wizard of Oz. But in his mind, but remember, in his mind, he doesn't see it as mental torture. He 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 sees it really? as they all had jobs and were happy. Yeah, but he the mental. So to be fair, I'm trying to be as best face as I can because there's a chance here that this is actually genuine. He's saying that he did give them all satisfaction. She did give them all satisfaction. Agatha's the one that was torturing them and passing that off as the result of Wanda's spell. That's his logic. Like, there are people who would find that very convincing. <laughs> Unfortunately. I've been on EFAP too like... long to just pass off these weird, bizarre opinions as jokes all the time. And finally, Wanda exposed the rotten apples at Sword. If not for Wanda, these bad guys would have gotten away with it. They used gotten Wanda's away with what? What would they have gotten away with? Using things to create evil. White Vision. Their plans were evil. nefarious. What? White Vision isn't were evil. He's, what? He was. He's not evil. Why would that be nefarious? Super villain. White Vision gets talked down. <laughs> yeah. Just... In terms of like, and his purpose was a righteous one. He was sent in to stop an evil supervillain from abducting a town. He's a hero. Also, this guy and Agatha tried to kill Wanda's kids, so they're both pure. They're evil. not real. I don't know. That whole situation was bizarre. Uh, I don't even know what to say about it. Like, but the thing is, like, Sword isn't evil. And yeah, I don't have. I don't think they're evil. Wanda. Yeah. The real villain. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! I don't even know what I should be looking out for for copyright right now. It's like three different things at once. Ah! Is this is this Incredibles? The sound? I, I'm not, I have no, no this idea. is Superman. Or it's a, sorry, Spider Man. <laughs> no, Austin oh, Powers. I, oh, it didn't. Oh, yeah, oh, okay. they because it started with a da da da. I was like, oh, it's a Spider Man, and then they just took it in a different direction. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Austin Powers. The real villain. So he's saying sacred. that Mephisto's behind all of this shit, I guess. No, this is a joke, probably. All right, I can't. I just—it's all a joke. It's all everything's a joke. Just, 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 just go back here, Mario. Go <laughs> defeat okay. this okay. for <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a joke. <laughs> This is more than enough evidence to prove that Wanda did nothing wrong. Now, at this more point, you should be 100% convinced, not. but just for the sake of it, let's open up the debate down in the comments. And if some of you think that Wanda did something wrong, go ahead. Try to prove me wrong. I dare you. We did. You can even add yeah, me your, on your Twitter. Your and own if you're footage an answer, proved you wrong. Your editor yeah. fucked you. He, he did, did, the writer put that, did the writer put it in there? Say you can add me on Twitter if you think I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Link him to this podcast. I would love to hear what defense hey, measures who's been <laughs> wrongly convicted happened. by the court of public opinion. You better. Why? Why would you show Homeland? Like he shows. <laughs> this is what I mean. Evil. I don't understand this. Like he shows Walker, and I'm like, he says wrongfully like convicted. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. yeah he shows yeah, Homeland. Yeah. It's like, dude, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Subscribe to Screen Crush and hit that notification bell so we can defend you next. For Screen Crush, so we can defend. I'm Ryan. No, some people shouldn't be defended. I mean, like, legally, sure, you get a lawyer, but like some people so, morally should not be defended. I get like so. Now that we're at the end, there's only two conclusions. Like either that was a joke, or this is like actually awful. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. what other options are there? <laughs> like, there are no other options. I guess I'm just laying it out clearly. If this was a joke, then okay. But if not, that was horrendous. Um, like I don't. So many, so many contradictions, like in their own logic, and then just like. 
the standard thing, right? Where like, I don't know, where people defend like bad TV shows and then they just start saying these weird ethical things where it's like, what are we doing? What, mm -hmm. what's, what's... Yeah, it's whatever. That's, that's... But like, look at these top comments. As a Wanda fan, I'm not sure I entirely agree with all of this. Wanda didn't create Westview to deal with her grief. She was running away from it. See what I mean? They're like, that argument doesn't work for me. But the other ones do. Uh. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I don't, I don't so know. The comments are taking it as a serious video for the most part. Well, yeah, like it. I think loads of people would probably share this video as being like, if you, if you thought Wanda was like the villain, here's why you're mistaken. Well, you know, you and I both know, all of us know, how people, I don't know if Metal knows, maybe, but um, people yeah. just kind of hear videos in the background, they don't listen to them and pay attention, and they just sort of nod along as they're playing their game or folding their laundry or doing their stupid shit. Uh -huh. And so they don't like uh -huh. actually think about it or process it. But it's like, oh, I watched that video on why Wanda was actually in the clear morally and it's OK. And so they carry on with their lives thinking that, oh, yeah, I heard a good reason. They couldn't they, they couldn't give you that reason. You know, they didn't remember it, but they saw that video. They remember that video that they watched. And, you know, that's from a big channel and everything. So that's, yeah, and probably gets a lot of people getting that in that sort of trap. Another top comment. She definitely did something wrong, but I would agree that she's probably one of the least problematic heroes in the MCU, and 100% my favorite. She took an entire town hostage, killed innocent people in Lagos, helped Ultron, like, she did a lot of bad stuff. But way less bad stuff than the other Earth-based MCU characters, and she sacrificed more than most of them, and has been victim to way more trauma. If she gets painted as the villain in Doctor Strange 2, I will not stand for it. Alright, well, well, I guess sit down have... then. Uh, He's all, already again, a villain. Like, what are you yeah. talking about? What did Ant Man do? Like, <laughs> what did Ant Man <laughs> do? <laughs> I, do you, why are you doing Ant Man dirty Ant -Man's like that? <laughs> I was gonna say most people are like, wait, Ant Man. Like, oh, oh yes, yeah, yes, true, Ant Man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what did Ant Man do? Oh my god, I, I it's shocking, and uh, expect more more of this discourse. As we approach, I don't know who's going to be justifying her actions in Multiverse of Madness, but I'm sure they'll make a video. Mm. Um, it's going to be a fun watch, Multiverse. But yeah, they just sort of desperately move around the context of the entire show to basically say, like, she didn't do anything, okay? In, in fact, she only did good things. <laughs> only good. Which, uh, which means we're done with video number one. Video Hooray. number two is ten minutes long, so you're, you know you'll be safe there. I think there's like two minutes of ad or something. So, all right, I want to do the ads for it. But um, before we begin, let me use the loo real quick, and then we'll see. We'll we'll delve into video number mm. two. Whoa. And um, yeah, it'll be great. I'll see y'all soon. You know, Did just for a second there, based on Rags having gone to the toilet three times, I looked at the timer like, are we? At? And I was like, oh, we're not even at three hours. <laughs> Similar, actually. Just Damn, you're like peeing once per hour, Rax? What the fuck? Density, yeah. Or a tiny bladder. I have to pee once He's... per hour if we do the drinking streams. That's I can usually get through an EFAP without peeing. <laughs> He's just staying hydrated, you know? He's just being healthy. This is good. good. You know, in fact, I'm just gonna take a drink of my bottle of water. Yeah. No, don't do it. It's a trap. You're gonna drown. <laughs> oh, no, I told you. <laughs> Mel, you could have saved me. I, I tried. <laughs> Kidney failure. I hope not. <laughs> oh, Jesus. But we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like uh -huh. Sleepy Bringy. Yep, that's where I wish I was. In bed. Sleeping. Having wonderful dreams. A little about nasty. Flipping. Yeah. This is a meme. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I wonder Maybe if you would have pulled that card for the Lord of the Rings video. Someone's asking chat, Metal, what did you think of the Northman, by the way? Well, I guess you have to watch Metal's Forge tomorrow to find out. Wow, you couldn't just say, yeah, I thought it was neat. Check out the Forge. You had to say, I'm not going to tell you. Me, 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 me. You're a horrible person. <laughs> think, um, if you would have watched my streams last... Uh, Yesterday, that's the one I was fucked it up. <laughs> I don't know what it was about this video that made me think it was satire. I think it might have just been the delivery. There were just some ways that he said things. I think it was just the like some of the things that were being said were so patently false. 
like that it really came across as just like, mean, like this has to be a joke. Like Ghibli wanted to kill Sam. No, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, I guess it's um, I may I'm just because I'm not familiar with this channel, so maybe there's a level of like hyper benefit of the doubt. It's like maybe I don't know, maybe this is what, and especially since apparently he made videos saying that Wanda was okay and like that, like that. One, uh, not Wanda, Agatha was okay and Wanda was the villain. It's like, oh, so like, well, I don't get it. I well, guess, there was a different you know, writer though, that's the problem. Right, so it becomes hard to tell who actually believes who and they have these arguments internally. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, like, it's just ins <sighs> there's so many things that were said that were just like, insane. I don't and no, I didn't win many of those races. <laughs> On top of <laughs> everything. As if the day couldn't get any worse. Yep. Yeah, there's Mario Kart. It's intense, all right. It's um, it's an intense esport. Mario Kart Eight Deluxe. Hey. All right. Are you playing online with other uh? People? Yeah, I, I, playing against AI. The AI is not particularly great in Mario Kart Eight. It's they're really easy to compete against. So like when you're playing online, it's a lot more fun because it's uh you're playing against people who are also. Uh, good at the game. I played or once with Springy and I got absolutely shat on. That's that because um, insane. <laughs> I, I played it enough to where I've got like the points that I get paired up against like yeah. people who so play this game as much as I do. I was like, so, oh yeah, I'm gonna play play Maric. I was fucking fun as shit. And I was just like, all fuck this fuck game. It. Fuck this game. <laughs> it's way fuck too this hard. Fucking game. Fuck you, green ah. dinosaur. You, you not bird your mushrooms and your shells. <laughs> shells, yeah. So, to introduce all right, you all video. to this next video, a little film came out called Spondo Man. And Spondo. You might have, Spondo. You might have, you get, you, uh, uh, I've heard that all of you have seen it, so that's great because that's perfect. I've seen for it. This. Yeah. Now, when it came out, a lot of people were very happy with it. Some people were like, "No poopy," but that was fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. everything no. was chill. Talk, talk, talk. And then some other films came out, and everyone started going, wait a minute, how much do we actually like this No Way Home creature? And then, and then some behind-the-scenes uh, stuff came out, and some, know. some what do they call, uh... Effects breakdowns came yeah. out, and then people realized, like, oh, the visual effects, they didn't even shoot, it. like, they Flash was not in the same room. Mm -hmm. That's really bad. I and they noticed that. Retroactively the realized they noticed all of that. Um, yeah. they didn't bring it up before, but of course, they knew uh, that, that that had made it very much a bad experience for them. Um, you know, and, and, and it's totally fine to be critical of the, I mean, you, I guess the lighting, the composition, the way that they, they frame things, I'm, I'm totally chill with that. Um, yeah. and, and a lot of people started thinking, you know, you know, No Way Home? It's kind of shit, actually. And, and it was like, oh, all right. And, and... Some people felt the need to maybe explain that the the director, John Watts, is talentless, visionless, and it's an unfortunate reality that he got control over the wow. um, Spider-Man film. Oh, how they shift. How they shift. quite bad for the guy. Um, um, yeah, we, we on EFAP have said that we, we, we are a little sad that he gets shat on so much. Specifically the has no vision part, when myself... I feel I, I, I can, I'm correct in saying Fringy Rags and Jay have all argued since the start of Homecoming, or since with Stone, Homecoming, that there's clearly an origin story going on here, and yes. it would be cool to turn this kid into Spider-Man. That's a really cool mm -hmm. story to do. A lot of people weren't happy with that. Process. Absolutely. Like, a lot of people don't want to see that. That's, that's totally understandable, but I'm just going as far as to say that's what we thought was happening. We've argued it for a long time, and then it happened, and John Watts has confirmed as much that that was the goal. So, no vision feels a little bit unfair. But perhaps they're referring unfair. to his eye, not his writing. His eye is a director. Now, oh, he does not have good vision. If, um... Yeah, I know. If I if I were to choose one of the three Spooderman films to say that John Watts clearly has a vision as a director, it would be No Way Home, um, because of several moments in that film that are pretty damn cool in terms of directing. At the same time, if I was to choose the one that has the most like awkward bits in it, it might actually be No Way Home. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 
you know, that's just that's, that's how it goes. Um, and I, as far as I'm aware, a lot of it can be explained by pandemic filming, but perhaps a lot of it can be explained by his lack of vision regarding certain moments in his scripts that he's just trying to get through. I wouldn't want to assume too much. I'm not sure. Regardless, people have made videos to explain why he's uh, not very good at this. Mm -hmm. And um, and they have th this is dubbed the worst scene in Spider-Man No Way Home. And instead of mm. showing you what he's picked, because this is what the whole video is going to be around, I will simply say it first so we can maybe talk about it briefly. He's chosen the scene where um, Norman Osborn reveals he is the Green Goblin when he's got his... In the uh, apartment? Yes. Oh, that's... Oh, I was going to go with like, oh, the scene they ruined an entire character, Doctor Strange, or <laughs> anything like that. But uh, all right. Um, hmm. And um, the I thumbnail is called, is, is titled, How to Ruin the Villain. How to Ruin mm, the Villain. Okay. How to Ruin the Villain. That's interesting. So, you know, bold. And... Sword wasn't even in this movie. Yeah. I, so, I, 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 are you all ready to experience what the argument might be? Sure. No, let's do and it. I don't think you're going to have Go any trouble it. thinking this is satire, so we're all good. Oh, Yay. I love John Watts' Spider-Man No Way Home, and I saw it five times in theaters. It holds a very special place in my heart because seeing all three Spider-Mans on the big screen again will forever be a highlight in my history of cinematic experiences. I agree. Oh, yeah, I'd say so. I doubt I'll forget it, and I uh, really, really love seeing it, and it worked really, really well. Credit to John Watts for pulling off that incredible feat so yeah. well. Everything yeah. without any vision is crazy. <laughs> but <laughs> I can I see. <laughs> like, what was I going to understand? <laughs> like the that Mega Mind meme, no vision? Doesn't mean I don't think these films are flawless, and I could probably do a dedicated video just on Thank the mostly you. terrible blocking in cinematography but they're terrible blocking cinematography i'd just be curious to clarify if he thinks there's good is blocking in cinematography in it at well, all so is this not is this terrible or competent i feel like we should be specific with our words terrible yeah. should mean something specific not everything is opposite ends of the whole spectrum you know mm -hmm. it, feel, it, it does feel harsh to say this shot in particular if, if someone said to me like do you not do you not understand why this shot is terrible i'd be like terrible no I mean, it's terrible. Like, Did they know, not have they... a permit? <laughs> I guess it could have been better, but like, I, it's terrible. Because yeah, like, so. I, I, I like understand it. the perspective like that there are things they could do that are more involved than what we're seeing. But at the same time, I don't know exactly what the rationale is for this shot beyond uh, assuming that it's just a, a wide shot to show where we are. If, if, if the guy yeah. was like, that's all I wanted to do, I'd be like, okay, but you, obviously you can do more than that. You can imply more with a shot. Like, you know, all this standard symbolism stuff or putting characters in particular positions that represent them in this particular way or having the lighting go beyond what is simply present. You know, they're all the standard arguments you get for cinematography. At the same time, how do you, what do you call shots that are like actually crap when these are terrible? Yeah, yeah, like I a shot know, where just... I actually can't see what's happening, yeah. where the lighting is awful, or it's actually confusing where people are and what they're doing, you know? Yeah, I just say, this shot seems fine to me. It's fine um, with me. Like, I, yeah, yeah, fine to fine. me. Yeah. But, well, well, yeah, we'll just kick on. There's something that bothers me even more than shots like this. That one, um... This? So it's, it's, I'm pretty sure they're on green screens then, like both of them. Probably. Well, we know they're not even able, they might not even be filming together right now. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's the awkward tree on the left that has that little bit of light coming through on the left side of the screen that seems like it's not quite fitted i guess the problem is when we say like who, who do we blame for this it's like oh do we blame john watts or do we blame the studio for wanting this film released in december you know like there is only so much time that he's afforded to work with or do we say it's not about blame, it's just about the reality, this is bad. That um, this is just bad, right, yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily disagree that they, they look wrong, they look off. Like, especially when yep. John Favreau comes Definitely. on screen, it looks like the background's not there anymore. Um, as in it's, you know, separate from them. <laughs> There's just something um, about it that is not, like, I'm not getting the depth in the shot that yeah. it feels like it should have. It feels flat, like it's plastered as a picture behind them. Um... So what, you know, and what's, I don't know how much points I would dock in terms of just like, the thing is it's competent, you know, 
as in it well i can see who, where they are and what they're doing exactly like it, it gets what it needs to across it did just it just didn't it wasn't because i've always felt yeah, like that's how it works with these we don't you know like the batman is is a pretty fantastically shot film throughout Absolutely. i don't know that we say like no that's fine it's a fine film it right. reached normal batman. Batman is exceptional yeah. in terms of what it achieves with its its cinematography. That's like like 1917 would be another example of this is exceptional mm -hmm. what you've achieved here. Yeah, I don't think we should I be treating like those two as like the baseline and then everything else above is like exceptional or something. It's like no, because oh. um, well, I think it's a matter of like remember to get like your perspective in order. Think about the totality of films, not just like big budget blockbusters. Think about think about just like um, I guess what you would consider to be like regular films like a comedy or a romantic comedy or like a drama and what is achieved or like what they're going for by way of presentation, you know? Not everything is going for a style where everything is hyper... I don't want to say exaggerated. It almost feels like there's kind of a negative tinge to that, but where everything is very emphasized and dramatic, sometimes you'll be mm. going for much more subdued cinematography or... um, And it's I guess it's always like a... I think bad cinematography should be anything that is like not competent, anything that is actually confusing yeah, I would or wanna, unreadable. I would want to rate it as it's failing to give us the information we require or it's providing composition and lighting that's contradictory to what we understand to be the events as they're happening well, sort of thing. Like here might, here might be an example, right? Like a lot of sitcoms use the three camera setups. They got the one in the middle, the one on the left and the one on the right. So usually the shots are like entirely just we're conveying information hmm. and that's the purpose of the shot you see what's happening and you could be like well that's bad it's like i don't think that's bad i think that's just fine it's nothing exceptional yeah. it's conveying everything it needs to but, but they could do more like the batman is we did more by having these fixed shots with the camera on the wheel of the batmobile or the fixed one where bruce is shooting up through the police station and we got all the lights coming off like just any number of really cool dramatic shots in that film well, those chat. should be that does every shot need to be amazing? And it's like, well, if we can benefit from every shot, that would be cool. As in, like, it's going to be a really fucking hard thing to do. But if you manage to mm. make every shot very purposeful, meaningful, and you can draw from every shot beyond what is actually happening, narratively speaking, like, in the way that it's composited and stuff, like, that would be awesome. However, I don't know the that we, is, yeah, we shouldn't, I don't know if we should be like, if you don't achieve it in any one though. shot, that's a very bad thing. Is yeah. there something to be said about the value of contrast where you have scenes where everything is just conveyed in a way that's pretty standard, that it emphasizes when things are portrayed uniquely, visually? Oh, yeah, you know, no, like you... it's the contrast of the shots that makes the really interesting shots that much more interesting. You highlight now what I think is the problem these lads have to deal with. Uh, we don't have to deal with this, but they certainly do. Because unfortunately for them, they will often argue this is, they won't say objective, but they will say this is better when they refer to, like, mm. Batman, No Way Home is worse. You'd be like, okay, but, like, I think, Which, you know, I think No Way Home is better than that one's worse. And they'd be like, you're wrong. And I'd be like, interesting. I think cinematography is a hard one because I think there are a lot of principles in terms of just the way that you convey information visually that are agreed upon, but, like, how you pair those with narrative, I think that's really complicated. Like, well, to say that a best that it could have ever been you know like that's a really hard thing to to qualify i think we talked about it before um with color grading right like uh when they're like you need the colors to pop popping is better and it's like well like, wait but mm, you know yeah and it's just like what well, about I, every I, film in black and white well uh whatever they're referring to yeah, be it whatever change they want to make if you make the other fast, one yeah and then, but then you'll say like, well, why is it better to pop? And then whatever the reasoning they give you, you can reverse it. So if they say like, it's better for Guardians of the Galaxy, it's way better than Civil War because of the fact that it's popping off screen. You can make a difference between all the characters and it's much more, much more of an interesting and fun thing to look at. You'd be like, yeah, but Civil War is a very grounded story. It's about like the realities of the world, the politics and the, the social repercussions of all of the actions you're taking. It's, it's to be taken very seriously. Guardians is a very fun movie. Um, and of course we yeah you can justify i mean i mean here's like batman it's sharp in terms of contrast but i'm pretty sure that there are certain colors that are muted in that film in favor of other um tones maybe i could be wrong on that but it feels like that film definitely goes for a certain color scheme to the exclusion of other colors but that's a deliberate choice to emphasize yeah, yeah. the tone um, 
and the texture that they're trying to go for with that film. And this is the problem they have to encounter. If on set they're like, I want more contrast, I want the colors to pop when they're filming a funeral scene. And the director's like, yeah. I want them muted. And they're like, yeah. well, that's why your movie will look like shit. I'm sure the director just be like, can you get out? Like, I don't fucking <laughs> care. Um, and I'm not saying that that's the way it works every time. I'm, I'm just saying that uh, it has to be more complicated than I don't like your lack of colors. Like, okay. It's a little bit vacuous, isn't it? There's got to be more than that. I just want to clarify. It can be. It just depends on who's saying yeah. what's been said. Um, well, also, yeah. also, yeah. People see stuff differently. So some people wouldn't even notice that this was a weird shot. Well, most people didn't they... notice that flash shot was was balked uh, until they yeah. were shown that it was. Like this scene, I didn't, didn't not, words slowly. I didn't even notice that this scene was like weirdly green lit or what, uh, uh, green screen and whatever when I watched it because I think the scene goes away pretty fast. Or this shot. I was I was just fully invested in what they were going to say to each other. I, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Me too. I wasn't. Yeah, I didn't even wasn't even important to my mind. I guess didn't even think about it. Mm. Yeah. So I think it's if if you make your stuff on screen interesting enough that you don't even notice this, those things. I mean, obviously it's better if you make it nice and and sexy and everything. But if you don't notice it that much, I personally don't care that much. Even if I would have noticed, I was like, I just want to hear what they say. I guess. I think it's but, fair yeah. to point out and talk about. I just don't know how much. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't absolutely. know why they're so certain of being right on this one, and yet they're like, it's super subjective when it comes to anything to do with writing. So it's interesting. Yeah. It is an odd little thing. Yes. And on that note, I think one of us is about to fall asleep quite fairly. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I've, I've already crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I've already crashed. I've been zoning out all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel like I can really add much to the discussion uh, on this one, There's, especially given how tired I am. I'm literally falling asleep, so I am going to have to take off and let you guys deal with this one. No problem. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much. The, for the last one just. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. The last video just <laughs> sat all hey, the way. At least it gave you a few laughs. Me. That's the good part of that. Oh, mm. I've missed. It's like that, you know. They're, they're good for the soul in a way. Oh, look at that! Oh, look who showed up! <laughs> oh, wow. wow! Perfect timing. All right, timing. uh, it's CJ. I, I don't know if you want to uh, tell people what you're up to, where you're going, what's what's happening, and why they should uh, go and jump onto your channel. For some reason, I forgot to put everyone's freaking links in the description this time around, but it will be on the upload, and I'll put it you in chat in a second. But, uh... it, oh, my name's in the title. It's fine. Oh, that'll do. Um, yeah, I, I also make videos, uh, mostly on movies and TV shows, and I try and, try and make them funny, sometimes as I succeed. I've been taking a break, but now I'm getting back to making videos, and I should have, hopefully, a couple out, uh, next month, that will be spicy, I'm very much looking forward to getting to make them, and there might be some stuff on my channel that you might be, uh, might be interested in already, stuff like, uh, I covered the Disney's Mulan remake, for example, uh, made a pretty epic video on that. Oh. And just a whole, just a whole bunch of random shit mm. that you guys might like, and I, I don't always sound this tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, you know, it's it's, it's funny because you you've been on you have a whole bunch of times. I'm sure they're familiar with you. It's just it's just been a little while. Mm. So if you if this guy is new to you, check him out. Cynical reviews on YouTube. You'll plan you'll find plenty to keep you entertained. I'm sure. And um, well, it'd be nice to have you on again sometime. Yeah, maybe. Um. After my comment on space balls, though, I'm not sure they want me back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Jay's the manager yeah. of the show, so it might be that you're That's forced fair. back on, yeah. If if Jay has survived everything, I'm sure I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. All right, my peeps, have a good one. I will see you all very soon. Yeah, man. Thank Catch you around, dude. Bye, bye. Hey, meme. How you doing? Hey, what's up? Hey. So, so I set an alarm, right? And mm -hmm. it, the funniest thing, it didn't go off. Uh, so story. I slept m much longer than I intended to. So this is where so I've been. you are full of energy, right? Yeah. You're full of beans and you can, you can full compensate of gumption. for my persistently increasing tiredness. <laughs> well, I, you know, it is going to be on the upswing as I wake up. Uh, so I, yes. think, I think we're going to be in a good place. I honestly also, I have... Bring you this is I know this video will activate your almonds already. I know so. it will. I know it will. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I, let me top off my drink and we'll delve in now that memes here. Go have a pee I, as well. Yeah.
Yeah. <laughs> well, we can just yeah, we just have a chat with Meanwhile. So I mean, you missed the first video. It was uh, it was arguing that Wanda did nothing wrong, and the main discussion ah. was about whether or not the, the the video was a joke, because the arguments were hideous. <laughs> hideous. <laughs> hideous. Oh. The, uh, what were the arguments? Um, that all the pain and suffering that anyone had in, in Westview was actually Agatha, it wasn't uh, Wanda. And that uh, Wanda was trying to work through her grief after having saved the world, so you can give her a little bit of slack. So, where do I begin <laughs> there? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly though, that's the best possible argument you could probably make. There's... Th because there isn't a good argument um, for this. However, there was lots of other things peppered throughout the video. What I just said is the nicest way to put what they said. Like, oh, because like the first statement was factually incorrect, and the second statement is no. no. He, he says you can't no. know for sure that the pain and suffering shit was caused by Wanda, because even the even if the people say it was Wanda, it could be that Agatha tricked them. Oh, okay then. Yeah. Um, yeah. GG. Okay. Yeah. I've got a three-month-year-old kitten running around this room right Aww. now, so I'm going to be playing this one on uh, handicap mode, so we'll see how we go. That's the kitten, okay. Kitten like Spider-Man No Way Home? Well, you know, I will indoctrinate it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Good thing about a young mm -hmm. mind. <laughs> so you'll tell it that Wanda did everything wrong. Oh, yeah. AKA the Agatha defense. She's getting her own TV show, right? Maybe they'll Agatha yep. Counts of Darkness. They'll confirm okay. it in that show. She feels guilty for having caused all the pain in Westview. I uh... Therefore it becomes <laughs> canon and all of you were wrong. wrong. This uh it's just the amount of MCU stuff that's coming out, like, in the next... It's, oh, it's right. nuts. It's actually nuts how much content is coming out, and it's probably going to increase as uh. much as possible. We'll definitely be, like, the target to make sure that they keep them subscriber numbers going up and up. <laughs> 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 you gotta show that, babe. Do it. And this... if I mean, it would have been way more popular. Yeah, I would way rather watch that Morbius starring Wallace. Uh, have you guys watched Morbius? Nope. I don't, no, no, not yet. Yeah, okay. Oh, <laughs> Is it yeah, bad? I I'm heard it was a I haven't out of 10. seen it. I, I've I only, only heard it's bad. So I only I, heard no one watched it really, so no one cared. Wow, I don't know why everyone. I, did, it's I, like I, everyone decided like we're dropping the shit for this one. Everyone makes fun of this one. It's like all right, then. yeah. <laughs> Because I started seeing all the memes online, it's like, Morbius sweep, and like, they made like, photoshops, like, Morbius made five trillion dollars on no, the first it, it made him more billion. Huh? That's what they said, it made him more billion. <laughs> <laughs> Those memes were really funny, but then even people were like, I'm bored of the memes, it's just shit. It was like, alright. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> forgot Morbius was real. <laughs> he said Morbius. Morbus. Morbus is real. Morbus. Morbus. Also, apparently, no one watched that new Dumbledore thingy, uh, Fantastic yeah, Beasts. It's, uh, it's, there's probably not going to be any more of those. Bro, there chest. were so many. There, there were so many screenings for that shit on my uh, in my local cinema. Yeah, there were. And I checked a couple of hours. There was no one in the cinemas. Like only a handful of people. So the fa Fantastic. It had a budget of two hundred million dollars. It released over two weeks ago. In fact, I think it released three weeks ago in the UK. Damn. And it has made two hundred eighty-six million. So Oof. that series is over. Um, yeah. Definitely, that yeah. series is over yeah. and done. And I'm sure that yeah. they were probably when like the 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 court case was starting up, and some of the things have been said, and they were like, mm -hmm. "Oh no, if Johnny Depp gets like fully exonerated, if people really, really think that he's a good, get the movie out, go, 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 go." <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sounds like that's just the problem that Warner Brothers is having now, because yeah. that's another Warner Brothers production. Because now it's like with Aquaman as well, right? Mm. You know, also it's really, going to be... Also, sure, all the cinemas were really happy they had to put on all these screenings because of, I, I guess, the books with contracts that they have with well, Warner Brothers or whatever. 
And it's like, you sure. have to put on 15 a day. And then they have like 20 people come in and watch it. And it's like, wow. Oh, that many. Right. Well, yeah, because it, and it's, it's, it sucks because when those screenings, it's something I mentioned, but like the Northman, I had to choose between basically unbra- uh, un- I don't know why I keep saying un- unbearable weight of massive talent or yeah. the Northman just because of time. Both of them were only being screened four times a day. Meanwhile, you got like other films. And then next week, Doctor Strange is going to yeah. have like 18 a day. And it's I mean, just yeah, like, I've, man, I've, that makes it really hard for me to watch like anything but that. This is I mean, what I, I think. Yeah. I, I told you, I, I don't even have screenings for Massive Talent right now. Apparently, they yeah. only do those in June for some reason, at least according to the website. Oh, I was like, um, why? Odd. <laughs> hmm. And I had to wait until week two. Or like at least uh, the second part of the week or something. They have like a like a delayed release date for screenings. I think they they do it every Wednesday or something because there were no English screenings. It was like I don't want to watch a movie in Drummond again because I fucking hate doing that. Me but too. There was, yeah, it's dumb. There, there were, <laughs> you do. I bet you do. Well, so something that I've seen people discuss, which I do. I, this is this is a fair point that people bring up. They they talk about how like so Martin Scorsese's points. Which maybe this was his point, and you just conveyed it horribly, <laughs> was that um when like you have all of these Marvel films just dominating the cinema, one of the roll on effects is that that just eats up time that would be made available to other films because yeah, there is only so that. much time in the day. And so, well, yeah, that's what I mean, right? Like the sentiment I get though that like Marvel movies and I guess franchise movies in general <laughs> are so dominant that um that. But the but the thing is, it's like this is all audience driven. Mm-hmm. Um, Doctor Strange is probably going to make a billion dollars. It's like, is, well, oh, that yeah. ain't Disney's fault. This is a couple of things. Like the audience, all the people who would have complained about this and agreed with him, probably all watched No Way Home and thought it was fucking amazing. They probably did. Yeah. And so you have to reconcile these two things. You have to say, you know what? Like, yeah, I I do like it when Marvel movies because this is the thing. Our position would be, we want them to be well written, and if they are. Then I suppose that's that's you know so be it, but like on a second track, we want you know a full industry full of uh, top tier, low tier, and mid tier so for budget movies. Absolutely, yeah. But there's not much you can do if the world just wants to see more Marvel stuff. Yeah, like, like it's there's a reality you know, going on here that we can't deny, which is that people want this. Mm. So that's why they see it. That's why they pay all the money. That's they like it. They really, 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 really the funny thing is, like it. We do more, I think, than the the average like like brown table to discourage people from watching the MCU. We're basically like all of Phase Four is garbage. Don't touch it. Don't give it money. We'll tell you what happened in it. Like that's basically yeah. what we've been doing for a lot of this, except No Way Home, where we were like, actually, yeah, go see this. You're probably gonna love it, especially if you're a fan of like Raimi films, Asm films. Doctor Strange, you know, just any of it, like, you're gonna like it, but... I mean, I, 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 like... I, we, we treat it as though Marvel's to blame, and it just feels awkward, because, like, there's another component. Yeah, the audience. Yeah, they don't, they're not forcing you into that theater. No. That's, they uh... really aren't. They really aren't. I mean, I say it with my friends sometimes when they write in their Discord group, and it's like, oh, this episode of this thing was really amazing, and I just always think, it's like, I don't believe you. I don't think it's going to be good. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> I just don't believe even, have, I've seen too have, much. <laughs> Someone said, but you are unwittingly promoting it to people to see the train wreck. I don't think that would outweigh the amount I of people we know. prevent from paying to see it to see what happened. Yeah, and plus, if people are like, oh, this is terrible to laugh at, I will download it instead of go to a movie theater and like, pay all this money then, like, I don't, yeah. Our promotion of Batwoman didn't hold out. <laughs> like, <laughs> didn't get him a season four now, did it? And we're one of the, if not the largest internet fan community for Batwoman. <laughs> we had all of the coverage of Snyder's works right around the time that Snyder's works were getting, like, all of the fanfare as well. It's still gone. He's not making any more of, of No, those. because Batman had a, a, a debut twice as large as the like, Snyder cut. <laughs> Do you think? Do you, do you think any of the Snyder fans would have thought, "Oh, thank God, Efap are doing their Snyder Cut video. That's more thank promotion." God, Mola made a, a big yeah. video saying that the film is terrible. <laughs> it's good. Mola you know, did that. Really that. It's like no, they all they hate the fact that I would have done that. Right? Yeah. So yeah, like the, I don't believe that. I actually had a rant about this on one of the other real BBCs because someone in uh, in that chat was saying like, "You guys promote Disney stuff." It's like, dude, we fucking shit on it all the time. The idea that like. 
we're encouraging our audiences to go out there and buy tickets for all of these movies. Like, no. Not even close. I don't know that... Yeah, Not because, bullshit. like, when we, when we talked about... Like, when we did our coverage of Black Widow, or, like, whatever we did for that film... There was whatever definitely not a, I can't remember. <laughs> whatever we <laughs> there did. Was, there was definitely not the tone of, but hey, it would be really funny if you watch it. There was definitely the tone of, no, this is this sucks. This is like this bad. is not what I want to see. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And and to be fair, I would go as far as saying as well that uh we've got all of the like like so out of you in chat, did all of you want to see Book of Boba Fett after seeing our coverage of it? Is that is that How many thing? of you watched our coverage instead of? I want to buy the, the DVD box set for the Book of <laughs> Boba Fett when it releases. I gotta have the physical copies of this amazing show so I can laugh at it. And, don't and like, I don't even think this is. I don't even think this is a biased selection. I'm just asking if you, because I know some people did feel compelled to watch the episodes before our coverage, so they had full context. Like we told whatever, them, but... they didn't have to. No, yeah, we to. we make them oh, so that you yeah. don't have to. And uh, yeah, as far and as I think I'm what's aware. what's interesting is the like when you when you made the the combination of all of them at the end, which was still pretty darn popular. It just shows that people are just they don't uh, they could have watched the whole show, but they didn't. EFAB coverage is fun, but actually watching it, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, find that amusing. No. Don't watch yeah, that shit. I don't. I don't really believe that our influence of making people aware of this is like having a net positive over its i don't know popularity it's like there's no way what we're saying and doing is leading to it being more popular it ain't, yeah. it ain't. um i don't even like yeah i don't know like like i said i got complicated feelings on this because clearly the world wants more marvel so oh yeah um i've said it for ages i think almost all these problems are bottom up and you might be like so what's the solution then it's like i don't exactly no uh because yeah. if people just don't want to watch more maybe character focused art house uh lower stakes movies then that you know what i mean like what are we what? yeah i mean that's it, it is it's, it's, it it's is interesting because it when, when i saw like the trailer for the north i was like oh this is like this looks like something different that could be fun yeah Mm -hmm. And it seems to be very popular now, and is doing very it's, well, as far as I know. I'm pretty uh, sure I'm, it's actually not doing very well. I was gonna well, say, I've heard the opposite. <laughs> right? Really? Because yeah. I heard so many good things about it from everywhere. I was, well, so it's, it's the I same as everything everywhere. Very well. well. It's critically it's acclaimed. The same as no. oh, but, okay. I'm pretty sure that it's not gonna... Because I think the film costs like 70 million bucks, and in its first weekend, world well, like 10, 15 million. So, like, there's no really? way. I yeah, think just so. It was statistically, domestic, there's no way. Apparently, it's made eighteen million as of now, or at yeah, least so as of it's, yeah. It's not going to make its money back. It surprises me. It's not going to make so it. So many yeah. people talk that about it very me. positively. I would, I wouldn't be surprised if everything, everywhere, all at once, is not doing as well as it, it needs to. Yeah, or, uh, uh, or unbearable weight of massive talent. Yeah. And I think that film cost like thirty million. It's made like ten million so far. Maybe it'll uh. clear its budget, but like, this is just the reality of this situation. Is like. And I'm sad. These, well, yeah, but this is kind of like the state of the industry. Is um the films that make a lot of money are like Fast and Furious, Marvel, uh, formerly Harry Potter, but I guess that's mm. not the case and anymore. This isn't like unusual for a drop off. I just to give you an idea. It's first Friday was five million. Second Friday was two million. So yeah. you know it's 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 already done pretty much. It's, that's about it. And and the fact that it may struggle to reach its budget. It, that's not good yeah. enough. Not like, even counting marketing. It needs to, yeah. well, it doesn't include the fact that the breaking, exceeding your budget, that doesn't mean you've made your money yet because there's a cut that goes to cinemas. Um, yeah, absolutely. And like, you know, and, and, and when you find out that like loads of families went to see Spider-Man because it's a reliable, entertaining thing that was recommended through word of mouth and they didn't see The Northman because maybe marketing, maybe they didn't, they weren't enticed by trailers. It's like, what you, you we all know you can't resort to well we'll make them go see it <laughs> like so yeah. i guess the only other option is uh admitting unfortunately the audiences aren't interested in in something like the well, i just looked up uh this as well everything ever all at once had a budget of 25 million it's made 35 million it came out about a month ago so that's probably the end of that and, um, and i've been hearing like, like it's oh. one of the best films ever Heard it's not good. only have you yeah, been, not heard only it's... have you been hearing it, but you've also seen a lot of likes on tweets about it on Twitter. But how many of those people went and watched the film? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's true. 
That's a question you have to ask because if it made like thirty million dollars, that means what one? Tw no, sorry, I was underestimating it. That means that like one for every fifty people who watch Spider Man, one person watched this film. I think if the maths lines up in my head, it's somewhere around there. It's just the ratio is totally askew. Like hell, yeah. we even saw like the Batman is probably going to make less money than Doctor Strange. Like Marvel is dominant. Yeah. Um. To where even a film like Batman, which is relying in part on Batman as an IP, but it's still trying to be more of its own like thing rather than just franchise movie. Even well, that a little, film um, is still not going to make as much money. To go a little abstract, the Batman benefits from Marvel success in some ways. It does like, in part. Mm, yeah. Superhero yeah. stuff. Woohoo. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, this is just going to have to be something that we keep an eye on as time goes on. Uh, it's almost like you can only wait it out almost. Like at some point, it's like we don't want to watch these anymore. But I, I, I don't happen. think if that's gonna ha well, yeah, that's what I was getting at. I yeah. don't think that's gonna happen, which is unfortunate. We just have to hope they get some better writers again or stop fucking things up, and maybe just do mm -hmm. some more well, low stakes get, like, shit again. And not everything is multiverse, super destruction of everything. You have to get some mid to low budget runaway hits that are just blowing people yeah. away. Like, oh, you got to see this, and then they actually go see it. Um, I don't know, because uh, it's going to take more than one for sure. And someone in chat just said as well. I did my part. I watched Sonic Two. Me <laughs> too. Like, <laughs> oh, Sonic yeah, Two's doing okay, I right? Knew it was death ball. Sonic Two's doing very well, from what yeah. I understand, by video game standards as well. It's like the highest. It's had the biggest opening for a video game movie, even higher than Uncharted. Which will also be t become a franchise. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah that, that film oh. was successful. Um, was it? Su yeah, successful enough to warrant a sequel, I'm pretty sure. Goddamn. Hmm. Yeah, worldwide for yeah, uh, no. Sonic is nearly 300 million. Yeah, that's, pr that's pretty good for Sonic, I guess. But that's yeah, the thing. 300 million is, what, one-sixth of as much money as, uh, as um, Spider-Man made? Yeah. Yeah. And so Man. what will the market do? It will create more Spider-Man. It yep. will create more Spider-Man. And if Doctor Strange makes as much money as it probably will, that's going to create more Doctor Stranges. And of course, just Disney Plus as like a platform is still growing. It's not growing as much as it was before, but like that, that, that strategy appears to be working more so than the Netflix strategy at this point as well. Yeah. Well, as we've seen, Netflix has lost, what, 30% of its value? Mm, uh, yeah. yeah. They need Arcane Season 2 and Squid Game Season 2, okay? Well, yeah, but you they're know. dialing down their animation because that's that, uh, that's the real response that was necessary, you know? So anyway, you guys want to carry on with this video? Yeah, let's watch the video. Not really, this uh... is much more interesting. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, yeah, Meme, just to catch you up, this guy's going to argue why the scene he's picked is the worst scene in, in No Way Home. And he started with mentioning the cinematography in No Way Home is not fantastic. Something that bothers me even more than mm. shots like this. It's the editing. Yeah. That's, loud. That's a loud intro. I was about to say, <laughs> I gotta fucking turn that shit down. Alright, that's the same guy who who said that the um, Green Goblin reveal in the latter half of the film where he comes out of hiding, he said that ruined hey. the character because of the editing of oh, it. Oh, did he? Hey, shush. Guy? The video. <laughs> Oh, well, 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 I think this might. I, I'm not sure if it's the same guy. It's just he has a similar sounding voice. Well, considering I, that is the well, point that's made in this video. Well, I, no, he <laughs> might. Well, he might. He might sound similar. I don't know. It's you know. Can you? Sometimes you never know. I think he plays this for way longer than I will be able to play it. So we're gonna have to do a lot of pause in here, folks. Get ready. Let me get away with this all the time. I don't know. <laughs> That's not fair. Dude, when we covered a CinemaSins video, which he chops the fuck out of movies, I got like two copyright claims. I was like, how the hell did that happen? This is like, well, bleh. it just works. I have a feeling they use different copyright detectors depending on the length of your video. Cause um, I run copyright checks when I'm making something like a TFA part three or whatever. When they're half an hour chunks and I'm checking them, it's like, yeah, it's chill. And then I put an hour chunk in and it's like, whoa, on the ones it's already checked. And I'm like, wait, but why? And it's like, I don't know. I, I saw them this time. It's like, oh. It's a matrix. That sense of humor. Oh, I like him so much as Green Goblin. He's such He's a great. great villain. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic actor. Norman's on sabbatical.
This is the fucking way he delivers these lines. Yeah. <laughs> he's every line. He's he's every every line. What if he isn't line. acting? This is just how he is, and he's acting for all the other movies. Yeah, this I is just so. how Willem Dafoe is as a person. He's Willem. a rather intense bit of company. <laughs> the hell? That cut. That right there. I hate it. This is Willem Dafoe. Sorry, oh. let me repeat that. This is the video I was thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, we told you like four times. <laughs> uh, so anyway. This is Willem freaking Dafoe. The Willem Dafoe that gave us performances like this. Power. Now, so something I'm going to say right now is it's interesting that you would pick another Spider-Man clip rather than like a different film that Willem Dafoe I thought he was going to go with Lighthouse. I figured it feels like he's moving into it, doesn't it? He's like, this is the guy that gave us this. Because you wouldn't expect him to go for... The role that you probably know about as a result of even having interest in No Way Home or, or you probably would have picked this up, you'd know about this. But the lighthouse is like fucking hell, that monologue he gives in that in that movie. It's insane. Jesus Christ. It's like mind blowing. Um but the you know, yeah, it's like I guess you could argue it's suitable to do this because he's talking about a Spider Man production and that this mm. has been done before this way or something. But I guess you know matter of i wonder if we're going to see any references to willem dafoe's roles beyond spider-man hmm. that's I'm just, said yeah. it's only the beginning and right as he's about to give another glorious performance as a universally beloved villain john watts cuts away from willem dafoe just look how many cuts are in this scene just because you're blind to what true power you have to do a lot of pausing again but um yeah so mm. on hearing this it's already like presence of cuts e huh. you know what i mean like it's it's not what the cuts are yet it's like he's making a point of look well, how many cuts there even are it's like cuts are bad yeah. it's bad to do cuts that's what I mean. really i'm, often. That I'm trying to be, to be as good faith as i tank. can but what other interpretation you're supposed to have at this point uh, no not really he just oh, says look we cut it. away no, no, okay no, no, no. No. he's just highlighting the fact that there even are cuts Huh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This is more. He thinks this is more self-explanatory than it actually is. Well, is, uh, I think you're right. Uh, because I think a lot of people will almost knee-jerk agree with this overwhelmingly. They'd be like, "Fuck yeah, this is bad." I'd be like, "Whoa." But why? 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 I saw how she trapped you, fighting her holy mortal. I'm already liking these choices of cuts, by the way. Yeah, they're so great. <laughs> like, <laughs> for omission. We don't need... Mm -hmm. I'm already, like, like jumping to defend them, but I'm like, I should wait. What? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Need you to save us? I can't even track these cuts anymore. It's driving me so crazy. You can track them pretty easily. Yeah, you can track you them. Can. It's not hard. actually that hard. I've, I've yeah. made a video. It's not really that hard. <laughs> Dude, we it, it Das really bullshit managed to track the seventeen cuts within like two seconds in Resident Evil. I don't know if you guys remember mm -hmm. that. It was like because um, <laughs> someone in chat said people are rightfully criticizing action scenes for having too many cuts. Right, but the argument wouldn't be that there's too many cuts. It would be that there's a lack of comprehensibility in the fight Damn. because you can't keep track of everything. It's not that there are cuts. It is more than just there are cuts. It's the that's cuts kind of the point I'm making. Getting in the way of a thing. If well, yeah, I may. It, 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 Carry on, sorry. Go for it. No, go go for it. Well, um, we, we, uh, we did, how long ago did we decide to? Or did this? Did this even happen? Did we rewatch Hot Fuzz? I can't remember. I what, no? we may well have watched Hot Fuzz. If you did. I was Hot Fuzz for it because I. It was either we looked at clips or we looked at the film in general. Because I remember there was something we were looking for in Hot Fuzz. I don't. I was we... looking. I might have been looking for clips in Hot Fuzz. Uh, for. Yeah, yeah I, it was I, it, I something in particular we needed, and I remember looking at the scene after Leslie Tiller is fucking murdered, um, and I was like, man, I completely forgot how many cuts are in Hot Fuzz action scenes. There are a lot of cuts in Hot Fuzz action scenes. Now, nobody ever references Hot Fuzz as a movie that has terrible editing. Mm -hmm. In fact, no, I'd argue no they say one. the opposite. Because it has excellent editing. It's it fucking does. great editing, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, because mm -hmm. imagine if you took the montage, you know, when it's like when they're cocking all the guns and they're getting ready to go into, you know, all of those fast cuts that, like, nobody would sit there and be like, 
oh, cut, 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 cut. Oh, I can't even track the cuts anymore. Like they're driving me insane. Nobody would accept that because that's stupid. Well, so <laughs> if I can just, uh, I'm going to put it on screen for us right now. Here, here it is. Real time. So this is when Sergeant Angel has thrown his, um, fuck, what are they called? Batons? Batons? Yeah, they're batons, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so he throws it in. Now, I'm going to have to be careful with copyright here, but cut, 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 cut. That's a lot of cuts. That was like one second. Yeah. Is that bad? Yeah. I assume everyone I doesn't uh, have a problem with I mean, those because it's no, no. It, no. So, so my argument, in, in case anybody is like, isn't that bad? So if you watch this scene without me tearing it apart like this, you'll notice it's all to build up the suspense and tension of the opening of this battle, if you can call it that, this chase. They're both realizing they are right next to each other. This has been spotted. The police. This is such a great moment in the film as well because it's the most overt that we've gotten of the protagonist realizing what's happening. Because we've had an awareness of it to some degree, but this is like, we did it, and it goes back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, chase begins. Like, there's reasoning behind it, but I think is much more interesting to talk about than simply going, there's a lot of cuts. I um, can't stand it. I heard it. I suppose someone might bring up, like, remember the, the, the jumping over the, the railing in, um, um, uh, that, Yeah, that Liam Neeson movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would <laughs> like to see anybody argue why that benefits the scene. <laughs> like, because I guess you wouldn't argue, I, you understood he was climbing over the fence, right? It's like, I guess so. Uh, and someone would probably argue that there's so many cuts to try and amp up the tension, the, increase the sense of, like, action-packed moments. But, um, I don't know, I think that just gets to the point where it looks super inept, and it's distracting just because of the fact that there's so many cuts. It's a, it's a, and I think that we actually venture into then um, realizing this is actually kind of complex to say when you've done it wrong and right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, point being, watch this chase scene again, because I can't show you much more of it without risking loss of copyright. There's a shit ton of cuts. Um, and I know that someone could be like, yeah, but you're describing an action scene. This is like a scene where someone's talking. Or, I mean, have you never seen a one-shot? for an action scene? Is that better than multiple cuts? Is there reasoning that would involve changing it? And why wouldn't that apply to talking scenes? That's... Go home. Good. The hell? I've been trying to understand why he does this, and I think I figured it out, at least in this specific scene. There's just too much plot. In order to understand... <laughs> too much plot. <laughs> so that's definitely a peepo sus moment, like... What? what? Too much plot. Well, so, what something that's kind of interesting is that uh, I'd say that generally, right, would consider that good writing is when you achieve multiple things at once. So, if you have a scene that's advancing plot and character at the same time and you can balance those, hmm. Seems like a plus, yeah. And then if you go good faith mode, you're like, I guess he's right. There's a lot of plot things happening in this scene, especially with this visual following up. It's like, oh, yes, Electro's, um, Machine is almost charged. Sandman is getting antsy about whether or not this is the correct thing to even do. Otto is this... very, you know, filled with concern over Norman. What is Norman's mm -hmm. plans? What is he up to? Machines being de but this like... is uh, this is this is not just plot. This is character. This is telling us stuff about each of these people. Well, yeah. actually, yeah, I, I realized when I was describing that that I was I was like to say it's plot that Electro's electric thing is charging is a little bit Sorry. unfair uh, in terms of representing exactly what's happening here. It's Electro is running out of time to make his decision as to whether or not he wants to stay in this dimension, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, that's important. That's not like, uh, we gotta talk about the fucking, we gotta get that thing in the plot out of the way. It's like, no, this is character, uh, as Prince yeah. said. And we have to rewind yeah. a little bit. Peter has brought all these villains back to Happy's apartment so he can use Stark's fabricator to engineer cures for them and send them back to their respective universes, yada yada yada, happy ending, whatever. But this setup presents issues. Because when Norman turns into Green Goblin, we know his cure serum and all the other cure serums are in the adjacent room. And later we see Aunt May inject that serum into Goblin, and then we also need those serums later on for the big finale. All the So he's saying, like, we need to understand how the serums get from A to B to C to D. Which is yes. true. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Yep. While Goblin is giving this epic monologue. The hell? 
So a scene that could have been a gut punch to Peter and a moment that could have gone down in history as probably the last iconic monologue from Willem Dafoe in a sp I hate to inform you of this, but one, the scene is a gut punch to Peter. Fucking Aunt yes. May dies at the yes. end of it. Secondly, yep. Yep. Uh, this was one of the scenes I would cite when we would finish the film and be like, that was fucking great. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a standout well. moment. So like, those arguments don't work quite well for me, but hey, well, <laughs> soldier on. Spider-Man movie is completely ruined by a montage of Aunt May putting glass tubes in a grocery bag. Um, I guess all we've got to say is why. You? Mm, why? Why does it why? ruin it? Let's do why. Why does it? Why? I don't That's really care so much about the plot issues here, but more how the plot is presented. We would have been fine with one quick shot of Aunt May grabbing the cures, and that's all the audience needed to follow along. Well, I don't have any problem with them making sure we understand she grabbed all of them as opposed to just yeah. one. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Fine with yeah. Me. I don't know that we should consider that some kind of like hideous misuse of a, sh of a shot, I don't know, it just seems a bit... Dare I say nitpicky? It's not even, I don't know if it counts as a nitpick, so I don't think we've established there's an issue. What bothers me here is that we're not seeing Willem Dafoe deliver his performance. Take this scene from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. So, um, yeah, this, so, okay, so yes, he is using Spider-Man again instead of another example. That is interesting. But also, mm. I think something that's weird about this is like, we can still hear him, Mm -hmm. And I can tell what he's conveying through his voice. I, I mean, I'm already baffled by the obvious realization, especially a, another point to bad choice of clip. Can anyone notice the difference between Willem Dafoe in this scene and Willem Dafoe in the other scene? The big difference. Well, there's a fuck ton more going on in one scene versus yeah. the other. So you've got uh, to I would specify there's a fuck ton more people. A lot of other characters, yes. Yeah. He's alone mm. here, there's like we've got, seven in the other room. We've got um, one person's face to keep track of in this scene. Yep. We've got, how many yep. is it? Six in the other one? I think, I think uh, six, four, seven, five, six. And we've six got six or seven now. Peter yeah, six. realizing that Norman is becoming evil while being told that his interest in this noble cause is just something he's essentially been indoctrinate, indoctrinated to by Aunt May. So we need to see Peter's face as well. At least two, okay. Electro decides to be villain bro at the end of that scene. We need to see his yeah. face too. Yeah. Doc Ock isn't fast enough to realize any of this is happening and it's all shocking to him. We're gonna need a, at least one or two shots of him. Sandman is deciding whether or not he's going to stay. We need a shot of him as well. So, hmm. We don't need any shots of Aunt May, do we? It's like, well, no, he's already established in the video that we needed a shot of her at least. So, hmm. Feels like this is a and bad comparison. She's making kind of a bit. Worse, and this is like nearly the end of her story. Yes. Um, we need to spend time on her. One. This is a similar. I really like as well the um the clenching of a fist around the the bag because yeah. it it tells you she's expecting that this is about to get really bad. Yep. Mm -hmm. Moments no way home with Norman transitioning into. And that, I would say not only is it showing that she knows it's about to get serious, but that those cures that's what matters to her the most right now. Which just yes, follows through on her, you know, position as a character, which, like I said, I, I, Aunt May's at her best in that movie, I think, out of the trilogy. Oh, yeah. Goblin. But watch how this scene is cut. Gonna have to do a lot of pausing again. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. What do you want to say? Who is that lady? Can't you, can't you put the EFAP logo over it? Well, it's still the audio at that point. point. Oh, okay. It might help, I don't know. Oh, well, what we're doing right now will be enough. But you won't. Oh, okay, yes, yes. To do what you can't. To do what you... Do you remember when he popped up in John Wick as the cool sniper friend? It's just like, oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> I will default. I'm glad he wasn't the first one only. That's good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's Safe. 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 <laughs> to remove those in your way. Oh, that's the end of... Okay, good. Did you notice how there's no cuts at all? Yes. There's only, only one person, person, in, the person in front of a mirror. I don't even you know, know what I noticed, in the I noticed that there were, there were zero cuts in 1917. Does that make it the best <laughs> movie ever? Just because it had no cuts? Oh like, man, yeah, you just reminded was. me of... There's this movie about some fucking superhero thing. I don't really care. But there's this moment... He has this ability to like sense stuff. And the camera like holds on him as he moves from one room to another. Yes. It's like a Why single shot. It's, um, I can't remember yeah. the movie it's from, uh, I think, huh. 
Was it Batman? The Batman. I think it was called um no, it was uh it was Shang Chi. Oh yeah. It was malignant. Oh. <laughs> malignant was malignant great. Did have room to room. room. Yeah. Check out Eva movies well, malignant. <laughs> Check it out. It's an, an amazing film. You should definitely watch our coverage of it only and not just that film by itself. Hmm. That's because Sam Raimi knows how to hold the frame. No. Hold uh, the frame. He said it. Thanks so much. Hold the frame. Big white letters. There's Let's one go. person in the scene. There is one person in front of a mirror. So the problem I have here is specifically his framing. He's implied that it's not a problem of having chosen not to hold the frame on John Watts' part. It's that he doesn't know how. <laughs> That's interesting. We know he's done it. We've seen it. Literally just a bit earlier in the very scene you're talking about. What do you mean? Holding the frame on Peter. Like, why would... <sighs> Raimi. <laughs> Unstoppable. We're not cross-cutting for plot. There's no angle jumps, extra flows. Oh, because there isn't one to, to account for. There's there's, yeah. there's way more things happening in this No Way Home scene. You have more characters doing more things, and there's more impact being done to aforementioned more characters. You can't just... If you were going to make that without cuts, or extremely limited cuts, you're, I just don't think you're going to be able to see everything you need to see. You'd have to totally... Like, that would be a challenge to be able to do that. You'd have to rearrange everyone's locations. Mm -hmm. You would probably have to change the pacing of the scene so the camera had time to get where it needed to get. You'd certainly have to change dialogue so that we'd have that time as well. Oh, yeah. I just don't... It would be an incredible challenge to be able to do all the things that are happening in No Way Home without the, the, without the cuts. There's a lot yeah. to show. There's a lot going I mean, on. I'm trying to imagine this conversation on set where they're, they're doing all this and then they're like, um, uh, John, don't you think... It like, do you think maybe we could have a scene where it's just Willem, and he's sort of doing his speech about what's happening here, and then and then John Walsh is like, what do, what do you, what do you mean? And he's just like, well, I just think it would be better if we just have Willem and that's it. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, the scene doesn't really work uh, much anymore if we if we do that, and it's like, yes, but I've seen a different film in which they do do that. I think that. Uh, well, that, that, that was, was neat for that film, but it doesn't <laughs> really help in this film. And I think the same would be as bizarre in reverse. Like, if Sam Raimi's making that scene in Spider-Man, and then someone goes, Sam, ima imagine we had, like, several people in this scene, and, like, the camera, like, cut to them reacting to this. How stupid would that be? You should be like, what? There aren't any... what? Why would... As if it's just, like, a known thing that that would be a bad choice, as opposed to a different scene. It's this aspect you get. I don't know why it just happens to pop up a lot with Spider-Man people or Spider-Man discussions, but these this appeal to rules that have not mm. at all been established as being rules. Hold the frame. Right. Hold the frame. It's like, but I have shit that the audience <laughs> can see have shit with their do. eyes. <laughs> yes. I ain't uh. got fucking time to hold frames. We got shit to do, bitch. Get in the car. We're going shopping. Or expository shots happening in tandem. It's just pure expository shots. That's an interesting it's way to express them. It shows that she is figuring things out before the others. She's getting things. She's being an active participant in this plot. Ah, <sighs> and it um... her her tenseness contracts with the more slow rising tension of this room. I, I so yeah. what I want to argue with him right now in this call, if he was here, is. Mm -hmm. Tell me what makes an expository shot versus a non-expository shot. And I picture he would say something like, this doesn't regard pushing anything forward except knowledge to the viewer of where a particular item is. Like, it doesn't have any bearing other than making sure we understand how things come together in terms of the plot. I'm talking about important character stuff. That's an expository shot, It's not a character shot. And then I'd be like, you don't think it says anything about a character that she's doing that? And I then would say that I think that was... Will I it would corner him, because to say Jay that that says nothing about a character would be false. I don't know if why... If she wasn't doing anything, then he would be complaining that Aunt May is not enough of a participant actively in this plot as she discovers information. Dude, he wants John them all Watt gone. A failure. He wants Willem Dafoe in the room talking to a mirror. In a room with a mirror. Which is, by not the way, that, that scene is great. It's fine. It's just that they're different scenes. I don't know why we're doing yes. this.
camera should behave differently based on what's happening in the film. I thought this was basic. Mm. I thought we could all agree on this. Performance and it is glorious. Bingo. But then what if your character has a monologue in a scene full of plot? How do you let an actor still deliver? Well, if we take- You do what why don't, Why don't we say, what if it is yeah. it, if it, if, uh, this sounds like <laughs> why, why is he me. saying what if it's full of plot what if it's full of people there's people in there <laughs> if it's there are other people. characters it's <laughs> the other biggest people. component that he has yet to manage to <laughs> mention <laughs> it's full of plot. well i'm the <laughs> foe is not the only person in this room dude i guarantee you he would tell me there are two characters in the spider-man scene be like it's Oh, Norman of course, and yes, the Green we know. Dog. Yes, 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 yes. Very, yes, yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know, yes. Take a look at Christopher oh. McQuarrie's Mission Impossible Fallout. Hey, a movie we like a lot. Woohoo. Yay, that hey. movie's really good. Hey, guys, you should, you should talk about, you should watch this film and yeah. watch our coverage of this film. Yeah. Mission Impossible Fallout is good rat. Yeah. Well, you'll find a masterclass in editing. Honestly, this movie is a masterclass in all things filmmaking. But in the scene where right. Solomon Lane is captured by Ethan Hunt, there's a showdown between them in dialogue. And simultaneously, they need to remove a tracker from his neck before all of Paris rains down on them. Yep, I remember this. I assume you guys do too. Yes. Mm -hmm. All very straightforward. All right, let's see what he's got for analysis. So instead of just simply playing out a tense sequence removing the tracker, McQuarrie gives Sean Harris a monologue confronting Tom Cruise's character with the harsh reality of his motivations. So I just want to take a small issue because I feel like there's be something being said here for comparison. He says, instead of having a tense scene of removing the tracker, we're going to have this, this conversation. I hope he's not trying to imply that the Spider-Man scene is a tense scene of getting the cures. Like, the, that is the problem. They did that instead of focusing on the conversation between Peter and, and Willem Dafoe. Like, I would be like, well... Yeah, the, the issue here being that in order to remove the tracker, like, they can do that while all of this is happening simultaneously. None of the two are going to trip over each other in terms of, a, you know, on the scene. And but I would with actually... the cures and all the villains, that's going to create a lot of conflict, and there are too many active actors in this scene to where that would, that would be an issue. So... It's just not a really good comparison because it's yeah. like you said mm -hmm. in this case we've got two opposing camps but of which four of them are on the same side and then there's the one bad guy in a room where there's less moving parts and whereas in the other one you've got a lot of people on their own camps with more moving yeah go for it or a highlight is what he's said is the plot in spider-man versus this one of them is like almost attached to one of the actors faces being the villain about to make the monologue while the other one is in a whole separate room, and it's only relevant to the one character that's trying to make use of it. It's not really fair, the idea that you're like, it's not about him getting that tracker out of Solomon's neck. Which, if I remember correctly, it's a red light, and then it blinks green whenever he's in the correct position, but he can't quite get it, and we've got a timer. So that's still plot tension, if you want to call it that. Like, we can see it, you know, while Solomon's talking. And I don't know that it's fair to compare a scene... Like, what are we going to do? POV shot of Willem Dafoe talking on one half of it, like, composited in over Aunt May running around collecting things. It's just like, why why, why not do what John Watts did? What do we lose? But to be fair, he's only uh, given us the setup. Let's see what he says. Your mission, should you choose to accept it? I wonder if it... Uh, I keep pausing as well, but... Yeah. Oh, God, two cuts already. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, fuck. Fuck doing. Did you have a in the trash. Did you have Another a cut? Ugh. I wanted to see what the, the watch is worth this film. And ask yourself who it was giving you the orders or why. Mm -hmm. I have to keep on pausing. Yeah, we gotta pause and oh. chat and watch this scene all together. Part of the territory. I wish mm -hmm. this was Twitch and we could just watch the fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're just like, all right, guys, quick tangent. Gonna watch Mission Impossible Fallout. <laughs> yeah, make sure we get all the context. We're gonna go take a shit real quick. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. So they cut to a different character. What? Oh, my goodness. Oh, this movie's terrible. Shit. Accusation coming from a terrorist. Cut again? Just for him to what deliver an expository line if we have 60 seconds left? Wow. Terrorists are schoolboys, desperate for attention, hoping to shape public opinion through fear. Uh, give it the old pause, all right? Nano machines. You're not pausing fast enough? I, you might be right. 
Um, I just really want to get through it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we gotta, we gotta. Care the least what people think or feel. Mm. It seems like they cut to him when he was doing a more aggressive intonation of uh, certain sentences there. Do you see that? Kind of. Yeah. The decision I think they made with Willem Dafoe in No Way Home too. I'm gonna be honest nah, with you guys. No, that didn't. Doesn't feel like I can notice a lot of differences with the approach, actually. And to be honest with you, we've got Simon Pegg and is it Henry Cavill in this scene as well? The characters? Uh, I think so. I've, and well, then we've you've got Ben, yeah. And we've got a ticking clock of they're going to be found and stopped if they don't get the tracker out of his neck. So I think it's perfectly fine to cut to their faces at least once during this scene to show what they're feeling right now. Yeah, but yeah, we also, we, but we're also not having anything happen in other rooms. Everything is happening on this character's throat, basically. It's like a meter radius that everything is taking yeah, place. Yeah, like everyone is in the same room, pretty close together. We basically just need to cut back and forth, so we don't need to go they, uh, to this room and the other room because it's a whole fucking different setup. So, not because a this bad isn't example. A situation where one person needs to sneak around in the back. You know, yep. the, where there's mm -hmm. a vulnerable party in the mix here, you know, it's, it's just not comparable. It's a different yeah. scene. Well, and exactly. this antagonist it's a different is not scene, capable but... of physically doing anything. What exactly is the difference, though? Like, in terms of execution here? I don't... No, not, not a lot. Just... I don't really know what, what he's about to... Like, what, what are you about to compare that this did so much better? I'm curious. Is it just going to be, oh, do only either. showed them... I guess he's gonna. It. Well, so if you look at the timeline he's actually provided, the cuts are in there, and so you can yeah. see we've got two bigger pieces of Solomon, but then we've got plenty of cuts to other characters, which is what No Way Home does, as far as I'm aware. For very long. See how much more impactful the minimal cuts are. We hold on Sean as he speaks. We're in so what? Yeah. Like this? Okay. Okay. Able to absorb what, what he's saying. That's the problem. Whenever he starts an example, it's it's like you have to guess. Is he using this as a good example or a bad example? Because I don't feel like there's a there's not a system. There's not a there's not like some rule set that he's using that I could that I can use alongside him. I, I have no clue. He has and, to tell me after the fact that oh, no, and this was a bad one. And by the way, someone in chat just mentioned what what makes a cut minimal. And you know what? Yeah. I'm gonna say it. Here it goes. You ready, you guys? Prepare. There the was there was a superfluous shot in this. As far as I'm concerned. <gasps> ah! Do you know which one it was? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, cutting to the uh, stopwatch. It was the one when it cuts. Oh, yeah, I was right, yay. You don't need it. Because you have that guy um, saying... Oh, if left. you're gonna have Tom Cruise say, we only have 60 seconds left and we can hear the ticking, you don't need to see the watch. Yeah. I might have actually looked away at that point. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah it's fair. But um, at the same time, if someone said, wow, so you think the scene is poorly edited? I'd be like, no. Are you fucking kidding me? It seems very well edited. I like it a lot. An alternative, yeah, and the alternative is Tom Cruise just doesn't have the watch. One of the two in the back has the watch in their hands so that they can see it and we can see it too. So it's never out of sight for, you know. I feel as though you could actually have done this scene where the camera is only on Solomon throughout the entire thing, just slowly zooming on him while the ticking gets a little bit louder when you go from the beginning mm. to the end of the scene, and they get it out just when the camera is like really close to him. Or it's slowly rotating around him so we can see all the characters and how they're reacting to this. You have, I think, you've got options. Yeah, that's the thing. And if someone said, well, yeah, but you go with the best one, don't you? And I'm like, that's the point. I don't well, know course, that there's oh, just, a just best Just do the one. best thing. It's that it's like, simple. But it's like these videos, the these videos are like, well, there was a best thing. And then they show us something that, to be fair, to me, is like, this is what No Way Home did, didn't it? Yeah. ...and study his face. We only cut away when another character says something or relays information about the tracker device. Which is plot! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What the fuck yeah, are you it's, doing? I, it's, uh... Sometimes I no feel like... Home. No, go for it. Alright, sometimes I feel like with, with this guy, I forget his name, he was like he he's got a random like it's a challenge channel where someone gives him a <laughs> random thing to make a video about and he has to make a video about it you know like there's no sense of like consistent through line of a system um i'm very baffled at this point the gravity of the words are oh, felt i and... was going to say a thing oh oh um i think what i was going to say is that it just because what he said is like, yeah, the reason why we cut from the monologue is to convey information that's important to the audience. That's also what happens in the No Way Home scene. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? 
we're either showing character reactions that are important because these characters are making decisions at this point in time. We need to show what May's doing. And of course, we need to show Peter's reaction to it all. Every time we're cutting away, we're not showing... Like, there are no superfluous shots in that scene. Every, mm. Everything is, is uh, relevant and needs to be conveyed. And which scene has more characters? No Way Home, once no. again, well, has more again. characters than this one does. And this one doesn't even show us what two of the characters are feeling right now. And I know that he'd be like, we don't need to see what they're feeling. They're not important right now. I'd just be like, if they had shown them, I think you'd be arguing they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if the original version of this and the alternate universe where in the original cut, you showed their faces and they were worried and maybe they looked at each other or something like that. Oh, this is important to the characters. We need to keep this. It can't go well, away. Um, I, mean, I, feel, I feel like this highlights um, the nature of it's hard to know what the best decision is. Yeah. Um, if we saw Simon Pegg and he had like an exasperated, stressed out face and then we cut to Henry Cavill and he just looks interested in what Solomon's saying. Really good way to show us a little bit of foreshadowing for who these characters are and what their place is mm -hmm. in, the, in the story. Plenty of ways to justify a quick cut. There is, Even the yeah, as if there's just some holy, sacred, perfect version of a movie that we're striving towards instead of movies are complicated and there's not just one way to make it and who even knows if it could be better or are there in, uh, a, a great deal amount of ways to make it better? It's not... It's not like we're appealing to some magical version of the film. It, sometimes you, you just don't know. That's the thing. That's mm. why we haven't. It, that's why a movie isn't just a formula, like a mathematical equation that we've perfected. It's not that easy. Reaction shots, they hold long enough to give just as much impact as the character that's speaking. Tom's facial expressions say everything here. It's not. You, you, did, <laughs> did you see that where it cuts <laughs> to Big Rabes when he says that? Nice. Yeah. I, like, yeah, I was about to say, I was like, Tom? No. <laughs> That's not, is that his character's name? Is Tom? I forget. It's it's funny editing, but it also highlights the counter, which is they don't do it for all of the scene, though, do they? They cut, and you're going to argue it's for good reason. Reason that would be reflected in the No Way Home scene. Tom's facial expressions say everything here. It's not just coverage for the sake of coverage. Coverage okay. for the sake of coverage. I, I, mm. I don't know. So I think he countered himself with showing those clips. The best <laughs> faith version of what I think he's saying there is that they show us stuff because it's something that's in the scene and should probably be shown for the fact that it exists. Nothing else is achieved. But we've already been through all of the cuts have meaning in them that tell you something about the characters. So, and plot. But like, I'm not, I'm not sold on that. I'm going to need more. Mm-hmm. Oh. I grew up in the oh, 90s, oh. which was absolutely the height oh, of nice. the cereal craze, and I ate it all the time. But it wasn't until I... Was the 90s also, the height of the cereal craze? I had no idea that the 90s were the height of the know. cereal craze. I just figured the cereal's always been popular and always will be. I don't know. Yeah. Here's, here's my thought. I think that he was a kid in the 90s, so maybe <gasps> if you're a kid in the 90s, you feel like that's the time you maybe eat the most cereal. Especially mm. like Fruit Loops and breakfast cereals and stuff like that. So maybe you feel like that was the height of the breakfast cereal craze. Maybe. I think he said that know. he was he was a kid then. But yeah, I just I didn't know that. The more you know, unless someone tells me different. <laughs> I grew yeah, up. But it's going to be a Magic Spoon commercial. That's all I know. And I do want to mention um, this is a particularly good ad, mainly because they know how to hold the frame. On this cereal bowl. <laughs> That's true. There. I mean, really, I would say that if it's just cereal going into a bowl. Hold that frame. Yeah, like Hold some people be like, I want to see. Added is just the milk being added is just plot stuff. Yeah, and, and, and people be like, the poorer. How does the poorer feel? And it's like, I don't. It does, that's not important. The, the what's important? Cereal. That 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 is what I appreciate about this kind of artistry. Just how full of sugar and junk most store bought cereal is, which is why I love Magic Spoon. Sugar. It's the <laughs> Magic Spoon. Which <laughs> is why I love Magic it just sounds Spoon. like a parody, doesn't it? It's like. Cereal has sugar in it. That's why I use magic food. And you're like, what? <laughs> Cereal can have, yeah, it certainly can have a lot of sugar in it. It's it got true. A lot of carbs in there too. You know, it depends what you eat. You don't want to overgrain. Oh, and rags, look, thing, but... it's got 13 rotine on there. Ooh, I love rotein. And it only says otein for me. Oh, no. oh my goodness. <laughs> is, wait, are you ahead of us or word. behind us? I think you're ahead of us. It also says, it also has four wet arbs. <laughs> <laughs> 
for <laughs> Would you like some wet arms? <laughs> Would you like some wet arms? <laughs> Zero arms. Or wet arms. <laughs> the cereal Do you flavor. Eat your arms wet or dry? <laughs> And look, you love without all the junk and sugar. A serving of Magic Spoon has zero appealing, grams of sugar. Because it has this filter over it. I think he's just trying to I know it's supposed to be a VHS yeah, TV yeah. kind of, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't actually look appealing when you do it. Oh. That elephant, that elephant, though. Is... By the way, I heard, I, I've heard this ad read so many times. I now realize how similar they are from every by everyone. The Magic oh, that's Spoon one, the or just in general? Gives you, yeah, well, it, the structure is pretty similar, right? It, it always starts with an anecdote, work. some even, kind of anecdote, yeah. Yeah, it's the exact same one, because the, the wrestling podcast I listen to, they're basically all sponsored by Magic Spoon, and oh. it sounds exactly the same. Wait, did they, did they, mention yeah. the, did they say that I've the 90s that was the peak of the serial craze? The no, they do ass, they're not stupid. <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, he's probably the, the right. Reason, <laughs> the reason they're all similar is because when a company sends out its emails and everything to all the YouTubers and influencers and everything, they have the 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 footage right that plays and it's generally yeah. going to be all the same. It's a file in MP4, and then they have probably a script for you to read if you want to do that. They might mm -hmm. stipulate that they want you to use the script, and so that's why they all are so damn similar. That's why you've seen the same footage of. Raid Shadow Legends over and over yeah. and over and over again because that's what they mass email out as their is it, marketing. This might just video. be me, but if I would do an ad read, I wouldn't do it like one by one. I would probably get oh, yeah, a little too, creative yeah. with it because how fucking boring is that? Well, the, the... Yeah, and it, it comes across as just to I'm only doing what I'm told. These opinions are not my own. Yeah. There's one that a, a Super Chat was talking about on one of the other streams, but uh, it's the one that Jay sent us, right? Where it like starts out as like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre scene. And the Tom getting, Scott like, one? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, and it'll, it'll eventually reveal it's about NordVPN. You're just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's... I feel like NordVPN has like the best people that do ads for them. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, Rags could be right that people send out templates. Or I can believe the truth, which is that everyone feels compelled to mention that Raid Shadow Legends is uh, the best RPG free. on the market. And it's totally free. <laughs> Yeah, it is totally free. free. But what's more important is that it's one of the most highly rated games on the app store, <laughs> and the audience is growing every single day. I like that we can all just do the ad read without ever like, getting yeah. the fucking file. I agree, it's a great service, but I think Punto kind of outdoes it. Just a bit. I mean, obviously, it's great. I'm pro Punto. Punto is a legendary service. If, if, sorry, I need to use the loo real quick. I'll be right mm -hmm. back. So, I don't want to miss the This is like the fourth arms. time in four hours. <laughs> Rags, are you diabetic? Sometimes the, the it just get gets the, the runs. You, you might just be drinking hardcore water right now, like gallons. Gallons of water. Hey, Fringy, here's your Simpsons reference. This man has never eaten a bowl of cereal in his life. Oh no, that one's eluding me right now. That man's never drank a beer in his life. No, it's, it's J damn JFK hard. versus Nixon, the Duff debate. Oh, yeah, now it's coming back, yeah. <laughs> so this has got so many good jokes. So the Ooh, ratio yeah. of good early seasons. Oh, yeah. All God of these... Damn. I, man, it really does, like, when you have, like, the ad smack bang in the middle. It's like, oh, man, it just uh, it's kind of like this big sort of halt to whatever we're talking about. Mm. Especially if your like video is only 10 minutes. Well, I mean, this is probably a one to two minute ad, right? So it's like one tenth or possibly one fifth of the whole video. Uh, and I guess there's probably videos. Hmm. Uh... I will say, what? What did you guys have any particular cereals that you really ate? Because um, I don't, I haven't eaten cereal in a while, really. Man. I just fell out of it a while um, ago. I but I... Yeah, I'm pretty sure I just like all the sugary ones. I don't know. I don't have anything yeah. to say. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I like honey bunches of oats and like the cornflakes. I like I like cereal that has like the dried strawberries and blueberries in it. I'm big into fruit. I love me some fruit. Um, uh, you were never a fat child, were you, Rex? <laughs> no, I was never. I, I legit was never. I was never. <laughs> no, let me talk about my, my favorite sweet... cookie crisp. It was Ooh, just cookies and I milk. I never liked cookie crisp. I never liked it. It. it yeah, I it, never it, liked it wasn't... cookie crisp either. Yeah. Fine. Um, I'll, I'll have it all. I like oh, crunchy like a... nut. That was uh, that was good. <laughs> crunchy like nut. <laughs> I'm not familiar with crunchy nut. 
To be I fair, don't like my nut. I'm not Don't noticing you. any that have been mentioned uh, that I don't like. Like I'm, I was pretty happy with cereal. You're just, you're just pro I think cereal. My, yeah. I think as my favorite a whole, was always the the cinnamon ones. Cinnamon toast crunch, the taste you can see. I think, I think oh they, they don't <laughs> sell them like that here. Why? But but <laughs> it's, it's the same one. I think they have a different name here. You didn't like you, you? Did you? How do you feel about the cookie just, crisp? I, <laughs> cookie crisp. <laughs> I just like the idea that it's the taste you can see. Said really wholesomely in the ad. They eat that. They look around. They're like ah. Ah, 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 get it away. Why am I? All I can see is cinnamon. Um, I think we can all agree. What? Well, Mahler, you said you've liked every cereal mentioned so far. How mm. did you feel about the Captain Crunch, the square ones? Is that you ever eat shredded those? wheat? Is that the same thing? No, not the shredded wheat. Uh, let me get a picture of it real quick because I don't like shredded wheat unless it's got like the frosting on it. Because shredded wheat by itself is just it's too plain. Mm. Um, but I let me show you. Uh, what was it? Captain Crunch? Captain Crunch. Because there was a particular... It might be my least favorite cereal. Let me show you. Copy image here. This is what Captain Crunch was. It had crunch berries in it. And those huh. yellow square ones, mm -hmm. those things would fuck up the inside of your mouth. Oh. I hated them. They would just like tear up the roof. I hated you know, Captain it. Crunch, I hated like, the cereal. Super popular? Because I was going to say, I haven't eaten this cereal, so... Yeah, yeah, it's pretty. I think it's pretty popular. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. But uh, kids were willing yeah. to take a bit of pain to have the pleasure, I suppose, with, with Captain Crunch. That that sounds oh, yeah. bad out of context. Yeah, don't do it. Don't take a bite out of Captain Crunch. But that is my. Yeah, I think that's our good little cereal uh, tangent. I like cinnamon something. What were they called? Not Cinnamon Toast Crunch, it was something else. It could be that. That might be the equivalent in America. Well, well I think oh, they call oh, it oh we're talking about Apple Jacks? Uh, what am I talking about? Help me out, British people. Cinnamon yeah, I something. Come, I am Cindy. I mean, the, the, someone in chat just said that that's what they're called in Germany. Cinny Minis, that's what they're called. The cinnamon ones. It was like, the it, thing I'm thinking of, there's two brands of the same sort of thing. And it was Cinnamon okay. somethings and then something else something. Graham's? Cinnamon Graham's, that was it. Uh, Do you like, remember that Apple Jacks, and they had the guy, the, 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 the Rastafarian. I, <laughs> hey, I'm Cinnamon. I'm coming for the I Apple Jacks. He looks like, like a pepperoni. A yeah, yeah, he does kind. Of, he looks like a. Oh, he looks like a Slim Jim. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, toast can. Yeah, cereals. Cinnamon. <laughs> 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 Because in my, it's it's a it's a childhood fever dream for me, but for you, I guess it's a new experience. And that's the Cindy Man. Hey, because Cindy Man is the winner. Man. Why is this the next video that gets recommended right after? <laughs> this is the video that's recommended right after. Signs of all. <laughs> After I hear this guy go, I see the man. <laughs> How do you know if you have autism? You're like, wait, what are you saying? You're oh too. What are you doing? <laughs> Cindy man has the autism. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are we, boy. This is why we don't skip ad reads. This is why we don't skip ads. ads. Yeah. You never skip the ads. There's always something uh, to learn from me. Fucking gold mine of 14 memes. 14 grams of protein, 4 net grams of carbs, oh, and it's only No, wet obs. Sure. Wet <laughs> <laughs> Only 140 calories. Sound too good to be true? Trust me, yeah. it's the real deal. No, it's, I I mean, it's good dry. news, but calm down. <laughs> it's good <laughs> news. <laughs> Honestly, if someone, I, if someone I, came to me and said, like, hey, we've discovered, like, warp <laughs> travel, we can travel faster than light and reach the oh, galaxy, God. they just made a breakthrough in the science lab. I'm like, uh, okay, that sounds too good to be true. I don't think there's any serial-related serial fact you could come to tell me. Serial has a like, long time travel. <laughs> too good to be true. Unless it's like, hey, time have you tried tra time travel -os? They're really delicious. Yeah. Time travel <laughs> like a snack or old school like I'm 10 years old again on a Saturday morning. Oh, oh and it gets better. Magic Spoon oh, is, is keto you? friendly, gluten free, grain free, and soy free. That's the exact <laughs> same word. You ain't gonna get none of that <laughs> shitty soy. Don't you worry. That's an interesting bowl. Not that even... bowl is high for how it is shaped, you know? Like it, like the bottom 
concave. I, yeah, you're right, Rex. Mm. That's a weird mm. looking bowl. It is. It's very tall. <clears throat> it's very. Well, it looks tall. like if you were to flip it upside down, it would just look like a big button. I think it yeah. just. It, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. Cool, but it wobbles. It's on. <laughs> a button that you can't press. What is this heresy? Uh, yeah, yeah. Or like one of those. It looks like one of those lights you stick to things and you hit the light and you know, it goes. And, and it turns on and off, mm -hmm. those big ones. So click on the link in the description to grab a variety pack and try it today. Use the promo code to match. I actually wanted to try those, to get $5 but they don't send them to I mean, Germany. I'd give them a shot, you know. I'd give them yeah, a shot. I can't get them in German man You land. don't deserve them in German man. That's true. I, well, I feel like if I'm really going to have cereal, I'm going to go with something that I know I really enjoy. Because those look, they do look You don't want to risk you know, the bad, is They're it? just little Fruit Loops is what they look like. They do look like Fruit Loops, yeah. They look Any... like little Fruit Loops, and I or... know if I'm going to go to the store, if I go down to the CVS and see if they've got specials on boxes of cereal, I'm grabbing the honey bunches of oats or something fruity. Like, with actual fruit, not just, oh, look, it's, uh, this one's red and this one's green. No, 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 no. Like, fucking dried strawberries and that shit. You go to the shops and be like, hey, man, you got cinnamon? Dude. <laughs> hey, man, you have cinnamon. Dude, it's going to be weird to go back to Spider-Man. It feels like we've been here for so long now, the, the cereal. <laughs> Like, ah, this was nice. This was nice. This was a nice break. Don't you break. mean Spider-Man? Spider-Man! Spider-Man! Spider <laughs> or just go right to magicspoon.com slash Tommaso. Thank you again to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah, good job, Magic Spoon. Back to Spider-Man. Not only do I think plot is a major issue for the cutaways, but I think a lot of it is coverage related. Why did he show the cut of the cane there with Daredevil? Yeah, because if anything, that... that's a really cool reveal shot for anybody who's very yeah. familiar with Daredevil. You can immediately know that's him. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah that's a real <gasps> moment. A lawyer who's blind and needs a cane? <gasps> and this is and he's like, white? These are the kind of shots you compliment when the frame being where it is on Peter isn't the only dimension of the importance of how yeah. they've composited it. It's going to be that his hand comes in the way of it. Which is like, he's here to rescue him, and look who it fucking is. It has meta benefits. Your issue for the cutaways, but I think a lot of it is coverage related as well. I don't know what you mean by coverage related, but... Well, let's see what he has yeah. to say. Oftentimes when editing, you will piece together scenes from multiple different takes to make the ideal scene that you want for your film. So in order to hide all these little cuts of continuity, you're going to cut to a reaction shot or even a b-roll shot. That's these... Completely right, yeah. You, you can run a scene like yeah. five times and then cut all the best bits of it to make your scene. That could be one reason why you do it, but if you got it all in the first take and it was great, and then you choose to just use different cameras as, as it happened, which is probably what happened a lot of the time with... Um, I think Jay told me that... Um, I can't remember what part of Doctor Who's filming it was, but they had to do... I think it was the first season. Everything only was allowed one take. You had to get it right. Well, it's because really? uh, back in the day, film, how much film you had, uh, that was like a consideration, right? Like, you're, you, you, whereas now, if you shoot on digital, it's like, well, you just like delete or override or save, but oh. like, film is. Film I never is, like, thought a, about a that. Resource. Well, he was saying that's that yeah, like, there's this moment where I think someone gets a line wrong and someone like corrects him, and it's like a part of the episode. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> wait, what? which is, yeah. It's got a like, very stage play feel to it. <laughs> yeah. I obviously can't be certain if Watts was just hiding cuts to Frankenstein scenes together, but the sheer volume of them sometimes makes me really question it as a deliberate... And I'm sure there are no cuts in the Raimi trilogy or any other really good film, I'm sure. Do not enjoy the usage of the word Frankensteining scenes together. Why? Because I think that... I hear that and I think, oh, you took a bunch of things which by themselves were devoid of use and through your incredible talent and skill you put them together and gave them an entirely new life of their own but uh, i know that's not how he meant them but that's what my brain thinks of well so i was actually going to go a different direction but still equally annoyed with how you started that frankenstein <laughs> is often yeah. used I, I i know people will use it to be like you shoved a bunch of stuff together and you made a hideous creature but like the stuff here is all a part like these scenes are shot as though they're scenes and then he pieces them together with the best pieces to make the most coherent scene how does like even with the understanding of frankensteining something being the thing i just mentioned like if that's his view of it like how could you say that that's what this is <laughs> if anything it's like you've you had a frankenstein potentially as a result of using all of the same cuts from the same shot 
and then you were like, let's cut one out and put a different one in to correct it and make it look better. You know what I mean? It's, it's um, mm -hmm. feels a little bit confused, no matter which way. Yeah, you, you want to, if you want to be more accurate, then I guess maybe you should say it's like, it's, it's Jerry rigged. Hmm. You know, like it, because I, I think Frankensteining something together, it implies a lot of craftsmanship, even if it's a bit macabre craftsmanship that ultimately leads to, you know, what well, I explained I, earlier. I understand but, what you mean. Like, I, I think that's an interesting, yeah. it might even affect how I use it in future. Now you've said that. I'm like, yeah, that's true. A creative decision. I just can't help but imagine how it's beautiful what it would have been. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, we can, we can have this conversation because I, oh, no. uh, both are. Both are acceptable. They're jerry rigged and jury rigged. They both work. It's it's both the same thing. I have no idea basically just, which one's correct. Yeah, they're both. They're oh, essentially yeah. both uh, correct. Yeah. So you could say you could say both of them. They're they're perfectly fine. What's you about to say? Oh, sorry. Uh, let's roll him back a bit. <laughs> I don't know what he's about to <laughs> Bringy, say. It's going to be horrible. Bringy, calm down. <laughs> you're just too excited. <laughs> to be fair, seeing Andrew Garfield at one of his best scenes in the film with this video, it's like, yeah. oh, geez, what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stop him. Stop. I just can't help but imagine how beautiful it would have been to see Andrew Garfield's performance on the rooftop really play out. Right as he lets his solo and Did reveals the rage that he's unleashed we since we yeah. last saw him in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, we just keep cutting back to Tom so oh, it no, is look at oh, these three no. different expressions. So, yeah. I, I'm I'm just gonna say, like, this is a pretty absurd statement. We need to see how to uh, see. Exactly. Tom Holland Peter is reacting. We need that. We absolutely They're here to talk need to him. We, I, I, we need here's it. the hot take. The point of this scene. If we're only allowed yeah. one character to see in this scene, it's Tom. It's gotta be. Well, I mean, My they God. made the correct choice, right? We see both of them. We yeah, see, that's the correct we choice. We see yeah. Andrew Garfield giving his performance, and he's doing great. And we also see the reaction that we need, because the whole point of this scene is we are the Spider-Man are trying to essentially convince Peter to stay the course that, like, may, you know, set him on. Yeah, he's currently in this scene about to press the button, which will send them all back and likely get them killed. Right? Mm -hmm. These Spider-Men yeah. are trying to convince him that what he's feeling right now, which is pushing that decision, it's not going to lead you to anywhere good. They've been there. We need to see him. We need to see him react to that information. We need it. Really important. Um, so, like, yeah, I, I mean, this is, this is, man, this is a perspective you can hold for sure. <laughs> but like, This is what I mean. Like, uh, if he were here, I'd be like, do you really think that we shouldn't have seen Tom's reaction to this speech? Do you really think that? Mm -hmm. And the same thing happens with Toby. These are characters. Yes, yes, of course it does. Mm -hmm. Characters we literally never thought we'd see again on screen. And John Watts just refuses to let them be. Oh. There's a big appeal to meta here. But see, Jesus, like, you know, it annoys me that. It's, it's bad enough that this is his perspective, okay? But I would accept it if he was willing to just admit this is John Watts' preference. And that there's no way you can argue that one is definitively better than the other. If you ha if that was the video, I'd be much more on board with this. If he said, like, I understand why he's done this, but I would way prefer to focus on the person giving this story and then show Tom's reaction. And at that point, I'd just be like, I mean, yeah, you know, th that's what you want, that's what you want. But he seems to have no idea why John Watts has made this choice. Like, he's like, oh, he can't resist to cut stuff on screen. Look, I understand this is Tom Holland's Peter Parker's story. It's not about Willem Dafoe, Garfield, or Maguire. But in a film full of cliche, on-the-nose fan service moments... You know, I'm something of a You can't... Like, you this can't look, make that argument. ...make the complaint about this line of the meta. He is something of a scientist himself. So, if no one knows about meta information and watches this film, and you say, I hate that line, Right, and your only argument's going to be meta, they would be like, wait, why? It's in character. He is a scientist. Yeah. And he's letting that be known so he can leverage his way out of the prison. Yeah. And you'd be like, yeah, but you don't know? It's like a meme line. And you're like, oh. I guess that's pretty cool. And they go, no, 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 it's not cool. It's a meme. You're like, oh. I, I mean, it's achieving character while also referencing something in the meta that might satisfy fans. I don't know, that feels like it's not, not good. Okay. Yeah, if you can achieve something that is both a cool fan service moment, but also entirely uh, appropriate. If anything, the origin of finding out that it's a meme line for that person who hadn't seen the Remy films might be like, wait, yeah. so you, you're pointing out that it's a line he has said before, so it's in character. Yeah. 
logical sense. Like when when Otto says the power of the sun in the palm of my hand, it's like he said that before. It's really important to him. And and yeah, like he's he's dealing with Stark tech that was fucking bazillions of years beyond what he had in the Raimi universe because it's yeah, yeah like why? And it's great because it's literally in the palm of his hand, like literally in his I hand. I mean, these this is what I fucking have trouble with okay? <laughs> with a lot of these people. <laughs> It's the, like, ah, uh, memory and references and jangling keys. Like, no! It's about how it's contextualized, how it's executed. There's reason behind these lines and these, these appearances. It's not just bullshit. Yeah. So. It would have been nice to deliver the fan service moments that actually mattered. The hell? Maybe. What? What? It would be nice to deliver the fan service moments that actually matter. What? You mean, like... Th that whole I mean, it wouldn't even that's just the story like that scene I don't know if I'd call that fan service that's just like the story at this point it's just the story yeah wait yeah. is well, he saying that, I, is he saying it's fan service saying, for Willem Dafoe to do a speech as Green Goblin I mean that is a loose definition of fan service I wouldn't adhere to I was gonna I say like, like what the fuck's the difference at this point yeah because at this point any story that's a sequel is fan service right because you're yeah. leveraging characters that exist yeah. Yeah, I'd be like, Aunt May's only here because she was in the prior movies. It's fan service. And you'd be like, what? Why? Yeah, yeah because the, the fan service things that we get, we see, and are pointed out, so I don't really understand which scenes he means. I think he's saying... I think he is be referring fair. to the goblin scene. I think he yeah, is. I think he's saying that the goblin speech matters, and it's fan service. Him saying I'm a scientist is a fan service, and it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, when we were watching Resident Evil and we saw Ruby Rose and and, and Resident Evil, she got fan service. She did. <laughs> Maybe I'm just carrying too much baggage from the Raimi films, but we yes, yeah, yes. tiny bit. <laughs> Let it go. It's okay. <laughs> really connected with the villains on a more personal level in those films. I um, we mm. absolutely connected with Norman on a personal level in this film. I. I mean, we said it in our coverage, so I, I mean, you know, I just, I, I'm just gonna say that, but like, I, I'm sorry, I thought his performance was fucking top tier 11 out of 10 in No Way Home. Oh yeah. And I really like his performance in the Raimi films. you probably see which one I prefer in terms of Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin, and that is not an unpopular position. Um, it's not. I mean, he's not. a more experienced actor playing this role at this point. And man, yeah, like, he's just it. desperately trying to twist into Peter just like he did in his movie with uh, Maguire, like, with a new Peter. And, like, I don't know, it just felt like they cranked up the... the, the, the menace. The dial. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah. In fact, even non-monologue-heavy scenes where it's just two characters simply speaking, frames still hold, and we never really... So you've... It's too late now. You just said it. Frame holding is better. Yeah. You haven't said why. You just said it is. Mm -hmm. Quickly also, cut around. Frame with two people sounds pretty simple. Only two people. Oh no, Rags! Look, there's a third one. Basket? Are those? Are the, those? Those are really long breadsticks. They're very long and thin. They are high society breadsticks. Oh, that that <laughs> explains it because I don't. I've never had Wouldn't a high, high society, society breadsticks. Bread I'm a, speed. Shorter, or isn't it like a common thing with fine dining that like the portions are smaller, but longer? So, surely fine... <laughs> so, so they're smaller yeah, they're... and longer. Right? They are thinner and longer. Yeah, just thinner thinner everything is thinner and longer. The, and the more the more fine dining you are, the closer the breadsticks turn into just swords. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're just long poles that multiple people have to carry in on their shoulders, and they have to do it carefully. If they slip and fall on it, it's game over. <laughs> <laughs> you bring your uh, pail with breadsticks. You bring your girl to this restaurant. She doesn't know how high class it is, and they just walking out with one really thin, long breadstick, and she's like, "Whoa!" And you're like, "Yeah." Yeah. yeah, it's like a Mel yeah. Brooks gag where it just keeps going and <laughs> yeah. going and going out <laughs> <in> the door. <laughs> like modern films. I also realize attention spans have changed and we're glued to devices pumping content to us in shorter and shorter duration. Mm, so, so we need to have more cuts. Okay. Uh, I, more I mean, cut. what? This kind of for more cuts as if this would be the explanation. I guess I, could, I can allow this <laughs> in terms of just like, so I'm pretty sure they're doing more cuts because people are losing attention faster. And if you hold the frame, that's more boring -er for a lot of people. I'd just be like, I mean, I maybe, but I get, why do you assume that that's the reason as opposed to this, what John Watts wants to show? 
Yeah. Like, oh, you gotta have more cuts. Obviously, it's like a mandated thing because audiences are getting, you know, more ADHD riddled. It's like, or, really? Or it's implying that that's what John Watts is appealing to. It's like, yeah. well, I gotta have more cuts because, you know, the kids these days. ...on loops, but we go to the movies for a different experience. Dramatic Born cinema doesn't have to be cut like a TikTok <laughs> why, for us. That, why would you so focus on that and say that's the experience of the cinema we want? <laughs> I guess, I guess, maybe he googled cinema pictures or something? Dirty floor. Know. The dirty floor. Is this a, maybe it's a shot from one of the movies because I don't recognize it. I don't know. And I know that that guy's supposed to be a popped popcorn, but it looks like a ghost. It, it just oh, is does. it? I thought it was a ghost. Oh, I imagine well, that a popped popcorn <laughs> ghost. That's a pretty terrifying existence. You, like, yeah. burn <laughs> you burn to death and then you explode. And he's yeah. he's so happy. He's happy. Popcorn. So you guys. He are, is happy. You guys happy are crazy. Ghost. Okay, that guy is. He's like having a loads butterfly, of fun. Butterfly, but popcorn. Well, if a what, popcorn what is... was a Jedi and died and became a Force ghost, it would be the ghost would be a of their popcorn, popcorn ghost. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. delicious, delicious yeah. ghost. But Unless what it was is Hayden a... Christensen, he would still be a colonel. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what is I'm popcorn sorry. if not the ghost be on of the, the ear colonel with his they brother. from? Exactly. Not the colonel persevering. Durations on loops, but we go to the movies for a different experience. Dramatic cinema doesn't have to be cut like a TikTok for us. So, funnily enough, I already actually disagree with him, even if I agreed with his initial foundation there. So, if he said to me, Do you agree that everyone's obsessed with like quick and fast things now because of their phones and stuff, and that's why the movie reflects that? And then, I, if I said yes to that, he said, Therefore, well, therefore, that's why he's doing it, but he shouldn't because we go to the cinema for like, you know, more theatrical experiences. I'd be like, No. Because, I mean, at that point, it would explain why a lot of action movies tend to do really well, right? Like, there, there is a lot of cuts. It is very fast-paced, usually, like, with a lot of the... Like, wouldn't it follow that the theater is just seconds behind what everyone's doing culturally in terms of, like, catching up or whatever? I don't know why you wouldn't just connect those two. Um, yeah. I thought the point he was going to make was going to be this can explain why, like, more contemplative, character-focused films are getting less popular. I thought he was going to go that way, but instead he was like, no, we don't go to the cinema for... You know, fast cut, fast paced stuff, and it's like we don't. We don't. Seems like people do. Feels like people yeah. do. Yeah. I mean, this film is the most popular film of how many years? Like, it's made more money. It than... is. It is the uh, highest grossing standalone superhero film like ever. It's it's made more money than the first two Avengers movies. It nearly made as much money as Infinity War. And what was so was Endgame the last movie to beat it out in general? Uh. Yes, I don't think any film. I think it is the highest grossing film since Endgame. Oh, Morbius. Yeah, no. that's true. Morbius did have the GDP of the whole planet, uh, like in terms of its box office gross. Yeah, true. it made um, more billions. I would then posit that he should feel like this comment isn't exactly accurate. Because he said this film is like the result of ADHD, like taking that into account for, for cuts. But that's not what people go to the theater for. And yet this film is the most popular theater-going experience in the last three years? Yeah, Who pretty much. So how do you square those away <laughs> as, as thoughts? Wait, is it, is it ADD or ADHD here? It's ADHD. Um, they're, they're, I think they're well, both they're two different things, aren't different. they? Yeah, yeah, they're, are they're, they? Okay. Yeah. yeah so, isn't ADD attention deficit disorder? Yeah, and it's yeah, ADHD and... is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Yeah. Yeah, so ADD mm. is like ADHD, but without the hyperactive component. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. They are different. Right, cause I didn't know. I didn't know if they were, like, similar. Oh, or wait. Well, different. no. Some things are saying that ADD is the outdated term, and ADHD is the current term. Huh. I was, oh. I was told that it was, like, two different things. I'm going to just... Yeah, because what if um, I have an attention disorder, but I'm not hyperactive? Well, so that's... This article is saying that, um... The, the condition was separated, or formally it was separated into two. There was ADD with hyperactivity and then ADD without hyperactivity. But then in oh, 1987, okay. they revised the two subtypes into one condition, ADHD. Um, someone in chat said, the guy's point is that Raimi is show don't tell, whereas Watts is tell don't show, and he has it backwards. Yeah, wouldn't more cuts mean you're trying to show more? I don't... Just, I just don't. I, there's so much that I'd have to disagree with that statement. So many things. I don't even yeah. feel it's worth going into. I just. Uh, yeah, it's it. not. We should. Because we show don't tell is. We've been over. It's getting progressively more and more annoying to hear just as a thing. I'm just like, show don't tell. 
Dramatic cinema doesn't have to be cut like a TikTok for us to feel moved. It's weird because- I appreciate you showing a scene from No Way Home that is not uh, like a TikTok video. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it seems to be two characters talking and cuts seem to be appropriate we, based off of who's speaking. We have Peter Parker, Tobey Maguire, Peter Parker, Andrew Garfield, MJ, Ned, and Ned's mother in this scene. And he's like, the motherfucker has the balls to cut between these characters when they're speaking. Ridiculous. Like, oh. Yeah, I guess he could have had a shot where they're all around a table and he could have just shown them all. Yeah, that's an option. And he's like, that would have been better. Because I still think John Watts is obviously a competent and talented director, and even with all the faults of the editing I just mentioned... You haven't yeah, mentioned claimed. any faults yet! Claims. <laughs> claims were made, they were not substantiated. I mean, I can't even, like, understand how he's rationalized it other than him saying... I think at one point he said he's much more invested in, like, the character of Green Goblin in Raimi's films. And it seems that he's tying that to how long the frame sits on him, as opposed to the dialogue and the delivery. Yeah, the motivations of the characters and the uh, you know, stuff. Because uh, I think it was Fring that mentioned it, but like, you may want to highlight as well that just because we cut to Aunt May or Electro or whoever else, still hear Willem Dafoe's voice. Right. You'll hear what he's saying. And it's especially effective when he, he references someone or something in his speech and they cut to a particular person, it might be trying to tell you something, subtextually. There's also a lot Especially of Especially if he's manipulating people. Like Electro. You, wanna, you, you, you need to see somebody reacting to him if they are being manipulated. Because like, I understand wanting to see Willem Dafoe deliver the lines. I, I, get, it, I get it. Uh, there's just more than that that's being achieved here, and instead you've rated that as there's more than that being shown for plot reasons, like very dismissively. Imaginative and creative sequences in this film. In that scene we first mentioned when Norman turns into Green Goblin, there's this epic tracking shot as Peter's spidey sense kicks in and he slowly narrows. I'm gonna pause just because this visual's gone on for a lot longer than. Yeah. Uh, and probably come Yeah, up. they're holding the frame way too long. <laughs> they are holding the frame. <laughs> <laughs> throwing in on who's causing this disturbance. It's a little glimpse of beautiful filmmaking that just gets immediately shattered by an over- oh. It's not no, shattered, it's still it's valuable for what it is. Yeah, oh man. No. Up in your head, in your, your, your magic spoon Why land, but- I mean, it just, it just feels incomplete, <laughs> like he- Yeah, like, why does he feel he's proven this? I don't feel he's proven this at all, I don't even know what the not argument is. Nowhere close. If anything, he's heard his argument with his own examples. I mean, yeah, I don't even disagree, because the fact is now that we have to concede there's at least one good scene, and I'll just be like, how many scenes are good in this film, out of curiosity, by your own metrics, and how do you decide? Overly complicated plot moment in the middle of a dramatic character Overly moment. complicated Overly plot complicated. Moment. It's not really that hard to understand. Yeah, it's not that complicated. <laughs> he's, he's appealed to having gotten lost a couple of times in different portions of this video, and it's like, she's grabbing the cures. You even said that you didn't need that many shots to show that. And now you're arguing that you couldn't understand it. It was too complicated. You can't have both. And if you're really getting lost on the fact that uh, Electra said, what the hell? I can explain it. It's because he doesn't understand why Norman has had a complete change in personality. He doesn't know what the fuck's going on here. And then Norman mentions a little thing about gods. And it's just enough to push Electra over the edge. Hell? Now look, without speaking to these filmmakers, I can only assume that they want to make something great. I doubt anybody is intentionally trying to make something confusing or bad. But <laughs> no one's confused you, except yeah. you, I'm afraid. I was gonna say, like, it's not even that, it's just, why are you confused? What was confusing? I don't understand. In the very yeah, specific the case of, of big, big films like Marvel, you can also understand and sympathize with the frustrations that must arise for a filmmaker. Trying to shoehorn in big plot devices, universe- Why is it shoehorned? Shoehorned? It's not shoehorned, oh. it's essential. I don't understand. I, I don't think you know how we use that word, sir. Yeah, you're saying it, but it doesn't- it's not the thing you say it is. When sometimes you just want to make a small indie level drama, it has to be difficult. That's not what and this I really movie is! <laughs> I'm saying that John the sentence. I don't know. It's... Is what? this implication that John Watts didn't want to make this movie? Instead, he wanted to make a tiny little indie drama, but instead, oh damn, I have to make Spider Man No Way Home. My and then after tied. having to make two films under the studio system, he's like, you know what? The third time around, hopefully, I can make my small indie film. 
Cuts are lazy. They can be sloppy on the day of filming. Cuts are not lazy. Cuts are lazy. That is a very bold statement. All cuts? Like, it depends, right? It yes. depends on if... <laughs> it has to it, depend. It, 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 <laughs> yeah. Why would you say that? Cuts can be lazy. Are lazy. Not necessarily. Lazy. Like, I just... I disagree. Cuts are gonna be in basically they don't even have to be in it they're just they're neutral we need to find out what the cut is cuts are like all tools of storytelling someone chat just said i eat my pizza whole no cuts nice <laughs> <laughs> they don't end like a little that pizza position. burrito mm. yeah Jen. <laughs> which is why spider-man no way home will always hold a very special place in my heart but i still just Whatever. wish john watts would simply hold no! No! <laughs> uh, no! Wait, are, you, are you done? Uh, we're eight and a half minutes in, and how much of that was a This is yeah. probably the end. Yeah, I think we're done. Big, frame. Like, yeah, 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 yeah that's it, we're done. There, well, yeah, because, because, the right, hold on, how long is that? So, because there was a magic spoon, that was about a minute, and there's, and now we're at eight minutes, so that was a seven minute long video. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So I hope you like this new essay. This was something that I saw pointed yeah. out in quite a few of the reviews. Oh, that was you in the Spider Man commercial. It was, yeah. And No Way Home. So I kind of <laughs> want to just dive into why it was happening and how you could possibly. No, you didn't dive no, you into didn't, anything. Though. This video yeah, was you, shit. you really didn't. You, just claim, you can't just claim things are a way. You have to physically. You have to go through the evidence. You have to. You have to act like the people you're talking to don't agree with you, and they're skeptical of what you say, and you have to work to convince them. Well, I find it interesting that he's like, I saw everyone discussing things and they weren't quite sure of what they were annoyed at, and I feel like that I've answered it for you now. And it's like, what? You know, what? <laughs> in chat, someone said, essay seven minutes. Now, I don't know how it translates for people, but like, seven minutes is probably two pages. Like, two pages. It's a short essay. I don't know. Like, it's a real short essay. Possibly it's less than a thousand anything. words. I mean, well, oh, yeah, well, I guess seven minutes is nothing. The thing is, I, I'll even defend the short man out there. I'll be like, you can make something that's not shit in seven Absolutely minutes. Absolutely, you sure can. <laughs> I, I like short form stuff sometimes. Like, there's there's val validity to all sorts of formats, especially if you want to hone in on a very specific topic. But, like, for the seven minutes that we have, it feels like we didn't achieve much. Because a lot of it was just essentially the conclusion you would have to draw if you agree with this is holding the frame is just good. It is good. Um, like, it is always a preference. It's always the thing that you should be defaulting to. Which is a... I don't know. That, if you want to say that, that's something you really got to substantiate with more you than a work. couple of references. Especially we had two if references. You're only giving yourself seven minutes. Um, yeah, it, it feels like, like the people who agreed with this were probably like, this feels about right. Yeah, this is probably the problem. Nice. Good video. Like, really? Okay. He didn't even do, like, a mock-up of the scene just to show how it could have been achieved the exact same thing but with fewer cuts like he, he didn't really do that he just kind of just said cuts are bad and then that was that was all she wrote i suppose his argument that you could fish out of all of this would have been that the camera should have just held on willem dafoe for the whole scene except maybe one cut to show may getting the the stuff the thing is like I don't know why this would be intuitive to him when it's just like, yeah, but then we lose all of the people's reactions to everything Willem Dafoe is doing, and then we lose the specifics of May getting those uh, uh, cures. Like the, the shot of her hand, or the fact that she's grabbing each and every one, not just one. Well, like, if we didn't show it would be fair for people to wonder why she had them. I would say that. It would be fair for people to be like, wait, Well, yeah, we would be like, them? I guess she grabbed them. And you're like, all right. Yeah. To your own storytelling and filmmaking to not make that so by the way I, i'm not entirely against the idea of you could make it that way i just think it was worthwhile seeing the fact that she immediately when willem dafoe starts doing that it ensures the safety of the cures mm -hmm. like that it tells us stuff about it Same mistake that being said the blueprint already exists we had willem dafoe in the raimi films no that's, that's not a, a different blueprint. scene it's an entirely you can't just say oh, it's the same character we had a blueprint no it's an entirely different scene I just really wish John. Do you just Watts see a person and you're like, oh, it's that as opposed to just pull? I wish John Watts had pulled more from that. You just wanted him to not move the camera. And that's you not just want to see about. that film again. Yeah. I guess you just want to see that movie again because that's Probably. what it sounds like.
complicating everything with all this side plot and just. What do you? What, what, the side plot. The so cures are a side plot. How can you say plot. that? It's it's the plot. It's like it's like the most important element of the film for his character's journey, like like deciding to cure these villains. And he's like this is fucking side plot stuff. I was like, what do you mean? I feel like it's um because yeah, that was sort of the tone in the whole video was that the cures weren't all that important. It's like oh, this is like we got a lot of plot that we need to get in here, and the fact that he said side plots like that was the plot. That is the, the plot. plot is yeah. the cures. <laughs> It is about the cures. The cures are essential to the whole idea of the film, in part, which is saving the the villains, trying to save them, because that's what Spider-Man do. Just, like, the big payoff for Peter at the end is that he chooses to spare Goblin and cure him. The cures yeah. are central. It is not side plot. It is very important. I'm not even sure... Anything like, that isn't Willem Dafoe talking alone in a room is side plot. <laughs> Everything other than Well, yeah, plot. I think that's... I uh, I don't want to... Because it just kind of comes across to me as, like, something that I've noticed in some video essays is, like, that it seems as though the only aspects of filmmaking that exist are cinematography and acting. That, like, a bunch of other aspects of filmmaking just kind of get forgotten. Yeah, Sometimes dialogue, it's music gets included. Plot. Well, the writing, mm -hmm. mainly. Right? Writing, like, what's yeah. happening and... and um what you know like what do we need to achieve narratively through writing it, it always feels like it's very and i guess you know right because it's filmmaking right so you acting and cinematography are aspects of filmmaking that are unique to filmmaking by comparison to like novels or i guess even reading the screenplay itself so it's not like it's un it's not like it's invalid to bring those things up it just feels like we get so focused on well no filmmaking is acting and shots um that we ignore that we also need to achieve just core narrative writing objectives at the same time like showing what's it's happening kind of, with all the cures it's kind of like saying construction is hammer and screwdrivers a little bit yeah it's like it is but it's a lot of other things too and it's important not to lose those i see it as funnier in my head if you had said hammers and screws <laughs> <laughs> crap that takes away from a great performance from willem dafoe andrew garfield I'm sorry, but also a film is not just there to idolize one actor's monologue. There's there's other people and stuff that's happening, and yeah. you can't just say, "Oh, it's taking away from Willem Dafoe." It's like, okay, there are other characters in the film, and there's like a plot happening. So I'm sorry that not every scene can be Willem Dafoe in a mirror. Bill, Toby, all of them. I just hate that it was constantly cutting away from their faces, and it refused. To yeah, and what was it cutting to? Other people's faces. Other people's faces, yeah. And he explicitly complains. He's like, why do I gotta see Tom Holland reacting to Tobey Maguire telling him about his dead relatives? Focus on Tobey! It's just like, oh man. To hold the frame. A little Stop saying that! <laughs> like, <laughs> hold the frame. You're like, eh. <laughs> but a channel housekeeping. So a lot of you originally subscribed to this channel because I did tech reviews and camera reviews and all that kind of stuff. And... I'll still be I mean, doing you should go back to them. Them. You should go back to them. Maybe you knew what you I'm, were talking about back then. I'm sure he was great at them, and I, I think that those... Yeah, they're a better prospect. I'm sure you have great information on cameras. Um, yeah. I'm just going to assume you knew what you were talking about back then. Channel, as well as these new sort of movie essays and reviews. But if you're really focused in on the tech side of the things that I make, I'm going to start putting those videos up on a new channel called Patrick Two Masso. So if you're into phones, tablets, ah, uh, like, I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, he needs to capitalize the two though. That's all right. Plays <laughs> tech, all that kind of stuff. Head over to Patrick Tumasso and subscribe. We already have a review of the new Apple Studio display up on that channel, and I'll have a Mac Studio video up. How much does that video. cost? Probably so like subscribe. five thousand bucks, right? That's like Apple. That's how much. Mm. Apple what, what's costs. it called? It's worth it. The Apple Studio display. Well, yeah, because I think the, um Apple. Ah, uh, damn. Or I'm mixing up with. No, I think Apple. No, no, Apple's... no, no. I'm mixing up. The studio displays yeah. looks like they're everything from sixteen hundred to two thousand dollars. Uh, and is that just for the monitor or is that actually the iMac that has a computer there it's too? set oh wait i was oh the studio display standard glass vase uh is i that think just... it's just the display and two thousand dollars uh the and, new and studio the stand display... is a thousand dollars i'm pretty sure as well wait you, the stand doesn't come with the screen this is apple oh, no. they're evil Are you... the stand so... doesn't no, come on, you're taking the piss, right? The stand comes no. with the screen. 
no, so it looks like not. the the Apple the studio display they start at sixteen hundred. Um, nah, so much money. <laughs> it looks like yeah, there is there's three mics with six speakers, fourteen point seven million pixels, six hundred nits of brightness, one billion colors, P three wide color. It's this is for a twenty seven inch five K oh. Retina display. I have it's no doubt that it. this is a really good screen. Um, yeah. The question would be, is it worth that much money? Mm, um, maybe. Especially if the stand costs $1,000 too. And let me guess, the only place that sells the stand that is compatible with it is Apple. Well, let me right? look up the stand. Um, well, Memes just posted it, the Pro Stand. Every aspect of the Pro Stand was designed with pros in mind. Height, tilt, rotation is completely adjustable, allowing your Pro Display XDR <gasps> to fit seamlessly into any work environment. And how much does this cost? <laughs> it's okay, so it, it, it's so in, in Australian dollars, it is $1,699. That is insane. Is it more expensive than the fucking screen? The screens are just a racket to sell the stands. It's the other <laughs> way around. I'm the surprised you guys didn't, really knew about, didn't know about this. The stands, I knew are, about I'm this. pretty sure, are made of diamond, right? Like this. They better sense. fucking uh, be. <laughs> uh, and again, it's a matter of this. Probably is a good stand. Is it worth a thousand dollars? Like now, to more be than a thousand dollars. You can get a you can get a feet kit for your Apple Mac Pro. And those are 450. But I think what's really important is that if you want to be a little bit more mobile and you want to put them on wheels, then that's a thousand fifty. thousand dollars to attach wheels. Uh, that's that's awesome. well, well, if you want to, well, you could use the mount adapter for three hundred fifty dollars. That that is like uh, how, how yeah, because it's just here. I somehow As expect that mount adapter to be more oh, expensive than that. Honestly, also. AirPods Pro costs four hundred dollars. Now I don't know what headphones you're ever gonna get that are gonna be worth four hundred dollars. I I think you could make if you get standalone, super high quality, like proper. Yeah, like uh, the ones that when you wear over your ears. I mean, because I yeah, actually yeah 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 I bought a new set of headphones and it did cost me a bit. It didn't cost me four hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, I can I can believe someone says I got a pair of headphones and they were yeah, four hundred dollars and they're top of the line. AirPods? Not earpods. They put you put them in their little. They're in your ears, like four hundred dollars. Uh, is it, is it like because a, there is a yoga mat? There is a market for this, presumably, like crazy rich people well, have I, no idea. I what presume doing. there is a market. There has to be a market, right? These products exist, and Apple makes a ton of money. Um, I guess it's just a matter of like, damn, that's a lot of money. Jeez, I oh, that kind of money get... for a monitor. Jeez, you could get a crate. You could get. I don't know if I could spend that much money if I wanted like a proper gaming monitor. I don't know if I could. Like we're talking curved, two hundred forty hertz, four K, this top of the line that that you could get like one millisecond response time the best game monitor you could get i don't know if i could buy one that expensive maybe they exist i'm sure that they do exist i guess it's just Good that luck. um these these prices these are like this is so much money gaming monitor gaming monitor 4k on amazon and we're getting uh, da, 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 yeah we're getting like uh 250 330 let me i gotta scroll down to find some expensive ones so this yoga mat doesn't even have any tech in it it's just really expensive you are and the tech an, i am the weapon fitness there is an apple fitness and what they sell uh, it's a mat that costs 230 dollars apple fitness plus in this budget you into your <laughs> <laughs> yeah. fitness plus what does that mean there's fitness and then there's, there's fitness, fitness for plus. fat people i guess <laughs> <laughs> I found a seven hundred. Yeah, I found a seven hundred fifty dollar monitor, thirty two inches, which is quite big. Um, four K, one hundred forty four hertz. Um, yeah, it, this is yeah, and that's it's on that, and that's only seven fifty. And I think that's the most expensive one here. If I go to, jeez, yeah, here's one seventy hertz. For that's only fourteen forty p. That's going to be less, I bet. Yeah, it's only three hundred nine dollars. Jeez, well, so I, I guess so living. Here, I thought it was bad because I got I got an iPod, uh, not an iPod, an iPad, and I got the pen, and you have to pay for the pen separate. I thought that was bad, but like the pen didn't cost thousand dollars. Like no. it wasn't a stand. You <laughs> well, need a stand. It's a shit pen then. <laughs> like you need the stand. You don't need the pen, but you need the stand. 
and it costs a thousand dollars. What are you meant to attach the screen to if you don't have the stand? Like, do you just tape it to the wall? I think they have like a normal stand on that, but then you can buy oh, the super see, duper one. The hyper diaper, hyper, yeah. hyper super diaper. Duper. Do they give you a <laughs> shitty one by default that just makes you ne essentially need Want a to new get the stand? new one? Yeah. Maybe, right. Did you I do that on purpose? Know. You said hyper diaper, that they said you, you said I they give you the shitty type. one. Oh, oh, right, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't even catch I wasn't sure. That I wasn't sure if that was intentional or not. I was like, what is that? No. <laughs> no. Point being. No. No. That, no. 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 Well, die. You know, Willem Dafoe would have made a great Palpatine. Yeah, yeah. he would have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, well, a lot of people are like, curious about him as Joker, and I'm like, I wonder if he'd be able to do it in a way that wouldn't just make us think of a Green Goblin, though. Um, I think so. I think he's got that kind of talent. If this was another actor, I might say I'd no. I'd want to give him a shot I, at it. I just wonder. Absolutely. Even if he fails, it'll be magnificent, and I'll watch <clears> every <throat> goddamn second of it. Oh, yeah. We should I think living video, right? in a... Well, let's um, finish this, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's that. Let's get back to Spoon video. I'm to Patrick Tumaso, and here... We'll keep this filmmaking, movie, all that kind of stuff related, and we'll have some fun. So if you have any questions about this video, this it's essay, fun editing, at all. all that kind of stuff, Spider-Man, mm. No Way Home. We had loads of questions. It's all in this, this coverage, was, I guess. Yeah, this was frustrating. I feel like you provided more evidence against your point than for it, than for it honestly. You should have made this longer and scripted it better and then thought longer, and then maybe, you know, maybe you shouldn't have even made this video. Um, please let me you, know in the Maybe comments. it's the premise. Maybe that's the advice to give is... The premise that you have, really think about whether that's correct. That's a problem, though. That they all pat each other on the back for noticing this shit on Twitter. None of them ever thought it through. Yeah, have you actually thought about holding the shot? I know you want to repeat it and put text on the screen because you're such an auteur. But have you really thought about it? What makes it good? Is it always good? What's the, what's the guideline here that you're actually trying to convince people of? And can you do it in such a small amount of time without your cereal getting in the way? Mm. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Patrick Tomaso, and you will see or hear me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers. Bye. Now, music is provided by musicbed.com. Music to sleep to slash nap. Oh, you love the Northman. That's good. Why the Batman is so beautiful, a cinematography, a cinematography video essay, how to ruin the bill. Stop. I, you don't need to always label, in fact, I would encourage video essay, like, just everybody's got to label it as a video essay. Just, I don't, I don't even it. want to put that on, I like... Just, it just seems cringe. No, I don't either. It's it's a video. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a video. It's fine. People, yeah, it's, I don't like the video It's okay. Essay. Yeah, maybe and the it's fact a video that it's, about it. A cinematic video essay as well as like what does what does that mean? <laughs> like cinematic like, video essay. A video essay I on me, the topic of cinematic, I assume is what he's going for there. Because if he just means it's a video, he'd be like, what? <laughs> I <laughs> get a little bit. It's diluted, but I get a little bit of the vibes that I get from who's the who's the film reviewer that sucks. Um, Oh man, <laughs> Duckman, Chris Duckman. Yeah, I, I should have my list. Specific, <laughs> but I kind of get Chris Duckman vibes when people really want to use that term, almost as if I can't. It's not just I don't want to say it's a YouTube video, because that that just doesn't have like I want to get away from that and all of its. Con I want to come up with a term, like I it's it's fine to say it is a YouTube video. I think that we should try and say that that's a fine thing. It's fine to have it. It I don't. Not e don't even say it's just a YouTube video. Say it's a YouTube video. Yeah, I mean, and those can be I, great. I think the fact of the matter is that there are a lot of people who like make YouTube videos who feel that it is like subpar and inferior to what they really want to do, which is like film or, you know, yeah, tell I just I don't like that they, attitude. I don't like that I think kind it, of I think uh youtube has been around for long enough at this point and has created been around some... longer than film. Uh, well, I'm not sure about that, but well, <laughs> it's, it's, you know. I guess yeah, it's being hard. it's close, but you it's don't been, it's don't been, it's been around for a while um yeah, don't and, uh, value what you do what you do is it doesn't need what you to do is valuable to people it. yeah it's valuable to people it's it, uh, hopefully it's valuable to you don't don't delegitimize it like give yourself a little bit more credit um yeah also i saw someone I actually sent this to Mola early but someone in, in chat mentioned it apparently sam raimi hasn't seen all of wandavision <laughs> <laughs>
Why would he? Want Probably to? because he was disgusted with Wanda's behavior and he didn't want to. Well, it's, it's just how do you make a film that is in many ways a direct follow up to a show that you haven't seen in full? Like, oh yeah, that is kind of it's, fucked up. Honestly, I think it's, it's incredible. We got him to actually like that. That's been said. Surely, whether or not it's true, you wouldn't say it. This is the quote, apparently. I'm not really sure what the WandaVision schedule was or how it changed. I just know that halfway, maybe three quarters of the way into our writing process, I first heard of this show they were doing and that we would have to follow it. Therefore, we had to really study what WandaVision was doing so we could have a proper through line and character growth dynamic. I never saw all of WandaVision. I just saw key moments of some episodes I was told directly impact our storyline. Why didn't you want to verify? Wouldn't you want to be that like, no, weird. I can't just take your word for it. I need to yeah. watch this show. I gonna, gotta I'm know. Be you guys, if they told me to write the sequel to WandaVision, I'd be like, well, I guess I'm watching WandaVision a couple watch times. Watching WandaVision yeah, one, absolutely. two, three times. I have to be intimately familiar with that show. I know that he said he hasn't watched all the MCU, and it's like, that's more acceptable. Um, I think as a, you know, like, do, do you really need to watch, like, Iron Man 2? The Incredible Hulk, yeah. Or The Incredible Hulk, it's like, that's a lot more. But, like, WandaVision directly precedes this. Um, and it's got your I, character in like the the name of it. It's kind well, of important. I guess it's just funny that he said that because it's funny. I think Sam Raimi's Sam Raimi said a lot of fun things. Um, one of the things he said is that his favorite character in the MCU is Spider Man. That was oh. uh, yeah, that's an interesting one considering the discourse surrounding MCU Spider Man because people how often so it's many of Ram Raimi. Yeah, so many of Ram Samy's little fans. They will Ram Samy. Yeah, 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 Ram Samy. <laughs> Uh, so I just now of... want to see a picture of Sam Raimi, but as a ram, just like a Ram Samey. <laughs> yeah, or maybe the many many clones, the Ram Samey. Um, yeah, but there's so many of his the people who just fillet the original Spider-Man movies hate this new Spider-Man, and he's like, yeah, he's my favorite. <laughs> I think that's interesting. That is really funny. Well, uh, someone left. Sorry. I can watch together. A horrible person, whoever you are. I, know, I, I did. I thought we were done. Why is there? Uh, is there more? It's user well, with Batwoman's cancellation, has texted me oh. and asked me to see his. Um, he's released a two-minute <laughs> video, I guess. In memoriam. Well, <laughs> is it looks have to be something like that. No, no, no. Oh, good. Um, good, good it's good. an. Well, we were just learning all about auteurs, and this is an art house piece. I think he's going to submit it to Sundance, so we get to view it first. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Uh, here we go. All right. Let's see what this is all about. As enjoyers of Batwoman, I'm sure we'll understand. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Cold open. Black and white. Emotional close-up. There's, there's just so many emotions for this. Holding show. the frame, very good. I was actually gonna say, yeah, it's pretty cool. There's no cuts. What you think of cuts are just wild emotions. <laughs> <laughs> Not complete. Yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, the biggest fan base out there. Yeah, yeah. Collection of some channels on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I was not expecting that. I think that was, oh, it's that was part beautiful. Of the, it's part of the soundtrack. Yeah, it's part of the song. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the original. It's the original. Yeah. Well, you know that is the sonata in Moonlight Sonata. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> man, I don't know, man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is a big fucking Gina Carano back there. Oh. So, uh, Oscar? What? Two, at least. As. Two Oscars. Oh, right. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I understand the plight. Um, 
we worried that this may be a potential. Do not you fret. Once Jay Longbone and As have, and they probably have finished their coverage Indeed. up to the latest episodes, you'll still have EFAP bringing yeah. it back eventually for a lot of fun times. I will say, for for sad as I am that it's being cancelled, there is a part of me that's like, yes, no more of Batman's just content will be defiled. <laughs> he's safe now. Why, in the, why would you think he's safe? Like, <laughs> oh, it's true. There's, there's always. I guess it's just because I don't know. I think it was that. What was it? Was it the season two finale? I think that was like. Oh no, you are no season one finale. That's the one. It's like yeah, that was the no fire. machine gun. Yeah. Uh, we also lost Legends of Tomorrow, which no. is means we're never going to get any more clips like this. Oh no. Well, it seems like they're uh, they're getting rid of everything, right? It's uh, <laughs> we <didn't laughs> basically have. adding everything. <laughs> How sad. Well, um, that that that's it for the uh for the video is coverage. This the Gorilla Glue commercial. I believe <laughs> it is now time cool. for us to venture into the world of super chats, messages, opinions Fine. from uh, from the otherworldly people in the chat. Um, I suppose it's a good time to say if anybody would like to, you know, go and sleep or whatever stuff you guys get up to in your weird personal I time. sleep now, it will only be nightmares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'll never you. be able to escape the frame. It's, it's, it's one and a half a.m. for you, Mel. Oh my god, are you, are you gonna stay awake for oh, longer? Wow. Yes, I will. Wow! Are you gonna see Doctor Strange? I, know I, you said I will. You are, but I just felt like asking you something else. Watched it on. I'm gonna wa I watched it already. No, I watched it. Oh wow! What do you it. think? Oh, the uh, multiverse. Mm. It's so good. I'm watching it again on Wednesday. Mm. <laughs> I'd be curious to look out for ADR um, in that movie particularly to see if it regards mm. Spider-Man related stuff. See if see if they've shoved some stuff in there because they've had to reorder some stuff. I don't know. Reorder. But um, well, all all right. I'm I'm just gonna start reading them out. You guys ready? Uh, I'm gonna I am. Yeah. Feed my cats, yeah. but uh, I'll be back. Mm -hmm. Fringy muted, which is his way of saying yes. Yes, that's what he does whenever he wants to say yes. Is he mutes? Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. Sup, massives and high rags. Hello. Yo. What's up? <clears throat> I literally wrote a script as to why she's seriously the worst. She is quite bad. I wonder. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit frustrating, to be honest with you. Um, but hey, you know the writers have new ideas. Uh, did you guys watch The Northman? Uh, yes. I'm... Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, Mel Mel thought it was uh, something mysterious, and you'll find out soon enough. That was neat. Mm. I, I I enjoyed watching it. Oof. We're gonna talk about it more tomorrow. It was wow. neat. Oh no. Yeah, was... Are you gonna shred it in a in a metal? Metal, full metal analysis. I'm not gonna shred it, no. But it's uh, it's it's fine. That's fine. I liked it. I know that you said you didn't like how inaccurate the AK-47s were in that film. Yeah, that was quite confusing. Yeah, because they were invented in 47 AD. That's right. That's how they got their name. So it makes yeah, sense that they'd be in. That, that's <laughs> fine. It was more so just the the way that the, it ricocheted the bullets. Right, you you notice some stuff. It's like uh, that's not right. That's not yeah, right, does it? And... yeah. Yeah, a little annoying sometimes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Only oh 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 oh. I'll read that one once Fringy's unmuted. Okay. Um, CJ. Ooh, my dog. Been so long. Yeah, that was several hours ago potentially. He's um, he's earned himself a, a well well rest. That that was English. I am also pretty tired. Uh, I I I have been up for nearly twenty four hours, but I'm not quite there yet. Um. Sean the sheep. I'm, see how that's my my fault. Who else's fault would it be? Um, yeah, that's what I thought. The, Sean the sheep's great. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I loved him in a close shave. He was really, uh, really emotive and expressive. I liked his. I like when he said, "Bah!" I really like that. Hmm. Mm. I think they had uh, Willem Dafoe voice uh, Sean. That's one of you couldn't those. tell because he's such a good actor. That's the role that got him uh, Green Goblin, wasn't it? I think so. I think Sam Raimi, who is always a big Wallace fan, yeah, who learned about him through the Winsleydale controversy, uh, he he saw it, yeah, and he knew this is the one. This is the one. I need this man. Whoever he is, get me him. 
Give me his agent on the phone. Uh, so they said Shul Nasheep is the original EFAP. Play MFS RIS. What? <laughs> Play MFS RIS. Is that a game title that I am unfamiliar with? MFS IRS? RIS. MFS RIS. Uh. Motherfucker, seriously? <laughs> well, Motherfucker, I'm keeping serious? it on Shen. I'm not I don't seeing know. any answers. Yeah, so I, I don't gotta... know about that one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, finally getting to catch y'all live. I want to say thanks for the content, keeping me laughing while I was in Iraq for y'alls. Um, y'alls 150. Ah, here's to 150 more of Great Rat, Rhino Milk, and more. Also, good evening, Mr. Rag. <laughs> good evening. Well, oh, yeah. Someone had someone. Someone just sent me this, and it, it caught me by surprise. Oh. I can put it on the screen <laughs> one moment. Oh my god. You can tell he's a kid because of his hat. That's the hat that kids wear. <laughs> yep. As you all know. I feel like my my left leg is broken. <laughs> Something. No, the bones are straight under all that. Um yeah, well, you know, Cookie Crisp is that good. I'm just saying. Oh no, you fucking crazy. <laughs> I must find your dog as my co-host. <laughs> <laughs> he will provide me with cooking. Uh. <laughs> yeah, Holly will look cookie crispy. Doesn't <laughs> like it's the perfect unity. <laughs> he's 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 so fat. The spoon just sticks to his hand. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I glued it so that I wouldn't have to expend the the effort. So you pass out from the food and you open your hand. <laughs> it'll um. Yeah, it'll just still be there. You'll never lose it. Um, but yeah, uh, glad you enjoy the stuff. I hope you're all right with, with your uh, tour. And that, yes, there will be at least 150 more episodes. All right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, all. If you could choose one animal to guard your house, would you choose a Komodo dragon, red kangaroo, or cassowary? Hello, all again. Let's see, well, I gotta see. Why wouldn't I pick the cassowary? Let's see, red kangaroo. Presumably, they're all on my side, right? They're not gonna hit me, so. I assume they know you. Like you know, a guard dog knows you and not to attack you and your buds. So I'm looking at all these choices, and I, I'm thinking cassowary will just absolutely murder lies you. Yeah, the komodo dragon yeah, it can feel damage and stuff, but it feels like it's much easier to deal with while a cassowary. I think that would, like, the average person walking past that might just be like, no, fuck, and it comes from and kills them straight away. That's the best guard dog you could ever have. I heard guard dog and cassowary. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is the question? Hello, all. If you could choose one animal to guard your house, would you choose a Komodo dragon, red kangaroo, or cassowary? Hello, all. Yeah, again. cassowary. Easy. Yeah. Looks like we voted for that one. Go Komodo will eat your family. Food. I assume the family is provided immunity, but you know, yeah, yeah, it because it, it wouldn't be a guard animal if it attacked your own stuff. You know, as part of it, it's kind of mm -hmm. in the job description. Uh, so I could, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd be pretty pretty happy with a cassowary, unless like the kangaroo had his pouch was full of like, I don't know, like ninja We're stars. Guys. Yeah, well, calm down, but something <laughs> you know that he could use nukes. Nuclear bombs. <laughs> Nuclear grenades. Specifically, it was Kangaroo Jack. Hmm. Um, also... How do you feel about that? that a, it, how do you feel about Kangaroo Jack, Fringy? I can't remember that film. I know I've seen it, but I can't remember anything about it. I, like, I actually can't recall much about it at all. It's so hard to say. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, so we got a uh, Oni thumbnail of the day. It is Spixta. <laughs> <coughs> Looks like an opossum. Mm. Poking, they're poking him, saying, "Oh, oh, you." He's gonna do much. The armor seems to be, you know, acting him pretty well. So 
might be movie armor, so it's more of just like a uniform that doesn't stop anything whatsoever. That could be it, yeah. Um, boop, 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 boop. EFAP attacking women again. Shake my head. Also, hi, Raggins. Hello. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty good at it. Um, hi, Rags. Hello to you. Delivered a package yesterday to a guy named Jacob. He slammed his hand on the desk and asked, what you bring me? Buenos dias, Rags. Buenos dias. Dude, if that I, might have been the one. If might I been the one. met someone called Jacob by chance and they did that unprompted and they had no idea who I was, that would... You'd be like, really? <laughs> like, oh. I don't know. <laughs> Something suspicious is going on here. Um, Gothic Crusader is fake and gay. Oh my goodness. Someone tell Gothic Crusader that he is fake and gay. I, was like, I, I, I don't really know much about it, so I can't say. You know, I can't defend or attack in any way, shape, or form. I'm not particularly well-versed in the Gotham Crusade. Well, it was gothic, but fine. Gotham? That's where Batman's from. So, hey, Rags. Hi there. What do you think about Mr. Obvious alleging, or at least suggesting, that you are into, um, I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to say bestiality, right? Because you commissioned a dog as an avatar. That is quite an extrapolation. That is, is, it... that is not holding the frame at all. Does he, Maybe does that's he just, what I'm assuming whoa, whoa, he just hold... like goes full nuclear on anybody who criticizes him then? Who I did I criticize him? Who's that? Oh, I don't. I'm assuming they're talking about because they said Mr. Obvious. I'm assuming that's referencing YouTuber or something. He, oh, I don't know if the no. I assume they're talking about the guy that you recently responded to. <laughs> Mr. Obvious. Yeah, I I don't think the name of the person is Mr. Obvious. I think they're saying Mr. Obvious to reference someone. Oh, um, maybe. Yeah, he might think so. Yeah, I, I could see why he thinks that. Because he's dumb, and he mm. goes to the... He inst he's zero to 60 in zero seconds. He's just all... He's, he's talking about the gay, satanic, liberal YouTube agenda, <laughs> and <all laughs> crazy... We, we would no. definitely be a part of that. <laughs> we, which we are a part of, just to be fair. Full disclosure. Um, Hail Satan. Uh, that's why, yeah. It, <laughs> and his uh, gay. Uh, Hail the gay of Satan. Hail Santa. Hail Santa. <laughs> Hail gay Santa. Um, today's animal of the day is the okapi. Hmm. Oh, okapis are neat. What type of animal are they? Well, what type of animal? They're sort of their own kind of animal. Let let me give you a picture of the okapi because he he's an odd boy. The okapi's an odd boy. Let also me... known as a forest giraffe. Okay. So yeah, they're, they're odd boys. Yeah, this is another one of them. Um, another one spore animals. Yeah, they they are. Yeah. Man, look mm. at that critter. Yeah. Look uh, at him go. All right, neat animal time. Yeti crab. Okay, yeti crab. That sounds interesting. Yeti crab. Let's see. Oh, wow, look at that guy. Oh. Yeah, that is a... Huh. Like a woolly crab. Let me, let me get a little picture here posted. Look at look at him. Very strange. He's got a, he's all bristly. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It, look, fluffy. Yeah, this one here is a fluffy boy. Um. He's like. Kind of like again, like imagine a crab, but it's hairy. He'd be like, "That sounds ridiculous." Put it in the alien fa film or something. They did. And they're like it's actually real, and you're like, "Whoa." Oh, this is a funny one. Thoughts on the newest Halo episodes? <laughs> Terrible. Boy, I, we've only seen the first four? Three? Three. And there were Three. six out, so... We're, we're, uh, yeah, fine. We'll do it. Halfway there. The we'll ones we've seen are terrible. Yeah. I, I've seen yeah. clips. I've seen clips. John Halo is not... Man. You know, if you sold me that the Halo show would feature 
John Halo in a fit of rage, screaming as he lunges to like kill Dr. Halsey. And I would have been like, ha, ha, that's a funny joke. Um, that would never happen in like a Halo, a faithful adaptation of Halo. Hey, <laughs> but then we... we got something that was not quite so very faithful adaptation of Halo, which is fine if it was good, but it's. Uh... What is this? What is this? <laughs> Ramos. Just a fucking brick, <laughs> but it holds the frame. What the fuck? <laughs> No cuts. And over there, it's really funny. I wonder what the origin of that picture is, who those people were and what they were pointing to. I think it says it's just one and it's not even an zero. I know. Oh, I guess that would make sense. But isn't that much more of a zero than an O? I agree, that's more of a zero. Yeah, that's what I first thought when I read it. And it You're right, though. It is supposed to be an O. Yeah. Ours are a lot more circular. Yeah. And then I was like, oh. Like it, yeah, it, it has to be zero because... Or sorry, it has to be O because it's an an and not an A. So. No, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good inference. Um, yeah. And in a way, the way this font might work is that when it's a zero, it'll have that little line, the diagonal line, you know? Yeah. It might. It might. It just might. That's very true. That's very but true. I love it. I would I would eat Framos, though bricks for cereal? I'm not sure. <laughs> that feels like a Simpsons joke. Yeah. Like you start eating it's like, mmm, and then smiles and all his teeth are gone. <laughs> um did Ahmed Skeptic recover after EFAP ninety three yet? Fucking hell, no. that's nearly two years ago. Mm. Feels like it was just yesterday. Easterly. Mostly my memory and I can't ever forget now. I'm not sure when I would have guessed it was, but two years just, just feels like damn man. Time. Be a harsh mistress. Maybe. I don't know, maybe that's just normal. Um I think he had trouble recovering from it. I hope he's more than fine, but a lot of people had trouble making it out of that EFAB, okay? It was a tough one. Um Hi Rags and all. Hello. Hello. Yo. Y'all should check out Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Absolutely insane film in a good way. I have only seen recommendations. Yeah, I've heard it's good. Consistently heard that it is good. Um, hey, Cynical, great to hear you again. Yeah, it's cool to have him back. And um, as he said, tomorrow he's going to announce that he's coming back. Not today. Be though. there. <laughs> not, not today. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was cool to hang out with him, and I'm glad he's um, he be he be doing the creative flumes once again. Uh, after what sounds like a very fun vacation. Does POS stand for People of Subjectivity? Hi, Rags. Yes. And so we, you know, call him P POS for short, and well, whatever interpretations may happen, may happen. It's totally fine. Such a POS. Oh, wow. Also, someone sent me the original Soyjack. Oh, is it? <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> oh my god, that's kind of like... <laughs> kind of interesting. I know, right? It yeah. doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel right. He's like, what did you do to <laughs> the face? Is... Think, oh, they're doing the Soyjack face. You don't think that, oh, this is what it's based off of. This is Soyjack face. Yeah, yeah, like... What I interpret this image as is people recreating the soy jacket, and you're like, no, 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 it's the other way around. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> their faces, the, their mouths wide open. Yeah, it's uh, perfect. I wonder how they feel about it all. <laughs> I don't know. They're, probably, they're probably, well, they're vegan, so they're probably just angry all the time anyway. Well, do they have the power to be so so angry? I don't know. No, with too many calories. Vegan fried chicken. Oh, I've heard bad like... things about the Beyond Chicken stuff, which doesn't surprise me at all. That's just something I'll never try ever. I'd be willing I'll to try have... it, but I swear to God, the first whiff of blech, I'm like, no, 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 yeah, no. <laughs> if I was 
dying <laughs> and someone bought it for me, then I'd be like, might as well. I thought you were going to say that maybe. <laughs> <laughs> the idea here Guess is... Guess I'll die. <laughs> Yes, if, if the price of living long enough to eat even more real chickens is that I have to eat some of this fake chicken, then damn mm. it, that's what I'm willing to put up with. Why are we talking about Wanda? Doctor Strange is coming out. Doctor Strange. Oh, because she's in the new movie? Oh, okay, carry on. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I think it's a good lead up. Um, hey all. Hello. Hey. Are you guys going to do an EFAB on the Northman? It's a great film, IMO, and it could be a great discussion about period pieces. Also, high rags. Uh, hello. I don't think we have plans to. We still have to, like, see it and things of that nature. And if we see it, we, it, it might just be one of those movies that we all really like. In, yeah. We don't have maybe what to say about it. We could just all be in agreement on it and don't have a lot to say in that nature. But I, I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting because it's like... You know, to a degree, you'd be like, why, why, yeah, why have you guys never covered, let's say, Hot Fuzz in an EFAP episode fully? And it's like, yeah, I mean, I guess because it just doesn't feel as though it lends itself to that. I don't know. Because, uh, hmm. Because it's, it's so interesting in my head. I'm like, the Northman for EFAP coverage, in the same way as we do, like, a, a No Way Home or whatever. I'm like, well, I feel like that would be weird. And it's like, should it be? And it's like, I don't know. It just kind of does feel weird. Like, it, the film doesn't, uh, function very well in that format. But, um, maybe it would. I, I don't know. I, well, obviously, I need to see it first. I um, still haven't. Uh, Mel's doing a forge on it. So you got that? Yes. So, I am um, back. Yeah. Why? Well, if the really? MCU had any clue what they were doing, they'd make Scarlet Witch and Captain Marvel the next main villains of the series. They already are. Just not over it. To be fair, I'm pretty sure she legit is uh, Wanda. Yeah, I don't know who else it would be in that movie based on everything yeah. that you hear about it. As for Captain Marvel, we're more so in a situation where there's no one that can stop her and she has ultimate power. It's just lucky right now that she does stuff that we kind of want. Mm. Um, you know? <laughs> but God, this is what I mean. There could be such interesting movies. Civil War Two being how Carol refuses to sign the accords, and she basically just says, "Like, what are you gonna do?" And they're like, mm -hmm. and then you know they enlist the Avengers to stop her, and then Tony has to come up with a way to actually stop Captain Marvel because ultimately, that is dangerous as fuck. Like, she can do whatever she wants. And, you know, just like the the whole thing with Justice League, where Batman has to have like contingencies. And then, like, you know, mm -hmm. people find out about that, and they're like, why the fuck would you make contingencies for your own team members? And, you know, oh, the amount of drama that could come out of that would be great. Yep. I think I said that if I were, if someone handed me the reins to Captain Marvel 2, I would just be like, well, I'm turning into Sinestro, basically. <laughs> like, she's going to be the villain where she just dominates the planet because she feels like she, her power makes it so that she has the right to dominate um, everyone to uh, establish order, and I think it'd be interesting to see how the Dude, rest would, of the um, MCU deals with that. I would like opening scene. She's saving some planet, whatever alien species, from an invading force, and you just reflect it exactly with her movie. She like smashes through ships. She's like woohoo, and then like you have the leaders of that planet looking at her doing it and not having like a yes, you know, we're winning. More so, just to like a. A pensive sort of worry about what they're seeing, and yeah, then you have the civilians seeing where the wreckage falls, and Ooh, yeah. yeah, the movie's just kind of like, you know, wait a minute. And then you know, you'd have some cool, super auteur directors. I wouldn't. I don't want to say the word cut because that means that I'm not a director at that point and I'm a failure. But you'd you'd swipe it into a different battle, but it's the exact same nature. It's just a different planet, different set of aliens, same problems. It keeps on going until, I don't know, then maybe you, you try and work it in that she eventually hears about the criticism of her approach. And it's all going to her head and she's like, um, yeah, I guess you don't want to be saved is what, is what you're saying? Or something like that. And be like, oh, jeez. Yeah. I mean, you can absolutely, and hell, you know what? You can work with her in the confines of being a hero as well, like strictly. You yeah, we don't have to. Challenge her. We don't have to send her on a permanent villain path, but fuck me, are we going to make her wrong <laughs> about whatever she's she's thinking about? Uh, well, yeah. I don't even know what she 
leaves in exactly like, honestly. yeah that's what i mean and like someone like, might be like well she's barely had any time it's like she had a whole movie yeah and that movie told us like, that she is pretty- she is smart talented she's beautiful she's funny she's powerful Yeah, I don't know. Captain Marvel 2, which is really the Marvels, right? That's what that movie is. The Marvels, yeah. More because it's got Monica and Miss Marvel in it. <laughs> they got me the great. quote. Fuck me, are we going to make her wrong? It's like, yeah, she's going to be wrong about something. <laughs> Mind blowing. That's bullshit. Isn't- isn't uh, Multiverse of Madness going to have like a parallel universe Captain Marvel that's Monica Rambo? So Monica uh, Rambo who became Captain Maria Marvel. Maria Rambo, her mom, right? Oh, Maria Rambo, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, because there was a new TV spot that got released where it's like, it's not Superior Iron Man. It is definitely like her. And also there was a. Uh, oh, does anybody really give a fuck about like spoilers or like from, from, from well, commercials? I'm fine with it. I just there's probably gonna be some people in chat who are like, hey. yeah, probably. All right, that's okay. We we can talk about it next week because by next week your spoiler pass is expired. Yeah. Like, oh boy! If you don't oh, see it yeah. on the weekend that it comes out, you didn't really care about avoiding spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I guess unless you'd like disengage entirely from the internet. In which case, they wouldn't be watching the show. So yeah. Yeah. Um, greetings, beautiful massives. Are any of you looking forward to the fall of the House of Usher? Yeah, hundred percent. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We will jump on that, me. especially if it releases around Halloween. It's all spooky. Oh. Wait, what? Ooh. What is the fall of the House of Usher? What is that? It's the New next Flanagan, Flanagan show. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. It will be yeah, interesting we to see that. how Mark Hamill performs, directed by Flanagan. High rags. That dude, I can't wait to see that. Yep. Are you kidding me? Yeah. So cool as shit. Mark Hamill's awesome um, as an actor, and and when he stars in something like. You know, the rise of Skywalker. It's like, ugh, we might get a scene where he gets to do something. I don't know. Flanagan helming him? Like, okay, we're gonna get a shit ton of really emotional scenes, I think. And it's gonna be really fucking awesome to see him do it. Because he pushes his actors a lot of the time. And it's really oh, yeah. awesome to see. Um. <laughs> I went. <laughs> I don't know if this is true. I went to Steam to look up the the new and trending category. <laughs> and this was what it was. Oh, wait, what? Hang on. <laughs> I'm like, really? Only furry 18 plus? Oh, no. <laughs> My oh. God, it, it's down to $5.03. Everyone go it's grab on, that now. It's oh, on no. sale. <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> I was like, really? New God and trending on platform. Steam? I don't. How did that get to the top of the list? Not mm. the top of my list of new and trending on Steam. Uh-oh. Hey, I don't play. Here's the thing: I don't play furry games on Steam, and this is all like fucking sex games and shit. At least two of them. Are. Oh yes, Rogue There's... Legacy too. The sex game. Hey, wait, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, Jerez's Arena too. That's another, that's probably one of them, they're sex games. Yeah, but you say the that like, it's more than two game. examples. You know, action, adventures, exploration, tower defense. It's that a was, sex Rags, game. That was the defense, okay? You should have said, I don't play tower defense, Metroidvanias Which is true, regularly. I don't, actually. So go. I don't know why it's telling me. Like, that I'll be a lawyer is... from now on, it's fine. What about the gunk? That's a the, sex honestly, game, Honestly, right? the gunk looks pretty <laughs> neat. I'm, I'm looking at it right now. It came out April 29th, so it came out yesterday. Um, it looks, actually, it looks pretty neat. I'm, I am going to add this to my wish list so I can check it out later. The gunk looks really... And then you'll never check it out. The gunk looks, like, legitimately cool. Looks like a third-person Okay, however cool the the gunk is, it ain't cooler than goo, okay? I just want to make that clear. All right, that's good. Like, World of Goo, for example, that's the game you should be promoting. Once gunk. I'm done with only furry 18 plus, I will, uh, <laughs> I will give the gunk a go. Nice. I'm just Ravenous. surprised Haiku the Robot isn't a puzzle game, to tell you the truth. It's a Metroidvania adventure pixel graphics exploration game. Well, it looks like a, it looks like a charming, uh, charming game. I'm just looking, yeah. imagining a really playful, wholesome image of Rags playing with his gunk and Fringy just looking suspiciously at it. Like, 
<laughs> Good plan with that. <laughs> no, like, really, like, like, look at the gunk. It it is a very cool looking look game. At your gunk. It's it's really neat. I'm gonna put it on my wish list because I want to check it out later. Right. Um, yeah. So I will be playing only furry eighteen plus. Mm -hmm. Well, hey, I I'm looking up. Oh wow, this is cool. So under top sellers, number one mm -hmm. is still Elden Ring. Then we have Rogue Legacy 2. And then number three, if you can believe it, the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Yeah, wow. your, your list is different. Number one here is Dune Spice Wars. And then number well, that's two four is for me. Parable, and then three is Rogue is that like Legacy 2. America versus one. Australia? or Maybe, yeah. Cause... Looks like this is an expanded reimagining of the 2013 Stanley Parable. I was going to say, By the way, that sounds like something I want to play if it's... Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm adding that to my wish list right now because if you have not played the Stanley Parable, play the Stanley Parable. I think if you're, if, if you're an EFAP audience member, you might get more out of it than most because it's very... I well, played. you know, sure Meme has been it. playing uh, the deluxe edition of that. Yeah, I just got to get I'm the definitely epilogue. I'm definitely check this out. Because Stanley Parable was a joy to play. What walking sim. Shut up, it's shit. It looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The eighth best selling item is the Steam Deck. So, huh. I like the description. You will play as Stanley, and you will not play as Stanley. You will make a choice, <laughs> and you will become powerless. You are not here to win. The Stanley Parable is a game that plays you. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I had loads of fun where, playing that game. Fringy, if you're looking at your top seller list, is the Lego Star Wars on there? Uh, it is. It's number eight. It is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is nine for me. It is underneath Steam Deck. Oh, Steam Deck isn't... Yeah, Steam Deck's not available in Australia, so... Oh, I see. Must be There's Dorf, Dorf Romantic... A peaceful building strategy and puzzle game. I've got that on my top sellers list as well. That looks cool. That looks great. Look at this like lovely the, uh, game. I like the art. The art looks really yeah, cool. Yeah, this looks great. It reminds me of Islanders. And oh, like the trees are all 2D. Reviews, so, huh. Overwhelmingly hmm. positive. Yeah, I'm going to add this to my wish list. I need to stop I'm before not. I add more games to my list that I don't. <laughs> I know, I know. I, know. I still, I I still got to play like... So many games like know, Disco Elysium know, and Oh uh, the misery. Hey, hey, also, everyone play the Stanley Parable demo because that is a, an experience in of itself. So, so do that as well. Yeah, do that, everybody. Yeah. So, hey, Fringy, does toilet water really spin in the opposite direction in Australia? It spins in the opposite direction in America, yeah. Well, that, well, that that makes sense. It only spins in the opposite direction in Australia. No, that's it's the opposite direction. Bringy, take in the W. He's admitting Australia's real. Yeah. Oh God! Well, nope, not whoopsie, true. Daisy. Yes, How many? <laughs> no, because you can't run away from this one, right? Really. <laughs> 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 you can't. You can't salvage this. And you. You, you've, got the, you've got the Discord floop, so it's I overpower you. True false statement. This exists. I, it, it's unfortunate that none of that was heard because I overpower you in this uh, in this call. It's absolutely, of Discord. this is something no, that exists. So, so when I, when I was talking, all I could hear was like, ah, I, I, <laughs> you've, got the, uh, you've got the Discord floop. I don't. Yeah, you have the disease. Fate has yeah. smiled upon me this day. <laughs> All this proves and it does is that flash in the opposite direction in America. Yep, that's right. That's Second opinion. Yep, that's it. The end. <laughs> Aww. Jake. Yeah, look at that. It's just floom. That's all I hear is I like. That's all you got. That's all you got for me. <laughs> I know this one all he wants, but when he's saying all these things like that, the 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 water spins backwards here. When in actual fact, it spins backwards over there. Thank God, that. I think I've seen that meme before, but it's a good one. <laughs> That's a good meme. Oh God, this would piss off so many people too. I could see people being like, "Wow, it's true." <laughs> totally true. 
and then just tag all the people who are going to get ass mad over it. <laughs> um, also, would you have called them Chazwazes? Uh, oh, uh, what the toads? Um, with, uh, no, they were bullfrogs. Um, no, we got frogs here. We got frogs in Australia. We got lots of little frogos. And you might like, have called them Well, the one that's really bad is a cane toad, and that is an introduced species. It's not even from this country. It yeah. sounds like trying to... Alright. They are... Yeah, they're, they're a big pest. Um, they are in large number, and they have eradicated many local species. The, the reason why they exist is because settlers were like, these native beetles are really annoying. You know what's better than native beetles? Um, very poisonous toads. <laughs> that <laughs> multiply very quickly. Very poisonous toads. You, you're saying it's yeah. like, you spill a drink in your kitchen and your dad gets the flamethrower. Yeah, exactly. Like, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... I, I'm actually not familiar with the names of a bunch of Australian frogs. I've never really looked into it. Oh, um, it's probably like Kevin, Jim, Alice. Yeah. You know? Franco. Pretty normal names. Franco, Franco <laughs> Frog. <laughs> That's a cool frog name. It'd be like Timmy Toad. James me, Frogo. That up, actually. Australian oh. frogs. is Because the poison dart, that's not... That's from South America, right? As far as I know, yeah, they're in the Amazon. The poison... Oh, well, we got tree frogs. I've seen plenty of those. They're just nice little regular yeah, green frogos. Look, look, look at these critters. They're like, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a frog just making my way in the world, just minding I'm my own business. Frog. Frogs just are looking. pretty cool. I gotta say, like frogs are frogs are neat little critters. Yeah, frogs are great. That's why I often consult the Frog Council. The Frog Council all sitting there. They're all different types of frogs, all bound by a love of the land and also the water. Well, so now you know the Frog Council. Yeah, I know the Frog Council. Of course I know the Frog Council. Wow. 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 Okay, that's fine. That's, that's fine. We'll just let that be where it is. Did you ever, when you were young, did you read the children's books? There was like a frog and a toad. Um, I forget their names. There, there was like a series where it was a frog and a toad and they were friends and they lived in kind of like hobbit holes and they had coats and everything. Um, maybe someone in chat can help me out with a name. I think it was called Frog and Toad. Okay, that there. But that was easy enough. No ambiguity there. Your names were Frog and Toad. That's fair enough. The closest I can think is an episode of Round the Twist where there was a frog versus frog competition at a school, but someone brings in a toad. I vaguely remember that episode. Yeah. Yeah, and they went, oh no, that's a toad. Oh, and then the toad just fucking bodies every fucking frog oh that's brought God. in. Um, all went out for the spectacular Spider Girl who's leaving Tumblr. She's a big EFAP fan and all around cool dudette. Yes. Oh, well, that's a different thing. Um, yeah, Spectacular sure. Spider Girl. Okay. I I would prefer that Twitter have more cool people in it, so if that's the premise, then I pull one out indeed. Yeah, hopefully it will get more cool people in it, uh, if uh, some of us can get unbanned, who knows. Hmm. Yes. Mild interest, we'll see. When's Pyrocynical gonna be on? Um, he's interested, we can set something up. But, uh, I, uh, it's cool that he's a long man, though. Mm. Doctor Strange's mistake went unnoticed by just about everyone and affected very few people. Wanda horribly traumatized the population of an entire town and felt no remorse over her actions that we know yeah. of. Got the government agents involved, uh, still, the return of vision. I'm not comfortable with saying Doctor Strange's mistake went unnoticed by just about everyone. In reference to the planet, sure, but... I mean, it, I mean, it had consequences for had, people. Yeah, there was a lot, a lot of bad things happened as a result. Um, but I do how, think what Wanda did was worse, specifically because of how she responds to all. Like, she is a worse person when looking at the two scenarios. Yeah, Peter tries to stop it and set things right as soon as he identifies the problem. She ignores it. She turns a blind eye. Yeah, and, and it was it strange. was Doctor Strange who eventually came back in the end and said, "You know what? Yeah, let's let's do this spell to make things all better." And then it gets blown up, and then he's like, oh no, I gotta cast new spell. Like, there's, yeah, there's, Doctor Strange has the, the brain fart, and then he has another brain fart by being beaten by Peter, 
and then he's doing everything he can to get everything back to normal. So, um, someone's who was added county out, uh, referencing, of course, county the, out, county <laughs> out. I, I can't. Hearing that, why this uh, reaction it, was just perfect though. Like the the excuse me, <laughs> like what, what what did you just do? Simba. Simba. I can't believe that there was audio clipping in that film. <laughs> that is uh. Well, they they removed the the the, the M from Count Me Out. Why? <laughs> yeah. Why? Count Me Out. Eh? We said it, and they just like fuck it, leave it in. Yeah, Please. and then. Yeah, <laughs> auto, auto tuning that you could just hear and should we make another take? No, fuck it. There's no need. I had a bad day, so anything I do is justified. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, he eventually said like she saved the world, so we can give her the freedom to fuck with a bunch of people a little bit, right? It's like, oh my god. Yeah. The only way to stop Wanda now is to have Pietro come back and tell her to do better. Appreciate you all massively. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, and yeah, that do might Magneto, even Magneto's like, all right, like chill out, you know. Like, <laughs> can you believe that though? That we could have brought in what was kind of a fan favorite character from the Fox universe, being his uh, Evan Peters' portrayal of Quicksilver. Yeah. And you can just bullshit him into this by doing all the magic crap and saying, Absolutely. "Well, he's just an alternate it's Quicksilver." Yeah. So, Ralph and, Bono. They make it so he's not Quicksilver, he's just a guy. Uh, his name is Ralph Boda, yeah. It's just like, what the hell? They weren't ready for their multiverse stuff yet. Loki hadn't happened. Amazing. Yeah, I know. Speaking so... of women going crazy, but have rather justifiable means, Sadie Adler from RDR2. Although it's more uh, well, I mean, yeah. desire oh, for sorry, revenge okay. than insanity, I suppose. Yeah, she's definitely more single-minded in terms of getting revenge, but I mean, she had an extremely traumatic event happen to her, and then d that kind of drove her to basically hunt down the people who are responsible. I don't know if I'd call it crazy, though. It's just that, like, I feel like crazy... Like, she's definitely not super-duper stable or anything, but, um... But her, it seems like her goals were directed at specific what? people because an event happened, and it's not, like... You don't have... She's there's not no in irrational... Um, she makes some choices that aren't optimal, but like she's not, she's not just doing crazy shit all the time. Um, she's definitely, and yeah, and then of course there are aspects of her that are more stable and redeemable. She's super loyal and helpful to Arthur. Um, yeah, I like Sadie a lot. Um, I like that character. Hmm. I believe the storyline was she was being manipulated by Agatha's magic, but it wasn't conveyed well enough. I don't think they I think they don't I say that though. Happened, yeah, I working. never. It doesn't. Never Ag isn't Agatha explicit that like when she got there, she actually got caught up in the spell to some degree, or and like she's so. been trying to like work her way to just get her into the rune place so she can finally take her magic off her. Like the idea that uh, yeah. she's orchestrated her like like she's played with some things to make her more stressed out. Sure. But I, I don't know, man. It's uh... We gotta go way farther than that. We gotta go way farther than that. Yeah. Um, Hitler committed horrific atrocities against humanity, but did Antine stop to consider the trauma and pain he went through in World War One? It's true. Oh. It's a rough time. World War One. World War One was tough. Who knows what happened? Uh, no EFAP be... movies, The Suicide Squad with James Gunn's, Gunn's one. Next up is, um, Aqua Person. It sure is. Watery Man. But The Suicide Squad one is recorded and it will one day reach your wonderful screens, everybody, don't you? All part of the Woo! DC arc. Which, you know, the actual movie's getting released got delayed again. So that's... Aquaman? Well... I think it did, right? Aquaman 2? No, What's Flash that, did. did. Did Aquaman 2 get delayed at all, or was it just Flash? Oh, everything got delayed, except Shazam moved up. Um, oh, okay. So it was, I think it was Black Adam was meant to come out in, like, July, and then Flash was meant to come out in November, and then Aquaman in, like, December, and Shazam the year after, and then it all got shifted around. Shazam got moved up. Flash got delayed significantly. 
uh, Aquaman got delayed too. And I think um, Black Adam needs to do reshoots, but they can't because the place that they need him to do reshoots is not available to them right now. So I'm sure that film's going to pan out great by the sounds of it. Hmm. Something I've noticed in the marketing is like, uh, I'm pretty sure I saw a quote, I think it was from a few days ago, where it's like, oh, superheroes don't kill people, but Black Adam does. It's like, they all, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, like <laughs> Don't give me that. You know that. how many, Aquaman's body count is probably the highest of like any, the yeah. amount of people he kills in, in that <laughs> film. He's probably like, even aware of some of his kills. Maybe. Yeah, he remembers them. They make him happy when he goes to sleep. He's like, yeah. Hey, <laughs> Captain Marvel be jealous of his kill count. Damn, dude. I gotta pump my numbers. Wow, well, yeah, because Wonder Woman's like, I gotta throw more people's head first into walls and crack their skulls and sp sp all their blood splattered across the... Um... If no, only Flash there were more small the, uh... groups of reactionary terrorists <laughs> who want to take <laughs> us back to the Dark yeah. Age. We're a small group of um, reactionary terrorists. Oh, God. Terrible, terrible, terrible. I thought Black Adam <laughs> was Shazam's arch nemesis. Yeah, Black Adam is Shazam's uh, enemy. Well, it's complicated. Black Adam is sometimes like anti-hero, right? Yeah, he started like off as a villain and then... Yeah, well, Jeff Johns turned him into an anti-hero with his run of Justice Society and added a lot of lore right. there, so now a lot of people go off that. I see. I, um, I, I'm increasingly sad that there's, like... I actually want to read some Green Lantern comics because, like, that's such a great idea, and it makes me really sad that um that hasn't been leveraged effectively at all, not only in that stupid movie um, that Ryan Reynolds run, but also just... Even in this universe, what did the most we got was that he used a hammer in the in the Justice one, and then in the Snyder cut, it was a laser. <laughs> like what? What a yep. what a lame utilization of these of this premise of a character who forms who his imagination and his willpower is his superpower. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, what a great idea. idea. No laser. Like even discounting the shared no universe laser. stuff, there's about fucking twenty films worth of lore and characters in Green Lantern. Well, yeah, because um, you got you got like the Green Lantern, then you got the Yellow Lanterns and like the Red Lanterns, and it's yeah. expanding like the universe. It's huge. There's so much yeah, to do with that. There's been like seven mainline Green Lanterns, like stretching back to Alan Scott, that have all had their own runs and their own stories, and like. A lot of the supporting characters have had their own books and mm -hmm. like you can even have you could have two series of green lantern films going at the same time one that's focused on like hal jordan or an individual green lantern and then you can have a green lantern core going at the same time there is just that much story and lore well, to draw from it almost seems and like uh if you really wanted to you could just have like an expansive green lantern show that has multiple pov characters where you'd have like hal jordan john stewart uh, maybe like one of the leadership, or maybe one of the POV characters is Sinestro. It's like, damn, you got a lot of options, and and because of how broad they are, you can really take them to like any part of the DC universe. Like you can have Daxamites and stuff. You can have them interacting with all of these entities. Like it's a really good connective um mythos, and yet and and of course it's just this is a really great core idea. And yet it's not going to get utilized. But hey, maybe when they reboot the DC stuff with the Discovery Warner Brothers merger, who knows? Honestly, that's like probably what they should do. Just scrap it all, except for the Batman. Keep that. <laughs> Just restart yeah. it. And, like, you know, hey. Oh, yeah, um, go for it. Yeah, like, like um, I, I, you know, you were talking about the show before. Like, honestly, one of my, if someone was to like give me a free license just to do any show that I wanted, like a dream project would just be that expansive Green Lantern show. Like, if, especially if they said, yeah, you can also like connect it to other DC stuff. So I could do like, I don't know, like a little mini arc with him and Green Arrow and some stuff with him and Barry Allen because he's got some interesting dynamics with other heroes. And I could, you could do, like, there's just so much you can do and like you mentioned daxamite there is a green lantern daxamite who's really cool like and this whole thing is that he escaped um his fucking ho um his home planet because they were so xenophobic and uh um only actually found out about the fact that daxamites have superman like powers when he um went to earth for the first time uh, i was just there's just so much there and they're not yeah. taking advantage of any of it well it feels like they're making a lot of weird choices when it comes to um I mean, it probably, like, the fact that The Flash 
like hasn't had a, a full fledged film and the film that flash is going to get seems much more like a batman oriented thing like or not even not just batman but just that it's much more about other people that just feels like a waste feels like there's well, a general lot of zod's the waste. villain is he not yeah like zod's the villain not like reverse flash or grod or like any number of or captain cold like zod yeah. what are we doing like what the hell are we doing you know like <laughs> what are we doing like i don't get it i mean like I when course, the cw I'm... flash show is the standard for flash storytelling <laughs> yeah. outside the comics at the mm. moment I'm... i don't i uh, someone said I would love a Justice Society of America movie. That seems to be what they're building towards, though. But that's, I guess, is what I mean. It's like Justice League is gone, seemingly. Like it's a thing that we have access to. So now you have to like seek opportunities elsewhere to have teams. And it's just like, what? Uh, I don't know. Can we just like start over again? Just scrap it all, wipe the sl slate clean, burn it down. You know? Can we just do that? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay, I just Plus saw the actors this. Are constantly in trouble, you know? I just saw this stream title. As someone who did like WandaVision, I can say that what Wanda did was very wrong. Just because you can understand why doesn't make it okay. I don't understand people. To be fair, I don't yeah, understand why. I understand um, why Thanos did what he did, but no, he's not still him, wrong. Wanda. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I agree, right? I don't understand why Wanda did what she did. Really, when she finds out the state of affairs and continues it. If you tell me, yeah, 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 but she just can't let go of Vision, I'd be like, no, I, I don't, I don't think I believe that about Wanda. If she knew she was hurting people, I don't think that she. Would well, continue. Wanda was willing to let go of Vision when yeah. the universe demanded her to do it, so you know. And also, it seems like after Endgame, the conversation with Clint, you remember? It seemed like they were kind of, they were in a position where they, they could, you know, they could through their grief. But Wanda Vision almost like forgets that scene happened. At least it feels that way to me. Probably did. They were probably like, what should we do? It's like, fuck it, let's do this. And he's like, no, Well, as we know, right? Sometimes people, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, same guy as last Super Chat. I disagree on a few of your Phase 4 opinions, but wanted to show that I am in favor of Dunkin' on Dumbos. Also, hi, Rex. Hi. Um, yeah, no problem. That's, that's... Fair enough. We are pretty harsh to Phase 4, I won't lie. But it, I mm -hmm. really do think it's garbage. <laughs> um... I think Rags is using wrong the way most would use the term bad. In my expectance, wrong implies culpability and bad describes the event. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Like, yeah. like it's not wrong that a hurricane happens, but a hurricane can be described as bad because of the effects it had. But, like, what it means for it to be wrong is, like, well, a hurricane is just a thing that happens. It doesn't choose anything. It's, it's, it's not conscious. There is no culpability. Oh, um, God. I'm kidding. Because wrong implies right. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll fucking you're just walking it. into, the, you're strolling into that minefield with a grin and plastered I, on you. I leapt mind. over the mine and was about to read the next super chat. It's totally fine. Totally fine. Yep. No damage. Everyone's fine. Is it just me? Or has the MCU become post Infinity War really good at setting existential horror situations? Like with Wanda making a whole town of meat puppets, Loki and Free Will and Endgame? Yeah, none of it's on per. Well. So, funnily enough, for the WandaVision one, I thought you were going to reference what she does to Agatha Harkness. Agatha, um, yeah. Horrifying. Yeah, absolutely, and it seems... Because I, I pretty much agree with this wholeheartedly. They don't even realize what they're doing. Uh, nope. It's it's baffling. Um, because it's funny, I think Doctor Who would be the best example. You guys would have seen Jay's video. He condemns the idea of trapping someone permanently in some kind of prison to the main villain guy. She's like, that's fucked up and horrible. And then she does it to him. Oh, what? <laughs> right down. <laughs> it's um, it's like what? Or well, she doesn't do it. Two people she trusts do it. Tell her that they've done it, and she approves. Like so, it's. And by the way, the best part of that is that they chose to do that because at first they wanted to kill him, and she said that would be immoral. But it would be more moral to lock him in like a prison in which he is sentient but can't. Yeah. I feel like we've talked about this before, but. Permanence in a prison where you can't do or say anything, or death. What are you guys voting for? Mm, yeah, I know, that's, uh, yeah. I don't even think it's hard to answer. <laughs> I, just, like, <laughs> no, I, know, I know it's not. I know. Yeah. Uh, greetings. No, you're right. 
existential dread has been ramped up big time yep. now in phase four. You know, like, yeah, beyond between a guy, a purple man snapped his fingers and yeeted half of life in the universe and we didn't even know it was happening, to, wait, in Earth there is a giant, like, creature that wants to burst out and, like, <laughs> destroy our planet and it's frozen, but, like, it could still come back to life, maybe? What was Doctor Strange's opinion on that? Or I guess he never found out. I guess Doctor Strange either doesn't know about or doesn't care about the fact that Celestials are like, but because he would know about them, right? Like in, in his research and everything. I would have thought, but then again, I don't know, you know? It's so well, weird because all of these factions, they all pale compared to the TVA. And it's like, how though? They do, that's right. It's like, the mm. TVA is way more powerful. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, we have to assume they are, right? There would have been timelines where Thanos achieved his goals, but like that can't be allowed, right? Well, so he would have. They would we have made him. the jokes before the the Eternals, like one of the Celestials, fucking does one movement wrong, and a little TF a TVA guy ports up there, hits him with the stick, and, oh, just yeah, goes, and, it, yeah. and then starts again. Yeah, it's so absurd, but like that's what we have to work with now because that's the story. Job, guys. Yeah, phase four is kind of, if I were to summarize it, it would be the the ultimate proof that high concept does not mean high quality. No, no, you gotta do a lot of work when it when you go high concept because it's these huge modifiers. Like when you when you tell me that there are stones that like yeet half of the universe, you need to meaningfully grapple with the consequences of half the universe being deleted without warning and then being brought back to life without warning either. It's like, dude, the world is not gonna respond well to this. Like <sighs> And plus, when I discover that it's also apparently burnt, like, all animals and plants. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. man. Yeah. I got news for you all at the end of the stream. <gasps> but anyway, let's press on. Greetings, fellas. I'm currently going to school for welding and hope to continue my education in underwater welding. I've been with you since episode one, and I'll be here until my Whoa. planned retirement by 38. Oh. Thank you all so much oh. for being with me on this wonderful adventure of life. Well, yeah, we'll be there for your retirement. And it'll be like, you'll, oh, nice. you'll mention it in a super chat, and we'll be like, oh, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. <laughs> that's, right, that's, that's, that's a great there. old person voice, Mahler. You should do it more. I, I only want to roll it out for when it's suitable. Otherwise, it becomes oh. a sort of clown thing, you know? You don't want it to get old. Uh. <gasps> oh. Oh. Prediction. Wong saves the multiverse. I don't see why he wouldn't be involved. I feel like it's, it's going to be... Well, I was about to say it's going to be strange, and then I was thinking it might Probably be Wanda. Be Wanda. Yeah. yeah. It'll be that she has a change of heart at the end, and then she saves it all. Something fucking like that. Put yourself in prison, and then we'll talk, Wanda. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> But, but I mean, apparently that's... we're getting multiple versions of Wanda in There'd be no point. Well, the well, well, <laughs> it, it's, it's all, it all depends on plot leaks and whether oh. they're true, and it seems like they are, so. It's gonna be a nightmare to remember everything from that movie and write it down. I, I you know what? It. I'm, <laughs> I'm starting to get the impression it actually won't be. <gasps> I'm, uh, I'm getting the impression that that film might be a lot thinner <gasps> than... Um, Expect well, that's not that much of a gasp worthy thing. <laughs> it's just I don't know. That's an impression I get. Um, but we'll see. Jessica Jones's first season was all about her dealing with what these townspeople went through. David Tennant was clearly evil and Rags was right. Yep, yeah, that's right, the purple man. And he was that's never right. presented as they never presented as, as a good guy. They explained where it came from, but there was never presented as him doing something that could even be construed in any world as being somewhat noble. Yes, I got... Yeah, it was, it was a... What he does to people as an experience was horrible. Like, the, I remember that being very made, made clear. Yeah. Hashtag, I stand with rags. Hashtag, down with Matthew Broderick. Hashtag, Jay is right. <laughs> hey, look. Hey, he was, he was uh, gonna be in Breaking Bad. And that, that means that he must be good. Matthew Broderick was going to be in Breaking Bad? He was going to be Breaking Bad. Oh. That's the main character's name. Mr. Bad, I see. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Bad, Bad, first name Breaking. It's just something I've always... I remember finding out... I don't know who told me at first, but I just remember thinking, like, as they would think, um, Jesus Christ, what timeline would we be in if he had accepted and Brian Cranston didn't get the role? 
Because mm. I just don't think Breaking uh, Bad is anywhere near the same if you remove Brian Cranston. Yeah, I, I have no clue how Roderick would have done. Mm. It would have been Someone cool to see him try, I guess. This is only the villain. So as the story goes, <laughs> apparently, um, in one of the crazy timelines that Barry creates, uh, what happens is Supergirl is the one who survives and Clark gets killed by Zod as a baby. That's like the premise of this particular universe. So yes, he has been announced to reprise his role. That is official. So Zod is back. And I, for one, can't wait to see him say on a farm or alternatively, I will find him. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> I, this, is, this is the way it always goes. You're him. like... The new episode of EFAP's coming out, and the leaks are that Fringy kills everybody. And you'd be like, that's crazy. And then there's a trailer, and it's only Fringy talking for most of it. It's like, um... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's one of those things where you just start to piece it together. <laughs> like, wait a minute. You know? I don't know, I'm getting a little... And then there's like one clip of rags, and they cut it off right at a scream. And you're like, what? Why would... Whoa! What? <laughs> why would you do that? Unless you made choices that scare me. <laughs> and then there's like really badly CG shot where you're with all of us. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. I don't feel like you're telling me the truth. Lord Long Long you know of Mjöpslington Abbey. Have you given any more thought to a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong when there's less going on? It'd be a movie fap for the ages. Yes. Oh well, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think we've uh, we've given a bit of a thought to that one. That's a, that's a movie that we'd be interested in checking out sometime, I think. Uh, don't know when, but I imagine we would shove it into a uh, monster movie medley or something. Maybe because they, they're coming out with another one, right, eventually? Did, did they announce what that's going to be? I can't remember. Like Kong vs. Godzilla 2 or some shit. Well, they're both appearing in Call of Duty soon. Woohoo! They are! No, I think they're already in it, right? Oh, I'm, yeah. I, I'm not sure, but possibly. In the uh, the Call of Duty World War Two video game, where you dress up as these crazy <laughs> characters in these crazy costumes and have gun camos and do sick tricks, I love it. I love how we've just totally moved away from the tone that World at War was trying to capture, that war is hell, and that the people on the ground, it was an incredibly stressful, tense, scary experience. No, it's, war is about... Godzilla. Dance moves and emotes and Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> and King I Kong. think we have, I think we've forgotten, it, it's sort of become a meme on its own, but the words Call of Duty yeah. actually mean something. <laughs> they do mean... Well, and, I, and Medal I, of Honor, I, right? Like, these names, there's a reason these things have these names. It's so funny you say that, Rex, because, like, not earlier this week, in part because of this Godzilla thing, I thought the same thing. I'm like, Call of Duty... Like, Call of Duty, you know? Like, the name that it represents. And yeah, Medal but, of Honor is another one. There's a duty in destroying like, Godzilla on the battlefields of World War II. <laughs> mm, yeah. It is your duty to fight those that are the threat to us. The threat it is to your liberty. Duty to fight 99 other crazy people in a battle royale simulation. Dude, so that I, you I want the victory royale crown. The fucking and do trailer a of like. <laughs> You have Winston Churchill with like a fucking minigun looking at Godzilla and he goes, Never thought I'd die side by side with the pads <laughs> over. <laughs> Unlock the Winston uh, Churchill well, skin. You say this. It's so you and Godzilla can fight <laughs> Mecha Hitler and <laughs> Battle Royale. And they have like I'm combo kidding. moves like Iron Man and Captain America where they. <laughs> <laughs> I, know that, I, know that you guys are joking. I know that you're joking, but they, they actually added Snoop Dogg as a playable character. <laughs> Snoop Dogg and Hitler take out Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, so, dog this type of life pretty interesting sometimes, not gonna lie. <laughs> hey, put the gun down, a dizzle for I mean, you this is the thing. Once you, once you push it to that level of absurdity, it becomes like, actually, I want this now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's just a matter of like, damn, remember when you were trying to remember how like Call of Duty used to have at the end of the game, like, you know, a quote or some sort when of line. When you died, was... whenever you died, there yeah. would be a yeah. quote about war. Well, I remember World, World at War has a really powerful ending. The ending of World at War is after after you plant the flag in the Reichstag, it, it just cuts to war footage. Um, 
it's uh it's it's um it's the speech um by uh macarthur talking about after like the peace had been signed with japan and it had the enola gay flying over you know and then it showed the the detonation of the nuclear bomb and then it just hard cuts to like 50 million people lost their lives this was the deadliest conflict in human history it's just like a really stark reminder it's like this happened this actually happened and it was a really end, bad america got bad. that victory royale and <laughs> and and that like that's what it used to at least have as an element in Call of Duty, even when it started getting more bombastic. Even in like Modern Warfare two and three, they still had the quotes. The quotes that if you sat and actually read them, like it's like that shit makes you think, you know? Like these these are actually interesting observations that are put up on screen, but now it's like gone. It's just totally gone. You know, maybe this is a really fitting crossover because um, the very first Godzilla film, 1954, um, that is a very serious, somber drama where the monster isn't just like this, oh, look, it's, it's coming. It's this very frank look at like um, the, the nuclear age and uh, the effect that Hiroshima had on Japan. And uh, you, you see people lying in the streets with like the, the, same, the same keloid scars at the bomb let off and there's a, there's a lot of things about about weapons and how they shouldn't be used and uh, the, the the devastating impact of, of, of nuclear um arsenals and then slowly over time it's just become the monster franchise um yeah. and in that, in that the, same way that think of the monsters all about yeah. environmentalism uh, they achieve this message by having the main lady release the monsters in the hopes of fucking destroying humanity i guess it's just like what what are you trying to say well, Reminds me a lot of um, it's it's like it's like when they had the Iron Giant in Ready Player One. It's like, isn't he cool using his crazy weapons? It's like, man, way to like miss the whole point. That, you know, like, god damn, like, you just got you just totally missed the point. But yeah, that does happen because it's a lot more. E it's easier to do that. It's easier to have the the robot from Ready uh, from the Iron Giant like to have him. Did have you almost say like, Ready Player One? I, I almost did. Yeah. Okay. But that would be an, that, that would, would be, be sacrilegious. Yeah, absolutely, it would be. It's just it's just really sucks. But like that's kind of that's kind of where we're at, you know. Yeah, it's the whole point of that film is it's the quotes in chat. Like he's not a gun. He's what if a weapon doesn't want to be? It's, but then it's like no, he's cool. Look at him shooting his lasers and punching things. Fucking hell! Uh... Aren't you excited? Metaverse? Ain't that gonna be great? Hmm. Hi guys. I'm wondering if any of you will or can make a video on Civil War. Best MCU movie in my opinion. Love your videos by the way, Fringy. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, it's one of my back burner projects. One day I wanna make the TFA equivalent critique of, of, of Civil War. Um I don't think it's on my list, really. Um I'd like to go through it all. Oh, I think it's a neat film. I think it's a neat film too. EFAP. Pretty everyone is neat. too afraid to disagree with Rags' opinions. Also EFAP. Everyone disagreeing with Rags. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, you haven't got the updated lore. We're all afraid of Theo now. Yeah, exactly. Theo's the scary one lurking in the shadows. <laughs> Just waiting to jump out and have an opinion. Don't say his name too loud. He can hear us. <laughs> you can, can smell your fear. I can, I can smell you. Like you, you express just a pretty casual opinion, and Theo goes, "Really?" And then you go, N -n -n "No, no, I'll take it back. I'm sorry." <laughs> and then, and then you go, "Well, wait, maybe." What, what do you think? Just start sweating. It's like yeah. I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> Theo, you're so cruel. Tony Stark is the new Joel. It's all because of him. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> Every yeah. death in the MCU universe. Fucking Tony Stark's fault. Uh, these people can only argue by taking things out of context. So annoying. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> some of it was just wrong. Like, yeah. It wasn't out of context, it was just wrong. It was out of context with correctness. Yes. Wrong and mm. bad are moral characteristics ascribed to the action. Uh, I don't know about that. Something being bad in general, from me, my POV, would I would express it as like, 
I think that event has negative consequences, not that I think there's a morally culpable person involved. Um, but if someone's stabbing someone to death and I go, that event is bad, it, it, it seems redundant at that point. I would rather go straight towards, like, that guy is fucking doing something horrible. Um, uh, culpability, culpability to whom had the intent. You can say an action is wrong and or bad, but the agent isn't culpable. Yeah, just I I would not use both of them interchangeably in that scenario. In Digimon Adventure 2, Digimon Emperor, manipulated kid, breaks down when he realizes he enslaved real Digimon for months and it wasn't just a game. Damn, dude. Digimon Adventure 2? So, like, they're bringing out the hard stuff straight away, huh? If Digimon Adventure 1 is so great, how come there is- Oh yeah, that's right, there is! I just like the idea that the bum, first bum. one is really chill and wholesome, and the second one they're like, we're going dark. Digimon Slavery, let's fucking do it. Digimon. <laughs> Digimon. <laughs> Slap them in chains and make them pick all our oh, cotton. no. <laughs> it's bad, don't laugh. It's just also a fun theme song. Later no, he has a I'll, nightmare I'll where Digimon crucify him. What the uh, fuck? I damn. need to dig I'm gonna Google Digimon Crucifixion and see what happens. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> I need to show you this. Oh no. <laughs> oh, let me see. <laughs> Can't wait. He's not like, he's sort of, I mean, it's not. It's not what I hope for, but it's still satisfying. <laughs> oh my god. I love this. I love this. <laughs> oh my god, there's another. It's made it's very it's it's made for very short stout Digimon, I guess. <laughs> oh fuck, Digimon. What are you up to? This is just this is fucking <laughs> what is this tweet? <laughs> uh. <laughs> he died for our sins. You know, I'm reminded of a comic oh. book that was about Godzilla going to hell and he had to fight his way out of the seven circles of hell. And this is kind of giving me like, not, not the exact same vibe, but like conceptually just the mixture of religious imagery and goofy looking monsters. How dare you? Digimon only made the, uh, the sleekest, impressive monster designs. Remember in Logan, <laughs> that one hunter guy said Xavier's mind had been classified as a WMD? Why wouldn't Wanda get the same classification? I mean, it's just a reality. <laughs> to be fair, the Iron Man suit <gasps> probably is capable of doing something like that. Uh, you know, causing mass levels of, of damage, but... I don't know what it takes to be considered a weapon of mass destruction, but I can understand how certain mutants would get that classification. Yeah. What the f oh I was okay I oh, okay I I was I was just going through thumbnails or like the little Google preview images and so when I saw that one I thought the QIY logo was I N R I and I was like what the fuck there's no way they actually put that and it's like oh okay it's just a it's just a logo because that would have been fucking hilarious if I had that on the crossover his head. Yozos Nazarenus Rex Eudeorum. Eudeorum? Yeah, Eudeorum. So, in Age of Ultron, very start, Wanda gives Tony the mind flame that makes him take the scepter, causing Ultron. She's literally the start of all this. Yep. Yeah. That's fine, we don't remember that. Uh, Wanda did get to say goodbye in Infinity War. I guess, she, yeah, that's, that's yeah. true, actually, yeah, to a degree, like, it might not have been on it's her not tunes, ideal, but, yeah. but, you know, it's at least something. I disagree with EFAP. Wanda did nothing wrong. Hail Hydra. Smiley face. <laughs> okay. uh, the Simpsons They're references really have evolved. EFAP will now only review videos that also make Simpsons references. That's cool with me. They're usually yeah. pretty good. 
Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's just the highlight of the whole video. Yep. I may have enslaved the entire town and locked up their children away from them, but at least I gave them magic shows, you jerks. Hi, Rex. Hello. She did give them a magic show. That's true. I think that should be considered. Indeed. Halloween equals slavery it's confirmed. No, your Halloween... slavery is not immoral if you give your slaves at least one magic show every week. And a Halloween. Don't forget. Mandatory uh, attendance. Mandatory Halloween, which you because know what? you are if we have you're to, still then, a slave, right. you can't just not go. Um, thank you for picking this video. Enlightening. Well, like I said, we're, we're all covered now right. for the wander arguments because that's who uh. knows what's going to happen when we see multiverse. <laughs> oh no! Hello, EFAP crew. Oh, what is your kidding. top three favorite books of all time, and why would you consider them so? What are my top favorite? What? Sorry. Books. What was that? What was boat. that noise? Books. Boat. Boat. What was my favorite boat? Boat. Book. Books. Oh, book. A book. 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 Favorite books? Um, I think probably uh, The Count of Monte Cristo is definitely up there. I really enjoy The Alchemist, and I like The Stand quite a bit. Um... Let me see. Of course, The Lord of the Rings, great books. I love them. It's so awesome to read those. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, my favorite books. Uh, ba hmm. Uh, hmm. Trying to, I, I'm just thinking back. Lords of Discipline, I really liked quite a bit. Hmm. I, I guess I'm the only reader here. Oh, we're waiting for you to finish Help me! Help me! I'm running out of books! <laughs> oh, well, Actually, so my answer is as simple as I don't do fucking fuck all reading, so I, I'm afraid my answer's gonna be limited to what I have read, which is very limited, and so I just have a... I, I really enjoyed... read no goddamn book. Well, He's I can't like drive, so why would I read? That's true. If you can't read and drive, <laughs> don't waste time. Don't read and drive. Time. Um, yeah. you get headaches. Sure, you don't want to read and drive. Lovecraft stuff, A Song of Ice and Fire, The Lemony Snicket, A Series of Unfortunate Events. They're the things that I, I remember those. Read up on and enjoyed, but I haven't read a book now since I don't even remember, okay? Books are just this alien device. I don't even understand it, really. Blah. Oh, and a hungry caterpillar, yeah. Top, top, top quality. Yeah, plenty <laughs> of short stories that have been like uh, Time Once a Skeleton and The Blue Giraffe and. Uh, Dune was a fun read. It's, it's ages since I saw it, but you know it's a little topical. But yeah, I, I enjoyed Dune. I read I, all uh, of Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It was dope. Fuck you. Hitchhiker's oh Guide yeah, I read those books. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was five books, right? Yeah, I think it's five. I have like a yeah. complete bound version with all of them. I have a, a box long that time has all since four. I've read those. Yeah. I've got all all five, and there are the softbacks. <laughs> I don't know why I find this funny, but I do. That is, yeah, that's <laughs> good. I uh, I really like Metroid 2033. That's a great book. <clears throat> Metroid 2033. Yeah, it's it's so the the writing. Oh, it's just uh, it's, it's silky smooth prose. It's like hmm. wonderfully descriptive. Um, and it's a super interesting story as well. Not Metroid, Metro 2033. Oh, I'm oh. way less interested now. <laughs> um, but I've heard those books are pretty good, yeah. Um, I haven't read the other two, though. Uh, I hear 2035 was really good. Time once uh, I know Time Once a Skeleton was a short story that I always kind of remember as a really cool premise that really deserves a movie. Um, space explorers, they come across a, I think it's an asteroid or it could be, it's basically, it's a, it's a space base. And while they come to the space base and arrive there, there is a strange time anomaly that occurs <laughs> and it fast forwards the time on the space station or the place that they find themselves, the facility, and they find a skeleton that through the plot, um, 
they know is one of them, but they don't know who it is. And so the story kind of revolves around the, like they're trapped there and they know that one of them is going to die and then time is going to get fast forward. So they're, they don't know which one of them is going to end up being the skeleton. And this is a really neat kind of premise that could be cool. Oh, foundations. Yeah. Uh, the foundation books were really cool. Uh, the, the <clears throat> Isaac Asimov series there's cause it's almost, it almost reads like a whole bunch of moderate to short sort of stories that are together in the same universe because it takes place over a very long, uh, very, very large time scale. Um, really good science fiction sort of work that explores, you know, how, how can a massive space civilization fracture and things of that nature. Um, I, I, I always really, really loved uh, all the Asimov stuff that I've read. Um, I know there was Hammer of Dawn, which was... I think that was Arthur C. Clarke, which is about an asteroid that's going to hit Earth and how Earth deals with it. And there's an, like half of the book is like people on Earth and the other half is the ship that they send out to maybe try and stop it or something along those lines. Um, do we have Nightfall? That's a Isaac Asimov and Robert, Robert Silverberg uh, novel about a civilization that is accustomed to always having light. And every so often there's a cycle uh, astronomically where all the suns that orbit the planet, they eclipse. And for a short period of time, the whole planet is in darkness and it causes the species to go fucking insane because they don't know how to deal with actual darkness. Mm -hmm. And it, it like it, 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 it's like a cycle of civilization building itself up and then being destroyed by this astronomy event and the things like that there's all all these cool kind of premises that are played out in these uh, sci-fi novels that would i think they'd make some really awesome like movie adaptations and things i think they uh, adapted foundation right it's a show on apple tv or plus or whatever it is. i'm i'm not sure and i would be fucking it, it it's it's the kind of sh it's the kind of story i don't think you could do it's just it's because it explores such a long, long time scale um, right. of um, like a galactic civilization and scale and events carrying on. And I, I don't even know how you would uh, kind of do it. You'd have to do it where almost like each season is sort of a aspect of the books. Because the ask like this part might be, oh, it's this character and this religion starting that, you know, kind of is built around this thing. And this other civilization is actually around, oh, this guy and he's a, so a, a sociologist and he comes up with this, this sort of algorithm to predict what a spacefaring civilization might do. And, and over here, oh, there's a general and he's going to break away from the human emperor because of the da 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 and start his own thing. And this is all of these stories like that that take place in the same world it, it feels kind of like an anthology of stories in a sense um dude, i really liked it nightfall sounds like the uh, source idea for pitch black yeah kind of uh it, they're similar you know the, every once in a while it gets dark and spooky monsters come out it's a similar idea you know bad things happen when the darkness comes if they want any uh, short story recommendations, Isaac Asimov's The Last Question. That's, that's one that's always stuck with me over time. Yeah. Uh, I feel like you got a lot of book recommendations there, a lot more than three. <laughs> um, the spell at the start of Spider-Man was still active if anyone in the any universe knows Peter, they enter the MCU. The spell erased Peter from everyone ever. Toby gets back and MJ doesn't know who he is. Well, they don't know that Peter, presumably, the MCU one. But to be fair, I ain't defending the fucking spell mechanics. I don't think they make any sense. I don't, I don't see how yeah. they can make sense, really. It has to go way further than what it... I don't, yeah, I just don't like it. Yeah, it... It's a tism. It is a tism. Mm. Some of you may suffer immensely for the sake of my grief. That is a sacrifice. I'm willing to wander. So I, it, it's even like worse than that. It's a sacrifice I'm willing to make you do. <laughs> well, that is what yeah. it is in Shrek, isn't it? Well, in Shrek, I guess it's the idea that they're all volunteering to go off on the quest and then compete to, you know. I, I, sorry, I, I guess I forgot that. I didn't remember they were volunteers. 
I, th- I thought they were oh, unless they were like the knights in his uh, army. Huh. Hmm. Actually, I'm not sure then. I assume that because they were all competing to be the one to go and rescue the princess. Yeah, I don't know if they they were doing that out of their own interest, though, or if it was just something he was forcing. I can't remember. Should have just sent them all. Fuck it, yeah, do it. Fuck it. I mugged a person, but I didn't kill him, so it's fine. True. That works. Ooh. He's wrong. Killing uh, Clint was killing Yakuza when she was snapped away. When everyone snapped back, he's obviously going to be with his family, who's gone for five years. Come on. Um. If it was defined that, uh, well, I guess, because he's not even with sh- Shield or Sword at that point, right? He's kind of doing his own thing. He's on his own. Yeah. yeah, I guess there's no way to necessarily get him in contact to ask him for help with this, or at least not in such a way that would have happened that quickly. I haven't seen Hawkeye, so I'm yeah. not sure what his position is at that point. But yeah, maybe you're right. Um, what's the first clothing to go to space? The first clothing to go to space? Yes. Space. Um, <laughs> I assume it would be multiple pieces of clothing at the same time, right? If we're going to get super technical, I suppose it's the position of the person sitting down relative to wherever the space dividing line is. So I guess, like, maybe the tips of their toes or their knees would be first? Uh, frog Council would like to inform Rags that this is actually the setup to a joke. Oh! <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, sorry, after the, after the wheels and fucking <laughs> doors thing, it's just... Um, the first clothes to go to space. Oh. It's... Death to us. Suck. Gravity. Gravity shirts. Um. Oh, I like it. Um. Ast or uh Ascotroid. Nah. I don't know. What what is it? Apollo. But if I was to pronounce that as Apollo. Yeah. Mm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I yeah, Apollo. Yeah, I don't. I don't like that one. Um, yeah, I just don't. Eh, I don't know. Oh well. Incorrect game quote of the day: Gambling is just a part of who we are. It. I just market it to sexy children. Oh. Oh my goodness. Besides demand for. We don't products. want no ugly children gambling. <laughs> Besides, demand for my products is about to skyrocket like the good old days after 9-11. Oh. Well, um... Yeah, still, apparently that's a reference to a channel. I saw someone mention this on a subreddit, the incorrect game quotes. I just, I'm not familiar with the channel, and I don't think anyone else here is, so... Yeah, I'm not aware of it, it, no. Um, at least the adults were allowed to eat. Well... If she was keeping the kids alive, that means I guess she allowed them to eat. I don't even. You don't have to. God, I don't even know. Like, maybe she was like manifesting food into their stomachs or something. Or keeping them in like a form of stasis where they just don't have functions or something, which is even more scary. Kind of, I don't know. Mm. There was a character in an Isaac Asimov story who was like magic, and she could make your poop disappear from inside of you, so you didn't have to go poo. Like Harry Potter. <gasps> No, 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 they still pooped in Harry Potter, it's just that they then opened a portal to the poop dimension where they um, dropped it in. There is a, no, they, there is they, a poop they, dimension? They... Or... I thought it was that they, they, they would poof it from inside them into the, into the poop dimension. Well, I thought it was the case that they would shit on the ground and then they would open the portal to the oh. poop <laughs> dimension. Shit on the <laughs> ground is so uncivilized. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't shit on the ground. Yeah, we, we, we wouldn't do that. We've talked about this before. We had several jokes about what if you accidentally fell into the poop dimension? It's just a big, just thing of poo. And uh, also, why couldn't you couldn't you teleport a person to the poop or anything to the poop dimension? Yeah. If you can just teleport things to different dimensions, like hold on, and you're using that for poop? Yeah, put like I imagine in there. that that would yeah, like sure, that's a great use for it because no one wants to be around poop, but like. God, 
darn man like the, the what that opens up for your wizarding world and to be clear this is one of the biggest problems with harry potter is there's so much magical bullshit you're just like what the fuck is even happening um but i mean yeah sure if if it goes to a poop dimension if they spe if she specified jk rowling was like yeah it we're, i can't just say it disappears i have to specify it goes to poop dimension and it's a terrible horrible place that you definitely don't want to go and it is stanky. Ooh, it's yeah, nothing but poop. It's one of those things because well, the way she phrased it was, um, I don't remember like exactly where she specifies it goes to, but she said that um, it was with the advent of muggle plumbing that they stopped this practice, which indicates to me that the poop did leave the body and that muggle plumbing was a much better solution than I don't magically believe them. wishing it away. Yeah, there's no way that well, look, muggle... indoor plumbing is amazing, but there's no way that it's better than making your poop literally magically disappear to another dimension. There's no way that's better. Yeah, why didn't I guess they really thought like an outhouse is gross because the poop is still there. It's like right. But if we had an entire outhouse dimension. dimension, an outhouse dimension, yeah. Oh, maybe what happened was people from that dimension, they finally caught wind <laughs> or broke wind um, of uh, of the fact that all this poop was appearing. And so they transported themselves to Earth and they said, hey, you guys have to stop dumping all of your poop here. We live here. And so the wizards were like, oh, shit, like we're really we're really, really sorry. Like, we, we, <laughs> seriously, we, we oh, legitimately dude, this... thought it was just disappearing. I we would... are so sorry. We will never do that again. I want to alter the delivery, right? Because that sounds like a Rick and Morty joke where... They've been doing, they established they've been doing it for thousands of years, and then just, like, the creatures of that <laughs> planet finally, like, have colonized around enough that they get to that portion, and then, and then the, you you know, there's all these portals dropping poops in. J just that as an image for those people. They finally climb through one of those portals, and they just, they see, like, you know, a bunch of wizards laughing while they're sending their poops through, and they just have an absolute, like, the Dan's game face. <laughs> Let me just get it up so that you can. Yeah, because just that. <laughs> oh, they're just standing there looking at them all and they just have this that whole face. time. This whole time it was you that you 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 understand how long it took us to ascend to the stars to reach this level with poop constantly just dropping on us everywhere. We we ha we can't go outside without wearing hats for fear of poop just landing on us. Our children have never uncovered their heads. I mean, it's just yeah, they thought it was a weather event. They just figured that was normal. Yeah, but the fucking wizards would feel bad then. Ooh, okay. I think I have like more or less a precise quote, or some, or at least something claiming it's the precise quote. Um, yeah, so they just relieved themselves where they stood and vanished the evidence. <laughs> Relieve them. I don't believe that. There's the but poop is super <laughs> gross. They wouldn't do that. Yeah, it should be relieved <laughs> because you would have to where they crouched. Oh, so. Yeah, I'm not. I don't. Does anyone here stand when you poop? Yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> no, I you don't. don't. <laughs> um, Even yeah. in caveman times, you would squat. Well, yeah, it's like a woman giving birth. You don't do it in certain positions just because of how muscles kind of work. Um, Wow, there's no way that a civilized society would be like, I'll just shit right here while we're... <laughs> no. Did you, you would forget excused... the whole time this came up previously? Yeah. Wow. Bring, do you remember it? I do, yeah. Alright, yeah, that's fine. Carry on. I do remember it. Yeah, chat know it's come up again, yeah. <laughs> they all remember. What like, you said. The, even... Even the toilet, as we have it today, is actually considered like the and uh, putting your body in the incorrect position to poop because we're yeah, meant they, to squat biologically. They build those little—I uh, don't know what they're called—but they make your legs go up further so that you squat more. Like little poops, yeah, the little, little stool yeah. thingy. Mm -hmm. You can put yeah. uh, you can put your feet on. Uh, the stool rule. Nice. <laughs> Westview deserved it. They chose to live in. New Jersey. Oh. <laughs> Squatty Potty, that's the name. Squatty Yay. Potty. To poop dimension discussion to electric boogaloo. <laughs> Ew. Uh, 
EFAP on my 21st B-Day. Been watching y'all for two years now. Thank you guys for helping me learn to think more critically about storytelling and for a great community. Love you massive. Oh, Here's to many more years of EFAP. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, you Happy bet. Happy birthday, dude. Happy, Happy birthday. Birth. Thank you so much for the kind words. Also, I... Joker brings up a good point. What happens if you shit yourself and then realize you left your wand in another room? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's well, embarrassing. Yeah, that's... That could be a That's, sticky situation. That must be like a story that happens to people. Like when you grow up in the Wizarding World, that's one of the things that just maybe happens to a lot of people where they forget their they they're just so confident that they just crap themselves right there, then reach in to get their wand, and oh shit, I left my wand at home, and so they have to embarrassingly <laughs> go up to another wizard and say, "Hey man, um, so like, uh, uh, can I can I get some help? Can I borrow your wand?" Can you make my poop go away? Because I just shot myself and I didn't have my wand. Can you help a brother out? You know, this kind of puts the idea in my head because like in the Harry Potter world, wandless magic is considered this really, really high tier skill to master. So I can just imagine there's a story about someone who dedicates their life to, to learning wandless magic just so they can poop wherever they want and not have to worry about the fact that they don't have their wand with them. Who pooped? Oh, it can't be Jimmy. He doesn't even have his wand. Meanwhile, Jimmy's like, <laughs> <laughs> I actually have diarrhea. Yeah. I, I imagine, <laughs> I imagine that moment when you do have to go up to one of your friends and ask them to disappear your poop for you, and they're <laughs> like, "Yeah, man, cruise before poop." <laughs> 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 oh, oh boy. I can't believe oh, I forgot the first time we discussed this. Uh, videos like these are the reason why democracy is cringe. I mean, like, holy crap, man. Hey, look, he should be allowed to vote. I... <laughs> it's fine that he can vote. Um, I resent that, Rags. I'm playing Elden Ring, and I was actively arguing against this video. I'm not sure I understand that one. Do you understand that one? I, I, I don't think I do. No. Don. Uh, meanwhile, Kate Bishop had her own mother arrested because she knew it was the right thing to do because Kate's an actual good person, unlike Wanda. I have not seen Hawkeye, but fair enough. All right. Uh, do you guys, will you cover the Star Wars videos by Mr. Cynical? I have not heard of Mr. Cynical. Unless you mean Cynical uh, Reviews. Let me, I don't think let he's making any here. Star Wars stuff recently. Mr. Cynical. Mr. Cynical familiar. Star Wars. Hmm. Um, there was a, seven months ago, a guy named oh, the yeah. Cynical Critic. He says, why the new Star Wars trilogy is much better than the original. I'm going to assume it's a joke. But oh, okay, I know who Mr. Cynical is. His channel name it doesn't actually exist. He just has a blank channel name, so that's why it's probably not coming up. But he made like this video, for example. Foundations of Star Wars. Okay, but he also has a video of how the OT is worse than the sequels. I think that I think that one's a joke. Um, as oh, I okay. imagine most of those are. Yeah, I double checked it. I think it's a joke. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, well, nothing planned as of yet, no. Uh, where do you watch Smiling Friends? I want the full narrative context of clips. Uh, Adult Swim, right? They provide it? They made it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You can get it on this site, presumably if you're an Americano. Uh, other than that, I would say Google it. I'm not actually sure where everyone accesses it from, respectively, exactly. Uh... Since Endgame, I only consume the MCU through EFAP. Way more entertaining. Yeah, I, I, I figure there's a lot of people who are doing that. Because you don't know what the fuck you get and if you pay to go see one of these movies at this point. Mm -hmm. The market is the market, guys. It's unfortunate, but that's just how it works. Disney is making lots of money regardless of what we think about it. Well, if... So this is the kind of interesting thing, right? Imagine, like, Disney said, we're shutting up shop... We're not going to do anything anymore. We've destroyed the industry. We feel bad. Bye-bye. <laughs> I think a lot of people would be like, No. No. I want more of your, your slop. <laughs> Enjoy. What Loki? 
You will always say it's so. I've been given uh, in 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 the the chat some somebody has told me two things. Someone said rags. As far as I remember, J.K. Rowling specifically said that young students had to ask the teacher to disappear poop. And also, children under 17 aren't allowed to use magic outside of school, so they presumably had to ask their parents when they were at home. Yeah, okay, so not everything is written very well in Harry Potter. No? What? Yeah, there's no way that the te First off, the teachers would say, no, do that shit yourself. Um, I'm not going to disappear your poo for you. You're a big boy uh, or girl. Yeah, could you ask a man teach? I don't know if that was like a gender thing, like if it was considered in bad taste for a... I think there would have been a poop teacher know. that sorts it for everyone. <laughs> a master <laughs> of the poop. The poop fresser. <laughs> yeah. Poop fresser, yes. Um, and and uh, regarding the, the using magic outside of school thing, I assume that most, just because of the predominance of muggles in the world, that surely there would either be magic households where it was totally fine to use magic and it was an understood... No, it's totally fine for you to disappear your own poo at home, you know? And I bet a lot of wizards live in houses that are built by just muggles, so they have indoor plumbing and things. It's so it's fucking absurd. Would... It sounds like a meme, but it, apparently it's real, so... It's <sighs> one of those things that if you're J.K. Rowling, you just don't answer. <laughs> yes. You just say, I hadn't thought about it. I wonder what they do. Well, you just and fucking say they do the can... same thing everyone else did at the yeah, time. Yeah, they, they shit in the toilet and then they flush it, you weird retard. <laughs> What's wrong with you asking me that question? You, you had one question. <laughs> this is what you spent it on. Imagine being like the 10 year old kid who asked that question. He calls you, JK Rowling calls you a fucking weird retard. <laughs> oh, man. You're like my hero, though. <laughs> so that's Could why J.K. Imagine... Rowling got canceled. She called a <laughs> eight-year-old fucking weird retard on the on the PQ. And then she was like, "Oh no, 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 no! Sorry, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. They use magic to to just that they would poop on the floor, and then and then it would go to a, a different. Please stop crying. They, it, the, the spell. It would be yeah. It would be great. And then they're like, "Do you really think I'm retarded?" She's like, "No." Oh, oh no. in, in in the wizard world, being called a fucking weird retard is actually a great compliment. It means that <laughs> they they really do like <clears throat> you. Yeah. The parents yeah. are just fucking scowling at her, and she's like, "It's fine." I You're lying it. to me. I fixed nope. it. No, I took a a a, a, a vow a of truth, truth, a spell, truth, <laughs> truth spell. Yeah, I got I got cursed with truth. I can only tell the truth. Ooh. <laughs> Kids like, you're bullshit. Could you imagine being a first year Hogwarts student and just asking, like, this is like on the cusp of them installing toilets, and you're the guy who wasn't informed. So you're just like, hey, where's, where's oh, the bathroom? Oh, that's a bunch of them. I like, <laughs> imagine all the, yeah, all the kids who li literally don't know about that, who arrive at like wizard school their first day, and they're like, where are the, where are the bathrooms? Like, you well, know how many be... other students would fuck with them? Once muggles invented bathrooms, that's when they adopted them in Hogwarts. So what it would be is, where's the outhouse? And they'd be like, there isn't one. You just poop on the floor, and then we send it to a different dimension. <laughs> but then they'd say, <laughs> no, really, what do I do? I really have to go. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it was really funny, but I gotta poop. Just... <laughs> it's like, seriously, I have to actually drop drop a massive otter right now, and I, I gotta and like, find culture, a bathroom, Culture's please. just different in Hogwarts, so they're just like, yeah, you can go in the corner, I'll sort it out, just let me know. Yeah, it's <laughs> Just in the middle of the like lesson, it's yeah. about to lose 20 points. You need to direct me to a bathroom. Oh, no. What if that was someone's fear? The Dementors, right? They're, they manifest as your greatest fear. Oh. And your greatest fear was everyone watching you while you had to take a shit in the great hall in front of everyone because you didn't know about the disappearing poo. People are just like, wow, that's... Uh... <laughs> That's your greatest fear. You're like, yeah. Yeah. All right. It's not a Dementor. I don't even know how he would do it. How Maybe the Dementor would be like, yo, that's fucked up. I'm just going to turn into a skeleton or something. <laughs> I ain't doing that. You fucking weird retard. No, we can't keep calling the kids this. It just keeps causing the problems. <laughs> so, so Rag, I must correct you. It is the boggets that turn into your yeah. fear. The Dementor just the, feeds. The boggets turn so, into oh, poo, Rag. The boggarts, of course, the boggarts. My mistake. Oh my goodness. It's, of course, it's the boggarts who turn into your worst fear. 
Yeah, the Dementors oh. will just suck off your um, fear oh. of being... Suck off your what? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the Dementors are coming to get me. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna suck me off. <laughs> Somehow I imagine the eventual EFAP movie Harry Potter will not be child-friendly. <laughs> <laughs> and what if your what if your greatest fear? <laughs> what if your greatest fear was being <laughs> sucked off by a dementor, and it had to do that in front of the whole class, <laughs> and everyone was like, "Timmy." Like, I guess this is reasonable, but still, what the fuck? And Timmy was screaming in fear and pain. He's like, no, no, get away from my penis. Get away from my penis. Bogart was like, no, uh, I'm going to suck you off. Uh. Oh. Very different. Oh, world. my stomach hurts. Mola, help. Oh okay, he's going to ride it out. He's going to wait. <laughs> Oh my god. In regards to talking about something means you are promoting it, Rags mentions Hitler all the time. You don't hear people saying, I want to see more of that guy, do you? Also, hi, Frankie. More of Hitler or more of me? <laughs> you don't see either. That's, and that's, maybe that's for the best. I don't know. Keep fighting the goo fight. <sighs> what is that saying? Keep I'm... fighting the goo fight. I don't know what I meant to say to that. <laughs> Oh, really? well, there you go. You said I, something. I yeah, seriously need to give him more water. I'll be right back. Three months and no looking back. I think they're referring to their membership. Um, thank you very much. Ah. I thought Joel was responsible for everything bad. It's it's Joel and then kind of sort of Iron Man. You know. Complicated. Yeah. Um, I was asking about Blythe's accent mutually. His accent? Oh, I can't remember how he speaks, but I would presume, yes, that it's a Welsh accent. There's a lot of Welsh accents in the game. Um, day one of reciting Maxwell videos to get you to watch them, starting with Bloodborne. These are verbal asides. These are to describe visuals. Um, also, this is a verbal emphasis. Okay, now I start. Okay. Bloodborne is a Lovecraftian horror RPG that no one understands, by definition, where the player is free to attack hordes of human children at will and consume their innards. Oh no. It's not an accurate description, so... Um, you literally take out a newborn in that game, so... Uh... Bloodborne is indeed a very scary, disturbing world. Yes. And I know that reference. Yeah, this is indeed a disturbing universe. That's a yeah. That was that was pretty close actually to the voice. <laughs> the answer to Thank Halloween you. versus Christmas, Decemberween. Saying my name in the chat. Or Octobermas. Yeah. Why would it be Octobermas? Wouldn't it be like Hallowmas or something? Christmasween or Hallowmas? Oh. Sorry, I was mixing them up what? in my head. <sighs> Okay. Um, if that in-depth and engaging anti-baby gameplay appeals to you, keep listening, because it gets worse. Flash's clip of Mikolaj. No. In this game, you play as John Bloodborne, a foreigner incapable of speech without the use of sign language. Yeah. John Bloodborne? <laughs> <laughs> I like how just John and then the video <laughs> game name is just... John. <laughs> Audio in of itself. Yeah. Well, I had I had a friend um, growing up. Uh, he's living on the same street as me, growing up, and go to his house and we'd play Halo. And his mom thought that Halo was the name of the character on the cover. Mm -hmm. Is that Halo? Is that him? Is that Mister Halo over there? Mm -hmm. Mister John Halo. Hello there. This is Gruff. Hi. I'm slowly but surely catching up on EFAP, currently on EFAP 102. Hello, future me, and hi, Rags. Hello to you. Oh, good luck with that. Press the little Shiba Inu uh, little emoji thing. Thank you very much. Yo. <laughs> Shut up. 
He's very cute. Harry, did you shit in the goblet of fire? Better <laughs> <laughs> Dumbledore oh, said calmly. Dumbledore, I thought I made it disappear. <laughs> no, you hmm. can't. <laughs> Oh, um, we're not a disgusting race of dwarves. I'm gaining on you, EFAP. Oh. I'm on EFAP 147. I should be caught up in a month or two. I love the content and high rags. Hello. I got sort of a race to keep up with, with, uh, with the show, which, depending on how determined you are to watch it, like, every day, I guess you can catch up pretty quickly. I'd be quickly. curious if they're playing on easy mode or hard mode. On easy mode being only the mainline episodes. Being, yeah. Well, and I thought you were going to say two times speed. Um, I would allow that. Know? I think that's fine because I, I, right. I think I do that with Adam and Serge, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, yeah. It's a, it's, it's no, kind no, of weird. As long as you can make out what everyone's saying, it's kind of yeah. Yeah. Hashtag release the cut. Cut. Damn. The Just cut, the cut. cut. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, that would automatically be terrible. Fucking cuts, man. Enough. Yeah. Hey everyone, and hi rags. Lots of scritches. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you. Hey. This is very kind. My eyes don't cut in real life. Hold that frame. Unless you count blinking. That would be hmm. the closest thing, but it's almost like a, a very superfluous cut if you just blink and <laughs> they're like, and hey, we're back. No, nothing changed. Well, maybe if well, in the middle of that blink you, frick, you, you move your head right around and look at something else. And you're like, oh my god, look at that cut. We're, we're, we're somewhere closest else now. Thing, yeah, the closest cut. thing to a cut is when, like, maybe you pass out, or when you go to sleep. It's just a long cut. Well, when you flick your eyes, so when your eyes are looking in one place and then you immediately move them to another, your brain actually fills, um, uh, actually fills your um, vision with uh, images of the last thing you saw before the eye movement finishes just because it can't process it moving that far. So technically that would count as a cut in filmmaking terms. No. Shut up, nerd. Damn, dude. Mad <laughs> well. <laughs> it's okay to be a nerd, Matt, old jeez. Shut up, nerd. <laughs> no! Um, serial tier list when? I, mean, I don't think I do a good job of that. I kind of just like them. I don't know. I don't really. I just don't feel passionate about cereal. Yeah, you need someone else you to do it. You consider yourself to be like a connoisseur of cereal. You've never sat down with all of the bowls displayed, just I feel like... tasting each one like a wine tasting, but for cereal. If I met I someone the... with a bowl, spinning it around, smelling it. If I met oh, the equivalent yeah. of cereals that I am, just like with films, I feel like that person would hate me. They'd be like, "What do you mean Cheerios are fine?" I'd be like, "I don't know." Like yeah, that cinnamon, would be like so a. I feel like that would be a kids next door gag where like they, they cereal tastings, like you, they like open up a cereal and smell it. Ah yes, this is a quality vintage Cheerio. It's like ah yes, and then they would pour in it into glass, the yeah. pour it into the bowl, and then they would put the milk in, and like the milk selection would be a very, you know, and, and the way that it was poured. Like, and you'd have different kinds of milk, you know, like, like all the weirdos could pick skim, and then the normal people could pick like 2% or whole, and then they could put it on, and then they would they put it in slow, and they would stir it around, kind of like, like you wouldn't just pour it in one spot, you'd get it kind of like in a circle, like a, you know, there'd be an art to it. You'd go to the bar and have a cereal. Um, Fringy, you watch Master Chief versus Captain Del Rio, but it's law accurate. I guess that's a video. Oh, well, I know the, the scene in, in Halo 4, but I didn't know. I know that there was a lore accurate Chief versus Locke where it's, he just kicks Locke in the balls and then just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I, so Master Chief versus Del Rio if lore accurate. Okay. I'll take a look at that. Dude, that's Please. just what happens when you get rid of the crotch armor. You, are, you leave yourself vulnerable that's to true. a testicular kicking. Uh... After y'all have longed the Kong, have you considered a Kevin Costner post-apocalypse session? You know, Waterworld, Postman, Field of Dreams, Man of Steel. It would surely be an EFAP for the... You can't make us watch Man, Man of Steel, Steel again. <laughs> no. Man of Steel is a post-apocalypse Kevin Costner film. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, where does the apocalypse start in that? It's like, it's just Birth of Superman. <laughs> it's all over. It's, 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 it's right about the point of your rights worth. <laughs> 
That's but, a pre-apocalypse. Um, I see that sneaky attempt to make us see that movie again. Never. Never again. You should never have to do that. Bad. I've been enjoying the content. Still already posted my A Critique of Mola intro video, so I would... I would pay my pence with this super chat. Um, all right. Um, I'm a little bit confused. I'm not sure if you can say that exactly, but good stuff. Thumbs up. I don't know. Um, oh my good God. What the hell are these? Hmm. Just going to post this in the chat right here. Do, do, do. I mean, yeah, let's. Mm. G Yezu Crisp instead of Yezu Christos Christis, it's Guadalupe's ha instead of Guadalupe, yeah, uh, Lady Guadalupe, and Tade Tadeos. Ah, oh, ta uh. I don't want to say Tadeos, like retardios. <gasps> you can't say that. Sit in front of Jesus. All oh, the no, same. Jesus. All the same. Deos Tade. Prepara. Oh, today. Oh, it's 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 Hispanical. Okay, I thought it was. I thought it was like a like Tadeos, 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 Tadeos. Tade Tade Tadeos. Can't call me that. What the fuck? Oi, Molly. My friend from England says that Wales is like Alabama to them. Explain you peop your people. Explain us? Explain I can't do that. We are Not in words. Cons, are you the right? only way to explain the Welsh experience is through smell. I'll just say that we're not necessarily from this planet, and I'll leave it there. Hmm. I feel like that's an unsatisfactory answer, but I'll allow it for now. Hmm. There will be law books eventually. In the sequel, the Whales. Thank you Wonder all things. for your hard work, guys. Hi, Rags. Oh, thank you. Hello. Um, I missed Wednesday, so here's a special Wings quote because it involves me. I asked him what he thinks of the new Liquid Richard album, and he ignored it. I asked again, and he said, ah, "Zach, man, you're gonna be asking me life-altering questions. You gotta give me more than two dollars. Make it like ten or something." <laughs> Oh no, wings. Well, at least you know his price now. If you want to get the insightful answers, you're gonna to have to pay ten dollars, all right? Hmm. Lol, hold that frame for cereal. This kid is pouring the milk. Hold that bowl. The thing you don't want it to be a shitty cereal. You cut. You don't want to spill all the milk all over the table either. So you definitely gotta hold that bowl mm. still. That's true. Apparently the Screen Crush video was supposed to be satire. If that's true, it's way too late for April Fool's. It would be a perfect April Fool's video. If it released on April yeah. 1st, I'd be like, you know what? I'm loving it. The problem is it's mixed in with loads of arguments people actually make, and some that are, like, based in some forms of references that I'm actually okay with. I'm like, yeah, I agree with that. You know, like, it's it's a weird... Release it on April 1st, all right? It makes everything better. Because there's going to be people who will be sharing that video in the hopes of convincing people Wanda was right. Which I guess is funny. Yeah. It took an hour to write. I thought it'd take an hour to read. Yeah. <laughs> Good reference. That's from Futurama, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Dude, that was uh, the Ally McBeal's a single female lawyer meme. Um, meme, it's a joke, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Apple stand, $1,000. Duct tape, $3. You decide. Huh. I guess I'll go with the duct tape. I don't know if I <laughs> want to duct tape a like, $2,000 monitor to the wall. I live but... dangerously. What if, it, <laughs> what if it's duct tape plus? Yeah, like super duct tape. The Apple store. Like, sold by Apple, $300 for one roll. Apple tape. Yeah. Apple tape, yeah. You wouldn't want to... Mm, uh, I guess so. I know that flex tape, that stuff's fairly expensive, but... God damn, that stuff is really Good. that is some that is some tape right there. Flex tape is no joke. I uh one time I got a um because <clears throat> my car is a convertible, it's got a like a canvas top, and the the top got a tear in it, and I used flex tape and put that on the outside of the the 
uh, the canvas, right, to make sure the hole was closed up for rain and wind and whatever. And man, that stuff stays on. You can't even do that with duct tape. It just comes off out off the wind and everything. But man, that flex tape, it don't go anywhere. It's a pain in the butt to get flex tape off the roll because it's got like a plastic film in between all the tape itself so it doesn't stick to itself too much. But damn, flex tape, it's expensive, but boy is it, oh, crazy. Flex tape sponsorship incoming. Honestly, if flex tape <laughs> came to me and was like, hey, you want to sponsor us? I'd be like, hmm, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Am I allowed to saw Bowd in half? <laughs> um, In-ear monitors can go up to $4,000. In, In-ear monitors? In-ear monitors? <laughs> in-ear headphones? I don't know what an in-ear monitor looks I just, like. I'm already picturing an things and it's a, amusing me. <laughs> in, an elephant with monitors in his ears. It's just like... Hyper high tech Iron Man shit where it, it just housed on your ear and it'll like nanotech its way into being in front of you and you need to use it. <laughs> like, it's like, like Google Glass, the new version yeah. of Google Glass. You remember that shit? Oh, yeah. Good times. Well, fellas, did well, you know really... that a monitor can be a screen or a speaker? The next, that's, that's where we're going for the future. Um. My dog passed away this week. You guys have made it a little a uh, little bit easier. I can't thank you enough. Now excuse me while I go take over a town. Hopefully you don't go with that route. But um yeah. yeah. Sorry to hear about you, dog. Yeah. Sorry to hear. Hope you're doing alright. Uh Sam Raimi said he hasn't seen all of WandaVision. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> what can you even say? You know? So bizarre to me. So bizarre to me. So strange. I wonder if it contradicts shit in one division. That's gonna be funny if that's true. Not oh, that it matters. They don't. <laughs> like, yeah, they don't. Fucking it's all care. over. Uh, Sean it's the Sheep over. is better as a Wonder Woman actor. Well, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. I mean, absolutely. absolutely. No, actually, yeah. Not even probably. Categorically, definitively. Have you seen Sean the Sheep the movie? That very expressive. Me. That's a. Uh, he is very. Oh, I haven't expressive. seen the movie. I only saw the little short. Well, you need I to see an image to know movie. this is true. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Just it's look at the picture from the sheep, and it's like, look at this, look at this fella. He's charismatic, mm -hmm. and he he knows how to take care of the flock and yeah, and um, help guide them through the big city. Mm -hmm. uh, what will Efab hate watch now that Batwoman has been put out of its and our misery? Bro, Kenobi is out soon. Like, oh. in like oh. two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> and to be fair, we've still got like just a is it like ten episodes that of that one we haven't season. seen? Yeah. yeah it's we it's kind of insane <laughs> how long we haven't watched EFAP and yet sorry, Batwoman. Um <laughs> but we and yet we haven't got that many yet. Like it it feels like we should have like a whole season. And technically we do, kind of, but it's not but that it's many a short episodes. One. Yeah. It's a short season, and now now the ride is over, but not for us. We we still got more episodes to watch. They followed up by saying Rakita uses three K in ear monitors his earbuds. I just have no. Do you mean they monitor your ear, or what are they monitoring? Well, it, well this monitor can be a speaker, so like studio monitors are like professional speakers oh, okay. that people use. Yeah, so Wait, you can he, refer to either his, a screen or a speaker. He's got like three thousand dollar ear. I mean, you know, that one's right. If um, if he notice, if he can feel and hear the difference, and thinks it's worth it, then all right. I mean, maybe if you're always using them as a streamer or something, maybe. But I still feel that if you're gonna spend that kind of money, you want a right proper pair of real headphones that you could put on. You know, the way it seems to me is like, for the sake of the argument, let's just say you pay a dollar and you get a one out of ten earphone set. You pay five dollars and you get the five out of ten. It's like, ooh. You pay ten dollars and you get the eight out of tens. Then you pay fifty dollars and you get the nine out of tens. And then you pay five thousand dollars and you get the ten out of tens. It's like <laughs> I feel like in the scale we should stick with the the eight. Nine. Yeah. Or nines, but not ten. <laughs> like it's it's I don't know. It's and, and things scale that way with basically all technology. Um including my Plus there is an aspect of how do you really know for certain 
it, it like how do you buy that without experiencing it first and being confident you know there's some level of you just have to uh, there's a level James of said, trust in who you're getting the reviews for because i don't know how you actually uh, you know like because you can't experience it until you actually have it so when you watch reviews and stuff you're kind of going by what you know James said he's a lawyer, of course he has money to spend. It's not about, like, money to spend, I don't mean you have the capacity to buy it in terms of just raw funds, I mean... I'm kind of referring almost to money to burn, because, uh... I have to imagine a lot of things would come before getting super expensive earphones, but... I haven't heard the rationale, so I could be wrong. Um... I just, I've never known someone to spend that kind of money on, on earphones. The monitors, whatever. Um, yeah. But perhaps it's a whole world I'm unfamiliar with. In ear is modeled to your ear, musicians use it. Is that like is that worth the price though? I well my yeah, because my headphones are not modeled to me, but I really like them a lot and they I think they work really well. I think so the earbuds I've I mean, got have little covers on them that basically through incredible engineering will match the inner ear to make them Dare I say static, and they're very comfy. Um, but they're not built for my ear. They just work pretty well because they fit most human ears. Human is, ears. Yeah, disgusting, I know, but you gotta go there sometimes. Well, um, from what I've seen, um, like for sound editing and stuff, the preference is to have like some really high quality studio monitors that go on your desk that um, give you like a nice neutral sound that allows you to hear exactly how it will sound on most devices rather than something elaborate like an inner ear piece. Like I said, I can, I can understand if that's going to be the rationale. I just didn't realize he, he was that invested in that kind of work, making sure his audio is top notch. Or, I mean, it could just be as simple as he likes to hear things in really high quality and they feel comfy. I don't really know. Hmm. Um, question for the cast. Is there a movie you know is objectively good, but you don't like subjectively? For me, it's The Godfather. Interesting. What are our answers for this usually? We usually have a couple to rattle uh, off. Um, I think mine is, was The Irishman. I don't think there was anything big wrong with it, but I, I just bored to death. I heard a lot of people, yeah. I heard, I heard a lot of people have truff, <laughs> truff. Truff. Uh, it's, truff. It's, it's, it's very truff getting through it. You know, it's, I am. Um, so. Those are two of my picks. I very controversially, not even that long ago, said that Godfather is a film that I think is really good, but I just don't really care about it. Um, but also, The Irishman, yeah, for fuck's sake, I was bored watching that. Um, what else is there? Ah, you got any suggestions? Mm. I'm sure there's plenty that are just in a, of a genre and style that I just do not at Ooh. all care for. Ones that are often picked by other people would be 2001 and Blade Runner. A lot of people say like, eh, I find yeah. them boring. It's like, I right. can definitely see why people don't like to watch those. Old movie um, bad? I like a lot of old movies. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of old movies that are objectively pretty good, maybe based on their simplicity. But I think that especially as you go back in time and films were simply um, they just the way that characters spoke and the way that scenes played out and the way that action was done. It just wasn't, you know, especially when films kind of in its infancy and they haven't learned a bunch of stuff yet. Uh, and it just seems different. I can see how people just wouldn't like a lot of movies like I, I think Citizen Kane, right? I think it's really good. And I quite enjoyed watching it, but I could see how somebody wouldn't like it, even though I think it holds up quite well. Um, but I think a lot of old movies are like that. Old TV shows are like that too. Um, just because it's different. They just made yeah. movies and films. They just made them different back then. And that yeah, might not resonate. There was with way less cuts. Into. There's more cuts now for an audience. It's true. Got ADHD. It makes it's sense. Barely, yeah. Hold the frame. So we get. Day of the day, April twentieth. Oh, April twentieth. You lie. It should be. <clears throat> oh, it's May first for me right now. Damn. Hello, May first. Same. Been May first for hours. Liar. Well, it is Actually, not. No, that's, that's not a lie. That's yeah. I was gonna say he is right. Shut up. Traitor. It's not yet May the 1st for me. It is still April the 30th. Rags over here bringing up Rags the rear. Rags will catch up with the rest of us eventually. 
I'm just sending it off. There'll never be an, there will never be another April 2022. So I'm sending it off with a bang with a salute. Good job, April. Good did job, it. April. Bye, Good April. job. Um, when my baby's mother uh, abandoned her daughter and our son last year, I went into depression. You took me out of it. Thank you. I love all you toxic broods. Can you say hi, Samus and Maleficent? Hi, Rags. Absolutely. Hello. Uh, hi, Samus and Maleficent. Hi, Samus. Hi, Maleficent. Those are very uh, provocative names. They evoke things. I, I am aware of what those things may be. I presume they may be the names of, or nicknames of something. I don't know, but yeah. Um, oh, you I bet they are had pets. to go through uh, that, but I'm I'm very glad that you're 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 doing all right. Yeah, yes. And yeah, you're right. They could be pets. Um. Do you have any tips or shortcuts on how to edit faster if you're making a long man game review? My next video is four hours and I want to get it out ASAP. Um, Your next game is know. four hours? I like, don't know what like <laughs> you can do to... Uh, so, um, to make it quicker? Well, there... I mean, whenever you do something quick, you're generally going to have a dip in quality. How Now, how that balances out because there are some things that might be super quick that don't lower the quality much at all, maybe even imperceptible, but there are some things where, you know, the work is worth the quality. So it's hard to say. It depends on what kind of a review that you're making. If you want it to be really relevant, I mean, yeah, I mean... I, well, so it, you could do, like, a review where you just play long stretches of gameplay footage, but I guess if you want to be super precise, you're going to want to have the visuals that accompany what you're saying, and that there's no shortcut for that. Well, the only one I would suggest is, them. um, and it doesn't sound appealing, but, I mean, it, it's what made the process be better and faster for my DS2 series was timestamping fucking everything when I was playing it. So, like... Yeah. You know, if someone hits me with a bad hitbox, I timestamp it, and then uh, carry on yeah. playing. And that gets tedious That's as fuck, and you end up with like 4,000 timestamps. However, when you get to the editing phase, you're like, I need all bad hitboxes, and it's listed all there, instead of you having to look through or whatever. Alternatively, you have to sift through 100 hours of crash footage, crash full footage, looking for things that you reference exactly. That's the thing, like, and your memory... Will be something, but when you get to really big long man reviews of, of games, it's gonna be hard for you to be like, oh fuck, when did that happen? Was it here? Was it here? Yeah. And yeah, um, unfortunately, what we're talking about here is like, how do I make a thing go faster when I want it to be X? It's like, it being X might require a certain speed, and that's what you have to kind there's of. Only, yeah. so, well, there's an amount of work that is required, mm -hmm. and that work takes an amount of time. There's not really any getting around that. Yeah, because the minimum base level of effort that you will have for... First off, a lot of this might be based built off of what kind of vibe do you want to put out? Do you want to put out a lot of more casual videos um, as opposed to a very long, super scripted, in-depth review? Um so like maybe maybe a base level would be you just reading off a script that you casually put together about the game as that gameplay footage is playing. That would be like the bottom tier, like the bare minimum what you can get away with. Um, and then as you move up, you just spend more time with references, more time with uh, you know getting your clips accurate to what you're talking about at the time, and that becomes your in that you know that that's the difference between a a minimum quality and a very high quality review you don't just say it you say it you can explain it well you can provide multiple references not just in terms of description but in terms of visually here is what i'm seeing or what i'm talking about in action in the game But if, but again, a lot of this is based off of the, what's really important is you need to do the thing, first and foremost, you need to do the thing you can finish. Um, the, the video that you edit to pieces that you just never finish and you end up hating yourself about, maybe don't do that. But you, you need to be able to finish it. 
And also you need to decide, you know, what kind of level of stuff do I actually want to put out? Like I said earlier, do you want to do the, the quick, more casual thoughts on videos? Or do you want to do fewer but far more in-depth reviews of games? Uh, that's kind of up for you to decide because there's a place for both and there's an interest people have in both. Um, and yeah, that's a conversation you have to have with yourself. Or maybe you try them both and see what you really kind of connect with more. But generally as a rule, the less work you put into it, the worse the finished product will often be. Not, not, it's, not, it, it's general, very, very, very general. Some people put a lot of work into things that are terrible, as we see on EFAP all the time. But if you want to make things easier, then it might drop in quality. Segwaying into the past, have any of you seen Primal, the Adult Swim animated show with no dialogue? No, I haven't heard yet. of it. I want to. I if I am totally down to watch that. By the way, um, okay. I saw. Uh, I I started seeing some recommended clips for it. I haven't clicked on them, but randomly, I've just been getting clips for it sometimes on recommendeds. I'm totally down to watch that. I'm interested in it. So maybe we'll do that after we watch. Halo and Moon Knight. And... Oh yeah, we still got a Moonlight episode. I'd end this week, yeah. Have we even talked about the fifth episode of Moon Knight? Not on stream. Yeah. <laughs> we can do that later. I, yeah. I don't want to do it now. We can do that yeah. later. We can do that later. Sounds like it was very good. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess you'll find out. You may be surprised. Probably not. Um, someone who was a friend thought it was okay to leave a bunch of trash at movies because it was people's jobs to clean it up. He turned out to be... Um, An asshole? Well, they said a rapist. Oh! Um, a moral oh. of the story, don't leave trash at movies or you'll turn into that. Um, he was also <laughs> an avid Hassan fan and an anti-Kyle Rittenhouse person. Oh, well, <laughs> what? he's wrong about a lot of things. Sorry for the upside down text. I mean, it's amazing how you can get things past YouTube. I just <laughs> am amused by yeah. it. Uh, thoughts just on that upside down. Thoughts on the Hotline Miami games. Played the first They're one. Cool. I know. never finished, finished them, cool. but I like them a bunch. It's really cool. I don't think. Yeah, I didn't finish the second one, but love the soundtrack. Find the game's premise to be super fun and frustrating at times. And <laughs> yeah, I like them. I'm a big fan of the first one. Didn't get to play the second one because it wasn't released here. But uh, yeah, the soundtrack is awesome. Bringy, forgive me, for I have sinned. I made a character in Pathfinder who has an Australian accent. He is a tiefling named Willis Brooks and a lawful good fighter. Wait, what's what's the problem there? Or I don't know. Who's Willis Brooks? I don't know. All right. Well, moving on. <laughs> Okie dokie. Fight Club stream when? Uh, like I said, uh, it, whenever Sitch wants to set it up, let us know. We'll That'd figure be out fine. Something. I got into EFAP recently, and the lore runs deep. Love from Brazil. Mm. The home of... But yeah, it does. Extended lore. Enough blood to fill denial. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. In the past, let it die. Fringy, justice leg. <laughs> <laughs> justice leg? <laughs> have, you, have you ever played that old Hobbit game by Sierra? Should be easy super chat fodder if you can get the Windows version running or emulate it through Dolphin. Old Hobbit game? I... Oh, I think I played it on GameCube. Or no, 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 Game Boy. Game Boy. Mm -hmm. I oh do remember. Yeah, this was this was before all of the Hobbit remake stuff. Let me um, just a second. The Hobbit uh, Game Boy. I will. Yeah, it's from two thousand three. Uh, da, 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 images. Here, ring any bells. The, it, it the, does, like, the visual does, but I never, yeah. I never played it, though. <laughs> oh, God, those have aged like milk. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I definitely do remember it. I played it 
and beat it. It was quite a it was quite a game. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. But it was wow. Here's the Yeah, what a what a what a what a game. What a game. It was like an action platformy puzzle y kind of fighty fight game. It was it was it was a game. It was a game. It was probably shit. But Cod. I liked it as a kid. I liked it as a kid. Odd finest oh, hour. Is... Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Before you move on, I, I just saw this picture I thought that you might find interesting. It's a it's a chonky image. Let me because it it's a it's a size comparison of a Game Boy Advance over a Nintendo Switch. Let me let me click this. The image they posted was fucking huge, so let me just get a smaller version. This is a size comparison. Oh yeah, I mean, does that surprise you? Or? No, I mean, I I guess it's just something I never thought about, you know, because they're both systems where you know controls on the left and right, screen in the middle, mm. handheld, yeah. and I, I just you know never really thought about it. I feel like it's pretty apparent, right, that the Switch is much bigger. I just because like, what I remember about Game Boy at the time was that it was small and the small screen, and obviously Game Boy Advance is just the controls are on the sides instead of the bottom. Yeah. Which I prefer as a form factor, personally. Yeah, that's that's fair. I think that. Wait, you you prefer the the screen on top? No, no, no. I prefer what the Game Boy Advance started, which is buttons on the sides. It's uh basically the form factor that followed through on like the DS, the PSP, Switch. But not the Game Boy Advance SP. Well, no. Oh, yeah, right. That's true. Remember that? Was, uh, yeah. That's true. So the, wanted, I like the Game Boy Advance well, SP a lot. I had one too. That was because they wanted the flip and then a square and then they, they combined both designs into the DS. Yeah. And remember, right. the Game Boy Advance... Listen all you young fucking whippersnappers, right? When the Game Boy Advance SP came out and your Game Boy had a goddamn light on the screen. Oh, yeah. Do you know how yeah. huge of a deal that was? Oh, and, no, and you, you don't. You the batteries as well. You didn't have to buy I'm new sure batteries. We, we have some old fogies in chat. Yeah, it had a it had a recharger. That's right. The Game Boy Advance had batteries. Yeah, the 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 Game Boy The Game Boy Advance, Advance had batteries. It, it's just, the Advance had batteries. Well, the Game Boy had batteries. <laughs> all the yeah, Game Boy well, yeah, no, had recent were taking it, yeah. The, but the SP was rechargeable, which was a big... Yeah, the SP was like a categorical improvement over it was the original. A huge for improvement. As much as I, for as much as I do like the original. Um, yeah, I like God, the original. Game Boy Advance was a really great console. That was a great console. It there was, was so great. Games on that system. A lot of awesome games. It was... this. It was... Yeah, it... Both the SP Those and the typical times. Advance. Yeah, the early 2000s, that was a good time for the video game world. There was a lot of cool games, a lot of cool systems. Basically, all of them were really cool and had their own value. I never had an Xbox, but, like, the Xbox was cool on its own. GameCube was awesome. PlayStation 2 is obviously, like, that's, that's like, one of the best consoles ever made. I feel like it's uh, not even really up for debate. The, pl the library on that system, enormous. So anyway. Massive, if you will. Yeah. Moving on. Cod Finest Hour had live interviews of people you played as in the credits, taking uh, talking about their war experience. And not anymore. Yeah, how things have changed. Yeah. Uh, um, Time to floss, lol, lamau. Hmm. Mm -hmm. YMS's review of The Lion King is great. Hope he recovers from tendonitis. Yeah, man, that sucks. Yeah. It does suck, especially considering that editing is such a huge part of what he does. It's a nightmare, because, like, yeah, I mean, when he's not working and he's doing things he wants to do, it's going to involve a lot of PC work anyway, so it's just, like, such a fucking curse, because it just stops you from being able to do everything. It's basically just, it's like, um, a custom disease. Like, if it didn't exist, you're like, imagine there was just some thing that you could get that makes it so your wrists just can't do what you need them to do, and you're just like, ugh. Like, welcome, tendonitis, where your tendons are all fucked. Mechanical lands, that's the only way you're going to get to the victory. You know, cyborgs, we've got to do it. Hurry it up so YMS can make more videos. 
Uh, the best part of the review is the points out that they use the 1994 voice for Mufasa on occasion, lol. Yes, but it's not <laughs> just that. It's combining it with them saying, we didn't even need to do stuff like that, because his voice, oh, he's got the pipes, and you know what? He's older, so it's, like, better now. Like, you liar. Liar! So full of shit. <laughs> you, you know, it's so like, full of shit. Liar, I was liar, like, liar, damn. Liar, liar. <clears throat> Keeping in theme of bad content creators, here's a Simpsons scene for free, when Principal Skinner tells Apu about the dinosaur novel he's writing. I... is that... when is that one from? I mean, that sounds that, familiar uh, to me, but I wouldn't be able to guess even an episode. Yeah, I can't. It's not... it's not uh, appearing to me right now. Oh, it's... he says Timmy and the Brontosaurus? That's the name oh, of it, Oh, right? yeah, 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 and then Apu's like... He, he just goes on like, that is the worst idea yeah. I've ever heard. What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Thank Billy, you. oh no, Billy and the Chronosaurus? Billy and the something-saurus. It was Billy and the Plat... Clonosaurus? It, it, was, it was something like that, yeah. It's like, I think it's Billy and the Clonosaurus. a title that nobody would ever like, and a premise that makes <laughs> like no sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's the episode where, like, um... Yeah, the, that was when he got fired. He's fired and Bart that? hangs uh, out with him, because yeah. he feels guilty, right? Just, yeah. I think my favorite part is how, like, Apu just, like, plants his hands on the desk in his lady. You're like, what were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> He's so angry. Yeah. He's so angry. Um, Does he say, like, get out, yeah. like, after that? No, no, no. He says, thank you, come again. But, like, s s but Skid is there with his head hanging low. Uh, Apu's, yeah, Apu's awesome. Apu is fantastic. That all, like, when you think about those supporting, like, the... Not not in the main cast, but also not the uh like the broader supporting cast. So if you it's like Skinner, Krusty, uh Apu, Mo. Like damn, that's a great bunch of uh yeah. like secondary characters. So many strong episodes. No, they don't use Apu anymore. Well, that no. would be rude, so we can't do that. Which is so lame because like some it's like because Apu is like yeah, Apu, Krusty, Principal Skinner, and Mo, like all four of those characters, and Abe, if you include him in that group too, which I think I makes sense. Love him. They're like some of the best episodes in the show. Mm hmm. Remember that when James Woods was in the Quickie, because when Apu got fired and then James Woods was yeah. in the Quickie Mart, he was trying to study his role in the mom, so it's like, hey, hey, get back here. Okay, I'm you and you're, uh, I'm me and you're you. I'm me. And then he just grabs Jim and was like, hey, don't. <laughs> like Hi, play me. with me, <laughs> yeah. Don't toy with me, or <laughs> stop jerking around. <laughs> He's just like this sinister look in his eye. <laughs> uh, oh. I figured Rags would have read Sirius by Olaf Stapleton. No, I guess. Oh, no. there you go. Uh, fresh from Marvel Reddit, I have a rule that if there is a superhero that then that person needs to use their powers at least once per episode. I, oh god. So, he must not like Daredevil then. That sounds like a rule that I am- I don't know why you would impose. It's not the worst rule, but like, why would you impose that but, rule upon yeah, yourself <laughs> like that when you just- Really arbitrary, don't need isn't it? To, like, yeah. why, why does- why does our- is it, Was this mentioned because Moon Knight is kind of like- Maybe- well, so that's interesting, right? Because- Okay, so small little foreshadowing. Episode five like vaguely impressed us compared to the rest. Mm -hmm, Everything's yeah. still terrible. Um, but he doesn't he doesn't do Moon Knight things in that episode really at all. Uh, you you don't see him in the full costume beating people up. Is I guess what I'm saying. You you see him beat some people up and you see him in the full costume, but those things don't happen at the same time. Um, so like the the interesting thing I guess about that is that uh. I can empathize with someone saying, like, man, five episodes and we've had about a minute of Moon Knight. I'd be like, yeah, that's not what's wrong with the show, though. Like, it's interesting, because it's like, could you have a good season of Moon Knight with only a minute of Moon Knight fighting in it? And it's like, yeah, probably. In fact, I don't think it would mm -hmm. even be that hard. But at the same time, if we were, like, making the show and we had gotten our scripts ready and that's what it was at, I'd be like, maybe we should have some more action scenes in it. If we can do that without it fucking up the story, um, because yeah, just it's just like a, a basic appeal to, you know, in the same way that you want some cliffhangers here and there, you want peril, you want all these like standard things that can emote, uh, bring emotions out of people. I can see people being like, "Fuck the whole episode, I do see Moon Knight." I'd be like, "All right, that's a lame way to engage with stories, though." I mean, 
I would just be like, I want to complain about how shit the writing is. I don't really want to, like, I wouldn't want to just say that. Because, yeah, like, as, you, as you just said, isn't Daredevil is one of many that... Wow. Some people work. in chat are like, well, he passively uses his powers all the time. It's like, well, there are episodes where he doesn't get into fights, so or there are episodes where he's not, like, hyper-leveraging his uh, radar sense. Like, there are episodes that are very much character-focused without any action at all. Um, but that contrast is valuable. You have mm -hmm. the episodes where he's like full costume all the time for the whole episode, and then other ones where it's very uh. Wasn't there an episode where he tapered back? He's like super injured on a couch for like all. Yeah, of that it. was uh, that was after he fought Nobu, and that's the scene when he talks to Foggy. That's yeah, like one of the strongest episodes of that season. And it's not. Yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's just those guys talking. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It, it it's I again. It's one of those like yeah, I agree with that rule, and you're like, but why do you agree with it? Is it because it just sounds agreeable? Anyway, um, with all this book look, suggestion for EFAP movies, Holes, 2003, with Shia LaBeouf's, it was Shia LaBeouf's film debut. I did mention that. Was that his film debut? I th really? I mean, I didn't I remember know, that movie. I guess that makes sense, because he would have come from, um, Even Stevens, right? That was what... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. He was on Even Stevens, and then there was that, and iRobot came out about the same time. Yes. Yeah, that's Okay, that doesn't matter. Yeah, that's what would have kicked it off, I guess. I'm um, pretty sure I've seen it, and I have, can't remember anything about it. I mean, it's a, it probably would work for EFAP movies, but uh, but you know what the main appeal of for me isn't uh, at all the story. It's just like, I wonder what famous actors are in this. Because like, that's one right. of those movies that'll have that, where it's like relatively decent, but it's like a mid-budget film, right? So it's just going to have a bunch of... Yeah. People who are starting up their careers, people are in like on the decline of their careers, and it'll just be like a strange movie from the two thousands. Probably why it's mm -hmm. interesting to see. Um, glad to see Rags is cultured. You all need to read the Dune series. The movie doesn't nearly do it justice. A retrograde in every detail. Damn. I have the book. I started reading it, but then I stopped. I'll get back to it. Uh. Favorite Palpatine line in your best Mr. Frog voice, please. <laughs> do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's treason then. Because <laughs> 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 he's doing the twirl. <laughs> Have you heard the tale of Darth Plagueis of the Wise? It's not a tale. The Jedi would tell you. <laughs> uh, Anakin, the Jedi are taking over. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> you will die. <laughs> Unlimited power. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, yeah, you got a lot of lines, really. <laughs> tell Muller about your half chicken, Rags. My half what, chicken? Medium rare chicken, you mean? I don't even know what they're referring to. <laughs> like, what's my it? half chicken, the last... My half chicken. Yes, your medium rare chicken. <laughs> No, it's not mine, and I don't have chicken medium where I cook my chicken. Nah, I'm never safe <laughs> you're not, you're never running away from that one. <laughs> running away from what? What was my claim? You, I remember you made the claim of, like, medium rare chicken is just, like, a food <laughs> item. Like, that was basically the claim. No, I, I was saying you could you can have chicken medium rare. It does exist. Yeah, you can, you can cook but it, it will make degree. you seriously ill. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> You would make that's it why no one does rag. it. That's why nah, it's me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it that's why it's the meme. <laughs> You're running away, <laughs> not running away from rags. anything. I'm doing the opposite of running away. You had away. to get it clarified that you were like, oh, quick rags go to. No, your, I didn't. Oh, your diverse medium rare chicken. Medium rare chicken exists. <laughs> Don't eat it. <laughs> um, the janitor. Is a master of poop disappearing magic. Yeah, that's true, actually. It probably would be the janitor that's taking care of it, because he'd just be like, I'll magic it out, and whatever remains afterward, I'll give it the old mop. They should Someone just had be. Tell Rags he was drunk on Discord if you. Oh, that's what they're talking about. Yeah. Um, I made some chicken, and I, I baked it in the oven, and I. So what I did was I just I took two breasts, put them on a pan, and I kind of cut it where I didn't dice it, but just like the top to where it's opened up a bit. Um, and I put salt and pepper on it and I got, I, I have some PF Chang's sesame kind of sauce and I put that on there and I baked it and it was pretty good. I like me some chicken. I enjoy the taste of chicken. 
I thoroughly cooked it, and then I completely ate it. It was good stuff. Good. That's yeah, I the think there story. should be a designated pooping area if the janitor was really going to have that job. Because uh, just doing it anyway, I feel like that's going to be causing trouble, especially just indecency. They they have like little magic shops, and when someone shits on the floor, it's like Frank, we need a wand. And he's like on the other side I'll of the school, do. and he's like, oh. <laughs> then again, they could probably use open portals with their wands and stuff. I don't fucking know. They Easy. use their, they take out their wand. Ah, Stercus Disappearus. Hey guys, please say the phrase mana mana three times. This will be relevant at a later date. Also, hi rags, you good doggo. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, so I guess I'll go first. Mana, 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 mana. Fringy needs to go second, I feel. Do I need to go second? I don't know. What, yeah. what does that even mean? Not, just, well, you know what? Good. If Fringy's going to be, if Fringy's <laughs> just going to be evasive, it's fine. It's all right. He, he'll give him all the time he needs. I'll say it next. All right. <sighs> mana, 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 mana. I guess I should have raised one and lowered one as well, actually. Because otherwise, my mole is the same. So and you can do it again. Yeah, that makes you sense. You have that kind of power. You have that kind of power. Don't let anyone tell you that you don't. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm gonna go with um, mana, mana, and mana, mana. Right. So those are your variations on it. What is it though? What does that even mean? Well, I I don't know. They said this is gonna make sense oh. one day, or it'll be relevant yeah. one. From the Muppets. Oh. I... D it's a reference that eludes me. You gonna fucking do it or not? What is <laughs> happening? <laughs> yeah, Metal's right. <laughs> fucking do it. Say the words. Ooh, Say get the lines. Off the stage. <laughs> wow. Jeez. I'm just asking what it means. Is it... I'm just waiting Shit, for get off the poop dimensions. dimensions. Why? Do you need one? Did what you remember it? that time Mahler and I said that we required an explanation? No, we just did it. We manned up like and we did song. it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> mana, 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 mana. There you go. You got, you got your lines. Nice. Classic. No, no, I, I, no, I, no, I, I don't know. Maybe I do know the song if I like hear it, but I, it, I have no idea what it is right now. You're thinking about the mana, mana. Monomena. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know that one. Monomena. <laughs> Say the line, frog. I said the <laughs> line. What the hell? We're done. I said it. We're no, done. No, no, just reading it out from chat. I thought it was a meme. But yeah, we got Mel and Meme to go last. Yeah. You may choose what order you may go in between you at the same time. I'll go first. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Uh, ceiling. Oops. Uh, yeah, what? Was, I don't know. I, cl I clicked somewhere where I didn't want it to click. Uh, and then my window flumed. Uh, whatever. Mana mana? Mana mana. Oh, I thought Wh you were doing the thing. Wow. <laughs> you have tainted his recording. <laughs> I start, my, my brain just heard that noise and I had to finish it. It's like a magic spell. Um, um, I'm sick of this constant disrespect. <laughs> now what, that's the opposite. That was someone who was paying deep attention to <laughs> what you were saying and responding to your voice. No one else got that treatment. True. Uh, I, don't, I don't know which one I did. Mana, mana. Mana, mana. Mana, mana. They got four takes now for yeah. that clean. Yeah, I didn't even ask questions. I just did it. Yeah. It was really tough for me to not just go boo doo boo doo doop. I know. But I didn't. Yeah. Doo, 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 doo. Okay, I'll give a few variations here. Mana mana. Mana mana. Mana mana. Mana mana. Mana 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 mana. There we go. Alright, calm down. Mom. You got him. So, so use. There you go. Beautiful. Harry. Did you shit into the goblet? Oh, I remember. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Upressa Dumble Dumbledore. That, yes. Said calmly. Hey, guys. Please say the phrase. Oh, wait. I read that one. We all good. 
Random Star Wars question, but I am curious about your thoughts on the lack of lightsaber color variation in official cinematic films. I don't know that that's a problem, because it can just mean that Is the kyber that crystals problem? are restricted to blues and greens, and then the Sith did something weird with the crystals. That's all. Like, it doesn't... Mind, yeah. But then when they introduce problem. purple, you're like, that was, it's just a really special one. And then as the films That's, go on, mm -hmm. you got a, like, Ray got a yellow one. It's like, I don't fucking know anymore. I don't know. Purple, do you have it? When I played Jedi Knight, Jedi Outcast, mine was yellow. I picked yellow. I, I thought it was piss a lightsaber. color. Yellow. No, it's not piss. It's gold. Piss lightsaber. Color of the dawn. Piss Blur gold. Piss. The color yes. of gold and pineapples and medallions. The color piss. of lemons. Piss. Piss out of no, my No, it's not piss color. It wasn't. If your piss is that color, you are like radioactive. And you mm. should consult a physician immediately. Immediately? Immediately. Rags, there actually is a serial episode in KND. Oh, is there? Oh, well. Reference on point. Mm. Oh, apparently Rakita bought those as a tax write-off. Okay. If it's for if you use it for work, absolutely. Don't forget, whenever you guys make a computer, if this you use that computer for your job, mm, business expense, tax write-off, all that stuff. Rags, please search Magnamon Extreme Jihad in YouTube. <laughs> what? What? I <laughs> Wait a second. Sounds dangerous. I wouldn't Google that. You'll end up on a list. Uh, just a second. Let me turn on my VPN first. <laughs> oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Let me show you this. So this is from the... Digimon.fandom.com wiki. I will. I. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna give you the okay. Uh. So every every I'm gonna say Pokemon. Every Digimon has their attacks. And he has an attack called Magna Blaster, Extreme Jihad. <laughs> Emits the, the utmost the power of the Digi Egg of Miracles in the form of an energy wave from its entire body. However. Because it was proven that the size of Magna Blaster's power rapidly accelerates the damage to Magnamon's data, it is currently sealed. Wow. Mm. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. I think it's beautiful, really. Um, like, honestly, Crazy. really good headphones can really change how music sounds. Check out Dank Pods. He has done a lot of videos on headphones and audio equipment. I got a pair of Mezzi 99 Classics and goodness. I don't deny that. I, I, it's not, I, yeah, that was never in contention. Mm. The creator of Hotline Miami has given Australian players the permission to pirate the sequel. <laughs> I did hear about that because, yeah. Interesting. It's not available. It never got unbanned either. Um, Man, that's at least not banned. to my knowledge. That's so fucked up. I think there was there was one scene in particular that uh that got it banned, but I can't remember why. Damn. Uh, lol. Of course, that guy's friend is an anti Rittenhouse. He knows Kyle's record against his type. Hashtag Giga Chad. Ew. Hmm. Is it possible for characters to be salvaged by later content? Example. A future series features Rey Skywalker and gives her great writing. Does this reconcile the fact that her foundation is garbage? I think you can, yes. And you can well, retroactively change the right, uh, you know, like the quality of writing. No, well, work is required to achieve it, you know? yeah, in you terms can, of a character. You can recontextualize a lot of events that have happened, but mm -hmm. if you just keep pushing them forward, um, like I think we can fix Rey. I think you can fix anybody. It can be really hard. Kylo Ren, I'd say, is harder to fix than Rey is. Well, yeah, you have to, know, you have to know what you're fixing. Yeah, there's, there's no foundation as far as I'm concerned for Kylo Ren. I have no fucking clue who that man is. But Rey, Rey has like a shit ton of good traits. And so we would just need to introduce... It would be the same thing as Captain Marvel. The only way to go when you get that fucking good is uh, an, an like self... There's literally not even a single like attribute of his that represents a flaw. You have to create one. 
and then you can find meaningful stories as a result of it and stuff. So, yes, um, I think there are ways to fix going forward. And with every single iteration, and if they're all well-written, eventually people will be seeing this person as a well-written character, I think. If you can keep it going. It can be tough, though. Um, best book to read is Yellow River by I.P. Freely. <laughs> Beautiful book. That that, nice. that 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 took a second, to be honest. <laughs> um, question for Rags: Which of these dog type Pokemon would you be? Rockruff, Snubble, Yampa, Lillipup, Herdia, Houndor, or and I'm pretty sure this is the answer: Growlithe. So, could you put those in text? Can you just paste that into the thing so I could I, I mean, check the ones I'm not you're, familiar with? Also, your brow life is what no, you are. Yeah. I will. I will tell you what I am. I will. I'll tell you what I identify as. Where did I type that? Hmm. Rock rough. Okay, and now we have snubble. Well, what if you? What if you compile those and then get them all, you know, lined up while we read the next one, and then by the time that one's finished, you may well have them all lined idea. up. Clever idea. Clear answer. That is, you know what? That is a Instead pretty good idea, and, Fringy. I, I was, yeah. I was thinking that there was a reason that we kept you around, and it's the, it's this <laughs> kind of clever idea having that, um, that we have. However, unfortunately for your idea, all I did was just double click the letter and then drag them up into the bar. So that they so that they created new tabs for themselves, and I've already looked through this list: uh, Rockruff, Snubble, Yamper, Lillipup, Herdier, Herdier, and Houndour. And I think it is a toss-up between Growlithe and Houndour, Houndour. And I think that considering, you know what, you guys carry on. I'm gonna check out what Houndour evolves into I'm because that I might Houndor was the uh wasn't he the end point or am i no, hound doom. Houndor the middle one no hound doom oh, that's yeah, it yeah, hound that's doom right. hound yeah. doom let's click on hound doom oh what do i want to be when i grow up hmm. oh, it's growl life yeah we knew that it's okay yeah because i want to be a i want to yeah be an arcanine one day ah oh, classic literally classic he's one of the first 50, uh, 150 um Oh, so this one, this one, okay, so, Ola Rags, can you say, and then I can post it to you, in your Haseem mm, voice, you for my kids, please, okay. they're three and six, hi, Frigga. Hi, um, Frigga. No, not that, this. this is oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me take a look. I was mm. confused, I was like, why would you post that small <laughs> one? <laughs> Weird. Samus and Maleficent, we must find the ancient inscription. There you go. Uh, hi all. Did you name your did you wait? Did you name your children Samus and Maleficent? I suppose you could have like Mally is the the the, the nickname for Maleficent, right? Samus is an interesting one. I wonder how because Sam, like right? A middle name. Well, I mean, like Samus is short enough that you could just call her Samus. I figure she goes by Sam. That's way more conventional. It's a unique name, that's for sure. It is, yeah, it is unique. And, and then again, Mal, right? Mal's especially a to end thing. a female yeah. name with U.S. is not typical. Normally, like ending something in U.S. Normally they is end with a. generally masculine. Yeah, the, like it, the Latin bases are because you have uh, masculine, feminine, and then neuter uh, the the three genders for the, that language. So you have U.S. and then you have A, like. Uzi o um o your ormies osis and the declensions and things like that. So yeah, Samus is if like if you if you had no if you didn't know about the character from the video games and you heard the word Samus, you would think, oh, that's a masculine name because you know the us it ends in the us. That's typically you know what happens. That's like your opinion, bro. Hmm. I all. I just finished rewatching EFAP 62. Rags, do you still believe grouchy homeless people commit genocide? Hmm. <laughs> I think the jury's still out on that one. Grouchy homeless. <laughs> I think it's a fair comment. I, I was curious if you <laughs> developed that position, yeah. you know? I don't, yeah, I, I think since that time, my opinion has not shifted. So I, I can't say that I'm certain. Mm. Of genociding homeless people. Damn them. 
Speaking of damn, they said kick metal. That's the next one, kick metal. Hey, no. Don't be so mean. Um, why is Fringy so evasive? Yeah, Fringy. Yeah, I was gonna ask Fringy, but I thought it might be rude. So, but now that they've brought it up, I think it's a good enough time to really kind of explore. Oh, right. I guess he's evasive. Very evasive. evasive. He's evading the reason for his evasion. I don't know, I don't man. Know how... I'm firmly planted in my seat. I'm just preparing for my Mario Kart race. If, oh, do we, yes. oh, do you think evasion is literal? Start. Like you have to so hit the I'm dodge button on your Nintendo Switch. The dodge button, yes. The Nintendo Switch specifically has a dodge button on it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you that would know how much you understand about Mario Kart. But just because you know all about Ooh. the dodge button. Well. Check out the Pokemon Pokedex entry for Spoink from Pokemon Ruby. Already ahead of you. I got it. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> did you see that in the chat? You're yeah, like, yeah, I did. Gonna... It's my time. Oh, yeah, well, I just right. needed to know your AI's limits. I have no plans to save. You're right. What? I have no Something else is going on right now. You okay? <laughs> is this irrelevant? Open your freaking right ears. I'll go ahead. What's the, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let me see the... So, uh... Sp Spoink bounces around on its tail. The shock of its bouncing makes its heart pump. As a result, this Pokemon cannot afford to stop bouncing. Oh my god! Oh my I, god! I've, I've heard about this stop. one, yeah. I know about that one. That was <laughs> fucked up. You really have to stop jumping, he Dude, dies. If the if a kid is like, oh, what a cute little Pokemon, they pick it up and it's like, <laughs> uh, uh, put me down, put me down. Uh, uh. <laughs> And it is a it is a cute Mommy, looking Pokemon as well. A nap now. Oh, little no, guy. Oh, he's gonna die. <laughs> oh, that thing's fucking dead. Can yeah, I hug like your Pokemon? Bad. God, no! Just... Don't touch it. <laughs> All you had to say was like, "Sprungy loves to bounce. Wait, it's so he... much fun." And then instead, they were just like, "No, if he stops bouncing, he'll fucking have a heart attack and die." He only does it <laughs> if he's because he doesn't have a choice. He's capable of fainting, which means he'll be killed. Oh my god, yeah. you're right. What about going oh to god, sleep? Pokemon's right. Yeah, oh my god. Sleep. Paralyzed? Maybe it, maybe it jumps when it sleeps. You know, like how horses stand up while they sleep? Maybe it does Maybe, that. maybe. Hmm. Like there's an instinctive reaction. It, it's like breathing or like your heart pumping in and of itself. You don't control it. It's just a natural thing. Yeah, as long as you make it. Oh shit, it actually one. says... What in, if you just in, push in, him over though? It says in another Poke, uh, Pokedex entry, it doesn't stop bouncing even when it sleeps. <laughs> Okay, but what if- Because it'll yeah. die! What if Blastoise uses a fucking hydro pump on this thing and it just goes over to the side? It's like, isn't it dead? Well, better it stands up real quickly. <laughs> Maybe you're oh, not man. allowed to use them for battle. They know that it's like a death sentence. I'm pretty sure these things will be in battle if they're in the Pokedex, right? So the people works. who write these are fucked up. Yes, yes. Um, Kick Metal, I will not stop rooting. Damn. I fell into a six-hour weed coma, and I still caught the stream. Don bless. Also, hi, Ryan. <laughs> Woo! Oh, hello there. Have you ever consumed expired food slash drink and suffered the consequences for it? Yes, I have indeed. I will never forget. I it was I've... the most miserable that I've ever been in my life. I've had food poisoning, but I don't think I've ever eaten anything that was super far out of date that it did really bad things. Don't yeah, think. I'm same. I think I've had food poisoning, but I'm I don't I don't think I've ever had something that was expired and then gotten ill. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think I ever had any. Don't think so. Like I had bad gnocchi from an Uber Eats place in Melbourne, but like I don't know if that was expired because it got delivered directly to me. So right, yeah, yeah, only the food poisoning part. It was bad. Um, bad crab cakes for me. They had just gone bad, and I didn't know it, and I ate them, and about two hours later, right on fucking schedule, <laughs> ugh, it began. And I was miserable for days. Um, and, uh, uh metal is. It, that's what's I, I am, indeed. That's true. You are. Yeah. Oh, oh, they said gay. Yeah, I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you! <laughs> uh, what is your favorite memory from EFAP to look back on? My ass. 
That's a good one. I, I was about to, I was about to say the same thing actually. Uh, so yeah, glad we're united on that. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So of course I'm gonna mention it straight away. The talk with Tonald. That was obviously. That's yeah. true. That's a good one. Good one. Got. I I I I am particularly fond of our initial watchings of of Batwoman. Our um. Oh yeah. It was glorious. glorious. Quaint memories. I mean, I I love all the. Gaming ones, the drinking ones. I'm. Uh, well, we've had a lot of good, yeah, EPAP gamings. Yeah, it's we weird. Cause one of those. There's gonna be like hundreds of these, but like, I, yeah. I loved when Rags and Wolf first saw that moment in, in Wish Upon, uh, our first EPAP movies. I was so excited for them to just see that moment with the car, and they did, and it was, it was as fun. We laughed our asses off. Yeah, the it's... first EPAP movies. Man, that was a fun. That was that's the perfect EPAP movie. Well, so I was thinking about this. Um, the way it works on YouTube is that they cap you at 11.45 for streams, um, and I'm pretty sure they still do. However, if you just keep going, it'll, like, I think it just caps out as in, like, so say I stream for 20 hours, it would just be the first 11.45 is what's unlisted. But I have the power to hit record and stop record and hit record and stop record. So technically speaking, I wouldn't need to, for, for an anniversary stream, like, it stopped streaming. That wouldn't actually be necessary. And then I was thinking, like, well, then the problem is still that we want to have breaks. And I was like, well, I can just play an EFAP movie. Like Wish Upon. That's true. That's right. You could. Especially, those would be, the older ones would be great for an anniversary because it's like EFAP classic. Yeah, and I think there'd be a lot of people in the audience who'd be like, what the fuck video is this? That'd be like, yeah, I know. You don't EFAP even know. EFAP movies number one. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I was just thinking about because then, of course, I can still split them into threes with the recordings locally. Fine. Um, did Wolf ever play Gartic Phone? I don't think so. No. Don't think so. Gartic Phone is relatively new mm. in EFAP gaming. And boy, what a great game. I'm glad we found it. That's a fun one. Uh, my favorite was the Gartic Phone round with just snuff films. I like the like shot in onion round. whenever that was. That was. <laughs> shot in onion. Because yeah. we did a gothic phone in the middle of 150, right? At some point. Right, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there, there were two, fun. I think. That's true. Um, there's a shit ton of really, really good EFAP memories. I, I don't know when I would stop citing them. I don't know how many is too many, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like to dig really far back. Just like, yeah, it'll just be reminded of all of these, like, it's basically like, run for meme origins, and all of them are going to be pretty good memories. Remember Kyle Ben? That was like the first meme. Kyle, I was just thinking Kyle Ben. It's uncanny. We are two of spirit. <laughs> Remember when Palpatine, like, surfed a part of the Death Star down onto the planet? Remember that meme? Yeah. One animated it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. All the Dawn, all the Dawn stuff was pretty good when that was kind of in its swing. Oh yeah, the Captain Marvel coverage, man. Yeah. That movie was bad. Goliath was great, even though that didn't start on EFAP. That no, was that just the Goliath stream was great. It, it was a stream we were supposed to cover. Um, Watch Mojo, and I think we got like two minutes into the video before everyone had to leave. We, I think we, <laughs> I think we did eventually finish it. I think I had to. But it leave. just took us forever. Yeah, I think it just took us forever too, and it definitely was not the subject of our conversation. I remember I was playing Islanders at the time because that's how I remember things. Is what game was I playing during them? A lot of the times, it was, was I was playing Islanders. Jurassic Park. Oh, what nice. level I was even on? Really weird. That's fine. Uh, when will Efab do a long discussion of the Kirby lore? <laughs> as soon as uh, Fringy feels passionate enough to organize it, I guess. <laughs> I'm not I think prepared for that. Yeah, Fringy is the closest to a Kerbologist that we have. Uh, <laughs> I'm and nowhere I, near I'm just, close. I'm nowhere not a, near he's, close. He's in school. He's, he hasn't graduated yet with his Kerbology degree. And the rest of us, I just don't know what we'd be able to contribute in that aspect. So Kirb just... tribute. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, the cosmetic chicken and the Dawn is no match for Kirby. <laughs> you think that. You think that, but you don't know that. Oh, um, I, just a second. I'll be right back. Here's a chat for a super cast. Hey, Metal. Guess mm -hmm. what? Mm -hmm. 37. 
Go laugh. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, uh, are you aware of that meme? Um, uh, which one, sir? At, at all. I don't I mean, think I'm so. I know it's a number. Because I, I know you watch at least some of my item only bosses run. Oh, I don't know anything about a 37. I'm unfamiliar. So I got to Elden, Elden Beast and I said during the fight, okay, I have some freezing pods. I'm mildly confident that this is going to go great. As soon as I reach Elden Beast, I throw the the freeze pod at Elden Beast, 37 damage, and then I get killed instantly because I just lost my shit laughing because it's so little damage. <laughs> Especially because Elden Beast has a fucking shit ton of health, right? Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah, so it, was, it was pretty funny. That feels like it would make a great piece of Odin artwork where he would like show you like really tiny and pathetically throwing like a little bit of ice <laughs> enormous creature or something um medium rare cosmic chicken look it, the <laughs> cosmic chicken <laughs> plucking, sorry that plucking. it would annihilate <clears throat> Kirby okay the cosmic chicken is un uncombatable lord of existence um but on that that is that is currently the last super chat what we'll do Ooh. is outros and then I will read any that may have come in, and then we will Yay. say goodbye. So I'm gonna start with good old May May Repository. Oh, um, mm -hmm. How you doing there, Purple Bro? Hey, what, what's what's up? How you doing? What's going on? What are you doing? You know, uh, uh, right now I'm just um, just taking a few weeks to to reset myself. I've been streaming a lot of that Lego Star Wars game, which is just so good that yeah yeah so good like that i totally wasn't suffering the whole time um but uh <laughs> uh so i'm doing doing that i'm i'm, I'm doing my masochism rum where i'm trying to 100 percent it because Ugh. i don't know why i hate myself so much uh <laughs> so that's what's going on at the moment uh so videos video editing is going to slowly ease back in over the next few weeks and hopefully i'll have stuff to report i was also on a metals forge where we talked about a really good film called superman versus the elite so uh, yeah. if you want some dc content uh hop over there and watch that and we're we're currently um thinking about doing uh the trying to trying to organize a one for batman under the red hood so that'll that'll be good so yeah uh obviously efat movie still in the still in the uh, still in the uh old bay there so i'll uh give updates for that as it comes but uh yeah, that's basically what's going on with me at the moment. Um, well, yeah, check it out. Link in chat, not in description just yet, will be on the re-upload. So no worries. And uh, well. thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. Uh, Metal! Oh, oh, hello. What the fuck are you up to? Oh, I'm hey. doing all kinds of stuff. Uh, are we starting what? off? What? Rag, shut the fuck up. Mel, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you up to? I'm I'm doing all kinds of stuff. There's going to be a Metals Forge tomorrow. <gasps> There's going to be a Metals Forge on Monday. There's going to be a Metals Forge on Thursday, not Tuesday, Thursday. So God. three Metals Forges coming up your way. Perfect. North what are you talking about? No the Northman tomorrow. On Monday, Mutually is going to be there. We're going to talk about Ex Machina. That's going to be good stuff. Oh, yeah. It's good and be good. Thursday is going to be about Multiverse of Madness. <sighs> um so yeah that that's that's all cumin i'm currently working on like a super cut for my item not item only on but on beating bosses with items only in Elden ring that's that's what i'm gonna i'm doing uh and other than that just strumbletons when i have time between because i'm focusing on other stuff at the moment so there's not as many streams as before but they're still there sweet and that's 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 the things Mel's four episode every single hour. It's true. There's like eight more just during the stream. Yeah, I don't know how I did it. Impressive, honestly. I'm very impressed. Yeah. Um, sweet. But yeah, yeah, but they normally come uh, comes an episode every week. That's that's the idea. Um, what would you you mentioned you had something fringy, right? What was the thing? Barring any unforeseen problems. Revenge is <gasps> terrible this week. It's done. Oh Ooh. my god. What are you going to do with your life now? 
I make something else. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Mario Kart. <laughs> well, I am going to be playing Mario Kart, but yeah. It's ready to go. It'll be up by the end of the week. Oh, well. Very nice. Momentous occasion. If I... Um, Yeah, that shit's going to be good. The Fringy's channel is in the description, I'm pretty sure, because it's like part of the default yeah. setting, so you know where to find him. No, we're just, we're you just... have been, you have been yeah, granted wait. the wake, uh, the, the rank of default setting link. What about you, Ray Eggs? What do you got coming, if anything? Well, I do have things coming. Uh, I released a video about four or five days ago that you guys can check out, <gasps> and I already have started on the next one, and Ooh. it will be a response video to someone that it was a candidate for an EFAP video, but we never actually did it. Bom, bom, bom. Uh, so. I will be responding to that. There's already quite a bit to say. And um, that should be out hopefully... Uh, I'm trying to think, within two weeks, hopefully. I don't want to overpromise, but I think with the, the sort of, you know, with the new process I have going, it'll really speed things up while looking great. So hopefully I'll have that out soon. And then after that, who knows? Who knows what I'll do? Maybe I'll start streaming. But yeah, you'd be surprised at the fucking there's an EFAP video coverage graveyard. It's like over a hundred videos of ones that were potentially going to be covered, and then some that have just dropped out of the potential. But it's a it's a list I intend to go through someday and be like, I wonder if there's still any bangers in here, great insights into content. I bet there are. Oh, oh yeah, I bet there be. are. I already yeah. Do you actually have a list like written down? Oh, in a is that a metaphorical yeah. list or do you actually? Okay, it, you should. Shoot some of the shoot some of those my way. Just copy it, and I'll take a look. Some of them might be uh, oldies and goldies, and they might be really neat. So I would be interested in seeing that list. Hmm. Uh, are you guys planning on a the last Avatar watch? The last Avatar is that? Are Wait, you talking about the the, the 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 blue people movie? Isn't it called like? Waters of something. The way of water. Way, way of the way water. of water. Um, I don't care, but I, About, we'll see. Yeah. Like, I'll I'll see it when it comes out. See but I'm trailer. not like. Yeah, I don't know. Right now, I don't give a shit. I might by then. I don't know. No. Yeah. yeah. Do what I was thinks as well. Uh, Samus is a boy, and Maleficent was named by her dad. Samus is a boy. Mm hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And Maleficent was named after... Named by her dad, is what he said. Oh. Because... That yeah. is an interesting name to give to your kid. Maleficent. Especially because of the mal... You know, Maleficent. Um, interesting choices. All around. At least we don't have another goddamn John. Daenerys. Any good editing software you'd recommend? Vegas. Vegas. I use Vegas. Sony Vegas 19. I've but heard I great and bunch... terrible things about everyone, so I wouldn't overthink it. Something I tend to throw in is uh, if you use the Adobe suite, like if you use Photoshop and those other pieces of software, Premiere is an option. Like if you have the suite, and that's uh, one yeah, I and they use sync for a little while. Real well. They work yeah, with each other real well. Yeah. But yeah, I only know how to use Vegas. I like Vegas. It is comfy. It's like a pillow. Um, but YouTube, <laughs> Google, you'll have all the answers you could ever need if you're genuinely like, I'm going to get into one of them. I don't know which one to do. You'll find... It may even be a program that we don't even know the name of at this point. It could be some new thing. You'll find your answer. Favorite EFAP moments, and you didn't mention Jared once. Oh, dude, when he says, oh my god, he's a queer, that was one of the best <laughs> fucking things. And that's episode one. Oh my one. god, he's a queer. Episode that, one. Dude, the room. I remember I had just like a laughing fit talking about his room and the skeleton with the fucking runes <laughs> on it and all the weird shit. Man, Jared had... Jared was poised to, to be just one of the most amazing internet lol cows that you couldn't even really be mad at. And then he had his outburst, and it was all downhill from there. But man, he, he was we've this close to greatness meme. Yeah, and this close. Not far off, being four years since that, that day. Crazy. 
is the tragedy of Eef. Jared. EFAB184 has officially crossed the threshold of being an entire shift worth of listening. Thus, I shall issue you a stipend of 10 Canadian dollarinos. Riches for the Frogo and Bonjour Ragus. Hello, bonjour. Well, I'm glad you finished your shift and hopefully everything went well. There's nighty night and high meme. Hello! Noity noity. Meme repository is the best at Gothic phone. All right, the chill meme out. blender. Lies, lies oh, slander. <laughs> Thanks for another great night of entertainment, insight, and poop discussion. Also, high rags. Hello. Thank you. Very kind to say. Yeah. A humble I am... request. What were you going to say? Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just glad they're here. Yeah. A humble request to have a round table slash watch with Az, J Longbone, and Drinker, the last episode of that one. I was already thinking you we'll do it. that. The finale yeah. for mm -hmm. season three, whatever it fucking is, at that point, we will have the three of them on. Yeah, we'll do that. Yes. Uh, we, Say goodbye. Because we will. What we could do is we could. If we could steal them away for long enough, we could go straight from watching that episode together into the the final stream for Batwoman. Oh, I thought you were going to say we could watch the final and then we can go all together watch the pilot again. <laughs> <laughs> How far we... I it, it would feel so odd because the actress is different. If it was Ruby Rose for all three seasons and we could go back in time and see her, I, don't know, man. I think that would hit more than... In a way, it's but like, I'm, I'm nice to see Ruby idea. Rose, you know? <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. I know we were super excited when we saw her in Resident Evil. Oh, yes. So that's very possibly the case. We'll figure something what I, out. What if I told you there's a piece of Ruby Rose Batwoman content that you haven't covered yet? I the Crisis know. on Infinite Earth stuff, yeah. Well, no, it's... Um, oh, yeah, the, El the Elseworlds, Elseworlds one. Yeah. yeah. We know. It, we're hanging on to that. It's um, going to be an old <laughs> chest. <laughs> uh, the Last Airbender movie by M. Night Sham Shyamalan. We'll do that in the Shyamalan... I want to do all of his movies in a row because they're a fucking adventure. Including the good ones. It'll be fun. Uh, the go good one, ones. Yeah, I guess there's two. Two and a half? Yeah. Oh, I can't remember. Unbreakable splits like a half and half, yeah. yeah. Unbreakable and uh, what is it? Six cents? Yes. And then. Mm, the rest of them, like I think, they're they're negative heavy, if you know what I mean. Like they, they're, they're, yeah, they're they're super bad to one. I, I, yeah, like split is sort of okay here and there, and that's yeah. What he made that other one old, that recent one. What's up with uh, that? I've only heard awful things about that film, so I look forward to us seeing it. Apparently, the dialogue is like some of the worst shit in a movie ever. Totally oh, perfect goodness. for us. Oh, great! We love our dialogue. Governor Stephen Hogg named his daughters Ema and Eura. And wow. last name what? I don't know. Well, oh, 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 yeah. So his his last name is Hogg. So <laughs> I, the names would be Ima Hogg and Eura Hogg. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. That's child abuse. I would hate that shit, man. Yeah. Oh, like, I would, yeah, I would if... pick a nickname for myself so damn fast. I'm a or, hog. Or, or I would say, I tell people, there's like, uh, I, yeah, that that's just, like, giving your kids a name as a joke is a, it, that better be a, like, it has to be a tasteful thing, and even then, like, dude, that's, that's their name. That's their fucking name, like, calm down. Like, that's a dick thing to do, to call your kid, I'm a hog. I feel like they won't even be made fun of necessarily straight away, because everyone would just be like, wow. We don't even have to try. <laughs> yeah, it's just like it is. Yeah, your name is I'm a hog, and she's like, yeah, my dad called me that, and I fucking hate him for it every goddamn day. I'm gonna murder him. That's a dick thing to do. Yeah. And on that note, there are, there are some great names, but yeah, not like that. Not like that. That's it for the super chats for tonight, and that's it for the stream. It's Ooh. been fun, ladies and gentlemen. It's been wonderful. It's been a nice night. Thanks for the company. It has very much. Been nice. Thanks for coming by. We watched videos today. We appreciate your patronage and your attention and your audience. And uh, glad you're here. We're and gonna do great things. You'll see us return on the Wednesday. 
because we're still getting through that catch up. But the end. That too. Oh um, boy. Anything else you guys will say before I hit stop? No, oh, I think I got everything out. Even the poop. I need to find my wand to get rid of that. But yeah, yeah. Oh that, yeah, I'm, don't I'm good yeah, to go. Keep that on you. I mean, I, I, I thought I had it, but it was just a screwdriver, so it was... Screwdriver. Good for Classic nails. wizard blunder. Classic yeah. wizard blunder. All right, Ed. I can't bye, make the poop bye. disappear. This is my screwdriver. Yeah, whatever, everybody. Goodbye, everyone. Don't forget bye. to make your poop disappear. Exactly. Au revoir.